Adventures of the Saint, starring Vincent Price. The Saint, based on characters created by Leslie Thomas and known to millions from books, magazines, and motion pictures. The Robin Hood of modern crime now comes transcribed to radio, starring Hollywood's brilliant and talented actor Vincent Price as... The Saint. I do my best to keep out of jail. And you do your best to get a lot of people in. <laughs> what can I do for you? And I wanted permission to see one of your prisoners. Oh? It's Tommy Patrick. Can't be done, even for you. Patrick's in the prison hospital. No visitors allowed there. Ah, I see. You know Tommy? Hmm, he did some work for me years ago, Warden, that's all. I didn't even know he was here in prison until I got his letter. Letter? I wonder how he got a letter out of here. I don't know. He couldn't very well have put it in the mailbox at the corner. Hmm. Mind if I take a look at it? Oh, of course not. Here it is. Dear Mr. Templar, maybe I've got no right to ask your help, but I need it bad. They're trying to kill me, but I don't know why. Tommy Patrick. Hmm. You know, I've got a hunch Tommy's telling the truth. Am I right, Warden? Yes, you are. Patrick's been here for years. He's due out next spring. In three years, there have been five attempts on his life by other prisoners. At least was just a day or so ago. Was he hurt seriously? Nice, but not seriously. We don't know if he did it, and Patrick's too scared to tell. Most likely, we'll never know. Warden, haven't you any way of protecting this man? Protecting? Look, Templar, this prison was built for 1,200 men. I've got 4,000. The guards are overworked and underpaid. The food's bad. There's no recreation facility. And every year, society sends me a thousand more men and says, keep them in your crowded cage for a few years and send them back good citizens. Protect Patrick? Why, I can't even... Hey, what's that? It's gonna break. Hello? Evan, where is it? How many? I see. Be right over. What is it, Warden? Your friend Patrick, Templar. He couldn't wait for you. He's gone. <laughs> Taxi! Hey, taxi! Well, good afternoon, Louie. Afternoon, Mr. Templer. Ain't it a heavenly day? Yes, Louie, it is. Where to, Mr. Templer? 312 Main Street, Louie. Not good? You read about that prison break last night, Mr. Templer? Say the catch they brought out in the lost prison truck. You think they'll catch them? Oh, well, sooner or later, Louie. They always do. You know, something I kind of hope they don't. In my, uh, in my sub-unconscious study. Uh, why is that, Mr. Temple? Uh, the universal guilt feeling, Louie. Whenever there's a man in hiding, that man might be you or me. Yeah, yeah, uh, brute, huh? Louie, it's Freud. That's what I said, it's be Freud. You know something more, Mr. Temple? I kind of felt this way when that Ludford escaped last spring, remember? Then he come back to his cage all by himself. It was kind of sad. Yeah, an allegory, Louie. No, 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 it was a Ludford. You think Patrick will come back to the cage, Mr. Templer? Well, I'm afraid that for him there is no hiding place. Hey, isn't this Main Street, Louis? Hmm? Oh, yes, sure. Yeah. Yeah. 312. Anybody we know? I got a tip that Tommy Patrick used to live here. Perhaps if I can help him, then you and I won't feel so guilty. Wait for me, Louis, huh? Sure. I'll be darned. What's the matter? I've been to this house before. You got friends in the strangest places. Yeah. As I remember, the landlady was one of the most charming, cultivated damsels I ever had the pleasure of meeting. <laughs> Some guy's got all the luck. Uh, you sure you don't want me to come with you? No, thanks, Louie. I want her all to myself. Dear heart and gentle person, don't you remember me? Mommy, so good. Well, I'm a friend of Tommy Patrick. 
Oh, yeah. I know who I am. Silly Temple. You're a cop, that's what. Cops have been picking flies around you last night and today both picking flies. Well, for here, that's pretty thick. I run a respectable rooming house, and every time a cop comes to the front door, five more rumors go out the back. Oh, rumors are flying. Worse for business than the blue bonnet plague. Oh, cop. What do you want, cop? I'm not a policeman, really. I'm trying to help Tom if I can. If you know anything... I got a very poor memory. Well, now, here, would a treasury note refresh it in? I got a memory like an elephant. Come on in. Thank you. Now, about Tommy Pocket. Well, are you sure you're not a cop? Quite sure. Well, I ain't looking for Tommy to come here, but he's got a sister, Nancy. I didn't know that. Well, the cops don't either. They were raised separate, and Tommy didn't want to brought into his trouble. Any idea where I could find him? I got a very full memory. Mm-hmm. Here we are. Thanks. Where's the voodoo room? For the voodoo room. Voodoo room. That's Charlie Pirelli's place, isn't it? Yeah, sure. Well, so say, you positive you're not a cop. Madam, I might as well confess I am a personal emissary of J. Edgar Hoover. Well, huh? Well, that's good enough for me. Finest president we ever had. Thank you and goodbye, Barbara Fisher. <laughs> Bartender, who do you think you're talking to? Well, you're standing behind the bar. I presumed you were the bartender. Well, I'm not. Joe is. I'm a big guy around here. Oh, I beg your pardon. I'll wait for Joe, the small guy. You'll have a long wait. He went out to get a drink. It means he won't be back for several days. Well, let's see. Uh, it's got the right, please. Have a nice. Thank you. Well, that's around? Nancy around. Who wants to know? A guy wears a necktie, drinks scotch in the afternoon, thinks all the girls could fall down, die and dead when he waves his little thing. Look, all I asked was his name. Big man drinks scotch in the afternoon, thinks he's got a right to. Real big operator here, drinks scotch in the afternoon. I'd better go away, please. You talk too much and you don't say anything. Just so polish and glass. Okay, okay. Real big pink stripe, white and gray, thick guy type up. I was down at the state prison last night. I had a letter from a man who wanted to see me, but he couldn't wait. Tommy. Yes. I'm Simon Temper. I used to know your brother. How do you want? I want to help if I can. You're the same, aren't you? Yes. I remember Tommy talked about you. You could come to my place later. I live at the Sheldon. The back apartment on the second floor. What time? 9 11. I'll take off early. I'll be there, Nancy. Do you think there's any chance Tommy might come? I don't know. Excuse me, but I've got a message to deliver, man. Well, what is it, Jack? Mr. Ferrelli just said that he wants to see you in his office. Keep out of this, Frank. Ferrelli doesn't even know he's here. I said that Mr. Ferrelli wants to see Mr. Man of Distinction here. And if I have to persuade him, then I'll persuade him. Now stop flexing your muscles, Frank. You need your steak for the cocktail hour. I said that Mr. Ferrelli wants to see you. Well, I'm not a gun. Now, just say, listen, Mac, lead on, Jack. I'll be right behind you just to make sure that you get me. Stay on. Gee, got in the afternoon. Think right away all the girls should fall down, die, and dead when he... Glad to see you, Mr. Ferrelli. Who's back? Well, I brought him. Oh, come in. Come in, Mr. Uh, Diamond Templer. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, welcome to the voodoo room, Mr. Templer. Let us see more of you. Good eye? Hmm. Thank you. That's our own brand. And the violet perfume for the lady of your toy. Voodoo from the voodoo room. <laughs> that little trick I picked up in Seven Village. Mm, thank you. And where did you pick up this little trick, Mr. Bradley? This way? Yeah. Well, he's rather fast pocket. But a hard worker. He was asking about Tommy Patrick, Mr. Pirelli. I heard him. Indeed. Well, uh, your friend of Tommy's extended? Possibly. Possibly. And uh, you might possibly be in touch with him soon? I couldn't say. You couldn't say. But you could tell us the basis of your interest in Tommy. I could, but I see no reason to. You see no reason to. Mr. Templer, showing interest in other people's affairs is not always healthy. And some people know this instinctively, and others have to be taught. Keep it, right? Mm-hmm. You're... <laughs> 
That's such a big operator now. That's enough, Frank. That's enough. I'm out the back way. Right? Well, okay, Mr. Farrelly. Hey, Mr. Farrelly, I think I broke the bottle of poison in the game. My heart is up and cracked. Hey, well, let's look on the bright side, Frank. <clears throat> might have been here. <laughs> yeah, might have been here. Drink some right. Got to the afternoon with a necktie. <laughs> Hey, Mr. Temple, what happened? Here, wait, I'll, I'll help you into the chair. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Thanks, oh, gee, what happened, Mr. Temple? You look horrible, you just smell pretty, but... It's a doubtful oh. consolation, huh? Hey, tangled with the Mr. Charlie Farrelly. Yeah, huh? How does he look, huh? Not a scrap. Oh, that Farrelly is bad medicine. Stay away from him, Mr. Temple. The less you know about his business, the better. Maybe. But after you take me home for repairs, you can... Take me to the morgue. The morgue? Yeah. I hope and trust a round trip. I have the newspaper morgue. Oh. You better do some checking on Frelly. I begin to detect quite an odor about this whole business. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so do I. <laughs> I hardly trust myself in the same care for you. <laughs> you got it, Mr. Templer? You said for you detect an odor. So I do it. I do it. Home. Yes. <laughs> Well, Simon Templer, the Robin Hood of modern crime. <laughs> How are things in Sherwood Forest? Hmm, everybody's getting ready for television. Come on in, come on in. Uh, Sit down and let's do the facts. You know anything bad about anybody? Yes, that's why I'm here. I wonder if I could look at your files on Charlie Pirelli. Oh, no need to get dusty. I'll tell you all you want to know. Pirelli came to this country around 25 years ago, probably from history. Nobody knows what to do. They did go in prohibition days, liquor. Bought a nightclub. Might be letting him now and might not. Big connections, underworld and otherwise. Police never pinned anything on him. If you ask me, they never will. The class operator. Well, thanks, Sam. How's your memory on Tommy Patrick? Oh, had to pull the file on him today after his break last night. Yeah. Sent up three years ago for attempted robbery. He and his buddy tried to hold up a liquor store. His partner was killed. Nick Pantella. Yeah, Pantella. I think that's his name. Tommy was shot but recovered. He claimed it was a plan. Now, why would anyone want to frame him? I didn't know. I guess that's why nobody believed him. I see. Well, thanks, Sam. Oh, any time, Sam. <laughs> that's an interesting egg on your part. You walk into a door? No, someone slugged me. Oh, now, why would anybody want to slug you? I don't know. I guess that's why nobody believes me. <laughs> yeah. Well, stuff happens. Yeah, stuff happens. Good night, Sam. <laughs> I'm a temple in action. Anybody watching that? I don't know. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Well, you can see the rest of me. Well, I mean that. What happened? The front leaked off? Yeah, he beat me up some, but I'm the durable type. Pre-war construction. Oh, I just thought it was He's always hanging around with the own students. There's some afraid of him, too. Well, what about Farrelly? I don't know. You know, I get the feeling he's watching me all the time. I almost feel sometimes like that's why he hired me, so he could watch me. Does he know Tommy Patrick's your brother? I don't know, but he knows everything. Maybe he does. But what's Tommy done? Why, why is somebody trying to have him killed? What's he done? Come on, Nancy. Here's your shoulder to cry on. I'm sorry. I'm not the crying type. He just not know I'm that kid out there somewhere cold and scared. One of you alone. Well, maybe he won't be alone. If we can reach him, or if we can reach us. Does he know where you live? Yeah. But how can he get? Coming up after this. Hmm. Hey, you're quite an accomplished man, Frank. You pen bar, beat up the customers, listen to keyholes. What else do you do? I take guys, I find in my girl's room, and I throw them downstairs. Frank, get out. Did you forget your blackjack, Frank? You might need it. Seems the lady's feeling up with her, eh? Well, come on. Let's see how you found. Stop it, Frank! Hey, stand still. That's right. Ah, this is for the egg on the head, Frank. 
I'll sit up and you take the bedroom now. Get some rest. Did you sleep it all last night? No. I just waiting for Tommy. Yeah. Get some rest. I'll check out in a cup. What is it? If Tommy comes, I'll wait for you. All right. Nancy. Yes, Mr. Hey, if I'm going to spend the night on your couch, you'd better call me Simon. <laughs> Nancy. Yes, Mommy. Mmm, do I smell coffee and bacon? You do. Mm, Nancy, men have married for such an aroma. Well, breakfast will be ready in a minute. Did you get any sleep? Yes, yeah, I did fine. Tom and I wonder if they picked up Tommy. No, they didn't. I went out this morning around 6 and bought a paper. Here. Let me see. Please, no, probably won't. Straight down at short long. Just sign them up. Okay. Good brother. Time to find me. Oh, Tommy. Oh, Tommy. Ah, come on now. Let me help you, Tommy. Here you go. Oh, Tommy. Oh, Tommy. Oh, Tommy. Oh, Tommy. Tommy, come on. Sit down. Come on, now that's it. Don't talk. I'll get you back. Just come and sit to the door. You're all right now, Tommy. Did anyone see you come in? Yeah. I heard it. They me. They me. I know, I know. Now pull yourself together. They haven't got much time. Who's trying to kill you? I think they're really. Why? Why? I don't know. I don't know. But you must. I can't let him alone. I can't. Frank, Pirelli, the police, some of them or all of them will be here at any minute. Oh, baby. They kill me. Look, we've got to find out why, Tommy. Maggie Cannon can call me. Now, if you say Bradley is trying to have you killed, that means you know something, or you think you do. What is it? I don't know. I don't know. I guess I've been trying to figure it out for three years. Please let him alone. I can't. You say the holdup was a friend, right? He doesn't even have guns. Nick and I just went into some beer on the owner's side of shooting. He got me. He had to get me through. And I can't see it over the time someone hunt. What I met too. Would Nick know for any? Okay. Well, for a while. No, you've got to answer me. Don't leave me a friend. I didn't know him as He never said. He was lazy, but he was a good guy. Didn't work, or how did he get along? Uh, I got the idea from all I gave him money. Uh, I don't know why. Did you were his friend? Yeah. Well, we lived in the same room in half of the city. I know where it is, yeah. I was there yesterday and met the charming landlady. Did Nick ever tell you anything about Pirelli or about anything at all? How can you see his dog? Look, would you rather see him exhausted or dead? Tell me, Tommy, did Nick ever tell you anything about Pirelli? Nothing. There's no one. Nothing. This is what happened to him. The minute I was selected, he hit me a hole. Did you? No, no, you couldn't. You just got railroaded into prison. What happened to Nick's thing, do you know? Uh, I was sold. He took everything he had in an old trunk. An old trunk? Any chance it might still be at the rooming house? Maybe. I don't know. Tommy, look. Is there any way we can get into that house without being seen? The police are watching it. I don't know. Oh, you've got to know. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I do. Yeah, through the backyard. Next door. Then through the garage. Come on, Nancy. We're taking him out of here. You can't move him now, Tommy. We'll move him if we have to carry him. If we leave him here, Pirelli will kill him. Come on, if that trunk is still there, we've got a chance. Uh, 
But it's only a question of time for me, Mr. Kepler. I'll be back. In any sensible society, money can buy anything. And uh, when you return to, uh, shall I say, sensible basis, I'll be back. And if you come back, I won't be here. No. In the meantime, I'll read up on coal. You might have saved me a lot of trouble. <laughs> Tommy Thatcher's got a full pardon, Mr. Temple. Let's see that. Well, no, Tommy deserves a few good breaks, Louie. Yeah. It's just two things about this case that bother me, Mr. Temple. Oh, what are they, Louie? You think a guy like Borelli would ever come back to this country like you said? He'll be trying, Louie. So it's up to you and me. Yeah, yeah. And what's the other thing? Well, you know that day you had me drive Tommy Thatcher all over town this cab when the cops were looking for him? Yeah. Well, all he talked about was his sister. What a wonderful girl she was. And uh, how pretty. Yes. Well, you're saying how hard she worked all her life. How regular she was. And how pretty. Yes. And I just wondered, that's all, you know, if a girl was that thing pretty. Louis, uh, the voodoo club is under new management. New owner, new bartender, but the uh, same cigarette girl. Yeah? Well, let's drive over there. You seem to be out of cigarettes. <laughs> You've been listening to another transcribed adventure of the Saint, the Robin Hood of modern crime. Now here is our star, Vincent Price. Ladies and gentlemen, in tonight's cast, you heard Peggy Weber as your landlady and Sheldon Leonard as Frank. Victor Rodman was Pirelli, Peter Lee, Stan. Dick Krenner played Tommy, Fred Fields, the warden. Larry Dobson played Lewis. This is Vincent Price inviting you to join us again next week at the same time for another exciting adventure of the Saint. Good night. by Dick Powell. The Saint, based on characters created by Leslie Charters, is a James L. Fassier production and is directed by Helen Mack. Vincent Price is now starring in The Winslow Boy at the Los Palmas Theater here in Hollywood. Your announcer is John Sanders. Three times mean good times on NBC. Tonight it's the big show once again. There'll be music with Meredith Wilson, Mindy Carson, Terry Comer, and many more. Comedy with Bob Hope, Jimmy Durante, and Eddie Cantor. Drama with Jose Ferrer. In fact, it has everything, including Jalula. And tonight, Theater Guild on the Air presents another outstanding drama, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, starring Frederick March and Barbara Bel Getty. So remember, visit the big show today on NBC. characters created by Leslie Charter and known to millions from books, magazines, and motion pictures. The Robin Hood of modern crime now comes transcribed to radio, starring Hollywood's brilliant and talented actor Vincent Price as The Saint. Oh. On my way, Mr. Templer. Uh, Hands up. Uh-huh. I said hands up. Are you crazy or something? Do you want me to shoot you? Look, I'm not crazy. I'm not even something. Well, go right it's... back inside. No, no, wait a minute. We just not lose our heads. Because... Sit down over there, Mr. Templer. Mr. Templer? But I ain't, Mr. Sit down. Okay. Sit down, but I still ain't, Mr. Templer. I think you can escape what's coming to you by lying to me. I never lie to Blunt. And besides, my name is Louis. Mr. Templer invited me over to dine, you know, for dinner. I drive a cab. Does Mr. Templer drive a cab? So, no, but... Well, you see, that proves I'm not Mr. Templer. It does not. Where's your cab if you're a cab driver? Out in the street. Oh, you're trying to trick me into leaving. No, lady, you can't keep a cab in an apartment. What would the landlord say? Stop but... trying to fool me. Just, just give me that picture. 
What picture? I'm Sally Blair. Yeah, I'm Louie. I'm pleased to meet you. I want my sister's picture. I haven't got your sister's picture. I haven't even got my picture. I'm warning you. I haven't even got a sister. If I have to kill you to get it, I'll I'll kill you. Lady, that's against the law. Ask any police. This is your last chance. Are you going to give me the picture, or, or will I have to shoot you? I think you'd better shoot oh. me, Miss Blair. Oh, Mr. Temple, I'm very glad to see you. Uh, I did not. It's not polite, but, uh, well, it is my apartment. Uh, what seems to be the trouble? I... I... Oh. Hey, all of a sudden, she's crying. Yeah, so I noticed. <laughs> Look, I, I don't like to mention it's in front of a crying woman, Mr. Temple, but... That's the gun she still got in her hand. Yes, I think I'll take it, Miss Blair. Thank you. Sure. It wasn't loaded. It wasn't loaded? So what was I scared about? Miss Blair. I'm, I'm a fool. Probably, although a pretty one. Who is your sister? Valerie Marsh. But you already know that. I do now. I didn't before you told me. But you must have known you have a picture in that. A picture of her doing what? Sunbathing at the beach in Miami with Pete. Oh, Mr. Templer, you know. Pete, of course, would not be Mr. Marsh. Presumably, then, the picture of Mrs. Marsh with a, a friend in Miami, probably taken at a time when she told her husband she was elsewhere, would be valuable for what? A divorce case? Now you're admitting you knew all about it. Not ah, being bright, humor me. Your name's Blair, your sister's name is Marsh. You're not wearing a wedding ring, however. Therefore, it's your sister who must be married into a man named Marsh. Simple? Maybe for guys that went for college. Me, I played hooky from kindergarten. To me, it ain't simple. But it's true. Am I right, Miss Blair? I... I don't know, because... You should have known all these things before this. Because, after all, you did have my sister's picture. But who told you that? Valerie's husband, Theodore Marsh. And he ought to know, oughtn't he? I don't know. Let's go ask him. Mr. Temple, you're walking into a lion's den. I'm driving there in a cab. Yeah, but your name ain't Daniel. No, however, Miss Blair needs help. Right, Miss Blair? It isn't help. It's, well, it's clearing things up. Well, perhaps we can get started on that right away. Exactly what did your sister's husband, Theodore Mars, say in reference to me? Well, after he told Valerie he was going to divorce her, he said you had a picture of her and Pete taken in Miami two months ago. Where was he at the time? Out west someplace on business. Your sister really was in Miami? Yes. She was at the beach with Pete? Yes. Pete what? Brian. But of course it was the nearest coincidence, huh? No. Pete's in love with Valerie. But... Uh, how about Valerie? I don't know. Except that she'd never do anything that would endanger her marriage. Oh. I take it your brother-in-law, Mr. Theodore Marsh, is uh, very wealthy then? He is loaded. Uh, that is, yes. Okay. Well, this here is either the Marsh residence or Grant's tomb. It's the Marsh residence. Okay, but how can you tell? Mm, Grant's tomb is smaller. And Miss Blair? Thank you. Louis. Yeah, Will I'll you... wait. I'll wait. I wouldn't even mind. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry about the dinner. No, that's all right. Uh, would you like to go and get something to eat while you're waiting? I should say not. What kind of guy do you think I am? If you ask me to dinner, I'm going to have dinner with you if I have to wait till breakfast. All right, Louis. Come on, Miss Jack. Uh, Mr. Kentley. Oh, come now. You can't be formal with a man you were going to shoot. Call me Simon. Simon, don't tell anybody about my trying to shoot you. I won't. Mm. <laughs> I really should have had a manicure before I touched that button. Uh, tell me, is it solid gold or only gold-plated? Everything that Theodore buys is solid gold. The poor man must be weighed down. Good evening, Miss Stanley. Hello, Graves. Come in, Simon. Graves, where is Mrs. Marsh? In the music room, ma'am. Come on, Simon. Miss Stanley? Yes? Mrs. Marsh may not welcome any visitors. She's here. Not well. That's all right. She'll see you. As you say. Graves is a very nice butler. Well, his hair is hardly snow white, however. All I... butlers used to be young sometime or other. I don't know. I always thought they were kept in the cellar till age, like wine. This is the music. Well, it's a little smaller than Carnegie Hall. No balcony. Who's there? I'm sorry. I, I hope I didn't upset you, darling. Uh, you shouldn't upset anyone. You're too wholesome. This is Mr. Kemper. Oh. How do you do? Mr. Templer, 
The detective? No, not exactly. I... Oh, shouldn't you be muttering somewhere with my husband in a dark corner? I don't know him well enough. Or possibly lurking in a hotel corridor? I never lurked. It's an allergy. Although I will admit you surprised me. Do I? You don't look at all like the kind of man I thought you'd be. You should have been small and sly, greasy. Your hat pulled over your eyes, a cigarette dangling from your lips. You know, I once knew a man who looked exactly like that. Oh, one of your associates. No, he happened to be the professor of ethical philosophy at Harvard. Valerie, stop flirting with Simon. Besides, you're wasting time. He says he never had a picture of you and was never hired by Theodore to do anything. Then why did Theodore say that? I don't know, but I believe Simon. Look at him. Yes, I'm looking Yes, and if I'm turning a beef red, it's because it's very warm. And, uh, uh, shouldn't we be asking that question of Mr. Mark? Oh, yes, of course. Sally, uh, darling, will you get Theodore? He's in his study. All right, darling. Uh, what is Mr. Mark studying? What? In his study. Oh, the, um, the labels on bottles of old whiskey. Oh, well, now, that's a fascinating subject. Mm. You're a little on the fascinating side yourself. Yes, but I don't have a million dollars. You mean like Peter? Mm. Some men don't need a million dollars. Like Pete? Oh, Pete. He'd just like to have money. But I... Well, that was Sally. Your husband's study. Where is it? Come with me. It's upstairs. That's an odd place for it. No. Next to his bedroom. So that after Theodore has studied enough bottles, he doesn't have to walk upstairs. He couldn't. Oh. Sally. Oh, Sally. Sally, what's the matter? Behind the desk. I'll have a look. Uh, that was Theodore Mark, Sally. Yes. You said what? Yes, I said it intentionally. The knife in his back reached the heart. He's still warm. He was murdered quite recently. Murdered? Men rarely commit suicide by stabbing themselves in the back. They find it inconvenient or something. I beg your pardon, but I heard someone scream. Uh, Miss Blair, Graves. An unmannerly sound, but Mr. Mark has been murdered. Good evening. Yes, I agree with you. Would you mind phoning the police, Graves, and asking them to drop in? Uh, the, the, the police? Uh, uh, yes, Mrs. Marsh, and some of them probably won't even remove their hats. It's vulgar, but still... It's... You're, you're being unkind suddenly. I'm being angry, I think. Someone's been trying to make a fool of me and succeeding. is isn't very important, but the same person has done something a little more serious. He or she has murdered. You know, people get electrocuted for that. <laughs> Okay, Joe, we'll get a shot from this angle. Get a shot from the other side, too, eh? Yeah. No fingerprints around the desk? No, sir. Yeah. Temper. Yes, sir. Come on out in the hall. Oh, all right. What were you doing here? Well, Miss Blair asked me to visit with Mrs. Marsh. So? So I was visiting with Mrs. Marsh. Why? You've, uh... Mrs. Mark? Why did Charlie Blair ask you to visit in the first place? She thought I was an art patron. Oh, uh, what? Lieutenant Riley, stop pretending that you don't have degrees from at least two universities. Hey, quiet, quiet. What do you want to do? Get me in trouble with the boys? <laughs> I'll keep it as dirty as you can be clean. Thanks. You're not confiding in me tonight? Not until I go home and write like mad in my diary. All right. Go home. Well, I'd like to say goodbye to Sally. And to neither of them. I suppose there's a profound police reason for that. Huh? No, nope, I'm just being mean. Good night, Templar. Good night. Uh, Templar? Yeah. One thing I gotta say about you, you got a lot of dignity. That's funny you should say that, Lieutenant. I was just considering sliding down that banister. <laughs> Lots of cops back at that marble shack. So they were, Louis. So they were. What'd they find out? That Theodore Marsh was dead. By themselves, or did you tell them? Louis, stop being disrespectful. <laughs> okay. We eat and dine now? No, we turn left at Milani and stop 1890? at... 1890? No, 312. Oh, that's too bad. 1890 Milani Road would have been at least an appetizing address. Who are we calling on? A man named Pete Bryan. Can he cook, maybe? No, but he has other talents, Louis. He looks very pretty in beach pictures. He does? He does. You're going up to his place to take some more pictures? No, I just want to find out exactly how he fits in the picture of murder. Who is it? Simon Templer. Sounds like a clean cut of 
American boy working his way through college. Uh-oh. Remember, you're wrong. You're wrong. May I come in? A little on the late side. I've just seen Mrs. Mark. Lucky you. Come in. Thanks. Uh, any place. Oh, thank you. Uh, Valerie sent you here? No. But you said you'd... I just said that I'd seen her. She was trying to look when I left her like a woman stricken by overwhelming grief. <laughs> because you were leaving? Because, and I hope this comes as a shock to you, her husband was dead. Theodore Marsh dead? Terrible. Or uh, do I mean night? That depends. On what? On how handy a man you are with a knife. It was the pride of my scoutmaster. If you had a hand on the knife that killed Marsh, you may yet be the pride of the district attorney. You're really saying Marsh was murdered? He was really murdered. Fine. Uh, wait a minute. You're the man who has a picture of Valerie and me taken in Miami, aren't you? The one Marsh was going to use for divorcing Valerie? So I've heard. I don't have it, which I regret. It's a picture that won't mean anything in the divorce case anymore, but might mean a lot in someone's trial for murder. That's oh, right of that. Nice of you to... Tell me about it. Are you offering a picture for sale? I don't have it. Would this make you change your mind? Oh, you've run out of knives, eh, Brad? This is safer. Well, it's a very pretty gun. Stop admiring it. Hand over the picture. I don't have it. Would you prefer being shot? I never prefer being shot. As a matter of fact, I'm never shot. It's unethical or something. I don't think I'm going to mind being unethical about you. I'd mind. You haven't much time left. Neither of you. The police are coming to visit with you. With me? Why? Doesn't seem to have been a very well-kept secret that you and Mrs. Marsh were <laughs> friendly, shall I say. Mr. Marsh is now dead as a result of extreme violence. The police will undoubtedly want to know where you were earlier tonight. Uh, where, by the way, were you? That's none of your business. Oh, now, you've wounded me to the quick. I believe now. Wait. You want me to stay and tell the police about the picture? Okay, get out. Don't try anything with that photograph. It doesn't mean a thing. Of course it doesn't. Good night, Mr. Bryan. Be nice to the police. They don't have a million dollars like Valerie, and they're not pretty. They can be the death of you. Uh, home at night. Yeah. It'll be a late dinner, but it will be dinner. <laughs> I don't care what it is, just so long as it's something to eat. Uh, you must be sorry. I'm terribly sorry, Louis. Oh, that's okay. You couldn't help it. Uh, shut the door behind you, Louis. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. Hey, look, there's an envelope on the floor. Oh, okay. Somebody must have shoved it under the door while we were out. Oh. Hey, it's a special delivery addressed to me. Well, well, well. It's a photograph. Mm hmm? Yeah. Hey, it ain't a bad tin sign. Nice of Miami, huh? Yes, yeah, very nice. And what they got on the beaches, that ain't bad either. Louis, you are speaking of the woman, I Yes. Yeah. Never mind. Hmm. It's Valerie Marsh, the man Steve Bryan. Him you can have. Him I don't want. You know, I'm puzzled, Louis. Hmm? Apparently Theodore Marsh wasn't lying when he told his wife he'd sent the picture to me. That's nice. So maybe where he is now, the temperature's mild instead of hot. Louis, I'm worried. What, about Mr. Marsh's future? About his past. And about... Uh, oh, excuse me a moment. No, that's all right. I got some serious studying to do. Hey, here's a horse in the fifth I know is going to win. How do you know? Because my feet hurt. Because your... Oh. The horse's name is Blue Jay. Oh, well, put a plaster on him for me, huh? Uh, hello? Lieutenant Riley, please. Simon Temper. I'll hold on. Want him to come down and arrest the picture? Lieutenant, you visited Pete Bryant. Are you holding him? I meant in jail. You're not. You'd have liked to, but you're not. Did you? Well, I don't know. Good night. This place is over on the other side of town. Took us nearly an hour to get here from it. It's going to take us nearly an hour to get back there. Oh, don't tell me. We're going for another ride? Yes, we are. Uh-huh. We dine later? Yes, we dine later. <laughs> Asleep, then we'll wake him. Or he may have run away from home. The door is locked. However, it's in his feet locked and his flat key should open it. Trap this one. Yes. Mm. It's, 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 it's kind of dark. Mm. Light switch around someplace. Mm. That's got it. 
did. Uh, Brian didn't run away from home. Nor could I have waked him however loud I rang. Oh, his head don't look so good. Well, the gun he shot himself with still in his hand. No, it is. And I think we'll leave it there. He, uh, he's not as pretty as his picture. <laughs> Yes, sir? Uh, hello, Greg. Mr. Tempter. Mr. Tempter. Uh, this will go better inside. Oh, of course, sir. But uh, everyone has retired for the night. Naturally. Some of them, however, can still be waited. I beg your pardon. The music room, I think. Oh, yes, sir. Here we are, sir. Good. Grave, I'll need your help. I want you to go to Miss Blair's room, wake her if she needs waking. Tell her I'm down here with the photograph. A photograph? The one of Mrs. Marsh? And... She'll know. Tell her that and leave her. Wait five minutes, then go through the same routine with Mrs. Marsh. But I don't... You don't have to understand. Will you do as I say? Yes. Oh, uh, before you go, turn off all the lights in this room. Will you accept that small one on the table? Very well, sir. But why... I'm setting a scene, and it'll play better in the dark. <laughs> Just told me. Good for Grace. The picture. I have it. But before you start anything... Start anything? Yes, like waving guns at me. I'd like a question or two answered. Marsh was a rich man. Like most rich men, I assume he made a will? Uh, yes. The provisions of which are... Hesitation doesn't become you. Obviously, he would have left the bulk of his estate to his wife, yes? Yes. There would have been the usual bequest to servants, and uh, what else? You've been in touch with Theodore's lawyer. No, I'm guessing. But I'm right so far? Yes. What else is in the will? He left me some money. A lot of money? A lot of money. Thank you. But that doesn't mean that I... Mr. Templer, this is hardly the time to... Oh, Sally. Sally, I'm afraid. Of oh, Simon. Hello, Mrs. Marsh. You don't have to be afraid of Simon, Sally. He's a gentleman. And flattery won't help. Not anymore. Mrs. Marsh... Why did you tell me your husband said he sent that picture to me? Because that's what he... No. What conceivable reason would he have for telling you about it? Well, I really don't know. Would he have wanted to make it possible for you to steal it from me? To make it possible for your sister to threaten me with a gun in an effort to get it away from me? I, I don't know what to say. Well, you might try the truth. How did you know your husband had sent the picture to me? I... Oh, all right. I'm not very proud of myself, but... I've been using graves to spy on my husband. Sally. I said I wasn't proud of myself. But I had to protect myself. I, I didn't want to be divorced. So then I... you discovered the existence of the picture and its whereabouts, not from your husband, but through graves. You say discovered its existence as though perhaps it didn't exist. Oh, it does exist, all right. I have it with me. Oh, may I see it? Yes. Yeah. Here. Oh. Hmm. It, it's a nice picture. Very good likeness. Mm. There'd be no doubt about identification. There would have been no difficulty about corroboration either once Sweet Brian was put on the witness stand. Simon, you said would have been no difficulty. I did. Brian, unfortunately, is no longer in a position to testify to anything. Well, he's not... He's not... He is. I left him half an hour ago, lying on the floor of his bedroom, a revolver in his right hand, a bullet wound in his right temple. He killed himself. So it would appear. But why? Unless, of course, he killed Theodore and... And, and was then seized with panic or remorse and put an end to his own life? Mm -hmm. It's a pretty theory. Theory? Theory. Pretty, but like so many pretty things, false. He was murdered. But from what you just told us... When Louis and I entered his room, I had to put the lights on. Well... According to police records, no man shoots himself in the dark. Oh, uh, this is all a little too much for me. I'm going upstairs. Yeah, I think you'd better leave the photograph here, though. No, I'm keeping it. It belongs to me. It belongs to the police. I said I was keeping it. 
Valerie, put that gun away. It's pearl handled, no doubt. A gun of the highest pedigree. I don't care what you say or think. I'm Mrs. Moore. Oh. You better let me have the gun. I'm sorry, madame. Oh. Never mind. And the photograph. There you are, Mr. Templer. Hmm. Hasn't been damaged. I rather thought you'd be outside the door, Graves. Thank you, sir. You might as well let me have Mrs. Marsh's gun to Exhibit A and Exhibit B. The police will be pleased. Here it is. Yes. Yes, rather a heavy gun for a woman. I wonder if it's heavy enough to... Oh, 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 I'm afraid I may have slightly damaged your butler, Mrs. Marsh. Yes, it's... So I see, but I... I feel terribly about it. If you knocked him out, he probably deserved it. Thank you, Sally. But I don't feel terribly about knocking him out. What I feel terrible about is the butler turned out to be guilty. Son? Yes, Mrs. Marsh? I am... Uh, I'm not sure why I'm still up. Or why you're still here. Well, the answer to that is simple. Yes, I haven't explained how I knew Graves was the murderer. Oh, how did you know? Well, there was the photograph. You lied about it when you said your husband had sent it to me, but I knew you had to be lying because if your husband intended to use it as evidence in a divorce case, he would have sent it to his lawyers, not me. Well, that's true. Mm. Therefore, I wondered, had you sent me the photograph yourself? Not if you were planning to commit murder, because that photograph would have been strong evidence against you. And it, it might have been sad. Well, if it were, why would you come to my house and try to get it back from me? No, it was neither your husband, Sally, nor yourself who sent the picture to me. And Peter Bryant's death cleared him, which left Graves. Mm -hmm. He wanted to request my husband had left him. Yes. Graves to sent the photograph to me in order to provide motive for murder against you. And who then proceeded to murder your husband? They never even knew about the picture. Graves took it to my bed. But, Simon, why did he kill Pete? A double gamble. Either the police would accept the suicide as genuine and close the case on the basis that Pete had murdered your husband and then killed himself, or else... I'd have been suspected of both, yes. Right. Hmm. Simon. Yes. You finished the explanation. Are you going to rush away now that you've solved the mystery of the picture? Not on your chin back. Oh. Simon. Yes. And they call you the saint? <laughs> well, even saints can take time off. Mm -hmm. oh. Oh. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll see who it is. Louis. Louis. Oh, good heavens. I forgot all about... Now, Louis, stop standing there and looking hungry. What do you want? I should do, sit down and look hungry. Simon, what's wrong? I promised Louis at dinner and... Then your sister came along, and then the murder came along. You mean and... you two haven't had your dinner yet? I'm afraid not. Well, both of you sit right down. I'll go see what we have in the picture. <laughs> uh, you see, Louis, I was explaining the clues to Mrs. Marsh. I didn't mean to stay so long. Explaining the clues? Uh, yes. So wipe off the lipstick from your face. Huh? Oh. <laughs> it's all right, Mr. Templer. I think we're going to have a wonderful meal. Because judging from the look in your eyes when I came in, yes. Mrs. Marsh cooked with gas. You have been listening to another transcribed adventure of The Saint. The Robin Hood of modern crime. Now, here is our star, Vincent Price. Ladies and gentlemen, a long time ago it was written that man shall not live by bread alone. In this often quoted line from the Bible, bread is merely a symbol of all material values. And although we in America have the greatest material advantages in the world, they are not enough to bring us complete happiness. We must find that happiness in our spiritual as well as our material lives, in faith as well as bread. In America, one of our most precious heritages is the right to worship as we please. And as an individual, you can find the peace that only religion can bring. Thus, the religious organizations of America invite you to find yourself through faith and come to church this week. 
This is Vincent Price inviting you to join us again next week at the same time for another exciting adventure of the century. Good night. The Terrible Tin Time was written by Lewis Vitti. In the cast, you heard Joan Banks as Valerie Marsh and Lamont Johnson as Keith, Alan Perry as Sally, Ken Christie the lieutenant, and Anna Hurley the butler. Louis is played by Larry Dodson. The Saint, based on characters created by Leslie Trump, is a James L. Fassier production and is directed by Helen Mack. Vincent Price is now starring in The Winslow Boy at the Las Palmas Theater here in Hollywood. All you Saints fans will be glad to know that the Saints comic books are on sale at all newsstands. Your announcer is John Stanley. Three times mean good times on NBC. For more mystery this afternoon, there's another adventure with that hard-boiled private eye, Charlie Wilde, who solves another baffling case by a mere flash of the buckle. It's 30 minutes of suspense with Charlie Wilde later today. And Sunday means another broadcast in NBC's gigantic series, The Big Show. Galuda presides as usual, and her guests tonight include Fred Allen, Edwin, and many more. On the big show, tonight on... The Adventures of the Saints. Starring Vincent Price. The Saint, based on characters created by Leslie Carter and known to millions from books, magazines, and motion pictures. The Robin Hood of modern crime now comes transcribed to radio, starring Hollywood's brilliant and talented actor Vincent Price as The Saint. Will there be anything for preserve, Mr. Templer? No, I think not, Carl. Just some more coffee, please. Certainly. Thank you. Hey, excuse me. Do you mind if I sit down here with you? Why, I'd be happy oh, if you... Oh, thank you. I hope you realize I wouldn't approach the perfect stranger if it wasn't a matter of life or death. Oh, I'm sure well, you... it is a matter of life or death. That's why I had to sit down with the handsomest man in the room. You. Well, I... But you certainly aren't much of a conversation. Well, happily, you fill the gap. Now, how may I be of service in this matter of life or death? Do you think you could gaze into my eyes? As if I was the only woman in the entire world? But don't make it anything personal. Well, I consider it a festive challenge. I want you to hug me with your eyes while I spurn you, pardon. La belle dame sa merci. Well, uh, now, how is this for an ardent yet humble day? Well, not now. She's not watching. I'm oh, sorry. I didn't mean to be fresh. Who's he? Marvin. He's over there with that... That woman. Oh. He's looking at her the way I want you to look at me. This I still have to see. Well, don't turn around. They're leaving. They'll see you. Well, uh, shall I start hugging you now? I'm sure it will be good for the muscles in my eyes. Yes, hurry up. I'm hugging. Stop. Why? He never even noticed me. He walked right on out. Oh, man. You want to forget that? Oh, I'm sorry, Carl. But would you mind changing that coffee to a double brandy? I think but I never drink. Enough for you, dear. Me. Oh. Did you say, Mr. Temple? Not Simon Temple. Simon Temple. The same? Mm. The Robin Hood of modern crime? Mm-hmm. Faith has led you to me. Yeah, I must have a word with Faith. And before Faith entangles us further, what's your name? Alice. Alice Park. But you can call me Alice. Oh, thank you, Alice. Uh, could you give me an explanation of this in a few thousand well-chosen words? You mean to say you haven't figured it out? And you are perfectly marvelous, detective. Well, I'm a little slow, Alice, uh, from the heavy meal. Well, that was Marvin. Marvin Hickerson. We were engaged, practically. And? And then he came to the city. He's a scientific farmer, but he sold his farm. For how much, may I ask? $50,000. How scientific can you get? He said he had to come here to pursue his new vocation. To the city, I mean. And uh, what is his new vocation? Well, he's a private eye. Well, 
Guess there's always room for one more. You do see, don't you? Yes, of course. See what? How horrible the whole thing is. Marvin has met this, this woman. And I found out he's drawn out his whole $50,000 out of the bank this morning. Well, he's carrying it around with him. Now nobody will help me. I don't know what to do. Alice, tell me, are you worried about Marvin or are you worried about the money? Oh, I'm only worried about Marvin, Mr. Temple. He's an awful dope. But I love him. I see. If you would go to him and tell him, well, the facts. The facts? Well, you know, about life. <laughs> well, frankly, I'm not feeling very fatherly at the moment, but I'll try. You will. You really will. You swear it by something sacred. I swear it by something sacred. Oh, Mr. Temple. You're the nicest detective a girl ever had for a detective. <laughs> Marvin Hickerson, private eye. Come in, come in. Oh, thank you. Now, uh, what's your problem, Mr. Uh, uh, Kempster? I wanted to talk to you about a girl, Marvin. A girl? You're in your apartment alone, and then she walks. Well, not exactly. It was more than... To make nature. around her shoulders meant money, and her smoldering eyes meant trouble. Marvin, a I... tiny pulse started to beat in her temple as she swayed closer. And it became a tom-tom as she threw herself into your arms, murmuring words of passion and fear of Marvin. Get a grip on yourself. Oh, girl? Mm, yes, there is a girl, Marvin, but you are not fan I noticed, huh? Mm. Well, we've all got to start somewhere. True. And I can't take your case anyway. I'm involved in a, a big deal. Marvin, Alice is worried about you. Alice? Mm-hmm. Mr. Sampler, Alice Park has got to learn that I am not a scholar. I, I, I'm a... Uh, a man, I'll accept that. And the sooner she stops interfering in my affairs, the better it'll be for everybody. Just because I now happen to be going around with a... A, a woman. Definitely. A woman who is going to put me in the way of making a great deal of money. Hello, Marvin. How are you? Oh, uh, uh, hello, Mr. Jordan. Who's your friend, Marvin? Uh, this is Mr. Templer. Mr. Templer, this is Mr. Jordan. Honest Jack Jordan. He trains horses. He's from Kentucky. Kentucky, yes. Yeah. Glad to meet you, Mr. Dorgan. So you're from the bluegrass country, huh? The bluegrass country, the home of fast horses and beautiful women. Where's that? Kentucky. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, sure. Come on, Marvin. Ah, uh, sure, Mr. Dorgan. Would you excuse us? We've got a very important appointment. And Marvin has also got $50,000. Who is this guy, Marvin? He's got nose trouble. Mr. Sample, if Alice Parks thinks I need someone to protect me, she's mistaken. My experience as a private investigator has made me a pretty shrewd judge of character. And my faith in the integrity of honest Jack Dorgan is unfounded. Thank you, Marvin Hickerson. Right. Oh, come on, Marvin. The Colonel and Carly are waiting. So long, friend. So long, honest Jack. See you at Circle Down sometime. Where's that? Why, in your old home state, Kentucky? Ooh, Kentucky. Kentucky. <laughs> I'm worried about Marvin. Why doesn't he come? I'm a little worried about him myself, Alice. I didn't have quite the same faith in Honest Jack as Marvin did. In this penthouse. Marvin never had expensive taste, never in his life. And her picture on the piano. Mm. All my love, Marvin, honey. You're Coralie. <laughs> Rather sultry looking, isn't it? Oh, I, I suppose he's pretty. You happen to care for that type. Who doesn't? Oh, you men are all alike. Uh, it's a convenient arrangement. Oh, he, he's just an absolute... An absolute... Beast. Don't you dare call Marvin a beast. Why doesn't he come, Mr. Templer? Uh, I think I heard the elevator, Alice. That maybe. Marvin! Hello, Alice. Uh, you better let me have that gun, Marvin. No. No, I'll need it. I'll need it when they hunt me down in the inevitable land. Marvin, what's happened? Tell me. Alice. Mr. Templer. You see before you are now clogged. A criminal. Give me the gun, my No! Man. I have lived by the gun and in days, hours, minutes. I shall die by the gun. What did you do, Marvin? Alice, I... I killed the man. Oh, you didn't. I did. Uh, or I think I did. It, it, it's all so confused. Sit down, Marvin. If it was in time, the police would be after me, maybe with bloodhounds. Oh, I doubt if they could track you up the elevator, Jeff. 
Now, look, where was this killer then? Uh, who got killed? Mr. George, in the hotel here, in Suite A on the seventh floor. But you didn't do it. You couldn't have. Tell him you didn't do it, Mr. Temple. Let him tell it, Alice. What happened, Marvin? It, it was all, all mixed up. Uh, there were a lot of people there, all betting a lot of money on the horses, and, and I was there with the Colonel and Coralie. And... Coralie? And I knew she was mixed up in it. Go on, Marvin. And I bet my 50000 on a tip Mr. Gordon gave us because he knew the race was fixed. One two hundred thousand years. And then Mr. Jordan told me to bet it all on another race that was fixed. But the horse lost. And there was a big argument. And somebody put a gun in my hand and the thing to go off. And, and Mr. Jordan fell down and there was... There was... Blood. Blood all over. It was awful. Did anyone call the police? I, I don't know. I, I guess somebody did. Everybody saw it. I'm a murderer. You are not, Marvin. Just because you killed someone, that doesn't make you a murderer, does it, Mr. Templer? Um, I think I'd better investigate this. Marvin, you wait here with Alice. No. Oh. I'll never take me alive. Marvin, come back here. It's better this way, Alice. Forget me. Forget that somewhere in the night there's a pale, hunted, penniless fugitive from justice. Find someone to take my place in this house. Farewell. Marvin! Oh, Mr. Templer, didn't you? No, Alice, I didn't. He was already in the elevator. Oh, what are we going to do? Did he really murder someone? Uh, I think we'd better go find out. Come on, Alice. Where are we going? To three days, seventh floor. To see whether honest Jack Dorgan has really gone to his old Kentucky home. <laughs> No answer. But there must be someone in there. Marvin said the room is filled with people. Well, let's try the door. It's open. Dark in here. Wait till I find the light switch. Well, do you have to turn on the light? Can't we just leave? Well, we have to find out, Alice. Yes. Yeah. It's just a perfectly bare room. Doesn't look much like a gambling den, does it? You don't see any body? I don't see a sign of anything. Well, and it didn't happen. Marvin was just imagining things. There wasn't any murder at all. Now, this doesn't look much like a room a murder was committed in ten minutes before. Oh, let's go, Mr. Templer. Let's find Marvin and... Mr. Templer, what are you looking at? That um, spot on the floor, Alice, that stain. Oh, Mr. Templer. It isn't. I'm afraid it is. Blood. Oh, I'm coming, coming. Oh, Alice, come in. Oh, Mr. Temple. How could you sleep so late with poor Marvin roaming the streets? A hundred fields of him. Huh? What time is it? 7.30. Well, I, I forced myself. And how do we know Marvin is a hunted fugitive? Is there anything in the papers about a killing? No. But the body will turn up, won't it? I mean, they always do. Mm, usually. What are you going to do to find Marvin? I think I'll go out and make a few bets on the horse. What? You're going to spend the day in carefree abandonment while poor Marvin is roaming the streets, a hunted fugitive? Yeah, I'd like to find out more about Marvin's friends, Corley and the Colonel. Talking about horses in the bar of the Croydon, well, it might be a way of getting acquainted. You're going to get acquainted with her? Well, I'll go along to protect you. Uh, thank you, but no. She won't turn into putty in her hand. She won't mold you if she will. Maybe even a face worse than death. It's a pleasant way to go. Well, all right, I trust you. Thank you. You're nice, Mr. Temple. And I want you to know that if it wasn't for Marvin, why am I seriously considering you? And here you are, working to save your life. Why, it's a city cult. It's a far, far better thing I do than I've ever done before you do. That's a goodbye. Goodbye, Sidney. Another scotch over ice, bartender. Yes, sir. I, um, I see you study on the form. Got anything good going today? Uh, not a thing, but my luck's generally bad anyway. <laughs> you and me. 
Going out to the track today? Well, I generally like to place my bets elsewhere. I bet fairly large amounts, and if the track just brings down the odds. Brings down the... You shouldn't. Oh, I generally lose, but then everyone has to have a hobby. <laughs> everyone has to have a hobby. Uh, certainly, uh, Miss Arthur. Yes, indeed, yes. Excuse me. Is you all think I was just terrible if I signed up a conversation with you? Just as bold as that. I would think it was terrible if you didn't you, you all, that is. Oh, you're making fun of my accent. I'm in practice. That's why I couldn't resist when you started talking to her. Yeah, the paternity of horse players. Mm. Uh, you wouldn't be going out to the track today, Miss. Talking. Carly Talking. You know me? My name is Heathcliff, Carly. Simon Heathcliff. I'm delighted to know you. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, are you going to the track? I, I'd love to, but I have to ask Daddy. He's awful smart about the races. He wins all the time, just scared your money. Well, it sounds like a gentleman I should meet. Uh, are you staying here in the hotel? We have rooms on the seventh floor. Would you all care to come up? Wow, well, I would just love to. <laughs> Daddy, I'd like to make you acquainted with a friend of mine, Mr. Heathcliff. Simon, and my father, Colonel Carstairs. How do you do, sir? Well, pleasure, real pleasure. <coughs> oh, sit down, sir. Oh, thank you, Colonel. Ah, uh, Simon's a horse player, too, Daddy. I told him about you making simply scared your money on the races. You what? Corley, I'm asking time again not to make you my business to speak. But, Daddy, all I said was you may spread the money. I must apologize, sir. You see, the fact is, uh, you look like a gentleman, I can cook. The fact is that, uh, uh, I bet on races only when I have getting information. You mean, next breakfast? Yes, if I could that way, yes. Sad that the food of kings is a foreign to such low state, but as long as it has, there's a profit to be made by knowledge, a handsome profit. And, uh, I don't mind saying I have such knowledge. Could you give him a kiss, Daddy? Oh, I, I couldn't ask anything like that. Well, uh, perhaps you can do me a favor, sir. I have a horse going in just a few minutes, but the horse followed down the hall. Yeah, as in the shoes of my bed, see, I'm, I'm seeing it. Maybe it will be. And if you would care to play with the best for me. Why, I'd be delighted. Good. And, uh, do a little something to yourself. Just down the hall, eh? Just down the hall, eh? Two days. Shall we go? Oh, by all means. After you. Oh, hello. After you. Come, Carly. Come and daddy. I'll give you the money before we go in. Forty thousand on the baby's pocket. Uh, whatever you want to add of your own. Forty thousand? That's a lot of money. Chicken feet, boy. Just millions in this thing. Millions. Oh, here we are. Remember the knock in case you come back by yourself. One air draw, stop power. Okay, you're in. Well, this is quite a place. Good afternoon, Fritz. You free, so fit? Yeah, just about, Colonel. But oh, I mean, I'm not getting free. No cause for love. But Mr. Heathcliff here would like to wait. Certainly, sir. The cash is supposed right over there. Thank you. Please call us to here. Hurry. I'd like to place 40500 on Brave Fox to win. You're just in time, sir. 40500 to win. Yes, sir. Did you make the best time? Right, and I bet 500 for myself. It's all I had with me. Well, no dividends first. Big ones will come later. Okay, okay, fellas. Quiet down. The books are closed. There they go. Oh, Simon, this is years of rain. Oh, how exciting. That's the habit doing straight. By a headshot, Jimmy Fight, the Blu-ray Jack, and Top Perry Fight, two links, and every box. You're sure of your information, Colonel? Nothing to worry about, my boy. Not a thing. At the three quarters, still on his choice by a headshot, a Blu-ray Jack by one, a Jimmy Fight, and Top Perry by half the links, and the great box is trading. Daddy, what's the matter with that little old horse? I don't know. Oh, I can't understand why. Four-way jack is taking command by two lengths. Uh, on his choice, he's checking, and the top carry got 
him in the face and the gray fox is beginning to close down on the outside. Come on, baby. Fox. Can he do it? He's better. They're yeah, coming down to the line of finish. It's Bull Ray Jack and Top Terrace with Bull Fox in the outside. And now it's the Bull Ray Jack and Bull Fox. A Bull Ray Jack and Bull Fox and the Bull Fox just gets up to win by a nose. Darling, we won. Oh, I certainly have to hand it to you, Colonel. <coughs> let's, uh, let's step outside the hall for a minute, sir. I just didn't want the boys to hear. Well, sir, my information is always correct, my boy. Always. How much do we win? Well, let's see. At two to one, I get back to one hundred and twenty thousand. And, uh, Mickey, yep, sir, we get back to fifteen hundred, sir. We didn't have more, will you? I don't want to appear greedy, Colonel, but, uh, do you have anything else running today? Not today, my boy. Nothing, uh, sure. And, of course, I, I never bet to make it sure. Tomorrow? Yeah, well, you have the fever, don't you? <laughs> yes, yes, I have something tomorrow, or I will have. You can back there at the same time if you, you want to get in on it. Could I draw some real money out of the bank to bet on it? <laughs> Much as you like, my boy. Of course, that's still there for you. Of course, I need no gas. Oh, yeah. Certainly, it's a pretty risky business, eh, Colonel? Why, I, I might lose my shirt. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yes, indeed, sir. But I don't understand, Mr. Tucker. You actually won a thousand dollars. Come on, Mummy, Alice. The whole place is working with the Colonel. The race was actually over before I bet. They just let me win the money. But why? So I would go to the bank tomorrow, draw out thirty or forty thousand, and come back and bet it. And then I'd lose. Oh. Was you very pretty? Who? Poorly. Well, if you care for that tie. Marvin did. Yeah, it's a sure sign of 2020 vision. He hasn't come. Marvin. When I think of him out there, poor, lonely, hunted beautiful. Yeah, I know, I know. And here we are, the two of us, safe, alone in your apartment, the two of us. Alone. In your apartment. Alice, uh... What's that? Somebody outside the window. I'll open it. Marvin! Jeez. How'd you recognize me? I was wearing dark glasses and a mustache. Come in, Marvin. We, uh, we recognize your voice. I didn't say anything. Where have you been, Marvin? Good row. How awful. That's where I belong. I'm a human derelict, a hunted criminal. Are you hungry? No. I ate at the Sunshine Mission. They wanted me to stay and sing center in the choir, but then I read the paper and came here. Is there... Any hope? Marvin, look, I want you to stay here tonight. Tomorrow you're going to the police and give yourself up. Never. Uh, it may not be as bad as you think. You're going to give yourself up and then send the police over to Sweet A, the seventh floor of the Croydon, where I will have just been swindled out of my money, just as you were. I was swindled? Gee, they had a nerve swindling a private eye. Yeah, some crooks just have no teeth. But the Coralie wasn't a crook. Why, she? I'm straight so. Marvin. Oh, I, I suspected her, of course, all along. Now, look, here's the plan, Marvin. I'll be there at 2 o'clock. You walk into the police station at 2 and send them over. That would give me enough time to lose the money. Have you got that? Sure. I'll... I'll give myself up. Well, I'll go with you, Marvin. No, Alice. A woman places in the home. You wait here until I get back. How long will you be? I'm lucky. Ten years. Oh, Marvin. Oh, Alice. Oh, brother. Hello, Colonel. Come in, sir. Come in. I, uh, I don't quite understand, Colonel. Where is everybody? Where's Fred? The cashier, all the better. Well, it's just a family party to be, sir. Just call me in the cell. <laughs> Say hello to the gentleman, Coralie. Honey? Hi, stupid. Yeah. Coralie seems to have lost her southern charm and refinement, Colonel. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty. I constantly try to impress on our cows. Of course, we're all right in the way that to be successful in the trivial part 24 hours a day. But just, there's not the same pride in craftsmanship there was in my day. <laughs> sit down, sit down. Thank you. Uh, what gave me away? Simple thing, really. One of our personnel saw you with young Marvin Hickerson the other day. 
Come in, Dargan. Hi, Nosey. Well, honest Jack Dorgan from Kentucky. And you really weren't shot, Mr. Dorgan. Ah, the gun held blank. And the blood was catching. Really a convenient way of getting rid of a seared lamb. Mm, I thought as much. Now what happened? Nothing. Nothing at all, Mr. Temple. Go out to have the police outside waiting to pounce after we take your money. Well, how much did you bring, by the way? Thirty thousand. Oh, shame that's passed it up. We're going to pass up thirty grand? Yes, sir, if they call a lead. at least beat the thousand out of me once on a panel. In the news from Ah, uh, uh, that would be the police. A little early, aren't they, Mr. Templer? Come in. Wait for the sky. I got you covered. Mark. I didn't go to the police, Mr. Templer. I thought if I brought the gang in myself, I might get a lighter sentence. Lighter sentence for what? Why, for sure. Mr. Dorgan! Yes, Mr. Dorgan made a quick recovery, Marvin. Yeah, and I got a gun, too. You see it? Well, 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 this is easy. If we saw him coming, then we can take Mr. Templer's 30,000. Although, of course, I'd have four violence. Uh, Ben's not fit. He doesn't have to be Stand up, Templer. Oh, my feet hurt. Stand up. You forget. I've got a pistol here. Don't anyone move. What pistol, Marvy? The same pistol I shot you with, that's what. Marvin, look, the cartridges are blank. Blank? I don't believe it. Oh, you're going, huh? Stay away from him, Dorgan. Yeah, you stay away from me or I'll shoot. Go ahead, have fun. I, I will, I'll... I'll... <laughs> Get some more, Marvy. It tickles. Marvin, Marvin! <laughs> well, they're coming in like flies. You shouldn't have come out. These men are trying to kill us. No, I've got her blank cartridges. I think. Take a look at the hole in the wall, Mr. Dorgan. It's lucky that Marvin missed you. Yeah, sure. Hole in the... Hey! That's a bullet hole. Yes, it is, isn't it? Put that thing down, kid. Somebody could get hurt. Alice, did you change the bullet? Yes, I did. I know Marvin a little better than you, Mr. Temple. I checked his gun before he went out to give himself up to the police. Just in case. Yeah. Get back, you rat. You're dealing with Marvin Hickerson private eyes. Me too, Marvin, honey. Well... You too, Coralie, honey. Yes, you too. And I'll take my 50,000 back, too. Oh, it's a pity. You seldom need a young man to really talk his mother. Stay right where you are, Colonel. Don't worry, Mr. Templer. I can handle him. This is only the start of a long and successful career as a private eye. Marvin, I think Alice might have something to say about your career. Alice? Alice, you still... You know... Yes, Marvin. Very much. It's sad to be so. Get back, you rat. You're dealing with Marvin Hickerson, the scientific farmer. You mean this is goodbye, Alice? Marvin's waiting outside. I guess it just wasn't meant to be. You knew that. I did not But I want you to know that I'll always remember you, Mr. Temple. From the first moment in that restaurant, when you hugged me with your arms. That was that moment. Exactly. And when, when the first child comes, we'll name it Simon, after you. Yeah. Yes, Simon, forever and ever. I'll be very honest. Just then, by tomorrow, I'll be Mrs. Marvin Hickey. I wish you'd promise me one thing, Alice. What? Don't ever take that fish out of the kitchen. You have been listening to another transcribed adventure of The Saint, the Robin Hood of modern crime. And now, here is our star. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Vincent Price, inviting you to join us again next week at this same time for another exciting adventure of The Saint. Good night. This story of the saint was written by Dick Powell. Our cast included Leslie Banning, Maggie Morley, Victor Rodman, Edmund McDonald, Herb Bygren, Bill Tracy, and Bonnie Phillips. The Saint, based on characters created by Leslie Trotters, is a James L. Sassier production and is directed by Helen Mack. Vincent Price is soon to be seen co-starring with Errol Flynn and Michael and Trell in William Marshall's production of Bloodline, the announcer Don Stanley. Three times mean good times on NBC. 
Tonight, the big show, your hour and a half of comedy, music, and drama, includes Salula, Margaret Truman, Fred Allen, Danny Thomas, Douglas Fairbanks, Mindy Carson, and many, many more. And Theater Guild on the Air tonight brings you Carousel, starring Patrice Munsell and Cornell Wilde. Remember, Margaret Truman and... Adventures of the Saints, starring Vincent Price. The Saints, based on characters created by Leslie Potter, a man to millions from books, magazines, and motion pictures. The Robin Hood of modern crime now comes transcribed to radio, starring Hollywood's brilliant and talented actor Vincent Price as... The Saints. I'm out of town. I'm curled up in front of the fire with a good book. Yeah, we got a good book. Do you have a good book? Only the best. Can't wait till I learn how to read. Tonight I am not the illiterate little friend. Good night. Hmm? Fate. Hmm, it's too late. Fate of a desert mood. Fate of a black sky. Sprinkled with silver stars. I'm trying. Another minute and I'll hear a coyote howling. Fate of a small blonde with big eyes. You don't sound like a small blonde. I wouldn't know about the eyes. My name was Marie and her mood. <laughs> you were hiding in the rumble, Pete. You got back into Hollywood, you slapped me in the face. Raleigh. Raleigh. How are you, Simon? <laughs> I'm keeping up with my social security payments, and you? Oh, making a series of personal appearances all over the country in the shrinking place. Mm. The studio's idea. Simon, I know it's late, but I've got to see you right away. Well? The address is 39 Fifth Avenue. If you hurry over, I'll give you a shampoo. I already had a shampoo. Stop boasting and come on over. You sound worried. Going out of my mind. Might not be a long trip, but Simon, I'm besieged by a gorilla. Hello, Raleigh. Simon, come on in. Thanks. It's good to see you. Oh, Marie still remembers you. Oh? Mm, I duck every time I meet her. Dolly, I hate to get personal, but uh, someone has confused you with Grant. This tomb is... Uh, Renting this Moth Eaton Mansion was the studio's idea. Oh. I tried to have them put in a small subway, but they got very snide about it. <laughs> oh, it's really a very nice mansion. Uh, when did Dracula move out? Keep this under your hat, but I think he's still around looking. Uh, let's start the long press. <laughs> All right. <laughs> The idea is it's just got a steady pace and keep to it. Yeah, but how do you know you're going in the right direction? The moss on the movie. Oh, yeah. Hey, see, Rolly, what about this gorilla you mentioned over the phone? Oh, I'd forgotten about him for a few fleeting moments. Simon, the next picture I'm doing is a jungle picture. Oh. You mean whoa. Anyway, the studio got the bright idea of having me photographed next to one of our furry little brothers. So they issued a dozen memos, and a little man complete with gorilla showed up here about an hour ago with 9,000 photographers. Oh, uh, we were here to the left here. Oh, thank you. The photographers ran out of flash bulbs some time ago and left. The gent with the primate, his name is Primo. The primate? No, the gent. Oh. He seems to feel reluctant about leaving. Oh, is he bigger than you are? No. Well, then why the desperation call to me? Uh, I don't know exactly, except that well, Primo isn't some kind of a gent. He wouldn't tell me what it was, but guy? No. Terrified, I think. Ah, we've made it, sir. The gorilla. <laughs> He's only a very small monkey. And this is Mr. Preble. Mr. Preble, Simon Templer. How, how do you do? How do you do? Uh, Simon Templer? Yes. The, the saint? In a haphazard sort of way. You're the kind of man who might be able to help me. He'd be afraid of you. Who would be? Well, I, I don't know if I should tell you, but because maybe, maybe I'm guilty too. Guilty of what? All right. I'd better go now. Perhaps that's why I think it over. May I call on you for aid? Of course you may. Thank you very much. Uh, Wenceslaus, we're leaving now. Wenceslaus? Yes. He's a very talented monkey. I spent years training him. Now, perhaps he's going to be the reason why I go to jail. That is. Good night, Mr. Raymond. He was very cooperative. Part of my job, but why don't you break down and tell Mr. Templer all? Thousands, nay, millions of people have. Oh, I, I'm sure of that, but I can't decide whether I can do help. Please, I'll, I'll go now if you don't mind. All right. Think you can find the front door all by yourself? I'm sure I can. I'm in the phone book, Mr. Trevor. And I suggest you don't wait too long. No, I, I won't. Yes, 
funny little man. He was practically running when he left. Nothing much you can do for him if he won't open up. That's not, but... Rally, let's go ask him. But Simon... I've seen terror in people's eyes before, and I don't like it. Now, this is pretty. Simon, have you got any idea about what's about him? Not much of one, but from what he said, I'd guess that somehow, and probably innocently, he's gotten himself involved with something or somebody highly illegal. The monkey figures in it, too. He's made the front door. Mm. If my legs hold out and we catch up with him, I'd like to... Simon! Yeah, that was people. Come on, we run for it. Turn the corner. Too far away to get the license number. Well, maybe, maybe if someone's playing a joke on people, Simon. Uh, uh, it wasn't a very good joke, Raleigh. People died, but not laughing. <laughs> I phoned the police. I think they're pretty soon. Good. There's not much point in my remaining. I don't even know if you them. All right, but, uh, Simon, take the monkey with you. Huh? What? I'm not the type on which a monkey looks good. Besides, I think people would prefer to have you hold on to the monkey rather than the police. Well, maybe you're right. If the monkey was involved in anything and wasn't under police guard, things might happen. All right. I'll take him. I like the people. You could be sticking your neck out, asking for the act, Simon. If you don't mind that, you? Now, as a matter of fact, I like that, too. Monkeying with murder. Got out. What would the neighbors say? Hello. They'd say hello. Oh, but I'd hit that. I've been waiting for you. You have? Uh-huh. Yeah, I'm out of breath. Well, it would be fun believing that, but... Uh, I meant I went up the stairs to be here ahead of you. Oh, it was you and that cab that followed mine, huh? Couldn't we discuss it inside? Oh, that's too good. There's a light switch to your right. Got it. Oh, nice. Oh, thank you. Uh, my name is Simon Temple. I know. I'm Lola. And this is Wentz's library. He's a monkey. I know that, too. Oh, you're very bright. But um, what's on your mind? I'm... I'm afraid to tell you. Well, I wonder if I'm afraid to hear. Look away for a minute and... Well, it can't be that about Please. I'm shocked. Well, all right. I, I'm uh, looking away. Without having anyone see me take this out of my bag. Take what? Oh. Oh, that. Yes. Hmm. Lola, you've deceived me. Have I? I thought you were preparing to tell me how smitten you were by my curly lock. Thank you. Yeah, I didn't expect you to point a revolver at me. But you see, Wenceslas has even curly a lot. Mm, more, too. That's right. So I'll take him. And he can go to sleep. Yeah, but I'm not sleeping. Would you rather be dead? You can't sleep me. Why not? It's not in my leash. Why do you want the monkey? I'm very fond of Wenceslas. Oh, an old schoolmate? Or did he belong to someone you love? Simon, you're very You're beautiful. Thank you. Liar. Why, Simon? Impossibly a murderer. That's the nicest thing anybody has ever said to me. Good night, Simon. Don't look around, Lola, but uh, someone's just opened the door behind you. Oh, that's an old trick, Simon. Mm, believe me, this isn't a trick. It isn't going to do me any good either from the looks of things. Hi, Lola. Oh. It's your ever loving man. Drop the pump. I, I... Drop it. Oh. Now we're all one happy family. I'm not happy. What do you want? Huh? Huh? Well, you want to laugh and be merry and be happy to do it in my living room? Well, you are a very lucky guy. I count my blessings every night. Because now you only got half an explanation to make. It's young, foolish, the night was... For example, would I have walked in and found Lola there sitting in your lap? Then you would have had to explain that, too. Oh, don't be silly. The explanation would be obvious. If... But the thing is how Lola was not being friendly, all that you can explain. How come you got the monkey? Won't you say? Oh, it's love, Max. She loves me for my eyes are blue. He hates me for my ma. Ha, ha. Ha. Yeah, I must be giving quite a performance. Yeah. And so far, you're still alive, too. Not like Cleebo. Hmm. Suppose we leave personalities out of it. How'd you get the monkey? She followed me home. I'm beginning to stop laughing. Oh, that's a shame. You have such a jolly laugh. I am beginning to get sore. Matt, Keep out of this. For the time being, you are in the clear. You was removing a monkey from this guy here. What you were going to do once you had the monkey? I'm going to bring him to you. Yeah, well, I will decide if I want to believe that in my leisure time. 
Right now, I'm waiting for Junior there to make with the lift. You mean you want Wenceslas to chat? I mean you. Oh, all right. Well, there was once a young lady, as I am, who remarked, oh, what a big girl I am. That is a... Uh... Oh, you heard that one. Well, how about... Oh, the, the monkey! I was hoping you wouldn't notice it. Little darling picked up Lola's gun. Hey, listen, Pan, you wake me. I wake right, you. Well, on the other hand... Ah. <laughs> Thank you, Wenceslas. Yeah, you see, he's fond of my shoulder. Now I've got a gun, too. Well, how do you like that? It's a nice touch. Wenceslas is very bright. Yeah. Now i got a gun pointing at you... If you get a gun point with me, that's beautifully put. And if we were to play bullets, maybe one of us might get out of line. Ah, but which one? Right now, I ain't sure I want to find out. How about us, uh, arbitrary? Of course. You drop your gun and get out of here, and I'll go to sleep. I don't have to drop my gun to get out of here. That's true enough. All right, let's observe that happy event. Get out. But I gotta have the monkey. Then this louse doesn't like you. I still... Hey, who's playing at the light? Lola! Somebody left. That's a couple of somebody's. I don't know yet. Simon, don't put the lights on. Why? I'm afraid of what we'll see. Shooting's over. I've got to. I'm so frozen. Simon, nobody's been shot. Max is gone. Somebody has been shot, Lola. Oh. The monkey. Yeah. He's dead. Oh, I'm sorry about that. I sort of like Wenceslas. Well, Wenceslas isn't interested anymore. I am, though. Am I liking you? Not at the moment. What I meant was Wenceslas wasn't killed by accident. He was off by himself when he was shot. He was murdered. Monkey murdered. Very strange. What could he have known that monkey had to die? <laughs> Yes, Lola? You made me promise to take you to Master. Not soon. The pastor? Going after Mass. Oh, perhaps not. But I like Wenceslas. I even like Preble. Still, it's no real concern of yours. Preble was killed shortly after I'd met him. Wenceslas was murdered in my apartment. Makes it all sort of personal. Besides, I don't admire killers. How about me? You killed anyone? No. Well, in that case, I could very easily yeah. believe you. If you did. Well, I could very easily. Why? Yeah. <laughs> warm night, isn't it? No. Cold. Hate to say, Warm night. You mind? No, uh, but uh, what will the cab driver think? What do you think he'll think? He'll think what I think he'll think. Uh, we've arrived. It's not likely to go down in history as a breakfast statement, but. Hello, look. Ah. I'll pull the driver. There's a little something for your income tax to turn. Oh, I can get Let's go. Max won't be here. No, we wait for him. You see, this isn't Max's house. Oh? It belongs to his boss. Oh, it's nice to know Max isn't among the unemployed. Simon, you better be very concerned. Oh, we can. I mean, I well, remember what happened to the monkey. Nobody could confuse me with a monkey. I, I did. Good evening. Mr. Hurst. Ah, oh, Lola. May we come in? Of course. Come into the parlor, naturally. It's where the villain always leads the fair heroine and handsome hero. Uh, Lola, I require an introduction. Mr. Hayes, this is Simon Templer. Simon, Mr. Hayes. How do you do? Delighted. Uh, the parlor. Make yourself comfortable. I'm doing my best to sound like a fighter. Shall I try to look like a fly? It wouldn't work. Hmm, rather an odd combination. Lola and the saint. Both for the saint? Well, you mustn't take the name literally. And for Lola. Hey, I try to get the monkey. And uh, Roland Danger's autograph at the same time? No. Simon has him. I'm deeply fascinated. But you must know all about that. How? Well, Max must have told you. We'll bypass that for the moment. Max must have told you to kill the monkey. He told me nothing of the sort. Well, the monkey's dead. So, Max... Max, I have just been informed that you assassinated Wenceslaus. Huh? Ah, killed him. Who said so? That for the moment is irrelevant. Did you or did you not kill the monkey? You think I'm nuts or something when I kiss the only one who knows where to stone? Shut up. Huh? You stupid idiot. 
In the name of the American truck driver, I resent that. I beg your pardon. The American truck driver is courteous, considerate, and always helpful to the motorist in time of trouble. Uh, with Max, please? Don't pay no attention to him, Mr. Hank. I did knock off that chip. Lola? Of course he did. Simon and I were both there when he did the it. The room was dark at the time, Lola. But you... Max may have shot the monkey by mistake. Or he may not have shot the monkey at all. Then who did? There were only three people in the room. You, Max, and myself. But you wouldn't have shot the monkey, Simon. It kept by accident. Yeah, that's right. I didn't fire a gun at all. Well, me neither. When I lights went out, I went away fast. This is beginning to look like... Like a job on me. On the other hand, Lola, you did go after the monkey. Alone. You tried to get into Mr. Temple alone. Is it possible you wanted the monkey dead because he'd already shown you up? Uh, Mr. Templer, you're not one of us. Well, I haven't been blackballed yet. You may consider yourself blackballed. And please. I don't think so. Uh, Max? No, Max. I still have the gun. The one I didn't fire back at my apartment, remember? Mr. Hurst. Exactly. What is your interest, Templer? The stone. What? The ones Max mentioned a few minutes ago. I might want to, uh, play on your team. Mm, need you be so wholesome about it? There were three people involved. You, Lola, Max. Obviously, either Lola or Max have disqualified themselves. Uh, I'll take his or her share. But, my dear fellow, if Lola has anticipated this, there'll be nothing to say. But if she hasn't, mm-hmm. there's still no reason to include you. Because, you see, the monkey is dead. Preble also is dead. A remark of the utmost irrelevance. Not precisely. You see, Preble had to die because he was an honest man. Preble was an idiot. Matt, uh, how did you know Preble was dead? I heard it on the radio. And you, Mr. Hayes? The same, of course. What did the bulletin say? Mm, nothing beyond the fact that Preble was shot to death. I see. Let's go back a bit. You must have hired the monkey from Preble, but of course you'd have told him it was for a joke. Preble believed you at first, but when he stopped believing you, when he realized what you'd used the monkey for, you had to kill him. When he realized what, Mr. Templer? Max has mentioned stone in English jewels. Obviously, all three of your thieves, jewel thieves, then. But obsessed with a monkey? Why? We're fond of monkeys. That's a pretty sentiment, but untrue. You must have used the monkey to get his jewels that were inaccessible to any human being. But something went wrong. Hey, Mr. Hayes. Shut up. What went wrong, Mr. Templer? The monkey got the jewels. But he must have avoided you and disposed of them someplace. But where? That's your problem, isn't it? What the monkey did with the jewels. But the monkey is dead now. He'll never show you. Mr. Hurt, he's too smart. Perhaps. Uh, your suggestion, Lola, is... I uh, think you ought to get rid of him. Oh, no, you've wounded me to the quick. Aren't you forgetting, my dear, that he has a gun which he's pointing at us? That's my gun. It's not loaded. You could be lying, Lola. I don't want to find out the hard way. All right, Simon. Shoot me. Oh, no, thanks. I never shoot beautiful women. Uh, an interesting dilemma. Go ahead, Mr. Tuck. What do you for? Shoot, Lola. No, I have a better idea. Let's find the two. How? Now, we'll borrow a monkey from a pet shop. We'll put that monkey in the same circumstances once his life is in, and maybe he'll do the same thing. Mm-hmm. An idea, yes. I don't trust him. You don't? Then that perhaps is a very good reason for accepting the suggestion. Mr. Templer, oh. shall we go borrow a monkey? <laughs> But once this life was prettier. Mm, this one looks more fish. Mm. Oh, I don't imagine that matters. Does it, Lola? I don't care. What do you think, Max? To me, a monkey's a monkey. Max, the realist. Well, shall we try Lola's place first? A splendid idea. My favorite is a good deal of time. Mr. Hayes, don't you think... I think nothing. I know a few things. One, we use the monkey to break into a... <laughs> to pick up a few jewels for us. He did so and disappear for a while. He could have been at your place, Lola, or at Maxie. Well, we finally looked at the monkey. The jewels were gone. And perhaps our little substitute will find them. It will be very nice for the, uh, survivors. Well, he's been all over my apartment. Made a mess of it and... Found nothing. Nor did we. Temple, I'm afraid that... That Lola's innocent? Uh, then, uh, uh, suppose we try Maxie's happy little home next. Hmm? Hey, that monkey just knocked over my last bottle of real lemon juice. Lemon juice? Are you fond of vitamins, Max? No. No, I keep it in memoriam of a girl I used to know who raised lemons. <laughs> Only on me, all she ever raised was luck. 
For ten minutes? Right. Goodbye. You're going out with me? To the type of girl who would be persona grata for YWCA? Oh, I won't take you to the YWCA. You see the type of girl your mother would have loved? Well, my mother isn't taking her out, Raleigh, I am. Hmm. Simon, you're treading on a very dangerous path. I refer to the one surrounded by primroses. Like Marie, huh? Yes. I, uh... Oh, my oh, God. Don't say another word. I'll call her back and ask if she's got a friend for you. Mm-hmm. You've been listening to another transcribed adventure of The Saint, the Robin Hood of modern crime. Now here is our star, Vincent Price. Ladies and gentlemen, as responsible parents, you never think of allowing your children to play with poison. And as responsible Americans, it's your duty to protect them from the dangers of the poison we call prejudice. Here in America, racial and religious hatred does exist. Sustained by the political adventurers and plain crackpots who are willing to scrap the democratic way of life to attain their own ends. Prejudice in America is centered in their adult philosophy. But unless we guard ourselves and our families, it can find its way into our own lives. Then the poison would do its work, undermining America's unity, sabotaging our prestige abroad, and wrecking our ideal of individual freedom. In your family life, you can effectively carry on a campaign against prejudice. Our youngsters grow up with a pride in their country. Teach them that part of that pride is our tradition of accepting or rejecting people on their individual work, not on the basis of race or religion or color. Remember, freedom and prejudice can't exist side by side. If you choose freedom, fight prejudice. This is Vincent Price inviting you to join us again next week at the same time for another exciting adventure of the Saints. Good night. Written by Lewis Vitti. In our cast, you heard Maggie Morley as Lola and George Meese as Roland A. Max is played by Sheldon Leonard and the by Theodore Von Ellen. Jack Morrow's is Spiegel, Gary Housen is the monkey. The same, based on characters created by Leslie Carteris, is a James L. Sassier production and is directed by Helen Mack. Vincent Price is soon to be seen co-starring in RKO's production of His Kind of Woman. All you same fans will be glad to know that the same comic books are on sale at all news fans. Your announcer, John Fang. Three times means good times on NBC. Tonight, Tallulah is your MC once again on NBC's hour and a half Sunday extravaganza, The Big Show. Tonight's stars will be Jimmy Durante, Clifton Webb, Charles Boyer, Eddie Arnold, Meredith Wilson, and a host of others. Another Sunday evening favorite, Theater Guild on the Air, presents the dramatic story, Lottie Dundas, starring Dorothy McGuire and Jessica Tandy. So remember, enjoy... Adventures of the Saints, starring Vincent Price. The Saints, based on characters created by Leslie Trotter and known to millions from books, magazines, and motion pictures. The Robin Hood of modern crime, now comes transcribed to radio, starring Hollywood's brilliant and talented actor Vincent Price as... The Saints. Hello? Yes? Joe Collins. Remember me? Joe! Sure I do. How are you, Sam? It's been a long time. Yeah, I know. Hey, your fight's still on for tomorrow night? Yeah. Hey, could you do me a big favor, Hank? Could you come down to the gym right away? Sure, but what is it? I'll tell you when you get here. I need to talk to somebody I can trust. I need you real bad. Well, ah, I'll phone for a cab and be there in 20 minutes. Oh, thank you, Hank. Thanks. Oh, don't thank me, Joe. After all, I've got a bet on you tomorrow night. I've got to protect my investment. You got a bet on me? Call it off. Call it off. What? So long. Yes? Louis, Mr. 
just a template of cabbage here. Uh, come on in, Lily. I'll be with you in a minute. Uh, maybe you should better open the door right away. Well, why didn't you come in, Louie? The door was up. Who is that, Louie? Mr. Templer, look down. Louie, it's a baby. You are so right. But why did you bring him here? I found him here. On your doorstep, Mr. Templer. Louie, don't you look at me that way. Who ain't opened his mouth even, Louie? Well, <laughs> well uh, let's get him inside. Uh, you want to carry him? Maybe you better. Here we go. Oh, he's waking up. <laughs> hey, he is. He's what's your name, old fellow? Oh, he's Donnie. Hey, he's old. Uh, what's your last name, Donnie? Donnie. Donnie, Donnie. Uh, how did you get here, Donnie? Donnie. Well, let me try it, Mr. Temple. I got away with kids. Donnie, tell your Uncle Louie how you got here, huh? Oh, Donnie. A gold mine of information. <laughs> Wait a minute. Maybe the note came down his tongue. I understand the traditional investigation. Oh, God! Oh, no. Just a minute, Danny. Here. Please, please, keep him for a few days. Don't tell anyone. Not even the police. Sounds like trouble, Mr. Templer. Yes, it does. Well, I guess you won't be needing my cab now, huh? Oh, the cab. I forgot. Louis, mm -hmm. how are you as a baby kid? Who, me? Oh, no. Oh, wait a minute, Mr. Temple. I'm a cab driver. You can't drive while you sit. My local's got rules. Hey, hey, I'll be back in an hour, Louis. Well, uh, just to make it a big drop, are you a cab? Hey, 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 what are you... Well... <laughs> it looks kind of funny on your side. Hey, look at the funny man with the hat, Johnny. Isn't that funny? I'll see you later, Louis. <laughs> Well, we do then. Well, I don't remember us doing that. Well, let's go in. Come on, let's go in. Take a blow, kid. I'll be right back. Uh, how's Joe feeling? I want a great escape of our lives. That's great. That's that big chili hasn't got a chance tomorrow night. Don't belong in the same ring with us. Yeah, two against one hardly seems fair. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, here we are, Mr. Templer. Hey, Tip, you know this kid? Sure. How are you, Tim? I'm good, Joe. Have you been? In the pig, the absolute rose colored pig. I've been all right. That's enough, George. Hey, you want to talk now, Joe? Got here as soon as I can. Talk? What about? We got anything to talk to Mr. Temple about, Chip? Thank you. The fact is, well, I'm sorry I called you. It was a, a mistake. It sounded pretty serious, Joe. Yeah? Well, I I guess I I'm worked up for the fight tomorrow night with the show. You get, well, jumpy, it's... It's the same, that does it. Yeah, sure, that's it. We're on edge. You know, there's a sharp sensation. We always get this one right before a fight. What else is the same? Shut up, ma'am. Sorry about it, just saying I'm sorry. If you're sure you don't need me, I guess that's it. Yeah, sure. And look, if you want to make yourself some easy money, Mr. Templer, sock it on a chance to win tomorrow night. We won't even draw a cheap split. I've already got my money down, Mr. Templer. I'm Joe. Ah, oh, that's great. That's the greatest thing of the entire season. Shut up, Ma'am. Thank you. Call off your bet. No. I think you're a pretty good man, Joe. In the ring and out. Morning, Louie. Hi, Mr. Templer. Come over as soon as I got your call. Mm. How are you? I'm not so good. I have your responsibility being a father. Yeah, I'm getting some help, fortunately. I phoned an employment agency and over a nurse. That's a shrewd move, Mr. Yeah. Templer. There's nobody quite has a woman's touch. Like a woman, huh? uh, you know what I mean? Well, it's deep, but I'll figure it out. Come on in and see Donnie. Where is it? In bed. Oh, it's a pretty late hour. You'd be tired too if you said Donnie 15,000 times a day. <laughs> How are you, Donnie, old man, huh? <laughs> Did you like talking this morning? Mm -hmm. What's me? 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 What's your last name? Who brought you here? Where are you from? Huh? Oh, God, oh, God, oh, God. Well, at any rate, he's consistent. <laughs> well, that must be the name. Mr. Templer? Yes. 
Come in. Thank you. I'm Miss Barton, Mr. Campbell. The agency sent me over. Right in here, Miss Barton. Miss Barton, this is my friend Louie. How do you do? And your side, Donnie. Hello, Donnie. <laughs> well, he seems to approve of you, Miss Barton. Uh, he's beautiful, Mr. Campbell. Don't you think so? Louie and I consider him one of the most beautiful babies we've ever seen. Right, Louie? Right. Talk fluently, too, says so Donnie. Come here, Donnie. I've got to have to go out for a while, Miss Barton. Miss Barton. What? Oh, excuse me, Mr. Campbell. I said I'll have to leave for a short while and I'll be back. We can discuss arrangements then. Arrangements? Oh, oh uh, anything will be all right, Mr. Campbell. Uh, anything at all. Well, I'll call if I'm more than an hour. Goodbye. Goodbye, Donnie. Goodbye. Hey, tell your Uncle Louis goodbye, Donnie. Goodbye. Well, it's better than nothing. Where to, Mr. Templer? I want to go see Kid Fischel, Louie. Well, I've got a spike in Collins tonight. Yes. I wasn't at all satisfied yesterday that Joe Collins didn't have something to tell me. Something going on there. Mr. Templer, you've got Donnie. How many mysteries can you handle at one time? Yeah. Sometimes one and one can be added together to get one, Louie. What does that mean? It's behind. Oh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> I thought they come out with a new multiplication table. I ain't even learned the old one yet. <laughs> well... Shall we be off, Mr. Templer? Uh, there is an obvious answer to that, Louis, which I shall spare you. Let us, by all means, be off. Yes? My name is Templer, Simon Templer. Uh, they told me down at the desk this was Chip to sell sweet. It is. Come in. Thank you for that, too, Mr. Templer. Well, it's good folly, Parker. How are you, Sam? How do you do? My name is Alexander. Fitz Alexander. You manage Fitz this time? I look after him. I'm very well, too, eh, thank you? The best, Mr. Alexander. Uh, can I see the kid, Mr. Alexander? Unfortunately, right now, he's cheating. We're on the way in for the fight in an hour. Well, then perhaps I can talk to you about the fight, huh? It would be a pleasure. I can discuss the kid for the hour and never tire. I'm quite fond of it, you see. The perfect young student. Strong, healthy, and he wants the championship, he shall have it. Nothing can stop it. You sound quite confident. I am. If I didn't think he could win, I wouldn't send him into the ring, but I wouldn't get a chance when he's been hurt. I won't have him hurt, you understand? Uh, don't worry, Mr. Alexander, he ain't going to get hurt. Yes. You see, Mr. Templer, I've been become quite emotional over this thing. Usually I'm... I'm not an emotional man. I see. And does uh, Joe Collins know that the kid is not to be hurt? He knows. You telling me that the fight is fixed? Hey, watch your mouth, Tom. I'm not telling you anything, Mr. Templer. But whoever you are, whomever you represent, remember this. The kid wants the championship. And he shall have it. Because I find pleasure in giving the kid what he wants. And if anything, or anyone, stands in my way. No, Mr. Templer. I refuse to be worried by you. The kid will not be hurt. Good day. Mr. Alexander said good day, chum. Thank you for interpreting, thank you. And Mr. Alexander, my money still rides on Joe Collins. In that case, Mr. Templer, I hope you can stand. Good day. So long, chum. Mr. Templer, Mr. Templer, I've been looking for you. Uh, what is it, Louie? I called your house to check if everything was all right, like you told me, and Miss Barton said Sam Chadwick has been calling and wants you to call right away. Mm -hmm. Joe Collins is manager, eh? wonder what he wants. I don't know, but it's supposed to be urgent. Here's the number, and there's a phone book out here for the elevator. Oh, well, thank you, Louie. Hello, Mr. Chadwick? Yeah, yeah, okay. Simon Templer, Mr. Sanders. Oh, Mr. Templer, I, I'm the attorney. Get you on the attorney. Get everybody that Joe knows. Such a chance is good. Gone? Gone where? I don't know. There's 50,000 already in a box office for the fight tonight. He walked out. He can't do it. You mean we can't do this? Oh, we're not. Oh, Have you got any idea where Joe went to? I think he went out to get blind. The guy must be crazy. I'll find him. We're going to have to tell him he had to. Well, I'll do what I can. I'll pay. I'll pay anything. Anything. We need you, buddy. 
Well, I'll do what I can. This is one fight I wouldn't like to miss. This must be about the last bar in town, Mr. Temple. I ain't hit too many bars just tonight. My nephew went into the Navy. Well, if we don't have any luck here, I'm about ready to give up, Louis. Well, come on, let's give it a try. Yeah. You see him? No, I... Yeah. Yeah, I do. Down at the end of the bar. You look sober? I don't know. You wait here, Louis. Yeah. Hello, Joe. Huh? Oh, hello, Frank. What brings you here? Looking for you, Chad. You been drowning or something? No. I started to, but no. I forgot now we're camping, and when you camp, there's a friar that goes with it. I forgot I had that cry. Care to tell me what's wrong, Joe? I'll tell you. Sure. Maybe I should have told you yesterday, but things got very bad after I phoned you. How bad? I can't win this fight tonight, Frank. You can't beat Kid Fitzgerald? I can't try to beat him. He won't let me. I forgot my son. Huh? Who's going with you? Alexander, I guess. He had somebody do it. I knew he was a little crazy, but I didn't think he was that crazy. I guess Marie was in on it, too. Marie? That isn't your wife. Was my wife. She left me right after the kid was born two years ago. She's no good. But if you don't let the cell win tonight, yeah. Night, isn't it? What can I do, Frank? Joe, what's the name of your son? John. Johnny. Come on. Where? What for? I'll explain in the cab, Joe. We've got to get to my place right away. Wait, Joe. Right behind you, Frank. Johnny. Johnny boy, are you here? Johnny. What? That's Miss Barton. Oh, no. Marie. Marie? Johnny's mother, Lou. Marie. Did you hurt back? I don't know. I guess I'm expecting to help you. Go up. Oh, I'm not ready. No. Marie. Marie. Can you hear me? Oh, Lou. I didn't know what to help you. I got Johnny. Let him feel I could be safe. This morning, I took the place of a girl and I heard her name. But... I said they followed. Who did? Alexander? No, I don't know. He got somebody. They took Johnny. I, I tried to stop him, but they... Why did they take him? Do you know? I, I think the train was on the river. Right about me. I know the one. Yeah. Yeah, I know. Just that night.
Stopping their lives cease to be conflict and pain. And when will that be? <laughs> hey, I can add an again. Yeah, but there's a chance of still on the sea anyway. You mind going for it? You mind still on the sea? Hey, uh, is, 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 is it wrong to root Mr. Temple? We're all part of the crowd, Louie, one way or another. Yeah. Oh, something is happening up there. Don't yell like that for nothing. Come on, come on, Joey. Come on, Joey. Do it. You can do it, Joey. Donnie's down here. You can fight now, Joey. Careful of that tire iron, Louie. Oh, sure, sure, sure. I'm telling you. The straight left, Joe. Come on, the straight left in the face, Joey, and cross with the right. No. What am I talking about? I can't even see him. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> you too, Mr. Temple. Yeah, me too, Louie. What do you have, Mr. Temple? That was too short for a round. That was a knockout. Right, Louie. It's a fool. Yeah, yeah, a fool. Oh, keep everything crossed, Mr. Templer. Fingers, toes, eyes, everything. Maybe he didn't get our message, though. Mr. Templer, don't say that. Mm-hmm. Well, see, now it sounds like people coming down the hall out there. But Joey couldn't know one. Would I have too much taken out of him? He couldn't have come back. Oh, 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 we took him, Mr. Templer. We took him. Oh, clear everybody out of here, will you? Yeah, you hurry this everybody out. Come on, give us a chance to get off breath, will you? Everybody out. Come on, come on. Come on, come on. Come on, come on. All out, Jeff. Hey, that was a great fight. I thought it was even better than the one we fought against the baby face. Oh, boy, am I proud of us, Joe. Thanks, Sam. <laughs> well, you can excuse me now. I got some dough to collect. <laughs> Johnny, 
Johnny. Come on now, wake up and say hello to your daddy. No. I'll let him sleep. I'm not very pretty right now. But you should see for sure. Did you clobber them, Sam? Good. He was a very surprised young man. Yeah. How about Alexander? I don't know. I didn't see him after it was over. I was rushed right down here. And I'd better get the police on his tail. He might be able to get away if I don't tell them to. Alexander. No. Did you think you could get away with it? And Joe? Did you think I'd stand by and see you? That gun must be heavy, Mr. Alexander. You'd better put it down. No. The police won't like your negative attitude. What do I say? After what he did to the kid, you think I care any more about him? The kid will be all right. He was just knocked out. Yes, yes. That beautiful, physical machine, bloody, savage. That's how the mistake. Oh. You think the kid can ever feel the same again? Do you think I can ever feel about him as I did? He has the chance. Had it. The poor collar double cross. That's one way of looking at it. Why did you just keep out of it? Why? You put the gun away, Alexander. You haven't a chance. Maybe I haven't. But neither have you, Colin. I warned you not to hurt the kid, but you wouldn't listen. You're a sick man, Mr. Uh, Alexander. Perhaps I am. Perhaps the world is sick and I'm well, but I know what I'm going to do. You first, Colin. You know how the kid felt. Mr. Alexander, I'm afraid you'll have to take care of me first. Stop where you are, Templar. Don't come any closer. I warn you once more, Templar, and then I'm going to... Oh, oh. Lucky I kept his tire on it. Yeah. You know, I think he was doing I don't think there's much doubt about it. A very twisted man, Mr. Alexander. Hey, look. Johnny's away. You got a smile for your old man, Johnny. Oh, Oh, he, he knows who you were. How about that, Sam? Is there some kid? He's another champ, Joe. Now I'll be a champ in something. Not in this racket, but some good. Something's going to take a real pride in. He'll be proud of you, Sam. Part of his money, too. Tell him about it. Just a minute. Hi, Mr. Templer. Well, look who's here. Hi, Johnny. He's sitting here. Can't let me take him out for a walk. Hey, you know what, Mr. Templer? I've been teaching him all sorts of words. Honestly, Larry? Mm-hmm. That's smart as shit there is. Watch your thumbs Watch. Johnny? What's my name? Oh, <laughs> <geez>. <laughs> How about the <this? laughs> you got a smart kid, eh? That's not all. Now, watch this. Johnny? What's Mr. Templer's name? Oh. Mm, something go wrong? No, no, wait. Just a minute. Wait a minute. Johnny. Mr. Templer's name. Oh. All right. Something else. Johnny, where do you live? Johnny, what's your daddy's name? No. Goodbye, Mr. Temple. Goodbye, Lady. Lady, 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 now, here's our star, Vincent Price. Ladies and gentlemen, there are certain things in our daily life that we take for granted. Only when we are deprived of them do we realize what precious commodities they really are. Air may become the most vital thing in the world to the suffocating man, and water to the thirsty man. In the same way, freedom, when it is missed, suddenly becomes life's greatest treasure. In this country, we possess freedom that is part of us. It is our American heritage. This liberty which we so casually accept was created in mercy. It didn't just materialize. And so Americans are justly proud of their heritage, and much of the world around us is fascinated by it. If we are to justify our own pride and the yearnings of those in other countries, we must make this freedom a personal thing. We must take it as it was handed to us and preserve it. Preserve it with conscious effort. That is our job as Americans, as free men.
for freedom is everybody's job. This is Vincent Price inviting you to join us again next week at the same time for another exciting adventure of the century. Good night. Sheldon Leonard played Sam and Bonnie Phillips Joe. Downey was Jerry Hausner and Victor Rodman, Alexander. Frank Gerstle was Frank. The Saints, based on characters created by Leslie Charteris, is a James L. Fassier production and is directed by Helen Mack. Vincent Price is soon to be seen co-starring with Errol Flynn and Michael and Krell in William Marshall's production of Bloodline. All you Saints fans will be glad to know that the Saints comic books are now on all new fans. Your announcer, Don Sam. Three times means good times on NBC. Who's on the big show tonight? Well, listen, Bob Hope, Dean Martin, Jerry Lewis, Rosalind Russell, Frankie Lane, Dorothy McGuire, Louis Armstrong, Meredith Wilson, and glamorous, unpredictable Toluca. No wonder it's the big show. And Sunday evening also means another outstanding production by Theater Guild on the air. Tonight, it's Boomerang, starring Kirk Douglas. Remember, Bob Hope and Martin Lewis joined the big show today on NBC. Adventures of the Saints, starring Vincent Price. The Saints, based on characters created by Leslie Trotter and known to millions from books, magazines, and motion pictures. The Robin Hood of modern crime now comes transcribed to radio, starring Hollywood's brilliant and talented actor Vincent Price as The Saints. Hello? Templar? Yes? Joe Collins. Remember me? Joe! Sure I do. How are you, Tab? It's been a long time. Yeah, I know. Is your fight still on for tomorrow night? Yeah. Hey, could you do me a big favor, Saint? Could you come down to the gym right away? Sure, but what is it? I'll tell you when you get here. I need to talk to somebody I can trust. I need you real bad. Ah, I'll phone for a cab and be there in 20 minutes. Oh, thank you. Oh, don't thank me, Joe. After all, I've got a bet on you tomorrow night. I've got to protect my investment. You got a bet on me? Call it off, Frank. Call it off. What? Call off. Yes? Louie, Mr. Templer, your cab is here. Oh, come on in, Louie. I'll be with you in a minute. Uh, maybe you should better open the door right away. Well, why didn't you come in, Louis? The door was open. A... Asleep. Oh. Who's asleep? Mr. Templer, look down. Louis, it's a baby. You are so right. But why did you bring him here? I found him here. On your doorstep, Mr. Templer. Louis, don't you look at me that way. Who ain't opened his mouth even, Louis? Well, <laughs> well, uh, let's get him inside. Uh, you want to carry him? Maybe you better. All right. Up we go. Oh, he's waking up. Hey, you. He is. What's your name, old fella? Oh, Donnie. Thanks. He's gone. Uh, what's your last name, Donnie? Hey, Donnie. Donnie, Donnie. Uh, how did you get here, Donnie? Donnie. Here, let me try it, Mr. Temple. I got away with you. Donnie, tell your Uncle Louie how you got here, huh? Oh, hey, Donnie. A gold mine of information. <laughs> Wait a minute. There's a note pinned on his tongue. I understand it's traditional in such cases. Oh, Donnie! Oh, just a minute, Donnie. Here. <laughs> please, please, keep him for a few days and don't tell anyone. Not even the police. Sounds like trouble, Mr. Templer. Yes, it does. Well, I guess you won't be needing my cab now, huh? Oh, hey, the cab. I forgot. Louis, mm -hmm. uh, how are you as a babysitter? Huh? Who, me? Oh, no. Oh, wait a minute, Mr. Temple. I'm a cab driver. You can't drive while you sit. My local's got rules. Hey, I'll be back in an hour, Louis. Well, uh, just to make it official, I'll borrow your cab. Hey, 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 what are you... Well, 
<laughs> it looks kind of funny on your back. Hey, look at the funny man with the hat, Donnie. Eh? Isn't that funny? No. I'll see you later, Louis. <laughs> Use them a little, little more left and get your shoulder in the way. Excuse me, but uh, where could I find Joe Collins? Hold it a minute there, kid. Hold it. The chip? Yeah. He's right there, my friend, on the table. We get the rub down. We? Yeah, Chadwick. The name's Sam Chadwick. I'm the chef manager. Oh, I'm Simon Templer. Joe said he wanted to see me. Oh, well, we did, eh? Well, I don't remember us doing that. Well, let's go in. Come on, let's go in. Take a blow, kid. I'll be right back. Uh, how's Joe feeling? Oh, we're in the greatest shape of our lives. That great ass, that big chili hasn't got a chance tomorrow night. Don't belong in the same ring with us. Yeah, two against one hardly seems fair. Two against huh? Oh, yeah. That's it. Well, here we are, Mr. Templer. Hey, Chip, you know this, Chip? Come on. How are you, Saint? I'm good, Joe. How have you been? In a pig, the absolute rose-colored pig. I've been all right. That's enough, George. Thanks. Hey, you want to talk now, Joe? Got here as soon as I could. Talk? What about? We got anything to talk to Mr. Templer about, Chip? Thank you. The fact is, well, I'm sorry I called you. It was a, a mistake. It sounded pretty serious, Joe. Well, I I guess I, I'm worked up for the fight tomorrow night with the show. You get, well, jumpy. It's the thing that does it. Yeah, sure, that's it. We're on edge. You know, there's a sharp condition. We always get this way right before a fight. What else is the thing? Shut up, Sam. Was... Sorry about it, you think. I'm sorry. And if you're sure you don't need me, I guess that's it. Yeah, sure. And look, if you want to make yourself some easy money, Mr. Templer, sock it on the champ to win tomorrow night. We won't even draw a cheap breath. I've already got my money down, Mr. Chadwick. I'm Joe. Ah, oh, that's great. That's the greatest thing of the entire Shut up, Sam. Thank you. Call off your bet. No. I think you're a pretty good man, Joe. In the ring and out. <laughs> Morning, Larry. Hi, Mr. Templer. Come over as soon as I got your call. Hmm. How are you? I'm not so good. I have your responsibility being a father. Yeah, I'm getting some help, fortunately. I phoned an employment agency to send over a nurse. That's a shrewd move, Mr. Yeah. Templer. There's nobody quite has a woman's touch like a woman has. Uh, you know what I mean? Well, it's deep, but I'll figure it out. Come on in and see Donnie. Where is he? In bed. Oh, it's pretty late hours. You'd be tired, too, if you said Donnie 15,000 times a day. <laughs> How are you, Donnie, old man, huh? Yes. <laughs> Would you like talking this morning? Mm-hmm. Watch me. Watch me get some information out of him, Mr. Temple. You just got to be fine. Well, I wish you luck, Larry. Donnie, what's your last name? Who brought you here? Where are you from? Huh? Donnie, Donnie, Donnie. Well, at any rate, he's consistent. <laughs> Oh, that must be the nurse. Mr. Templer? Yes, come in. Thank you. I'm Miss Barton, Mr. Templer. The agency sent me over. Right in here, Miss Barton. Miss Barton, this is my friend Louie. How do you do? And your charge, Donnie. Hello, Donnie. <laughs> well, he seems to approve of you, Miss Barton. Ah, uh, He's beautiful, Mr. Templer, don't you think so? Louie and I consider him one of the most beautiful babies we have ever seen. Right, Louie? Right. Talks fluently, too, says Donnie. Come here, darling. I'm going to have to go out for a while, Miss Barton. Miss Barton. What? Oh, excuse me, Mr. Templer. I said I'll have to leave for a short while, and I'll be back. We can discuss arrangements then. Hmm? Arrangements? Oh, oh uh, anything will be all right, Mr. Templer. Uh, anything at all. Well, I'll call if I'm more than an hour. Goodbye. Bye, Donnie. Hey, tell your Uncle Louis goodbye, Donnie. Well, better than nothing. Uh, where to, Mr. Templer? I want to go see Kid Fischel, Louie. Well, the guy that's fighting Collins tonight. Yes, I wasn't at all satisfied yesterday that Joe Collins didn't have something to tell me. Something going on there. Mr. Templer, you got Donnie. How many mysteries can you handle at one time? Sometimes one and one can be added together to get one, Louis. What does that mean? Just a hunch, thank you. Oh, <laughs> I thought they came out with a new multiplication table. I ain't even learned the old one yet. <laughs> well, shall we be off, Mr. Templer? Uh, there is an obvious answer to that, Louis, which I shall spare you. Let us, by all means, be off. <laughs>
Yes? My name is Temper, Simon Temper. Uh, they told me down at the desk this was Kip Patel's suite. It is. Come here. Thank you for that school, Mr. Temple. Well, the kids follow his partner. How are you, Sean? How do you do? My name is Alexander. Fritz Alexander. You manage kids, Mr. Sean? I look after him. And very well, too, eh, Frankie? The best, Mr. Alexander. Uh, can I see the kid, Mr. Alexander? Unfortunately, right now, he's speaking. Go down the way in for the fight in an hour. Well, then perhaps I can talk to you about the fight, huh? It would be a pleasure. I can discuss the kid for the hour and never tire. I'm quite fond of it, you see. The perfect young machine, strong, healthy, and he wants the championship, he shall have it. Nothing can stop him. You sound quite confident. I am. If I didn't think he could win, I wouldn't send him into the ring stuff. I wouldn't take a chance for machine hurt. I won't have him hurt, you understand? Uh, don't worry, Mr. Alexander, he ain't going to get hurt. Yes. You see, Mr. Templer, I can become quite emotional over this thing. Usually, I'm, I'm not an emotional man. Okay. And does uh, Joe Collins know that the kid is not to be hurt? He knows. You're telling me that the fight is fixed? Hey, watch your mouth, Tom. I'm not telling you anything, Mr. Templer. But whoever you are, whomever you represent, remember me. The kid wants the championship. And he shall have it. Because I find pleasure in giving the kid what he wants. And if anything, or anyone, Stands in my way. No, Mr. Templer. <laughs> I refuse to be worried by you. The kid will not be hurt. Good day. Mr. Alexander said good day, chum. Well, thank you for interpreting, thank you. And Mr. Alexander, my money still rides on Joe Collins. In that case, Mr. Templer, I hope you can stand. Good day. So long, chum. Mr. Templer! Mr. Templer! Been looking for you. Oh, what is it, Louie? I called your house to check if everything was all right, like you told me, and Miss Barton said Sam Chadwick has been calling, wants you to call right away. Hey, that's Joe Collins' manager, Louie. Wonder what he wants. I don't know, but it's supposed to be urgent. Here's the number, and there's your phone booth out here for the elevator. Oh, well, thank you, Louie. Hello, Mr. Chadwick? Yeah, yeah, who's this? Uh, Simon Templer, Mr. Chadwick. Oh, Mr. Templer, hey, I've been trying to get you. I've been trying to get everybody that Joe knows. The champ is gone. Gone? Gone where? I don't know. There's 50,000 already in the box office for the fight tonight. He walks out. He can't do this. You mean we can't do this? Go in on it, too. Give it. Have you got any idea where Joe went to? I think he went out to get blind. The guy must be crazy. I'll find him, will you, Mr. Templer? He has got to. Well, I'll do what I can. I'll pay. I'll pay anything. Anything. The fight has to go on. Well, I'll do what I can. This is one fight I wouldn't like to miss. This must be about the last bar in town, Mr. Temple. I ain't hit too many bars since tonight my nephew went into the Navy. Well, if we don't have any luck here, I'm about ready to give up, Louie. Yeah, come on, let's give it a try. Yeah. You see him? No, I... Yeah, yeah, I do. Down at the end of the bar. You look sober? I don't know. You wait here, Louis. Yeah. Hello, Joe. Huh? Oh, hello, Tank. What brings you here? Looking for you, Tank. You been drowning in trouble? No, I started to, but no. I'd forgotten I was champion, and when you're champ... There's a pride that goes with it. I forgot my head that pride. Care to tell me what's wrong, Joe? I'll tell you. Sure. Maybe I should have told you yesterday, but things got very bad after I phoned you. How bad? I can't win this fight tonight, Frank. You can't beat Kid Fischel? I can't try to beat him. He won't let me. He got my son. Huh? Who's that again? Alexander, I guess. He had somebody do it. I knew he was a little crazy, but I didn't think he was that crazy. I guess Marie was in on it, too. Marie? That isn't your wife. Was my wife. She left me right after the kid was born two years ago. She's no good. If you don't let the cell win tonight, uh, tonight, isn't it? What can I do, Saint? Joe, what's the name of your son? Don. Donnie. Come on. Where? What for? I'll explain in the cab, Joe. 
We've got to get to my place right away. This way, Joe. Right behind you, thank Johnny. Johnny boy, are you here? Johnny! Wait a minute. What? Time back to count. That's Miss Foster. Oh, no. Marie. Marie? Yeah. Johnny's mother lives. Joe's wife. Marie. Marie. She hurt bad? I don't know. I... Here. Uh, let me help you, Joe. I... Oh, I'm afraid. No. Marie. Marie, can you hear me? <laughs> Slowly, I, I didn't know what they were doing. I got down and let them feel I could be safe. Yes. This morning, I took the place of the girl and went over as a nurse. But I said they followed me. Who did? Alexander? No, no, not him. He can't somebody. They took down I, I, I tried to stop them, but they... Why did they take him? Do you know? I, I think the train is on the river. I don't know. I know the one. George. Yes, Marie. <laughs> Isn't Donnie the most beautiful boy you ever saw? Marie. I know. What all mother's papers in his hands. He is, Marie. And George, when you get old enough, will you just tell him, tell him that his mother loved him very much? Oh, not all right. Just that, Marie. Oh, Marie. Marie. There we go. There's a light for Donnie. Now we've got to find him. I'll find him. And if they've done anything, and no. If you do find him, they might. Well, but I'll go after him. I'll go along with him. I don't like the gun suspicion. Thank you, Louis. You better go down to the arena, Joe. And we'll let you know as soon as we can. All right. It wouldn't be much use in finding Donnie. I'd probably put him in more danger. Joe, do you want me to... No. No, I'll look after Marie. She was my wife. <laughs> All right, Mr. Temple. Want to look through that window when the light is? All right, Louie. Come on. All right, wait now. Damn right. I'm going to take a look. This is it. Down is in there, and that pug's mighty that I met with Alexander. You think we can take him? I think so. He's listening to the radio. Come on, see if we can get him back. You say so, Mr. Pimpot. You got that tire iron, Lou? Not only have I got it, I love it like a brother. Good. This <laughs> kitchen door. Is it open? Yeah, we're in luck. Come on in, Lou. We're watching the introduction of various celebrities by the ring announcer before the Collins Fishell title goes. That's the box name. Clever young welterweight from Syracuse has just been introduced from the ring to tonight's hand. And now, there goes... Uh, I spar with a guy two months and the night is to win the title, I'm playing this big. <laughs> what are you laughing about? Oh, All right, shut up. Please, don't get back to I'm going to get him out of the way. I don't want to do this. Here, Mr. Gumpler, I'll take it from there. Here we go. Hi, Frankie. Uh, what? Who's that? You've got company. Who's in there? Little boy, Blue. Wise guy, yeah, uh, yes. Yeah. Well, you'll end up so full of holes that you'll look like that. Ah, bullseye, Louis. That was for Marie, Mr. Templer. Well, yeah, she keep him quiet until the police get here. Maybe I should give him another one for myself. Yeah, I know how you feel, Louis, but no. Let's get down here and get out of here, huh? Sure, Mr. Templer. How are you, Donnie? Glad to see you, sir. Say hi to your Uncle Louis, Donnie. Hello, oh, Donnie. Can't you say hi? Hi. Hi. Hey, hey, hey. Look at my new word. How about that, Mr. Templer? Now I can say two words. Hey, gee, I'm away with you, Louis. Sure. Yeah. Now, what do you say to Uncle Louis, Donnie? Oh, hi, that's it. And what's your name, Donnie? Oh, hi. You used to have given up while you were ahead. Come on. Oh.
Nobody allowed in. Fight's not over, is it? Uh, not yet. Six round, but Collins is taking an awful patient. I was just up there. Look, kid, get this straight. There isn't much time. Go up to Joe Collins' corner. Tell him Simon Templer has Johnny here safe. Have you got that? Sure, but I can't go up there and yeah, tell look, him. Yeah, look, is this the way, Yes, sir, Mr. Templer. Thank you. I'll, I'll tell him right away. Well, let's go in and sit down, Louis. Johnny's about all in. Yeah, look at him. He can't keep his eyes open. Why couldn't we go right up to Joe's corner ourselves, Mr. Templer? Couldn't we with Johnny? I couldn't tell what Alexander might do. Oh, yeah, sure. Oh, poor Joe. You think we've got here in time? I don't know, Louis. I don't know. I must be taking up the union. can't fight back. Yeah, but he can now. He's got nothing left to fight with. It's quiet up there now. It's the end of a round. Yeah, that crowd noise. I, I, I never heard it from down here. You know, it's scarce. Yes, it's good, Louis. The voice of the mob howling for blood. Same voice that howled in the Colosseum in Rome 2,000 years ago. For whose blood the chance to fulfill? Mob doesn't care, Larry. Just blood. Yeah. Yes. What makes people go to these things, Mr. Temple? Will they ever stop? Yeah, they, they go because this is an allegory of their own lives, Larry. Right? They'll stop when their lives cease to be conflict and pain. And when will that be? Hmm. Good question. I can ride him up again. Yeah, but there's a chance of still on the sea, you know. Come on, Joey, boy. Come on, come on. Mm-hmm. Hey, uh, is, 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 is it wrong to root, Mr. Templeton? Mm-hmm. We're all part of the crowd, Louie, one way or another. Yeah. Oh, something is happening up there. Don't yell like that for nothing. Come on, come on, Joey. Come on, Joey. Do it. You can do it, Joey. Donnie's down here. You can fight now, Joey. Careful of that tire iron, Louie. Oh, sure, sure, I'm telling you. Come on. The straight left, sir. Come on, the straight left in the face, Joey, and cross the light. Oh, what am I talking about? I can't even see him. Come on. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you too, Mr. Temple. Yeah, me too, Louis. Yeah. That's what happened, Mr. Temple. That was too short for a round. That was a knockout. That's right, Louis, but who? Yeah, yeah, who? Oh, keep everything crossed, Mr. Templer. Fingers, toes, eyes, everything. Maybe he didn't get our message, Joe. Mr. Templer, don't say that. Well, you see, now it sounds like people coming down the hall outside. Yeah, but Joe, he couldn't no oh, one. Boy, when I had too much taken out of him, he couldn't have come back. Oh, Joe! Oh, oh, hey, we took him, Mr. Templer! We took him! Oh, clear everybody out of here, will you? Yeah, you hide us, everybody out. Come on, give us a chance to get off breath, will you? Everybody, come on, come on, come on. Come on, will you, fellas? Come on, come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. All out, Jeff. Hey, that was a great fight. I thought it was even better than the one we fought against Babyface. Oh, boy, am I proud of us, Joe. Thanks, Sam. <laughs> well, you can excuse me now. I got some dough to collect. <laughs> Johnny. Johnny. Come on, now, wake up and say hello to your daddy. No. I'll let him sleep, Sam. I'm not very pretty right now. But you should see the show. Did you clobber them, Sam? Good. He was a very surprised young man. Yeah. How about Alexander? I don't know. I didn't see him after it was over. I was rushed right down here. And I'd better get the police on his tail. He might be able to get away if I don't tell them to. Alexander. Joe. Did you think you could get away with it? And Joe? Did you think I'd stand by and see you? That gun must be heavy, Mr. Alexander. You'd better put it down. No. The police won't like your negative attitude. What do I say? After what he did to the kid, you think I care any more about any? The kid will be all right. He was just knocked out. Just, just. That beautiful, physical machine, blooded, battered, stretched out in the dirt. Oh. You think the kid can ever feel the same again? Do you think I can ever feel about him as I did? He has the championship. Has it? The poor Collins double-crossed him. That's one way of looking at it. Why didn't you keep out, Mr. Templer? Why? Put the gun away, Alexander. You haven't a chance. Maybe I haven't. But neither have you, Collins. I warned you not to hurt the kid, but you wouldn't listen. You're a sick man, Mr. Uh, Alexander. Perhaps I am. Perhaps the world is sick and I'm well, but I know what I'm going to do. You first, Colin. You know how the kid felt. Mr. Alexander, I'm afraid you'll have to take care of me first. Stop where you are, Templar. Don't come any closer. 
I'll warn you once more, Templar, and then I'm going to... Right, Louis. Oh! Oh! Lucky I kept this tire out of here. You know, I think he was serious. I don't think there's much doubt about it. A very twisted man, Mr. Alexander. Hey, look, Donnie's away. You got a smile for your old man, Donnie. Oh, Donnie. Hi. Hey, he knows a new word. How about that thing? Is that some kid? He's another champ, Joe. Oh, it'll be a champ in something. Not in this racket, but something good. Something you can take a real pride in. To be proud of you, Joe. To be proud of his mother, too. I could have told him about it. Just a minute. Hi, Mr. Templer. Well, look who's here. Hi, Donnie. Sit here. Camp, let me take him out for a walk. Hey, you know what, Mr. Templer? I've been teaching him all sorts of words. Honestly, Louie? Mm hmm. The smartest kid there is. Watch this, Mr. Templer. Watch. Donnie? What's my name? Oh. <laughs> hey, how about that? You <laughs> have a smart kid, huh? That's not all. Now, watch this. Donnie? What's Mr. Templer's name? Oh. Mm, something go wrong? No, no, wait, just a minute. Wait a minute. Donnie, Mr. Templer's name. Oh. All right, something else. Donnie, where do you live? Oh. Donnie, what's your daddy's name? Oh. No. Oh. Don- <laughs> Goodbye, Mr. Templer. Goodbye, Louis. Louis, 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 Louis. <laughs> You have been listening to another transcribed adventure of The Saint, the Robin Hood of modern crime. Now here's our star, Vincent Price. Ladies and gentlemen, there are certain things in our daily life which we take for granted. Only when we are deprived of them do we realize what precious commodities they really are. Air may become the most vital thing in the world to the suffocating man, and water to the thirsty one. In the same way, freedom, when it is missed, suddenly becomes life's greatest treasure. In this country, we possess freedom. It is part of us. It is our American heritage. This liberty which we so casually accept was created and nurtured. It didn't just materialize. And so Americans are justly proud of their heritage, and much of the world around us is fascinated by it. If we are to justify our own pride and the yearnings of those in other countries, We must make this freedom a personal thing. We must take it as it was handed to us and preserve it. Preserve it with conscious effort. That is our job as Americans, as free men. For freedom is everybody's job. This is Vincent Price inviting you to join us again next week at the same time for another exciting adventure of the Saints. Good night. Adventure of the Saint was written by Dick Powell. In our cast, we heard Larry Dobson as Louie and Mary Schiff as Marie. Sheldon Leonard played Sam and Bonnie Phillips Joe. Downey was Jerry Hausner and Victor Rodman Alexander. Frank Driscoll was Frankie. The Saint, based on characters created by Leslie Charteris, is a James L. Safier production and is directed by Helen Mack. Vincent Price is soon to be seen co starring with Errol Flynn and Michael and Prell in William Marshall's production of Bloodline. All you Saint fans will be glad to know that the Saint comic books are now on all new Saint. Your announcer, Don Sam. Three times mean good times on NBC. Who's on the big show tonight? Well, listen, Bob Hope, Dean Martin, Jerry Lewis, Rosalind Russell, Frankie Lane, Dorothy McGuire, Louis Armstrong, Maris Wilson, and glamorous, unpredictable Tallulah. No wonder it's the big show. And Sunday evening also means another outstanding production by Theater Guild on the air. Tonight, it's Boomerang, starring Chuck Douglas. Remember, Bob Hope and Martin and Lewis join the big show... Adventures of the Saints.
starring Vincent Price. The Saint, based on characters created by Leslie Trotter and known to millions from books, magazines, and motion pictures. The Robin Hood of modern crime now comes transcribed to radio, starring Hollywood's brilliant and talented actor Vincent Price as... The Saint. Come in. Hi, Mr. Temple. Oh, hello, Louie. Where are you? I'm in my room. I'll be ready oh. in a minute. Hey, wait till you see my cat. I gave it a bat for Christmas. Well, congratulations. <laughs> Look, I don't want to rush you, but if you don't hurry, Christmas Eve is going to be already Christmas morning. And what will all them tots think? Ah, oh, them tots will be singularly fortunate. However, all I have to do now is get my whiskers on. Huh? There. How do I look? Mr. Templer, if I didn't know you was Mr. Templer, yeah. I wouldn't know who you were. Hmm. Louis, don't I look like Santa Claus? This may come as a surprise to you, Mr. Templer. Santa Claus is fat. Oh. You're not fat. Oh. Well, hand me that cushion from the couch, huh? Okay. Here. Yeah, thank you. Now then. Uh-huh. I'll back. Now say ho, ho, ho. What for? Santa Claus is always say ho, ho, ho. Oh, I see. Uh, uh, ho, ho, ho. Well, anyway, you look like Santa Claus. Hey, Mr. Templer, whose idea was this? Uh, Mrs. Winterbottom. Oh, the dame who annoys tots on Christmas Eve. Mrs. Uh, Winterbottom is a very well-known philanthropist. And every Christmas Eve, she collects hundreds of small children and feeds them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who feeds them the rest of the year? Don't be bitter, Lily. Uh, at least I ought to give the little tots a, a laugh. Yeah, yeah. And I suppose there is something to be said for Mrs. Winterbottom. Well, don't say it now. Don't worry. There's something to be said for Santa Claus, too. He does go around killing stockings. Yeah, hey, I know a blonde. Shouldn't say that either, huh? No. Hmm. Someone at the door. Louis, would you mind? No. Uh, probably one of them tots. Correction. The tot 20 years later. Get in. Yeah, I'm already in. Back up. I'm backing up. Okay. Now, Reese, Jen. You know, that gun in her hand looks loaded now that you mentioned Reach. it. But what? Uh, the chandelier. Oh. Why not? No chandelier. Oh, a wise guy, huh? If you're going to shoot me, I insist on knowing your name. Uh, uh, just call me Sally. Sally. And uh, your last name? Never mind that. How would you like to get plugged in the... In the... Bread basket? Where? Oh, let's pass lightly over that. I wouldn't like to get plugged anywhere. Then shut up. All right. Where is it? Uh, right down the hall. Are you it? trying to be smart? So it's going to be like that, huh? Like what? Now, you listen to me, Pat Boylan. Huh? You shut up, too. I didn't say anything. Well, shut up anyway. I'm shutting up. Uh, uh, what was I saying? You just finished calling me Fat Boylan. That, that's right. That's wrong. I'm not Fat Boylan. Ha. Huh. Well, it helps keep the conversation Look, going. Look, Fat, are you going to stop stalling and hand over the stuff, or will I have to shoot? Well, since I am not Fat Boylan, and since I have no stuff to hand over, I'm afraid you have to shoot, Mr. Templer. That could be fatal. You keep quiet, punk. Who's a punk? You're a punk. Mr. Templer, am I a punk? Well, Sally is just a little confused this evening. Confused Lewis. or not, you shouldn't call oh, me a punk. shut up. Oh. You know, you don't have to start falling. I am not falling. I, I am. You were just about to shoot me. Well, I know, but then you bleed. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I can't stand the sight of blood. Why don't you strangle him? Louie, don't be unkind. Seems to be the doorbell again. No way. Very impolite to keep people waiting. But I, I must have been followed here. Sally, look, stop illustrating a point with that gun. It might go off. I don't care. But then I bleed. But where can I go? I've got to hide. Well, try the kitchen. Oh. Well, come on in. It's open house tonight. Well, well, my old pal, Fat I am not. Boiler. Although I'm beginning to waver. Perhaps I am. <laughs> Simon, the split personality. Who are you? Well, Joe Hudson. You remember your old pal, Hudson. Hudson. Mm. Well, I must admit you look like a hornet, but your lines aren't as nice. Look, if I'm your old pal, why don't I know you? Oh, that's easy. We never met personally. Well, how else can you meet? Ignore that. But if we haven't met personally or otherwise, how can I be your pal? Oh, I, I was just being friendly. <laughs> Besides, hey, you got something for me. I have? Uh, oh, great little kidder, ain't you, fat? <laughs> hey, pal. Now I feel better. I'm a pal, too. Look, I wish I deserved your delighted talk. Oh, look, just leave me have a stuff, and then I'll get up again. What stuff? 
Am I going to have trouble with you? Well, if the door behind you is open, why don't you use it? Huh? In that way, nobody will have any trouble. I'll use it. I'll use it after. After what? Just like that, huh? Ever see one of these before? I'm afraid I'm going to disappoint you, but the answer is yes, I have. Good, good. And you know how it works. It shoots bullets at guys. Guys who get bullets shot at them have a habit of dying. Really? Well, then perhaps you better not shoot that gun at me. I won't. So, Jimmy. So, I ain't got. Well, that is I. That is, you ain't got. Especially. Basic, I ain't a patient man. Hand the stuff over, or I... I don't have any stuff. Or you get shot. I believe. Who cares? I do. I hoped you might. However, this could be a stall. This could be trouble, so you... You can't shoot him. Why not? It's against the law. I read it in the papers. It's against the law. Yeah, yeah, I believe you. Oh, so that's okay. Yeah, but I like doing things against the law. Oh. Well, you you, you go to jail. I already been there. Well, for shooting somebody that they'll hang you or something. If somebody told him. Well, I would. You would, huh? Sorry. I would. So maybe I'd better shoot you first. Well, I I wouldn't want to deprive Mr. Temper of the privilege. Well, Fred, your last chance. Oh, not that very. Also, I still don't know. It looks like I'm going to break a law. Hey, who did that? You did your soap. I did not. This here's a plan. But you won't get away with it. Good night, Mr. Hudson. Mr. Templer, who made with the artillery? I'm inside. She's in the kitchen. She can stay there. She saved our lives, Louis. Yeah, but maybe by now she found out she likes to shoot guns. I told her. Uh, hello. It was nice of you to frighten Mr. Hudson off. I did? You did. I, I didn't hit anybody? No. Oh, so good. Hey, hey I, I've got her. She's all cold. <laughs> Come on, I'll put her on the couch. Come on. a little late, but somebody ought to mention she is not a bad-looking bitch. You've mentioned her. Hmm. Looking for smelling salts in her bag? No. Identification. <laughs> Here's a driver's license. Her name is Sally Walters. Address 49 Arden Drive. Yeah. Security card? She's a secretary. That's what I need. Oh, I don't know. Oh, back. coming, too. Better put the bag back. Yeah, but keep the gun, though. There's still some bullets in there. No. We don't want her to know we went through her bag. We're ashamed of ourselves? We're going to pay her a visit. She ain't home. But she will be after she leaves here, and then perhaps we can find out what keeps the uh, home fires burning. <laughs> Sally was in kind of a hurry leaving us. So she was. Mr. Templer, don't look right, Santa Claus chasing a blonde. Uh, I'm not chasing her. Technicalities will get you no place. Hey, this must be it. 49. What is she a secretary of? The treasury? Oh, I suspect this is where she works, Louis. She works overtime, huh? Yeah, and probably sleeps in. Come on. Yeah. I hope that nobody is speaking because they'll think Santa Claus is off schedule. I think perhaps I can manage without the whiskey. Yeah. Ow! Now you look like an imposter. Yeah. Will you ring, Louie? Okay. You know, this is a type house. I got a feeling Santa Claus would have to use the saving center. Uh, <clears throat> yes. I'm Simon Templer. You are? I am. There's nothing I can do about it. Mm, Mr. Templer, all butlers are like him? I doubt it. I think he's been practical. Haw, oh, haw. Oh. Well, good night, then. I think not. Would you mind removing your shoe from the door? I would. You might at least have shined it. Humphrey, whoever is it at the time of No one, madam. Oh, but such an interesting looking no one. It's that because you've lost your whisper. I have not there, right here in my pocket. How nice. Actually, my name is Simon Temple. I'm Carla Wood. This is Louie. Hi. Oh, I, I mean... Hi. Louis. It's time for the present sight. Did you want to see me? Now that I've seen you, uh, yes. Yeah. Well, come in. <laughs> what, madam? Humphrey, go away. Yes, madam. Humphrey's such a problem sometimes. Shall we? Mm. Nice? Mm, yes. Fire in the fireplace. Books on the bookshelf. Port in that decanter. Yes, if you like some. Uh, no, thank you. I just wanted to be sure the accessories were all correct. Someday, maybe I'll find some other wine besides port in the decanter. I agree. Simon, are you the one to find me? 
beginning again. Found what? My jewels, of course. Has it been lost? Simon, they were stolen. You know that, then. Should I? Well, I've heard of the saint, Simon. I didn't know he was also a Santa Oh, it's a sleeping impulse. Uh, when were your jewels stolen? This afternoon. You see, Claude, my husband, that is. Oh. Uh, bought me them for this <laughs> Santa Claude Louis. Sorry. We decided to have the party this afternoon. We thought it'd be nice to have a quiet ease. So we did. The jewels were in quite a large box. There's quite a lot of them. And? Claude hired Santa Claus, but before the party was over, Santa Claus had disappeared. So it's a deal. But it must have been some precaution. Oh, there were several detectives. Oh. But the Santa Claus said he was going out to get some air while the party was on. He never came back. But he didn't have the jewels on him. The box was locked, and it was too large for the detectives not to admit it. I see. The name of the man hired to play Santa Claus was, of course, um, Bad Foot. And who may you be? Claude, this is Simon Simpson. And Louis? I know nothing. Snoop Dobby. Get rid of him. Claude likes to use as though he were an emperor on occasion. The box wasn't found anywhere in the house? The jewel box, sir. The jewels were insured? Naturally. None of your affair. I shall speak severely to Humphrey. He should never let you in. I let him in now. So now he's going to speak severely to her. Uh, we'll go quietly, except, uh, Mr. Worth, what is that boiling the dress? I have no idea. Good night. Good night, Simon. I'm So am I. I'll show you out. Thank you. Whoa, 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 whoa. Pronounced Carla Worth. <sighs> What do we do now, Santa Claus? Eh, we get into your nice, clean cab and... Hey, wait a minute, Louis. <laughs> now we're going to find out what became of Sally. Oh, Simon. Well, good evening, Sally. I overheard. That's the address. It's 17 Beale Street. 17 Beale. Yes, I've got to get right back to the house before anybody notices. Goodbye. An awful short visit. It's been long enough. Now we're going to visit Mr. Boyle? I think so. I hope he ain't so handy with a gun as the rest of his parents. He may be, he may not be. Now I'm all cheered up. Hmm, but there's one thing I'm sure he isn't. What's that? Fat. Quite a change from the waste dump. Now this is a dump. Yeah, and Mr. Boylan would seem to be shy. Mr. Templer, you said something about the one thing he wouldn't be was fat. Why? Because he was called fat? Mm, not exactly. Louis, I'm worried. Mm. Hey. hey, the door was open. Yeah. Maybe that means our boys is flown. Maybe. Come on, let's go in. Okay. I ain't usually so poetical, but uh, the light's on. Yeah. And the room looks funny. Looks like a, a hurricane came to stay for dinner. Hmm, and remains for six months. Somebody was looking for his uh, jewel box, and someone obviously didn't find it. The extent of the search indicates that. Nothing was left untouched. There's a funny smell in this room, you know. A couple of funny smells. Yeah. One's perfume, and the other... Gunpowder. Huh? Gunpowder. That's why I ain't been looking behind any pieces of furniture. It really wasn't very far to look, really. Huh? It's behind the day bed. Fat. Fat. The... He ain't doing so good? He's dead. Uh, and Louis, yeah, he wasn't fat. Mr. Templer? Yes, Louis? We're being followed. Since, since we got out of Boylan's place. Oh, that's interesting. Louis, stop the cab. That'll make it easier for whoever's following us. Exactly what I want. Even on Christmas Eve, this shouldn't happen. Now what? Now uh, we get out. Don't look behind you. Start walking. Yeah. Here is a nice, lonely street. Mm -hmm. Everybody else is home hanging up stockings. I wouldn't mind hanging up stockings myself. I, I, I... Who do you think it is? I think it's our friend Hudson. Oh, I just lost five pounds. You mean the guy that was chasing Sally who was all ready to shoot us until she made the explosion? Me commander. Oh, you think he wants our money or our life? Possibly. What kind of an answer is that? He wants it quickly. Yeah. It's a template. Your alley's full of garbage cans. Oh, so dark. You don't have to see garbage cans. You know they're around. Good evening, Hudson. What? Don't turn around. I've got a gun on you. Hey, I don't like it. Louis, take Mr. Hudson's gun away from him. Okay. 
Somebody squeal. Oh, you have to get away. Okay. After all, like the poet says, strong heart never won fair mate. You mean faint heart. All right, so for dinner I'll eat dog food. Now. Mm -hmm. Another death. Huh? Well. Mr. Templer. Yes. Same to 
never seen me notice. Uh oh, don't be frightened. Simon, what are you doing in here? Louie and I have been testing perfume. In the middle of the night, you're waking. I'm sorry. I'm even sorrier about something else. What's that? The perfume you use is very distinctive, Sally. I suppose to say thanks? No. Because the last place Louie and I noticed it was in Fat Boylan's room. Minutes after he'd been killed. Oh. Not good, Sally. <laughs> You're making all this up, but... No, no, this bottle of perfume will be evident. But I didn't kill Boylan. You must be joking about that. I don't think a jury would find it funny. You knew about Boylan stealing the jewels. You must have helped him. I, I didn't. But then you found yourself being trailed by Hudson, who'd been hired by Mrs. Worth. You were afraid he'd discover the connection between you and Boylan. That's why you came to my apartment. No. Oh, yes. You hoped I'd throw Hudson off for act frightening. In the meanwhile, you could get to Boylan, get the jewels from him. That isn't true. But when you got to Boylan's place, you found him already dead. The jewels gone. I didn't. It would be much better for you that way. Well, what do you mean? You wouldn't be liable to a first-degree murder charge. But there were detectives here while the party was going on. Boylan couldn't have stolen the jewels. They saw him leave. He didn't have them. He did have them. He was playing Fatty Claus. And he was a thin man. Fatty Claus is, as Louie pointed out to me earlier tonight, are fat. Therefore, Boylan entered his house wearing padding underneath his costume. He left it with a large jewel box in place of the padding. That's how he did his sound. You're smart. Hmm. You found Boylan. You knew his address. Therefore, you'd hired him in the first place. And therefore, also, a jury would believe you killed him unless you tell us the case. Oh, all right. I'll tell There's you. There's really no need, my dear. Oh, of course. Hey, Mr. Temple, tell him to point the gun someplace else. Mr. Worth, point that gun someplace else. I prefer this to the... You were saying, Mr. Temple, about the jewels. The jewels were insured. Therefore, you, Mr. Worth, arranged to have them stolen. Indeed. Indeed. In that way, you could retain the jewels, the insurance money as well, and not worry very much whether or not your wife divorced you. Clever. Boylan is dead. How true. You had to see to that, didn't you? Otherwise, he might have blackmailed you for the rest of your life or for whatever money you got out of the entire crooked deal. I can see two other things. Yours, your friend. And Sally? You going to kill her, too? That depends, I should think. Claude, I never knew you intended to, to kill anyone. There's no need to play the arms in a quite as strenuous way, my dear. You were in on most of it. But not murder. Mm. I'm afraid the temporary presence is justified. I still have to include you. But... However, did you get on to it? A perfume. To be precise, this perfume. Well, you got him in the eye. I hope this gets him someplace more effective. <laughs> Mr. Temple, the trail of unconscious bodies you're leaving behind you tonight is late end to end. Yes, Louis. It would look terrible. <laughs> Yes, Carla? You've been very sweet. Even without your whiskey, you've been sort of a, a Santa Claus to me. <laughs> May I? Oh, thank you. Yeah. I never knew Santa Claus to cheat like that. The Santa Claus is no thanks. Mm. Yes? Oh. <laughs> um, uh, hello, Louis. Mr. Templer. You better put on your whiskey. You've forgotten all about Mrs. Winterbottom? Mrs. Winterbottom. Oh, well, the hour is past midnight. The tots have undoubtedly totted off to bed by now. Louis, you may tell Mrs. Winterbottom. No. <laughs> That's a saint. Ain't no Santa Claus. <laughs> been listening to another transcribed adventure of The Saint, the Robin Hood of modern crime. Now, here is our star, Vincent Price. Ladies and gentlemen, all of us who live in the United States are aware of the spiritual values of American life, our factories and machines and luxury. But there is another side to American life, a side made up of spiritual values. Our country was founded upon faith in God. In the Declaration of Independence, it states that men were endowed by their creator with certain inalienable rights. Thus, religious faith is part of the very foundation of American democracy. 
and one of our most precious national heritages is freedom of worship. By exercising this freedom, you and your families can enjoy the spiritual pleasures that come with church or synagogue attendance. Moreover, your religious leaders stand ready to give you their help, whether you need personal or family guidance. And if you suffer the loneliness natural to a newcomer to this country, the churches of your faith will welcome you. We all know that without spiritual values, the other advantages of American life have little meaning. Without faith, the family and the community become unstable. Without faith, the individual denies himself the peace and guidance of religion. The doors of your churches and synagogues are open to you. The freedom to worship as you please is yours. And so America's religious organizations invite you to find yourself through faith and to come to church this week. And may I wish you all a wonderful Christmas. And for the world, peace in all the years to come. This is Vincent Price inviting you to join us again next week at this same time for another exciting adventure of the French. Good night. of the Saints was written by Lewis Biddy. Our cast included Mary Schiff as Sally and Betty Lou Gerson as Carla. I ever back with Hudson, Ted Osborne, Claude. The butler, Stanley Farrar. Louis is played by Larry Dobson. The Saints, based on characters created by Leslie Carteris, is a James L. Fassier production and is directed by Helen Mack. Vincent Price is soon to be seen co-starring in RKO's production of This Kind of Woman. All you Saints fans will be glad to know that the Saints comic books are on sale at all newsstands. Your announcer, Don Stanton. Three times means good times on NBC. For your Christmas Eve listening pleasure, there's another broadcast of NBC's Sunday hour and a half extravaganza, The Big Show. There's a whole Christmas stocking full of stars, including Tallulah, Jimmy Durante, Ed Wynn, Charles Boyer, Robert Merrill, and many more. Tonight also means your weekly visit with the Harris family on the Phil Harris Alice Faye Show. Be sure to hear this special Christmas program later today on NBC. Happy holidays, happy holidays. Mr. Temple, whose idea was this? Uh, Mrs. Winterbottom. 
Oh, the same who annoys Potts on Christmas Eve. Mrs. Winterbottom is a very well-known philanthropist. And every Christmas Eve, she collects hundreds of small children and feeds them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who feeds them the rest of the year? Don't be bitter, Lily. Oh, at least I ought to give a little talk to her. A laugh? Yeah. yeah. And I suppose there is something to be said for Mrs. Winterbottom. You don't say it now. Don't worry. There's something to be said for Santa Claus, too. She does go around killing the stockings. Yeah, hey, I know a blonde... Shouldn't say that either, huh? No. Hmm. Someone at the door. Hey, would you mind? No. Probably one of them is hot. Correction. It's a hot 20 years later. Get in. I'm already in. Back up. I'm backing up. Okay. Now, read, Jen. You know, that gun in her hand looks loaded. Now that you mentioned it. Read. For what? Uh, uh, the chandelier. Oh. Why not? Oh, a wise guy, huh? If you're going to shoot me, I insist on knowing your name. Uh, uh, just call me Sally. Sally. And uh, your last name? Never mind that. How would you like to get plugged in the... in the... Bread basket? Where? Well, let's pass lightly over that. I wouldn't like to get plugged anywhere. Then shut up. All right. Where is it? Uh, right down the hall. Are you it? trying to be smart? So it's going to be like that, huh? Like what? Now, you listen to me, Pat Boylan. Huh? You shut up, too. I didn't say anything. Well, shut up anyway. Shut up. Uh, uh, what was I saying? You just finished calling me Pat Boylan. Uh, that's right. That's wrong. I'm not Pat Boylan. Ha. Huh. Well, it helps keep the conversation Look, Pat, are you going to stop stalling and hand over the stuff, or will I have to shoot? Since I am not Pat Boylan, and since I have no stuff to hand over, I'm afraid you'll have to shoot. It's the simplest. That could be fatal. You keep quiet, punk. Who's a punk? You're a punk. Mr. Temper, am I a punk? Well, Sally is just a little confused. If he's too little. Sure or not, you shouldn't call oh, me a punk. Oh, shut up. Yes. Oh. So you don't have to start falling. I am not falling. I guess I am. You were just about to shoot me. Well, I know, but then you bleed. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I can't stand the sight of blood. Why don't you strangle it? Louis, don't be unkind. It seems to be the doorbell again. No way. Very impolite to keep people waiting. But I, I must have been followed here. Sally, look, stop illustrating a point with that gun. It might go off. I don't care. But can I please? But where can I go? I've got to hide. Well, try to keep it. All right. Well, come on in. It's open house tonight. Well, well, my old pal, fast. I am not. Boiling. Although I'm beginning to waver. Perhaps I am. <laughs> Simon, you flip first now, Dick. Who are you? Joe Hudson. You remember your old pal, Hudson. Hudson. Mm. Well, I must admit you look like a hornet, but your lines aren't as nice. Look, if I'm your old pal, why don't I know you? Oh, that's easy. We never met personally. So how else can you meet? Ignore that. But if we haven't met personally or otherwise, how can I be your pal? Oh, I, I was just being friendly. <laughs> Besides, hey, you've got something for me. I have? Uh, <laughs> oh, great little kidder, ain't you, Fat? <laughs> hey, pal. Now I feel better. I'm a pal, too. Look, I wish I deserved your delighted soon. Oh, look, just me. leave me have a stuff, and then I'll get out again. What stuff? Am I going to have trouble with you? There's the door behind you. It's open. Why don't you use it? Huh? That way, nobody will have any trouble. I'll use it. I'll use it after. After what? Just like that, huh? Ever see one of these before? I'm afraid I'm going to disappoint you, but the answer is yes, I am good. Good. And you know how it works. You shoot bullets at guys. Guys who get bullet shot at them have a habit of dying. Really? Well, then perhaps you better not shoot that gun at me. I won't. So, Jimmy, I ain't got. Well, that is I. That is, you ain't got. <laughs> That's fair. Face it, I ain't a patient man. Hand the stuff over, or I don't have any stuff. Or you get shot. I believe. Who cares? I hope you might. However, this could be a stall. This could be trouble, so you can't do it. Why not? It's against the law. I read it in the face. If it's against the law... Yeah, yeah, I believe you. Oh, well, that's okay. Yeah, but I like doing things against the law. Oh. Well, you, you, you just go to jail. I already been there. Well, for shooting somebody that they'll hang you or something. If somebody told them. Well, I would. You would, man. Uh, I would. So maybe I'd better shoot you first. Well, I, yeah, I wouldn't want to deprive Mr. Kemper of the privilege. Yeah. Well, Pat, your last chance. Oh, not that thing. Also, I still don't know. No, it looks like I'm going to break a law. Hey, who did that? You did this, soap. I did not. This here's a plan. But you won't get away with it. The guy, Mr. Hudson. Mr. Temple, who made with the artillery? He's back. He's in the kitchen. She can stay there. She saved our lives, Louis. Yeah, but maybe by now she found out she likes the shoot gun. I hope not. Uh, hello, 
Well, it was nice of you to frighten Mr. Hudson off. I did? You did. I, I didn't hear anything? No. Hey, hey, I, I've got it. She's all cold. <laughs> Come on, I'll put her on the couch. It's a little late, but somebody ought to mention she is not a bad looking bitch. You've mentioned it. Hmm. Looking for smelling salts in her bag? No, identification. <laughs> Here's a driver's license. Her name is Sally Walters. Address. 49 Arden Drive. Security card. She's a secretary. That's what I need. Oh, I don't know. Oh, back. She's coming too. Mm -hmm. to put the bag back. Get the cheap for gun dogs. So she's full of them. No. We don't want her to know we went through a bag. We're ashamed of ourselves. We're going to pay her a visit. She ain't home. Well, but she will be after she leaves here. And then perhaps we can find out what she's the uh, home fired friend. <laughs> Sally was in kind of a hurry leaving her. So she was. Mr. Templer, don't look like Santa Claus chasing a blonde. Uh, I'm not chasing her. Technicalities will get you no place. Hey, this must be it. 49. What is she a secretary of? The treasury? Mm, I suspect this is where she works, Louie. She works overtime, huh? Yeah, and probably sleeps in. Come on. Yeah. I hope that nobody is speaking because I'll see Santa Claus is off schedule. I think perhaps I can manage without the rest of you. Ow! Now do you look like an imposter? Yeah. Will you ring, Louie? Okay. You know, this is a tight house. I got a feeling Santa Claus would have to use the saving temple. Uh, yes. I'm Simon Templer. You are? I am. There's nothing I can do about it. Mm, Mr. Templer, all butlers are like me? I doubt it. I think he's been practicing. Oh, oh. Well, good night, then. I think not. Would you mind removing your shoe from the door? I would. You might at least have signed it. you ever No one, madam. Interesting that you know when Santa Claus is lost or with you. I have it there, uh, right here in my pocket. How nice. Actually, my name is Simon Templer. I'm Carla Hill. Uh, this is Louie. Hi. Oh, I, I mean... Hi. Uh, Hi. Uh, you the present, uh, Did you want to see me? Now that I've seen you, uh, here. Oh, yeah. Oh, damn it. What's the map? Humphrey, go away. Yes, madam. Humphrey's got the problem sometimes. Is that it? Fireplace, books on the bookshelf, port in that decanter. Yes, would you like some? Uh, no, thank you. I just wanted to be sure the accessories were all correct. Someday, maybe I'll find some other wine besides port in the decanter. I do. Simon, are you the one who found me? It's the beginning again. Found what? My jewels. Have they been lost? Simon, they were stolen. You know that, then. Could I? I've heard of the things. I didn't know you were there for that. Oh, it's a fleeting impulse. Uh, when were your jewels stolen? This afternoon. You see, Claude, my husband, I uh, bought me them for Christmas. <laughs> Santa Claude Louis. We decided to have the party this afternoon. We thought it'd be nice to have a quiet mm -hmm. So we did. The jewels were in quite a large box. There's quite a lot of them. And? Claude hired a Santa Claus, but before the party was over, Santa Claus had disappeared. Who had to be? But it must have been some precaution. Oh, there were several detectives. Uh, but the Santa Claus said he was going out to get some air while the party was on. He never came back. But he didn't have the jewels on him. The box was locked and it was too large for the detectives not to admit it. I see. The name of the man hired to play Santa Claus was, of course, the... Uh... Bat Boy. And who may you be? Claude, this is Simon Kinsley. And Louis. I know nothing. No copies. Get rid of them. Claude likes to use his own emperor, honestly. The box wasn't found anywhere in the house? The jewel box, no. The jewels were insured. Naturally, none of your affairs. I shall speak severely to Humphrey. He's never let you in. I let you in. Well, now he's going to speak severely to her. Now, we'll go quietly. Except, uh, Mr. Worth, what is that boiling with dress? I have no idea. Good night. Good night, John. Um. So am I. I'll show you out. Thank you. 
Wow, 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 wow. Pronounced Carla word. Yeah. What do we do now, Anthony? Well, we get into your nice, clean cab and... Hey, wait a minute. Now we're going to find out what the game of Sally. Sally? Well, good evening, Sally. I overheard Sassel Jess at 17 Beale Street. 17 Beale Street. Yes, I've got to get right back to the house before anybody notices. Goodbye. An awful short visit. It's been long enough. Now we're going to visit Mr. Boyd. I think so. I hope he ain't so handy with a gun as the rest of you. Now, he may be, he may not be. Now I'm all scared up. Hmm, but there's one thing I'm sure he isn't. What's that? Fast. Quite a change from the waste dump. Now this is a dump. Yeah, and Mr. Boylan would seem to be shy. Mr. Templer, you said something about the one thing he wouldn't be with fat. Why? Because he was called fat? Mm, not exactly. Really, I'm worried. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, the door was open. Yeah. Maybe that means our boy has flown. Maybe. Come on, let's go. Okay. I ain't usually so poetical, but uh, the light's on. Yes. And the room looks funny. Looks like a, a hurricane came to stay for dinner. Hmm. And remained for six months. Somebody was looking for his uh, jewel box. And someone obviously didn't find it. The extent of the search indicates that. Nothing was left unpacked. It's a funny smell in this room, you know. A couple of funny smells. Yeah. One perfume, the other. Gunpowder. Huh? Gunpowder. That's why I ain't been looking behind any pieces of fun. It really wasn't very far to look for it. Huh? Just behind the day bed. Fat. Fat. Louis. He, uh, he ain't doing so good? He's dead. Uh, Louis. Yeah. He wasn't fat. <laughs> Mr. Templer? Yes, Louis? We're being followed. Came since we got a boiling place. Oh, that's interesting. Louis, stop the cab. That'll make it easier for whoever's following us. Exactly what I want. Even on Christmas Eve, they shouldn't have to. Now what? Now we get out. Don't look behind you. Start walking. Here is a nice, lonely street. Everybody else is home hanging up stockings. I wouldn't mind hanging up stockings myself. I, I, I... Who do you think it is? I think it's our friend Hudson. Oh, I just lost five bucks. You mean the guy that was chasing Sally who was all ready to shoot us until she made the explosion? He demanded. Oh, you think he wants our money or our life? Possibly. What kind of an answer is that? He was just quick to see Your alley's full of garbage. Oh, the dark. You don't have to see garbage. You know they're around. Good evening, Hudson. Uh -huh. Don't turn around. I've got a gun on you. Hey, I don't like it. Jerry, take Mr. Hudson's gun away from him. Okay. Got him. Mr. Templer. Good. Aim it at him. Hey, now, wait a minute. You can't shoot me with my own gun. Why not? That ain't practical. Mm, what other gun could I shoot you with? Your own. Hey, you mean you ain't got it? Oh, mister, you are a liar. And on Christmas Eve, too. Hudson, who hired you to follow Sally and me? Uh, uh it was my own idea. Yeah. Louis, mm -hmm. Mr. Hudson isn't being friendly. He ain't, huh? Mm, he ain't. There's hey, no, don't, don't lose your head, fella. We've lost patience with him, Louis. We have? Mm, shoot him, Louis. He's beginning to bore me. He's beginning to... I... 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 Yes? Take him? Take him. Okay. But I don't know what my wife... The kids are going to say. Yeah, I don't... Stop, Mike. No, 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 wait a minute, please. Louis, we're being cruel. Prolong you, Mr. Hudson. Agony, put him out of it. Now, wait a minute. I... I... Who hired you? Uh, Mrs. Worth. Mrs. Carla Worth. You quite sure? Strike me dead. If, if that is, don't strike me dead. Look, look, if she didn't, what I say, why, why would I say she did? You have a point there. But, uh, why should she have wanted you to follow Sally? Well, she had an idea. Her husband and Sally were kind of, uh, you know, uh, kind of, uh, decorating their own little tree together. And I couldn't put it more tactful. Uh, so, if uh, we got enough divorce evidence, Mrs. Worth could hold up her husband for plenty of alimony. No. No. Oh, Mrs. Wood is the babe with a doll. Mr. Wood is a very well-educated bum. Uh, Louis, let me have the gun. Yeah, yeah. Uh, wait, I, I thought I told you the truth. I'm sure you did. No. Mr. 
Chancellor. That's gratitude? It's necessity. Oh, you need him out of the way for a little while. Mm. Out of the way. Now, uh, yeah? Now we're going to find out who else knew that fast boiling was thin. <laughs> I'm sorry the family's retired for the night. It is late, I know. I wish to retire myself. Humphrey, you don't look fit to find Good night, sir. Did I ask you? No. Oh, Humphrey, I thought you and I were going to see this to Oh, together. Let go of me. Cut the door, okay? I feel complete, sir. All right, but not now. I can't love you. Where that gun out with the people over there? Somebody squeal. Oh, yes, I forget. I mean. Okay. After all, like the poet says, strong heart never won fair mate. You mean some kind. All right, so for dinner, I'll eat dog food. Here. Louie and I have been testing perfume. It's the middle of the night. You're waking. I'm sorry. I'm even sorrier about something else. What's that? The perfume you use is very distinctive, Sally. I'm supposed to say thanks? No. Because the last place Louie and I noticed it was in Fat Boiling's room. Minutes after he'd been killed. Oh. Not good time. You're making all this up. But... No. Now, this bottle of perfume will be evident. But I didn't kill Boiling. You must be joking about that. I don't think the jury would find it funny. You knew about boiling stealing the jewels. You must have helped him. I, I didn't. But then you found yourself being failed by Hudson, who'd been hired by Mrs. Worth. You were afraid he'd discover the connection between you and boiling. That's why you came to my apartment. No. Oh, yes. You hoped I'd throw Hudson off for a fight. In the meanwhile, you could get the boiling, get the jewels from him. That isn't true. But when you got the boiling place, you found him already dead. The jewels gone. I didn't. It would be much better for you that way. But what do you mean? You wouldn't be liable to a first-degree murder charge. But there were detectives here while the party was going on. Boylan couldn't have stolen the jewels. They saw him leave. He didn't have them. He did have them. He was playing Fatty Claus, and he was a thin man. Fatty Claus is, as Louie pointed out to me earlier tonight, are fat. Therefore, Boylan entered his house wearing padding underneath his costume. He left it with a large jewel box in place of the padding. That's how he did his job. You're smart. Hmm, you found Boylan. 
you knew his address. Therefore, you'd hired him in the first place. And therefore, also, a jury would believe you killed him unless you tell us, Peter. Oh, all right. I- I'll tell you. Really no need, my dear. Oh, Clark. Hey, Mr. Temple, tell him to point the gun someplace else. Mr. Worth, point that gun someplace else. I prefer this to the same temper. How about the jewels? The jewels were insured. Therefore, you, Mr. Worth, arranged to have them sold. Indeed, indeed. In that way, you could retain the jewels, the insurance money as well, and not worry very much whether or not your wife divorced you. Clever. Boylan is dead. How true. You had to see to that, didn't you? Otherwise, he might have blackmailed you for the rest of your life, or for whatever money you got out of the entire crooked beast. I can see two other men. Yours, your friend. And Sally? You going to kill her, too? That depends, I should think. Claude, I never knew you intended to kill anyone. There's no need to say the young's in a quite as thing with me, my dear. You were in on most of it. But not murder. Hmm. I'm afraid the temporary present is an instructor, I am. I shall have to... But, however, it's your eyes. Huh? A perfume. To be precise, this perfume. Well, you got him in the eye. I hope this gets him someplace more effective. Mr. Oh! Temple, the trail of unconscious bodies you're leaving behind you tonight is laid end to end. Yes, sir. It would look terrible. <laughs> Yes, Carla? You've been very sweet. Even without you, this has been sort of a... a sad accord. <laughs> May I? Oh, thank you. Mm-hmm. I never knew Santa Claus could speak like that. The Santa Claus is no sense. Mm-hmm. Yes? Oh. <laughs> um, uh, hello, Louis. Mr. Templer. You better put on your whiskey. You've forgotten all about Mrs. Winterbottom? Mr. Smith. Oh, the hour is past midnight. The tots have undoubtedly tottered off the bed by now. Louis, you may tell Mrs. Winterbottom. No. <laughs> That's a saint. It's no saint, the glory. <laughs> I've been listening to another transcribed adventure of The Saint, the Robin Hood of modern crime. Now, here is our star, Vincent Price. Ladies and gentlemen, all of us who live in the United States are aware of the spiritual values of American life, our factors and machines and luxuries. But there is another side to American life, a side made up of spiritual values. Our country was founded upon faith in God, In the Declaration of Independence, it states that men were endowed by their Creator with certain inalienable rights. Thus, religious faith is part of the very foundation of American democracy, and one of our most precious national heritages is freedom of worship. By exercising this freedom, you and your families can enjoy the spiritual pleasures that come with church or synagogue attendance. Moreover, your religious leaders stand ready to give you their help, whether you need personal or family guidance. And if you suffer the loneliness natural to a newcomer to this country, the churches of your faith will welcome you. We all know that without spiritual values, the other advantages of American life have little meaning. Without faith, the family and the community become unstable. Without faith, the individual denies himself the peace and guidance of religion. The doors of your churches and synagogues are open to you. The freedom to worship as you please is yours. And so America's religious organizations invite you to find yourself through faith and to come to church this week. And may I wish you all a wonderful Christmas. And for the world, peace in all the years to come. This is Vincent Price inviting you to join us again next week at the same time for another exciting adventure of the film. Good night.
Adventure of the Saints was written by Louis Vitti. Our cast included Mary Schiff as Sally and Betty Lou Gerson as Carla. High Everback was Hudson. Ted Osborne, Clark. The Butler, Stanley Farrar. Louis is played by Larry Dodson. The Saints, based on characters created by Leslie Carter, is a James L. Fassier production and is directed by Helen Mack. Vincent Price is soon to be seen co-starring in RKO's production of His Kind of Woman. All you Saints fans will be glad to know that the Saints comic books are on sale at all you fans. Your announcers on Saints. Three times mean good times on NBC. For your Christmas Eve listening pleasure, there's another broadcast of NBC's Sunday hour and a half extravaganza, The Big Show. There's a whole Christmas stocking full of stars, including Tallulah, Jimmy Durante, Edwin, Charles Boyer, Robert Merrill, and many more. Tonight also means your weekly visit with the Harris family on the Phil Harris Alice Bay Show. Be sure to hear this special Christmas program later today on NBC. Happy holidays, happy holidays, happy holidays, happy holidays, and we'll be with you to a season of good cheer. Amen. Adventures of the Saints, starring Vincent Price. The Saints, based on characters created by Leslie Carter, are known to millions from books, magazines, and motion pictures. The Robin Hood of modern time now comes transcribed to radio, starring Hollywood's brilliant and talented actor Vincent Price as... Yes. Let me in, please. All right. My name is Claire Gordon. Well, I can recommend that girl. I don't have time. Mr. Kimper, I want to confess. Confess what? Murder. Oh, maybe I'd better go to her. You're, you're quite serious? Of course I am. When anyone confessed to murder, merely as a joke. You might depend on their sense of humor. Uh, however, whom did you murder? My husband. I see. He doesn't need you. I have no reason to believe or disbelieve. Well, I just think. Oh, my eyes. This is your to do something about it. Mrs. Gordon, I think there's many reasons why a woman might want to kill her husband. In some instances, she actually does. But I can think of no reason why she should come to me and tell me about it. Well, I had to confess to somebody. Well, you could have chosen the police. Oh, they're so vulgar. Murder is not a monopoly of the upper classes, nor is it in itself an especially refined activity. Well, you don't understand. Before I married Jim, I was clear who lost. Of the something or other will out, no doubt. Still, I, I absolutely refuse to go to some healthy, busy little police station. Well, some of them are quite large, and I understand clean from time to time. Well, some grubby little man all about my personal affairs. Murder, according to the statute, is a public affair. I think you're not. I'm only trying to be reasonable, after I all. I think you weren't always reasonable, and... and beautiful women, or something. Oh, that's true, only I'm so excuse What? I despise you! Oh, wait, maybe today is so... Oh, well, she could be coming back to make an appointment for Charles <laughs> No, you're Simon Templer? I'm afraid I am. You seem to have guessed? Why was my wife here? Your what? Wife. And don't try telling me you didn't know she was married, you low I think you'd better tell me about myself inside. <laughs> now then, now. Uh, you are James Gordon. And my wife is just here. How do you know? I saw her leave. Are you going to try denying it? Well, not if you saw her just leave. Oh, well, that's good. Now, if uh, you don't mind, I'll take my coat off. You're warm. I'm about to beat your brains out. You know you what your language. And why do you think your wife is here? <laughs> Pretty obvious, isn't it? Well, no. After all, I never met your wife before. <laughs> Furthermore, Mr. Gordon, you're dead. Are you being whimsical? I'm only trying not to make a liar out of your wife. She told you she was a widow. More or less. Actually, she came here to me. But, are you trying to pull my leg? 
I've always thought that a highly overrated indoor sport, except of course in the right country. He came here to confess his wife, to murder in you. What? Apparently her confession was premature. If that is, you really are James Gordon. Oh, thanks for the premature. And of course I'm James Gordon. Who else would I be? Can I guess? Hey, no. No, you can take a look at my wallet. Thank you. Hey, Charlie Carson. Blue Shield Medical Plan card, David. <laughs> I blew him up only a week ago. You're bad about that. And badly you don't expect to die. <laughs> you are James Gordon. Oh, hey, thank you. Now, would you like to tell me why my wife is here? She's going to confess to your murder. You know, Mr. Temple, I think I'm beginning to believe you. Fine. Keep working on it. Now, is it? I said, if you say she told you she'd murder me, you yes, she must have told you she did. But why? I'm not dead. Therefore, she didn't murder you. Then why did she make such an idiotic confession? Useful thinking, perhaps. Now, just tell me. Or perhaps it was only anticipation. That's what she did. Hello? Mr. Chancellor. Louis. Louis. A half an hour ago, you called for a cab. A half an hour ago, I arrived. A half an hour ago, I was still warm. Now I'm studying when I... Oh, Lou, I'm sorry. Come upstairs and call out. I've had company. A blunt? To start with. What are you up to now? Her husband. I'll come up. I'll bring a large wedge. Uh, that won't be necessary, Lou. Bye. Mr. Temple, what do you think this is for? You need to have some intent to me. Why did you want to? To go to confess, not to confide in me. I will. Uh, I better run around. The whole affair in the house. Well, I'm sorry I bothered you, Mr. Temple. No, it's all right. Thank you, okay? Forget it. Bye. Bye. Well, so much. Oh, oh, oh. That's right, Sergeant. A man named Gordon stopped to death on my doorstep. No, Sergeant, I never see anyone on my doorstep if I'm tired of... I don't know, I... Look, Sergeant, I have an idea. Why not drop in and see for yourself, hmm? Sergeant, you're sick. Uh, come in. Oh, Lloyd. I forgot you were coming up. You warmer? Yeah, a little bit, thanks. Uh, friend of yours? Who? The gentleman is laying down dead outside your door. No, we can't in there. Oh, well, that's good. You ready to leave now? No, I'm afraid not. I have to wait for the police. That's too bad. You know, the guy might be a conservative wrestler, but I don't think he does show to your doorstep. Oh, I wouldn't say that. His name is James Gordon of the, uh, Gordon Gordon. Oh, well, that's different, yeah. Did he kill himself, or uh, did somebody help him? I don't think he killed himself, Lou. Why? If he'd just taken out a blue shield car, or planning to the future, huh? Yes, it also means you expected to have a future. Lou, while we're waiting, would you look up James Gordon in the phone book? Okay. But I can tell you now, he won't answer the phone. I want his address. But he's moving. It's gonna be the mall. But his wife will still be there. Oh. Well, here it is. 12 Seven Oaks Drive. Oh, it's a very high-class neighborhood. Yeah, very high-class one. Maybe I uh, ought to run home and put on my wife's car. <laughs> Don't be silly, Lou. Under the circumstances, the ties could very definitely be black. <laughs> You know, those cops are very nice, so they were, in spite of what you asked them, let him in. You asked him if somebody confessed to murdering James Court, so I did. Yes, but don't you think it's a little early for a confession? No, you don't understand. You see, in this particular case, the confession was made before the murder. Oh, well, that explains it. That explains nothing. Louis, Mrs. What? Gordon visited me just before Mr. Gordon did. Uh-huh. No. No? No. What she did do was confess to murdering her husband. Yeah, but he was still alive. That's right. Maybe she's some clairvoyance or something. Oh, well, seven oaks drive, Mr. Good. Yeah. Uh, should I wait? Uh, you better come with me. Okay. Except for one. Well, I have a feeling I'll need a witness. Oh, so you really don't know Mrs. Gordon very well. Well, if the confession was true, I, I don't want to know her at all. But it couldn't have been, huh? Except maybe it wasn't. Well, that's one way of putting it. Yeah. And that's the way nobody understands, too. Me included. 
Good evening, gentlemen. Boy, is he here for all. Uh, good evening. Uh, would you like to see Mrs. Jordan? Come in, please. To whom shall I say is calling? Who? I beg your pardon. Who shall I say is calling? That is your Listen, bud, for what I drive down here, whom is good enough? Oh? Oh, well, the Gordons don't pay well? If you are referring to recent history, the Gordons don't pay, too. Oh, having financial difficulties. I ain't having no difficulties, and I can't bring up no finances. Hmm. Same as the hospital plan, and well, you better slip your English accent on and announce it. I'm trying to tell you this is real. Yeah, hi. It's very good. This one is good from Gordon Butler. Hey, the Gordons have been in trouble. Mr. Gordon knows nothing more about Mrs. Gordon. Well, Mrs. Gordon will see you. Mr. Gordon. Oh, thank you. Not only will she see you, but you'll see her. Looking at her objective, you're getting the break. She is part of this. Sir, you are speaking of the woman Mr. Gordon loves. Who says? Ask the door if she's on the other side. Hey, 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 hey. You might open it, sir. What's the matter? You broke an arm or something? If she ain't careful, they will attend him back to Brooklyn. Uh, Mrs. Gordon? Yes? Of course, it's been a little while since you last met. No, that's it. Since we haven't met. No. We haven't met. If we haven't. If we haven't had, I can't really have my number, if you still live. Uh, Simply, I believe you've never been here. You've been met at my home within the last hour. Well, I might say you have a very charming home, but I think you've never been here. Well, I may be able to refresh you on the memory if it'll be patient with me. You became in order to come to the church. The murder of your husband. This is some kind of joke. No, not for the church. But then it's not in the place I should take. If I play something else, my husband happens to be alive and in London as well. So you see, I didn't very well have to confess to you. And it's still a very difficult story. Your husband's health is no longer what it used to be. He's dead. Dead? Really? Yes, Mrs. Gordon. Oh, no. No. Oh. Something is going to hold this letter. Yes. Mr. Gordon. 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 Mr.
This is good, huh? This is good. It's a nice car she got. Yeah, give her a chance to get in here. Oh, yeah, I always forget. Well, she's in now. Uh, wait a minute. Give her time, Lord. Just to straighten her hat, do her lips, put on her gloves, signal for a right turn, and then, and then pull away from the curve and then turn left. This is right. Come on, let's go there. Hey, Mr. Templin. You think maybe she's leaving for parts unknown like that redhead? I doubt it. Would amount to a second confession and one that would be believed. Yeah. For a woman who just painted, she's driving 25. True. You see, there ain't no one dawdles in the shadow of the gallows. Hey, she's pulling up in front of that parking. So we better stop here. Out, huh? Out. She's, uh, she's heading into the park. We follow her, huh? Yes. <laughs> Maybe she's just a nature lover, Mr. Thompson. At this hour of the night? Well, the law says you gotta love nature only in the vapor. Mm, you can love this thing, too, yeah. It's a little late. Hey, there was a guy waiting for her. Maybe we can get any closer. No spot on the car. How about getting in amongst the trees? That's an idea. Yeah, except how good is it? Oh, they're right out of trees. Yeah, 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 they're right out of trees. I'll stick to Mrs. Gordon. But he's still sick on too, huh? Eh? Remember the police? He'll be coming to that time. Mrs. Gordon. I'm in that time. At least there's a lot. Oh, she's almost warm. Yeah, it's probably on very good at that. Huh? Must be on time for her appointment with the police. They might not approve of her having gone to a midnight show in the park and the night her husband died. But she's gone. I think the guy is still warm. You're uh, interested in him now? Mm hmm Very much. You'll have to come back this way. You can tell him off. You'll have to find out who he is. Who is he? Why, he wants to go my name? Yeah. Oh, look like a large blonde that I talked to you. That's a general idea. Oh, yeah. Okay. I'll tell you more on that. Stand for him. Help you. Well, don't have a gun, but... I'm going to have to do it anyway. Anyway. Well, the gun you don't have to wear, Frank, brother. I have my right hand in my coat pocket. Okay, stop right there, Brad. What? what? Get behind him, you'll see. Hey, you'll see. Hey, uh, I'm, uh, I'm behind him, Mr. McGee. What is this? Ah, uh, sit up. What do you think it is? You can't do this. Sure we can. And maybe you like to argue so much that you prefer being ventilated? Do you know what? Yeah. No. You don't have to do that. What are you living on in jail? Shut up. Hand over your coat, huh? Hand over my coat. Oh, yeah, you raise me. The money bag, Mr. The wallet. Oh, here, here. Thanks. Now, keep walking the way you were, see? And don't try looking around. I ain't got no objections at all to seeking a guy in the back. I won't look around. I won't. Well, she's gone. Well, we ought to stay here. We just don't think he yells for cop. I don't think he will. He might have to explain what he was doing in the park at this time of night. He'd have an easier job than we would. ไม่มีคุณคุณคุณคุณคุณคุณคุณคุณคุณคุณคุณคุณคุณคุณคุณคุณคุณคุณคุณคุณคุณคุณคุณคุณคุณคุณคุณคุณคุณคุณคุณค
Maybe this one ain't guilty, but sometimes one could be, huh? Well, that's true, but the one we met tonight is too charming. Uh, uh, don't look now, Mr. Templer. Keep walking. But the charming character is carrying around the young woman. Uh, good evening. I was buckling these nights, huh? Go on. I'm sorry you fought. With pleasure. Now, hold it. Nobody moves till I put the light on. Okay. All the way in. Sit down, both of you. Say No, you can't jump me. You're just sitting down. Intelligent. The, uh, yeah. To you, you're either an idiot or, um, in love. It's the same thing. I didn't come here to make conversation with you, Captain. Why did you come? To make sure you forgot about Scott. Yeah, about Mr. Gordon's confession. An idiot in love. That's got nothing to do with you. Suppose I refuse to forget Mrs. Gordon's confession. You'll forget it, either by agreeing to or by being dead. You want me to promise to say nothing into confession to the police? That's right. Well, suppose I do promise, and then you leave, and then suppose I don't keep that promise. No, no, why do you have to bring that up? I, 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 you'll come back and kill me then? Huh. What good would that be, Mrs. Gordon? All right, if what you're getting as if it's the only way I could be sure is by killing you, then how much was, uh, Mr. Gordon's life in for? A hundred grand. Boy, how do you know? There had to be a motive for his death. The motives that would place Mrs. Gordon in danger of being considered likely to have murdered her husband. The Gordons had no money. Insurance was the most probable motive in existence. Kerrigan handled the, uh, Gordon finances? Yeah. Mrs. Gordon is in love with Kerrigan, isn't she? No. I think so. The church what you think. Oh. Let's find out how innocent Mrs. Gordon is. Let's, um, pull the window shade down, hmm? Don't remember? Pull an arm chair over to the window and get it. Why? You'll then be silhouetted clearly for the benefit of anyone outside in the street. The drawn chair will make it impossible for you to be identified exactly. Your build is much the same as mine. You will therefore appear to be me to anyone outside. You will also provide a perfect target. So who? You're the only one who would have any reason for wishing me dead. The murderer of James Jordan. You love Mrs. Gordon. You're convinced she's innocent. She's been here before and she'd be able to find her way back. Well, were you good enough, sir? See in the morning. By this time, the police would... Long awaits Mrs. Gordon. They probably finished with a preliminary testament. She could plead sleepiness. And it left the Gordon home, allowing 50 minutes to get here. She could be arriving at almost any moment. Shut up. Well, naturally, you're not worried. There's a cousin, maybe no. One besides Mr. Templer is Mr. Buckstead. So if he's killed by the woman he loves, what more could a guy want? I told you to. Yes, you were saying? That's right. Yes, I heard him. Doesn't have to be her. Mm, but I'm sure it is. I do. Well, Mr. Dudley, I'm getting out of here. <laughs> he died it's very nice. And in time. I wonder, with no ready-made target for her, what will Mrs. Gordon do? You better get in the next one, huh? Yes. Yeah. Oh, Louis, yes? will you open the door? Oh, I don't mind, but uh, if you do, uh, I wouldn't like to get shot on your door. That's no way to appreciate your hospitality. <laughs> I'll get it. Hello, Mrs. Gordon. I... Oh, well, you're not alone. No, no, that's Louis, remember? Yeah, uh, that's a better remember in time, hmm? Yes. Send him away. Oh, I promised him a drink. He hasn't had it yet. I can't send him away. But what I have to tell you is confidential. Louis is in my confidence. All right. But not to turn out more convenient. If you're difficult. About what? Forgetting that I was ever here before. Forgetting I came to you with a confession of murder. Sorry, but I have a remarkably repentant memory. For example, I remember a girl I used to go to school with. You better forget her for the moment. I oh, couldn't. I loved her very deeply. How would you feel about... $25,000. Nothing very deeply, too. You're being offered to me for a promise to forget? Yes. And if I don't keep it? 
You'll sign a paper admitting your promise and acceptance of the money. That would make you an official. You wouldn't dare it, change your mind. Hey, she's smarter than you do. Mrs. Gordon, you're young, you're beautiful, and twenty-five thousand dollars is very expensive. Nevertheless, I I do abuse all of you. Even oh, if yes, I wondered how long it would be before you produced that and the revolver you told your husband was. How did he? If you convince me in a lot better way. Can I convince you? Oh yes, your confession helps. It does, of course. Your husband's death makes you richer by a hundred thousand dollars, doesn't it? Yes. Otherwise, you had nothing. Well, our investments, they were unfortunate. Mr. Uh, Kerrigan handled them? Yes, he's all right. So your husband handed over his money to Kerrigan. Did he also know he was uh, handing over his wife as well? What did you say? Oh, I met his life, of course. Nothing. You still haven't told me how my confession was going to help you. I didn't say it would help you. I said it would help convince me you hadn't killed your husband. Well, that's the same thing. Not fine. <gasps> I was saying, uh, oh, yes. The fact that you didn't kill your husband is actually of minor importance in here. It's just time to borrow your gun. Louis, can you see Mr. Gordon company while I see what the boys in the back room are doing? You're all right, sir. Yes, it was Kerrigan. Uh-huh. I thought it would be. You didn't see me. Came into the room and headed to the door to the living room. He sneaked it open at this one. Is he alive? Yeah, I just got him in the shoulder. He was working her back there. Yeah, that's right. Hey, Louie. What, Mr. Cuthbert? Will you phone the police? There's one wounded murderer to collect, one beautiful accessory before and after the fact. Oh, no, no. But of the highest class. <laughs> her butler will help her wait. <laughs> Louis? No, no, no. What are you trying to do? Drown me? <laughs> <laughs> Here you are, Louis. Oh, thanks a lot. Oh. Oh, Louis. 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 Oh, she expected that I'd immediately phone the police or else take her back to her home to view the court. In the meanwhile, Kerrigan would murder Gordon. And that would have left Mrs. Gordon in the clear. Yeah, but you didn't do either of those things. Why? I didn't believe her. Oh. She had really killed her husband and was willing to take whatever consequences there might be. Why come to me? Uh-huh. So that lost up her alibi. Especially because her husband, instead of staying home and getting shot, had become suspicious of her and he trailed her here. And was in turn trailed by Kerrigan. He saw a naughty opportunity for double-crossing Mrs. Gordon and keeping the money for himself. He handled the Gordon's affairs and had the power of attorney. Yeah, yeah, but look, Mrs. Gordon's thing, when you told her about her husband's death, you know, that was real. You pointed that out yourself. Of course it was, Louis. But she didn't find it the news of her husband's death as such. The reason she said it was because she realized that she confessed to me and that her husband had been shot at a time for which she had no alibi. Uh -huh. Well, now I'm almost smart. Now I can enjoy my trip. <laughs> oh, that's Hey, first thing you know, that love sick butler tells me he's going back to Brooklyn on account of life in the upper classes is too low for his face. Oh, poor fellow, he loved not wisely, but too well. On the other hand, what's wrong with Brooklyn? <laughs> You've been listening to another transcribed adventure of the Saints, the Robin Hood of modern crime. Now, here is our star, Vincent Price. Ladies and gentlemen, in our cast, you heard Joan Banks as Claire, and Peter Leeds as her husband. I have a back, Mr. Butler, and Jim Nutter, Kerrigan. Larry Dobson plays Lewis. This is Vincent Price inviting you to join us again next week at the same time for another exciting adventure of the Saints. Good night.
written by Lewis Whitty. The Saint, based on characters created by Leslie Carter, is a James L. Sassier production and is directed by Helen Mack. Vincent Trice is soon to be seen co-starring in RKO's production of This Kind of Woman. All you Saint fans will be glad to know that the Saint comic books are on sale at all new stands. Your announcer, Don Saint. Three times means good times on NBC. Well, it's Sunday again. That means another gala broadcast of NBC's Big Show. This evening, hostess Tallulah Bankhead has a whole flock of guest stars, including Marlena Dietrich. And when the two glamour gals, Tallulah and Marlena, get together, look out for flying spots. The drama this Sunday evening, Theater Guild on the Air presents the tenth story, The Third Man, starring Joseph Cotton and Sonia Hustle. Join Tallulah and her big show with Marlena Dietrich later on NBC. <laughs> throughout, but never, never cross in front of me. Never. Yes, Mercer, I remember. You are magnificent. Thank you, thank you. Oh, oh, sorry. This is my old friend, uh, Simon Kemper. Kemper, sorry, Babcock, my dear lady. How do you do? How do you do? Uh, don't change, my dear. I'll, I'll need to talk to you. Of course, Mercer. Goodbye, Mr. Kemper. Goodbye, Miss Babcock. Well, your face is still excellent, Mercer. I took my leaves on her acting ability alone, Templar. <laughs> <clears throat> now, uh, why I sent for you? Uh, by the way, uh, what do you think of the play? Well, uh, it was... Yes, uh, I know, I know. It's, uh, I uh, picked only five curtain calls, an arm in the spine. Uh, for me, practically a curtsy. But, uh, oh, writers. Why, Tempter? Why don't they have writers like Shakespeare around these days? It's a plot against Ashley, I believe you. Uh, well, perhaps the Bennett's name will carry this thing along for a season, but it will be a strain. Mercy, why did you send for me? Oh, uh, sit down, Tempter, while I remove my makeup. I am sitting down. Uh, well, then stand up. Uh, no, 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 don't. I hate to talk off to someone. I don't feel work well that way at all. Tempter. I'm afraid of this place. It's there, no, there. Oh, no, 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 not that way. Uh, Panther, I've begun to notice a peculiar relationship between Martha Bennett and his role. Now, uh, you think it's a bit eccentric of me, but what? But it's true. Panther, I'm living my role. No. Wait, let me tell you. I don't know what it is. Perhaps I put too much of myself into a part, but the role I put me on the stage. I also portray in real life. For example, for example, in Time Waits for Tomorrow, I played an actor who married his leading lady. I married my leading lady, a scarlet waif. In Crossroads of the World, I played a singer who married the ingenue. I married the ingenue. Last battle. I don't have to. I didn't marry her. You did. Yes. 
Uh, but I could go on, Templar. This thing has been plaguing me for years. I have a feeling of pessimism about any role I undertake. But it can't help being realized, possibly. So why get excited about it now? Because, Templar, because in this play, I not only fall in love with my leading lady, but I kill her. Well, has the uh, first part come true? Well, one might say so, yes. She's utterly infatuated with me, of course. She's a charming thing. I see. And you're afraid you're going to kill her? Just be afraid. Well, it's a nice seeing you again, Mercy. Hey, wait, wait, don't go. I'm not just imagining things. The way the part was originally written, I shot Sari. But in our tryout in Boston, the plot man discovered that someone had put real bullets in the gun. Are you sure? Of course I am. That's why I had it rewritten to a knife. Uh, we use a rubber blade, of course. Of course. And you have no idea who put those bullets in the gun? None. It could have been anyone. Even you? That's what haunts me about this whole business, Templar. Could I have done it and not know it? Could I do it again? Well, you've got to help me, Simon. Yeah. All right, I'll do what I can. But it might not be mine. Ah, oh, I'd appreciate it, Simon. I'd appreciate it immensely. And when we of the spirit, yes, please, no tears. Where should I start? Uh, my agent and business manager will uh, tell you him to see. And you'll take your round of this to objection. No, fellow. Well, I'll see him in the morning. I'm deeply grateful, Simon. Why, I hardly dare look at the girl. I avoid her. I... <laughs> Coming, sorry, darling, coming. Well, you see, Yes, I know. The show must go on. <laughs> they see you tomorrow, man. Mighty nice of you to take your time for it, Mr. Templer. I know it's been working on me. What do you think of this, Jackson? This idea that Bennett has about his roles coming true. Well, I've represented a lot of actors, Mr. Templer, and they're screwy, every one of them. And I'm not sure Mr. Bennett's not the screwiest of the lot, but he's a great actor. Do you think this whole thing is about nothing? I didn't say that. Maybe all in the head, but what's in the head is plenty of trouble. You know what I mean? I know what you mean. And after the notices on the play this morning, he'd be screwier than ever. Not good? I think so. And he needed the dough, too. Well, I thought Bennett had plenty. Hey, an alimony to four wives? <laughs> Nobody's got that much dough. Well, the first one Bennett wants you to talk to is Lola Enright. She was his first wife. We're not going to talk to all four. Lola is the only one in town. I know there's no luck, but she's good to hear. She'd be quite an actress. Well, let's go collect her autograph. <laughs> Well, morning, Lola. Can we uh, come in? Hi, Mr. Jackson. Do come in. Uh, I hope you'll excuse my just being just reading over a frightful stack of plays that begging me to do. Quickly wearing tiny and real. Ah, uh, but skip it, Lola. This isn't the producer. This is Simon Templer, they think. I wanted to say so. How do you do, Mr. Templer? Thank you, Miss Enright. I've enjoyed your performances many times. Must be older than you look. What's up, boy? Now, Mr. Templer, I'd like to ask you a few questions, Lola, about mm -hmm. Mercer. Well, if you're going to talk about him, I've got to be fortified. Excuse me. Mr. Templer, have you ever met my friend? Uh, oh, yes, yes, I have. Yes, I don't have to introduce you. How about joining us? Well, I'm very fond of your friend, but not this early in the morning. About Mercy Bennett, Miss Enright. What about him? Well, very briefly, he has a fixation about roles he plays on the stage in acting themselves in real life. And in his latest play, he kills his leading lady. Tell him not to worry. That turkey won't run long enough for him to step on an ant. Something has occurred, however, to indicate that this isn't all imagination. Do you know anyone bearing any ill will against uh, Bennett or something? Sure, I do. Anybody that knows him. No? Well, how about you, if I may be blunt? You mean, would I kill his leading lady and frame him with a murder? Oh, uh, no. You think it over, Simon. Do you know why I say hello to my pal here? No, no thanks. <laughs> well, I did. Let's sit down. <laughs> the problem being, would I like to see him accused of murdering his latest love? Well, I know. I very well might. Anything else I can do for you, Simon? Play Camille, Butch Candy between us, tour with the South Pacific Company of South Pacific? If anything comes up, Lola, I'll let you know. You're a nice boy, Simon. 
And I'll give you a tip. Never be seen in public with agents. So long, Jackson. Here's the time. Happy days, Lola. Yeah. Happy days. <laughs> Well, what's the next port of call, Jackson? Arnold Flint, Templar. Broker, he says. Also has a lot of dough in the show. Oh, yes, he told me. Uh, here's his office here. Hmm. No secretary. Guess we go right on in. I guess so. Oh, morning, Mr. Flint. You busy? Hello, Jackson. Have you seen the notices? Did you see those terrible, oh, terrible, terrible Mr. Flint? Yeah, this is Mr. Templar. Simon Templar. Want to ask you a couple questions? Why? Because I think a crime may be committed, Mr. French, and I'm trying to prevent it. You're too late. The crime happened last night when three sixes or seventeen open things. I can understand your point of view. Uh, tell me, Mr. Prince, what was your reason for putting money into the show? The play itself? I'll tell you. The reason was Charlie Babcock. I was made a fool of. Charlie was your girl. If I hadn't thought so, I wouldn't have put a cent into this egg. I couldn't afford the money. Do you hold any animosity toward Charlie or Bennett? Bob both of them. How much animosity? Just this, Mr. Templer. I have a reputation for being a man of decent faith to make a fool of. Do I make myself clear? I think so. Good. Good day, gentlemen. Oh, just one more question. Are you what they call an angel, Mr. Clint? An angel? <laughs> you needn't answer that. Good day. <laughs> Sorry, Babcock's apartment, Mr. Templer. I hope you don't mind about it. You went alone. I better at the thought. Yeah. Well, being Mercer's business manager and agent, both I got a lot of details to look after. He wanted you to talk to Charlie Glenway. He's the author of this bomb. So if you talk to Charlie long enough, Charlie'll be along. Get what I mean? I guess what you mean. Uh, see you later, Mr. Templer. Good morning, Miss Babcock. I don't know if you remember me, but How I... How could I forget? Won't you come in, Mr. Templer? Simon? Oh, thank you. Sorry. Have you seen the notice? Yes. Well, it would be expected, of course. Charlie's a nice boy, but he's not a writer. Just not a writer. Sorry. Are you aware of the fact that as long as this play runs, you may be in considerable danger? Terribly oh, exciting, isn't it? Huh? You're not frightened? But that's true, Simon, dear. Actors living their roles, the excitement of opening night, the smell of green Sorry, paint. sorry. Let's not do the green paint in the veins, huh? <laughs> of course. You know about what happened in Boston? The real bullet instead of the blind? Mm -hmm. Wouldn't it be fascinating if darling old Mercer had actually done it himself? I mean, conscious love, but subconscious hate. Fascinating, like, like insulin. Look, Hedda Gabler, did it ever occur to you that... Sorry, the thing with you... Not Charles, darling, not. Simon Templer, this is Charles Glenway, our author. The rat deserts the sinking ship. You thought the play was pretty hot stuff this time yesterday, Charlie. Oh, uh, how are you, Templer? Thank you. Don't be rude, Charlie. And if one simply isn't a playwright, one could face it. Quote, Mercer Bennett, unquote. It was a play before he got hold of it, him and his rewrite. Of course it ended up garbage. It was bound to. Oh, speaking of rewrite, Charles, darling, I've got some ideas about the second act. My lines simply have to be fixed, you know. Your lines have to be fixed? Well, you certainly fixed them last night, all right. Why don't you get that dramatic theme mud out of your mouth and, and talk? You think it improves things if nobody can hear you? Can you say yes? Am I intruding on anything? All right, all right. We, we won't fight, darling. I don't want to. Fine, darling. And you will rewrite my lines in the second act. No. Yeah. I'll keep score for you. Who is this guy, anyway? Another Arnold Prince? I was never anything to Arnold Prince but my friend, so he put up the money for your show. How nice were you? Glenway, I hate you. Sorry, darling. No, this sweet. Oh, oh, Glenway. And Simpler. Sorry, old man. Shall I leave? Not at all, not at all. I mean, uh, don't rush off. About the notices, sorry, darling. Disregard them. Of course, the play is bad. The thing to remember is that I have carried worse days than this. You were younger then. Jealousy, rearing its juvenile head. But it's a good thing you're here, Glenway. There's a lot of rewriting and fixing to be done. And you might possibly be of some help to me. I have an earth-shaking suggestion. Why not just do the play as it was written in the first place? 
You're questioning my knowledge of the theater. I think you're over the hill, Jack. Pay no attention to this disturbed lamation. Ah, please. I find your conduct unprofessional, Glenn. We are for And I find your conduct unbecoming to your fellow members in the Townsend Club, Bennett. And, hmm? What did you say, Dembler? I have been up since dawn trying to prevent a murder about which I now feel almost indifferent. I have foregone my breakfast, but I find myself unable and unwilling to do so another second. If anyone wants me, I should be in the restaurant on the corner, saving a life near and dear to me, my own farewell festival. <laughs> Oh, sit down, Mr. Jackson, sit down. But I warn you, if you interfere with my eggs benedict with Tabasco sauce, you're a dead man. <laughs> Mr. Phone me if you were here, Mr. Templer. We want you to come to the play tonight. I have seen the play. And every horrible detail is etched with acid on the dark mirror of my mind. You know, he talks just like Mercer. It must be contagious. Oh, we get that word, Mr. Templer. The play is closing tonight. A two-day run. Just ahead of the lynch mob. You carry insurance on your clients, Mr. Jackson? Sure. And put him in another disaster like this and he'll need it. Oh, but what I wanted to tell you, Mr. Templer, was this. Mercer's worried about the prophecy, or whatever you want to call it. He's afraid that something will happen to Charlie. And tonight's the last night for it to happen. You'll be there, Mr. Templer. Mm. Against my complete better judgment, my appreciation of the aesthetic, and in utter disregard of my sanity, I will be there. <laughs> Oh, hi, Johnny. Where have you been, sir? Huh? How's the fun? Uh, everything all right back here, Mr. Templer? It's all quiet so far. This is the final thing. Except uh, he uh, plays the violin to her before he sat there. Do you think the audience is fine, Mr. Templer? Well, they haven't stormed the stage yet. It's not a bad play, or, or it wasn't at first. It's Bennett, in the rewrite. Now it's all hash. How do you like Johnny? Is an actor? Promising. A bit theatrical, but she should have a good career ahead of you. If nothing happens, nothing will happen. See, there's Prince backstage. I don't like that. I'll keep an eye on her. There's Lola, too. She's I know. She's Bennett's first wife. She's bitter because he hasn't paid her alimony for years. Look, look. They're going into the dead zone. Yeah, I'm watching the time. Don't let anything happen to him at the Temple of Charlie. What's that on the prop table? Huh? Uh, a knife. Well, it's not a real one. It's like the one Bennett got sorry with a rubber blade. But if that knife is here, what has Bennett got? What? What? I don't know. Templar, I... Sorry! Sorry, look out! <laughs> Sorry, are you hurt? What happened, Bennett? I, I don't know. I, I thought it was pepper, like I always do, and, and blood came. I had the wrong knife. Let me have it. Sorry. Sorry, How bad it is. Get a doctor, somebody. No, 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 doctor. This is for our last moment, John. Like you and me. Oh, it will always be you and me, sorry, always. No, no. The realization came too late. The bloom with us and the bud, it's fragrant, secret, forever. Sorry. Next week, East Lynn. Simon, yes, Bennett. How bad is it, Simon? This is fatal. Tell me, Simon. I can do Well, the doctor said he had great difficulty finding this track. Yes, it was a very minor flesh wound. Sorry, just couldn't resist paying a death debt to you. Got a well trained. Templar, uh, do you realize what this will do for three sixes or seventeen? Now, why? Publicity! Reels of publicity! The show will run for months! Where is she? Now, oh, she's in the dead. Come on. Sorry. No, it's time to say farewell. Get up, you lovely guys, and you put a bandage on that crack. You've got a show to do tomorrow. But me, sir, I'm dying. You couldn't be killed with a meat pack. Wait a minute, Bennett, that's no one. And I want to see you about some rewrites, Ledway. As soon as I talk to the press, we're not 
closing. Mercy, you are closing. What? Whether you like it or not, someone tried to kill Sorry tonight, and if the police had to pick their suspect, they would undoubtedly pick you. Yes, yes, perhaps they would. Perhaps they might even be right. Say nothing about this stabbing to anyone. Run one more night, tomorrow night, and let everyone know the closing is definite after that. Huh? Why? Why one more night? We've got one more night in which to catch a potential killer. See that everyone backstage tonight is here tomorrow. Lola, Prince, Jackson, Glenway, and... And you, certainly, Mercy. Definitely you. They say each man kills the thing he loves. And so I have killed you, my love. But the cruel, merciful night, which parts our flesh, shall bring us yet together, in a together with you forever. I am ready, officer. Nothing happened. The plane's over, Mr. Cousin. Nothing happened. Sorry, safe. Not quite yet, sir. Well, what do you mean? Mr. Burns, 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 Mr. Yes, darling. Well, Simon, the road is over. The play is finished. And the leading man did not kill his leading woman. No, he didn't, Mercer. Come on, Charlie, let's get out of here. No, sir. Why not, Simon? The play is over. Not quite yet, Mercer. You forget that in your own play, Charlie, the murder occurred at six minutes past eleven. It's now just ten forty-five. You're suggesting we stay here until six after eleven. I'm suggesting it very strongly. Charles, would you ask Lola, Arnold Prince, and Stuart Jackson to join us? They're all backstage. Okay, Mr. Templer. What are you expecting, Charles? Now I'm expecting another attempt on your life. There have been two already. I intend to see that this is the final one. But what if it's a success? If my theory is correct, it won't be. The saint is never wrong, Charlie. Are you? Well, hardly ever. <laughs> Let's join the others, shall we? I'm giving a theater party. <laughs> How much longer are we going to have to sit here, Templar? Oh, just a few minutes, Miss Prince. It's after 11 now. I'm getting very dry, Simon, old boy. Patience, Lola, patience. Creepy in here with everyone gone. I don't like being the bait in the class. We have a whole squad of protectors, Charlie. Except that one of them could be a murderer. Hey, got any theories on the case, Mr. Templar? Oh, a few, Jackson. <laughs> Three minutes after 11. Well, I guess we've got time to hear some of them. It will pass the time. In this case, the question seems to be motive. Who would profit by killing Sally? Or who would profit by framing Bennett here with the killing of Sally? Always presuming that the assailant is not Bennett himself. Then you? It's Arnold Prince. A motive, certainly. I agree with you. A rejected shooter who feels himself used badly. He's a little like you. Gentlemen, gentlemen. No violence until 6 after 11. Mr. Prince lost money he could ill afford to lose. He thought he lost Miss Babcock and Mr. Bennett. He so had reason to hate them both. Stick around, Mr. Prince. Don't worry. I wouldn't miss Sally's murder for twice as much dough as I poured in this rap. Oh, oh, Miss Lola Enright. A motive, perhaps? Love. Desperate, hopeless love for this road company, Barrymore, and hoping for the younger rival. Right, Simon? Couldn't have done it better myself. I'll stick around, Simon. Mr. Mercer Bennett. A strange fixation that he is destined to carry out whatever role he plays on the stage. A mania, perhaps. I've tried to get him to an analyst, Mr. Templer, many times. Ask him. That's objection. Tempers are getting edgy as we approach the hour. Mr. Charles Glenway, one of the best of motives. What? Oh, I might warn you, I don't know if the electrician knows we're still here, so we might find ourselves in the darkness. Simon. And... Then it might not happen at all. That's it. Where were we, huh? Oh, yeah. Oh, Glenn. Charlie couldn't do it, Simon. Oh, 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 oh. All right, drop it, you. Drop it, or I'm going to break your wrist. Drop it. There. All right, Sam, you can put the lights back on. Sam! Get away, Mr. Oh, there. What happened? Who are you? That's the... Pick out his knife, Charlie. Sure. Anything to say, Mr. Jackson? Plenty. A 
but not here, my fella. But why that from Templar? He was my agent. He was making a good living out of it. Not good enough. He was also your business manager. He told you you were paying alimony to all four of your ex-wives. Lola hasn't gotten anything in years, right? Right. Yeah, this suggested the juggling of your book. And then I'm always suspicious of business managers anyway. He also told me he had your life insured. If you were to die for the murder of Charlie Babcock, Jackson would be a rich man, and no questions asked about his books either. But why, Jackson? You were still collecting commissions from me. Shall I tell him, Jackson? Or will you? I'll tell him. You're just about through, you big ham. You can't play leading men anymore. You're too old. Ah, sharper than the serpent. Oh, the French say, Cherche la femme. The Anglo-Saxons say, Cherche la financial angle. Anything I've left out, Jackson? Yes. I hate actors. I've always hated them. And as I hated worst of all, kneeling at us all the time, running us down behind our backs. I hate them! I've always suspected this about agents. I must be more careful. Now come along, Jackson. I can get you a long contract with no option. <laughs> Uh, Templar. Yes, Nathan? After you turned Jackson in, uh, you didn't give the full story to the papers that you were the, uh, the full story. Not yet. Why? Don't. Don't, as a favor to me. Oh, but this will be wonderful publicity for your show. It will run forever. I'd rather you to be. But why, Nathan? Well, uh, uh, Jackson's a statement about me being too old for leave, uh, uh, of course, it's totally untrue, but if worth of a charge like that gets around show business, well, you know what I see. Uh, my lips, you see. Thanks, Templar. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Maybe the trouble is I'm not wearing a tight enough girdle, or maybe that's the like right. Actors. You know, Jackson may have been right. <laughs> You have been listening to another transcribed adventure of the Saint, the Robin Hood of modern crime. Now here's our star, Vincent Price. Ladies and gentlemen, it's difficult to comprehend the fact that you can hold life itself in the palm of your hand. The shape it takes isn't particularly dramatic. It's as simple as this. A few coins, a few dollars, your contribution to the Red Cross. The life you hold is that of some unknown person who will be restored to health through the Red Cross National Blood Program. That program is already in its second year. It still hasn't been fully developed. It still isn't bringing the amazing medicine of whole blood to all those who need it. That won't come without more doctors, nurses, technicians, and equipment. That won't come without your help. The only thing that makes it possible for the Red Cross to carry on its mission of mercy. More than 1,500 hospitals have been supplied free of charge with blood and blood derivatives. More than half a million pints have already been provided for medical use. And yet this is only part of the Red Cross program. The Red Cross follows in the wake of disasters of all kinds, feeding the injured, feeding the hungry, and sheltering the homeless. From the Red Cross emanates a network of services to the armed forces, to veterans, to the community as a whole. The complete cost of all these operations for the next year will be $67 million. But the cost to you is whatever you can give to help the helpless. Remember, all of us can help through the Red Cross. This is Vincent Price inviting you to join us again next week at the same time for another exciting adventure of the same. Good night. Stanley Farrar and Charlie by Bob Clark. Harry Brown was the doorman. 
The Sphinx, based on characters created by Leslie Trotters, is a James L. Sapir production and is directed by Helen Mack. Vincent Price is soon to be seen co-starring in RKO's production of His Kind of Woman. All you same fans will be glad to know that Mr. Spice is guest editor of the January issue of Inside Detective, world's largest selling detective magazine. Your announcer, Don Sands. Three times mean good times on NBC. The times are ringing for tonight's broadcast of the big show, Radio's Greatest Spectacle. The stars for this evening's big show, in addition to the unpredictable Tallulah, will be Lil Calhoun, Jimmy Durante, Jack Carter, Martha Ray, and many, many more. For drama tonight, Theater Guild on the Air presents a one-hour adaptation of the fascinating story Trilby, starring Rex Harrison and Teresa Wright. So remember, the big show on Theater Guild on NBC. <laughs> Adventures of the Saints, starring Vincent Price. The Saints, based on characters created by Leslie Trotter and known to millions from books, magazines, and motion pictures. The Robin Hood of modern crime now comes transcribed to radio, starring Hollywood's brilliant and talented actor Vincent Price as... And so I have killed you, my love. But the cruel, merciful night which parts our flesh shall bring us yet together in a together which is forever. I am ready, officer. Pardon me, but uh, where may I wait for Mr. Bennett? Well, he's still on stage taking on. Yes, I know. I was in the audience. My name is Temple. Oh, yes, Mr. Temple. He's expecting you. You can wait in the dressing room. It's right down the hall there. First on the right. The one with all the flowers on it. Thank you, thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you, thank you, darling. Did you really? Did you? I enjoyed it. Thank you. See you shortly. Mercer. Come in, my dear. Ah, you are sweet, dear, but... Uh, uh, hello, Mercer. Congratulations. Simon Templer, how perfectly wonderful of you to come. Uh, as I was saying, my dear Charlie, you were sweet and utterly charming throughout, but never, never crossed in front of me. Never. Yes, Mercer, I remember. You are magnificent. Thank you, thank you. Oh, oh, sorry. This is my old friend, uh, Simon Templer. Templer, sorry, Babcock, my leading lady. How do you do? How do you do? Uh, you'll change, my dear. I'll, I'll meet you shortly. Of course, Mercer. Goodbye, Mr. Templer. Goodbye, Miss Babcock. Well, your taste is still excellent, Master. I took my leaves on her acting ability alone, Templar. <laughs> now, uh, why I sent for you? Uh, by the way, uh, what did you think of the play? Well, uh, it was... Yes, uh, I know, I know. It, uh, I uh, took only five curtain calls, and I'm in a sign. Uh, for me, practically a curtsy. <laughs> oh, writers. Why, Templar? Why don't they have writers like Shakespeare around these days? It's a plot against that case. I believe you. Uh, well, perhaps the Bennett's name will carry this thing along for a season, but it will be a strain. Mercy, why did you send for me? Oh, uh, sit down, Templar, while I remove my makeup. I am sitting down. Uh, well, then stand up. Uh, no, 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 don't. I hate to talk off to someone. I don't uh, work well that way at all. Templar. I'm afraid of this play. It scares me, too. Oh, no, 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 not that way. Uh, Templer, I've begun to notice a peculiar relationship between Master Bennett and his role. Now, uh, you think it's a bit eccentric of me, perhaps, but it's true. Templer, I'm living my role. No. Wait, let me tell you. I don't know what it is. Perhaps I put too much of myself into a part, but the role I portray on the stage... I also portray in real life. For example, for example, in Time Waits for Tomorrow, I played an actor who marries his leading lady. I married my leading lady. Astonish, wait. In Crossroads of the World, I played a singer who marries the ingenue. I married the ingenue. Last battle. I don't have to. I didn't marry her. You did. Yes. Uh, but I could go on, Templar. This thing has been plaguing me for years. I have a feeling of fatalism about any role I undertake. 
that it can't help being realized off stage. But why get excited about it now? Because, Templar, because in this play, I not only fall in love with my leading lady, but I kill her. Well, has the uh, first part come true? Well, one might say so, yes. She's utterly infatuated with me, of course. And she's a charming thing. I see. And you're afraid you're going to kill her? Deathly afraid. Well, it's a nice seeing you again, Mercy. Hey, wait, wait, don't go. I'm not just imagining things. The way the part was originally written, I shot Sari. But in our tryout in Boston, the plot man discovered that someone had put real bullets in the gun. Are you sure? Of course I am. That's why I had it rewritten to a knife. Uh, we use a rubber blade, of course. Of course. And you have no idea who put those bullets in the gun? None. It could have been anyone. Even you? That's what haunts me about this whole business, Templar. Could I have done it and not know it? Could I... Do it again? Oh, you've got to help me, Simon. Yeah. All right, I'll do what I can. But it might not be much. Ah, oh, I'd appreciate it, Simon. I'd appreciate it immensely. And when we are the theater... Yes, please, no tears. Where should I start? Uh, my agent and business manager will uh, tell you whom to see. And they'll take you around. Okay. Uh, Stuart Jackson. Hello, fellow. Well, I'll see him in the morning. I'm deeply grateful, Simon. Why, I hardly dare look at the girl. I avoid her. I... Yes, yes, Daddy? Coming, Charlie, darling, coming. Well, you see, I am... Yes, I know. The show must go on. <laughs> see you tomorrow, Mercy. Now, mighty nice of you to take your time with Mr. Templer. I know it's been working on Mercy. What do you think of this, Jackson? This idea that Bennett has about his roles coming true. Well, I've represented a lot of actors, Mr. Templer, and they're screwy, every one of them. And I'm not sure Mr. Bennett's not the screwiest of the lot, but he's a great actor. You think this whole thing is about nothing? I didn't say that. Maybe all in the head, but what's in the head gives plenty of trouble. You know what I mean? I know what you mean. And after the notices on the play this morning, he'll be screwier than ever. Not good? From stink day. And he needed the dough, too. Oh, I thought Bennett had plenty. Hey, and alimony to four wives? <laughs> Nobody's got that much dough. Well... And the first one Bennett wants you to talk to is Lola Enright. She was his first wife. We're not going to talk to all four. Lola is the only one in town. I know an old lush, but a good kid. She's be quite an actress. Well, let's go collect her autograph. Well, well morning, Lola. Can we uh, come in? Hi, Mr. Jackson. Do come in. Uh, I hope you'll excuse my just up being this meeting over a frightful sack of plays that begging me to do. Help me wearing tiny of the Ah, uh, uh, skip it, Lola. This isn't the producer. This is Simon Templer, the saint. Oh, why don't you say so? How do you do, Mr. Templer? Yeah. Thank you, Miss Enright. I've enjoyed your performances many times. <laughs> Must be older than you look. What's up, boy? Uh, Mr. Templer, I'd like to ask you a few questions, Lola, mm. about Mercer. Well, if you're going to talk about him, I've got to be fortified. Excuse me. Mr. Templer, have you ever met my friend? Huh? Oh, yes, yes, I have. Oh, good. Then I don't have to introduce him. How about joining us? Well, I'm very fond of your friend, but not this early in the morning. About Mr. Bennett, Miss Enright. What about him? Well, very briefly, he has a fixation about roles he plays on the stage in acting themselves in real life. And in his latest play, he kills his leading lady. Tell him not to worry. That turkey won't run long enough for him to step on an ant. Something has occurred, however, to indicate that this isn't all imagination. You know anyone bearing any ill will against uh, Bennett, Miss Henry? Sure I do. Anybody that knows him. So? Well, how about you, if I may be blunt? You mean, would I kill his leading lady and frame him with a murder? Um, you think it over, Simon. Do you know I say hello to my pal here? <laughs> no, no thanks. Well, I do. Mr. Bennett. <laughs> the problem being, would I like to see him accused of murdering his latest love? Well, I might. I very well might. Anything else I can do for you, Simon? Play Camille, butch candy between acts, tour with the South Pacific Company of South Pacific? If anything comes up, Lola, I'll let you know. Oh, you're a nice boy, Simon. Now, give me a tip. Never be seen in public with agents. So long, Jackson. Here's the plan, Simon. 
Happy days, Lola. Yeah. Happy days. <laughs> What's the next port of call, Jackson? Arnold Prince, Mr. Templer. Broker, he says. Also has a lot of dough on the show. Oh, yes, you told me. Uh, uh, here's his office here. Mm. Mm. No secretary. Guess we go right on in. I guess so. Good oh, morning, Mr. Prince. You busy? Hello, Jackson. Have you seen the notices? Did you see those oh, horrible, oh, terrible, Mr. Prince? Yeah, this is Mr. Templer. Simon Templer. I want to ask a couple of questions. Why? Because I think a crime may be committed, Mr. Prince, and I'm trying to prevent it. You're too late. The crime happened last night when three sixes of 17 opened. Yes, I can understand your point of view. Uh, tell me, Mr. Prince, what was your reason for putting money into the show? The play itself? I'll tell you. The reason was Charlie Babcock. I was made a fool of. Charlie was your girl. If I hadn't thought so, I wouldn't have put a cent into this egg. I couldn't afford the money. Do you hold any animosity towards Charlie or Bennett? Toward both of them. How much animosity? Just this, Mr. Templer. I have a reputation for being a man of decent faith to make a fool of. Do I make myself clear? I think so. Good. Good day, gentlemen. Hey, just one more question. Are you what they call an angel, Mr. Prince? An angel? <laughs> you needn't answer that. Good day. <laughs> Babcock's apartment, Mr. Templer. I hope you don't mind if I let you go in alone. I shudder at the thought. Oh, yeah. Well, being Mercer's business manager and agent, both I ain't got a lot of details to look after. He wanted you to talk to Charlie Glenway. He's the author of this bomb. But if you talk to Charlie long enough, Charlie will be along. Get what I mean? I guess what you mean. Uh, see you later, Mr. Templer. Good morning, Miss Babcock. I don't know if you remember me, but oh, How I... could I forget? Won't you come in, Mr. Templer? Simon? Oh, thank you. Sorry. Have you seen the notices? Yes. Well, it was to be expected, of course. Charlie's a nice boy, but just not a writer. Just not a writer. Sorry. Are you aware of the fact that as long as this play runs, you may be in considerable danger? Terribly exciting, isn't it? Huh? You're not frightened? But that's true, Simon, dear. What does living my way of the excitement of opening night? The smell of grease paint. Sorry, sorry. Let's not do the grease paint in the veins bit, huh? <laughs> of course. You know about what happened in Boston? The real bullet instead of the blind? Mm -hmm. Wouldn't it be fascinating if darling old Mercer had actually done it himself? I mean, conscious love, but subconscious hate. Fascinating, like, like instant. Look, Hedda Gabler, did it ever occur to you that... Sorry, you seen the reviews? Not Charles, darling, not. Simon Templer, this is Charles Glenway, our uh, author. The rat deserts the sinking ship. You thought the play was pretty hot stuff this time yesterday, Charlie. Oh, uh, how are you, Templer? Thank you. Don't you read, Charlie. And if one simply isn't a playwright, one should face it. Quote, Mercer Bennett, end quote. It was a play before he got hold of it, him and his rewrite. Of course it ended up garbage. It was bound to. Oh, speaking of rewrites, Charles, darling, I got some ideas about the second act. My lines simply have to be fixed, you know. Your lines have to be fixed? Well, you certainly fixed them last night, all right. Why don't you get that dramatic theme much out of your mouth and, and talk? You think it improves things if nobody can hear you? In this case, yes. Am I intruding on anything? No, all right, all right. We, we won't fight, darling. I don't want to. Fine, darling. And you will rewrite my lines in the second act. No. Yes. I'll keep score for you. Who is this guy, anyway? Another Arnold Prince? I was never anything to Arnold Prince but my friend, so I put up the money for your show. How nice were you? Glenway, I hate you. Sorry, darling. No, this way. Oh, oh, Glenway. I'm Cynthia. <laughs> Sorry, old man. Shall I leave? Not at all, not at all. I mean, uh, don't rush off. About the notices, Charlie, darling. Disregard them. Of course, the play is bad. The thing to remember is that I have carried worse plays than this. You were younger then. Jealousy, rearing its juvenile head. But it's a good thing you're here, Glenway. There's a lot of rewriting and fixing to be done. And you might possibly be of some help to me. I have an earth-shaking suggestion. Why not just do the play as it was written in the first place? You're questioning my knowledge of the theater. I think you're over the hill, Jack. Pay no attention to this disturbler, Mason. Ah, please. I find your conduct unprofessional, Glenway. We the theater. And I find your conduct unbecoming to your fellow members in the Townsend Club, Bennett. And, hmm? 
What did you say, Templar? I have been up since dawn trying to prevent a murder about which I now feel almost indifferent. I have foregone my breakfast, but I find myself unable and unwilling to do so another second. If anyone wants me, I could be in the restaurant on the corner, saving a life near and dear to me, my own farewell Bastion. <laughs> Sit down, Mr. Jackson, sit down. But I warn you, if you interfere with my eggs benedict with Tabasco sauce, you're a dead man. Uh, Mr. phoned me as you were here, Mr. Templer. He wants you to come to the play tonight. I have seen the play. And every horrible detail is etched with acid on the dark mirror of my mind. You know, you talk just like Mercer. It must be contagious. Oh, we just got word, Mr. Templer. The play is closing tonight. A two-day run. Just ahead of the lynch mob. You carry insurance on your client, Mr. Jackson? Sure. And put him in another disaster like this and he'll need it. Oh, but what I wanted to tell you, Mr. Templer, was this. Mercer's worried about the prophecy, or whatever you want to call it. He's afraid that something will happen to Shari. And tonight's the last night for it to happen. You'll be there, Mr. Templer? Mm. Against my complete better judgment, my appreciation of the aesthetic, and in utter disregard of my sanity, I shall be there. <laughs> Oh, hi, Charlie. Where have you been, huh? Out front. Uh, everything all right back here, Mr. Templer? It's all quiet so far. This is the final thing. That, uh, he uh, plays the violin to her before he sat there. Do you think the audience is buying it, Mr. Templer? Well, they haven't torn the stage yet. Well, it's not a bad play, or, or it wasn't at first. It's Bennett, in the real right. Now it's all hash. <laughs> How do you like Charlie? Is an actor? Promising. A bit theatrical, but she should have a good career ahead of him. If nothing happens, nothing will happen. See, there's Prince backstage. I don't like that. I'll keep an eye on her. There's Lola, too. She's... I there. know. She's Bennett's first wife. And she's bitter because he hasn't paid her alimony for years. Look, look. They're going into the death scene. Yeah, I'm watching, Sam. Don't let anything happen to him at the Temple of Time. Hey, what's that on the top table? Huh? Uh, a knife. Uh, it's not a real one. It's like the one Bennett stabbed Charlie with a uh, rubber blade. But if that knife is here, what has Bennett got? What? What? I don't know. Temper. I... Charlie! Charlie, look out! Are you hurt? Oh, what happened, Dennis? No, I, I don't know. I, I thought it was ever like I always do, and, and blood came. I had the wrong knife. Let me tell you. Sorry. Sorry, Dennis. How bad is it? Get a doctor, somebody. No, 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 doctor. Spoil our last moment, Charlie. Like you and me. Oh, it will always be you and me, Charlie. Always. No, no. The realization came too late. The bloom with us and the bud. It's fragrant, secret, forever. Sorry. Next week, East Lynn. Simon. Yes, Bennett. How bad is it, Simon? Is it fatal? Tell me, Simon. I can take it. Oh, the doctor said he had great difficulty finding the scratch. Right? Yes, it was a very minor flesh wound. Sorry, just couldn't resist playing a death bed scene. You've got her well trained. Sensor, do you realize what this will do for three sixes or seventeen? No, what? Publicity! Reams of publicity! The show will run for months! Where is she? Oh, no, she's in a death room. Come on. Sorry. No, it's time to say farewell. Get up, you lovely casino. Put a bandage on that scratch. You've got a show to do tomorrow. But, Lucy, I'm dying. You couldn't be killed with a meat hat. Wait a minute, Benny, that's no way. And I want to see you about some rewrite, Sledway. As soon as I talk to the press, we're not closing. Mercy, you are closing. What? Whether you like it or not, someone tried to kill Charlie tonight, and if the police had to pick their suspects, they would undoubtedly pick you. Yes, yes, perhaps they would. Perhaps they might even be right. Say nothing about this stabbing to anyone. Run one more night, tomorrow night, and let everyone know the closing is definite after that, huh? Why? Why one more night? We've got one more night in which to catch a potential killer. 
See that everyone backstage tonight is here tomorrow. Lola, Prince, Jackson, Glenway, and... And you, certainly, Mercer. Definitely you. <laughs> The thing he loves. And so I have killed you, my love. But the cruel, merciful night which parts our flesh shall bring us yet together in a together which is forever. I am ready, officer. Nothing happened. The plane's over, Mr. Cousin. Nothing happened. Charlie's safe. Not quite yet, sir. Well, what do you mean? Well, Simon, the row is over. The play is finished. And the leading man did not kill his leading woman. No, he didn't, Master. Come on, Charlie, let's get out of here. No, Charles. Why not, Simon? The play is over. Not quite yet, Master. You forget that in your own play, Charlie, the murder occurred at six minutes past eleven. It's now just ten forty-five. You're suggesting we stay here until six after eleven? I'm suggesting it very strongly. Charles, would you ask Lola, Arnold Prince, and Stuart Jackson to join us? They're all backstage. Okay, Mr. Templer. What are you expecting, Simon? Sorry, I'm expecting another attempt on your life. There have been two already. I intend to see that this is the final one. But what if it's a success? If my theory is correct, it won't be. The saint is never wrong, Charlie. Are you? Mm, well, hardly ever. <laughs> Let's join the others, shall we? I'm giving a theater party. <laughs> How much longer are we going to have to sit here, Templar? Well, just a few minutes, Mr. Prince. It's after 11 now. I'm getting very dry, Simon, old boy. Patience, Lola, patience. It's creepy in here with everyone gone. I don't like being the bench in the class. We have a whole squad of protectors, Charlie. Except that one of them could be a murderer. Hey, got any theories on the case, Mr. Templar? Oh, a few, Jackson. Huh. Three minutes after 11. Well, I guess we've got time to hear some of them. It will pass the time. In this case, the question seems to be motive. Who would profit by killing Sally? Or who would profit by framing Bennett here with the killing of Sally? Always presuming that the assailant is not Bennett himself. Then you? It's Arnold Prince. A motive, certainly. I agree with you. A rejected shooter who feels himself used badly. He's a little way you... Gentlemen, gentlemen, no violence until six after eleven. Mr. Prince lost money he could ill afford to lose. He thought he lost Miss Babcock to Mr. Bennett, and so had reason to hate them both. Stick around, Mr. Prince. Don't worry. I wouldn't miss Sally's murder for twice as much dough as I poured in this rap. Oh, uh, Miss Lola Enright. A motive, perhaps? Love. Desperate, hopeless love for this road company, Barrymore, and hatred for the younger rival. Right, Simon? Couldn't have done it better myself. I'll stick around, Simon. Mr. Mercer Bennett. A strange fixation that he is destined to carry out whatever roles he plays on the stage. A mania, perhaps. I've tried to get him to an analyst, Mr. Templer, many times. Ask him. That's objection. Tempers are getting edgy as we approach the hour. Mr. Charles Glenway, one of the best of motives. What? Oh, I might warn you, I don't know if the electrician knows we're still here, so we might find ourselves in the darkness. Simon! And then it might not happen at all. That's where are we, are Oh, yes, yes, uh, Charles Glenn. Oh, Charlie couldn't do it, Simon. Oh, oh, all right, drop it, you. Drop it, or I'm going to break your wrist. Drop it. There. All right, Sam, you can put the lights back on. Sam! Run away, Mr. Tripler! Oh, there. What happened? Who was it? Jackson. Yes, Jackson. Pick up his knife, Charlie. Yes, sure. Anything to say, Mr. Jackson? Plenty. But not here, my fella. But why Jackson Templar? He was my agent. He was making a good living out of me. Not good enough. He was also your business manager. He told you you were paying alimony to all four of your ex-wives. Lola hasn't gotten anything in years, right? Right. Yeah, well, this suggested the juggling of your books. And then I'm always suspicious of business managers anyway. Uh, he also told me he had your life insured. 
If you were to die for the murder of Sari Babcock, Jackson would be a rich man and no questions asked about his books either. But why, Jackson? You are still collecting commissions from me? Shall I tell him, Jackson? Or will you? I'll tell him. You're just about through, you big ham. You can't play leading men anymore. You're too old. Ah, oh, sharper than the serpent's tooth. Mm, the French say, Cherche la femme. The Anglo-Saxons say, Cherche la financial angle. Anything I've left out, Jackson? Yes. I hate actors. I've always hated them. And Bennett, I hate it worst of all. Sneering at us all the time. Running us down behind our back. I hate them! Mm, I've always suspected this about agents. <laughs> I must be more careful. Now, come along, Jackson. I can get you a long contract with no option. Uh, Templer. Yes, Mister. After you turned Jackson in, uh, you didn't give the full story to the papers, did you? The, yes, uh, the full story. Not yet. Why? Don't. Don't as a favor to me. Oh, but this will be wonderful publicity for your show. It will run forever. I'd rather you to be. But why, Mercer? Well, uh, uh, Jackson's uh, statement about me being too old for leaves. Uh, uh, of course, it's totally untrue, but if word of a charge like that gets around so business, well, you know... Yes, I see, I see. Uh, my lips, you see. Thanks, Templar. Thanks. Honey, maybe the trouble is I'm not wearing a tight enough girdle, or maybe that's the like to nice acting. You know, Jackson may have been right. <laughs> you have been listening to another transcribed adventure of the Saint. The Robin Hood of Modern Crime. Now here's our star, Vincent Price. Ladies and gentlemen, it's difficult to comprehend the fact that you can hold life itself in the palm of your hand. The shape it takes isn't particularly dramatic. It's as simple as this. A few coins, a few dollars, your contribution to the Red Cross. The life you hold is that of some unknown person who will be restored to health through the Red Cross National Blood Program. That program is already in its second year. It still hasn't been fully developed. It still isn't bringing the amazing medicine of whole blood to all those who need it. That won't come without more doctors, nurses, technicians, and equipment. That won't come without your help. The only thing that makes it possible for the Red Cross to carry on its mission of mercy. More than 1,500 hospitals have been supplied free of charge with blood and blood derivatives. More than half a million pints have already been provided for medical use. And yet this is only part of the Red Cross program. The Red Cross follows in the wake of disasters of all kinds, feeding the injured, feeding the hungry, and sheltering the homeless. From the Red Cross emanates a network of services to the armed forces, to veterans, to the community as a whole. The complete cost of all these operations for the next year will be $67 million. But the cost to you is whatever you can give to help the helpless. Remember, all of us can help through the Red Cross. This is Vincent Price inviting you to join us again next week at this same time for another exciting adventure of the saint. Good night. Maggie Morley, Lola. Prince was played by Stanley Farrar and Charlie by Bob Clark. Harry Brown was the doorman. The Saints, based on characters created by Leslie Charters, is a James L. Sapphire production and is directed by Helen Mack. Vincent Price is soon to be seen co-starring in RKO's production of This Kind of Woman. All you Saints fans will be glad to know that Mr. Price is guest editor of the January issue of Inside Detective, world's largest selling detective magazine. Your announcer, Don Stanton. Three times means good times on NBC. 
chimes are ringing for tonight's broadcast of the big show, Radio's Greatest Spectacle. Your stars for this evening's big show, in addition to the unpredictable Tallulah, will be Louis Calhoun, Jimmy Durante, Jack Carter, Martha Ray, and many, many more. For drama tonight, Theater Guild on the Air presents a one-hour adaptation of the fascinating story Trilby, starring Rex Harrison and Teresa... Adventures of the Saints, starring Vincent Price. The Saints, based on characters created by Leslie Trotter and known to millions from books, magazines, and motion pictures. The Robin Hood of modern crime now comes transcribed to radio, starring Hollywood's brilliant and talented actor Vincent Price as... Hi, Mr. Templer. Theodore. Excuse me while I drag her in, huh? Drag her. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, she is in. Good. She is a very nice tuba, Mr. Templer. Um, perhaps. I will take her out of the case now. And Theodore, if you lift that confounded thing to your lips, you're a dead man. You do not have to get violent, Mr. Templer. I don't. <laughs> Theodore, you forget that on one occasion you trapped me. I have heard you play that thing. Well, I have never before nor since wanted to be deaf. Well, Mr. Templer, I have been practicing since then. Are you trying to tell me you now play better? Well, louder. Goodbye, Theodore. I have got a problem. I don't doubt it. But not what you think. It ain't the neighbors. Oh, they've all moved out, huh? The landlord nailed my windows down. Oh, he's a man of genius. My problem is something else. It would help if I... Keep my... away from that tuba. But I only want to play... I've one... never strangled anyone yet, but there can always be a first time. Okay, I won't demonstrate. But you heard me play. Five years of my life went down the drain on that unhappy day. What did I play for you? You had a title? Well, I guess it don't really matter. On account of I only know one piece, so... Well, anyways, that's what I played for Mr. Stanley. Sure. Who immediately and no doubt happily proceeded to return to Africa, yodeling for living things. Nah. Mr. Stanley is hard of hearing? No. He is a maniac? Nah. He hates music. No, he is the guy who owns the Stanley Casino, which is kind of upstate and is a very swanky roadhouse-type roadhouse. Oh, you had him tied to a chair. Mr. Templer, he asked me to play. He called me up and asked me to come over and play. And? And after he heard me play, he hired me. Oh? To do what? Sweep the roadhouse? To play the tuba in his band. You know, it doesn't happen very often, but tonight it happens. Words have failed me. Not only has Mr. Stanley hired me, but he is going to pay me a hundred bucks a week. And although he's going to pay me a hundred bucks a week, he also handed over a hundred bucks in advance. In cash. <laughs> Theodore, I suppose I should congratulate you. Oh, thanks. But what's your problem? Mr. Templer, I love to play the tuba. But I don't play it good, I know that. You're an honest man, Theodore. Even I sometimes can't stand the sounds I make. <laughs> Mr. Templer, nobody would pay me dough to play if it was legitimate. You may be right, Theodore. So what should I do? I still got the whole hundred bucks. Should I give it back to Mr. Stanley? Well, what kind of a man is he, anyway, by reputation? From what I have heard around, he is a very big operator type. And I do not think he has had a reputation ever since he was expelled from reform school. Oh, why was he expelled? Oh, he lowered the tone of the place. Hmm. Theodore, when do you start working for him? I make my debut tonight. Debut? I see. So what I'm asking you, Mr. Templer, is will you please be there when I debut? That means there will be at least one friend of mine in the audience, and I've got a feeling I am going to need a friend. You may be right, Theodore, but if the roadhouse is the kind of place most roadhouses are, the patrons will be thinking of other things than music anyway. <laughs> yeah, but suppose they think of murder. Mr. Templer. Yes, Louis? It ain't none of my business. Will that stop you? No. I didn't think it would. One of these days, I'm going to hail somebody else's cab. And then what happens to my wife and my six? No, no, don't, don't, don't say it. I haven't got a wife and six kids. You never will have if you don't keep your eye on the road. Up here in the country, what should I run into? A tree. True. Yeah, but Mr. Temple, I started to ask you something. You're going to the Stanley Casino. 
The Stanley Casino is in the country, Westchester, Louis. You know, the same thing. Also, the Stanley Casino is a very romantic place. Fellas take their girls there. Now, you're not uh, equipped with a girl, therefore... Why? So why am I going there? To listen to a friend of mine play the tuba. Well, one thing you can say for that, it's different. It's also true. Yeah. Mr. Temple, I'm not saying I can understand why a guy would want to play a tuba in the first place, but maybe he's got a reason. But for somebody to voluntarily listen to him, then there's no... <laughs> I'm fond of Theodore, Louis. I have a feeling he may be in trouble. Oh, that I can understand. You see, he must have been hired for a reason that has nothing to do with his tuba play. Now, what it is, I can't imagine. Maybe you should have stopped him. I couldn't, Louie. It was a job, and... Oh, I don't know. Maybe I should have. Maybe not. I feel a little like Hamlet. Oh, this I got a feeling I'm going to regret. What do you mean you feel like Hamlet? Well, he couldn't decide either. Of course, you remember his famous soliloquy. I think the children should ought to be sent to bed right now. The one that begins, tuba or not tuba, that is the question. <laughs> Oh, it's a nice choice, Mr. Templer. So it is. Nice of you to ask me in for dinner. Can you afford it? Yeah, the prices are a little high. Yeah, my steak would have bought a cow, yeah, perhaps, but it wouldn't have bought a floor show. And judging from the decor, the floor will shortly have plenty to show. I wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> Embarrassed, maybe, but surprised, no. Hey, look, the band is climbing into the bank, sir. Yeah, I know. The only trouble is... Oh, I don't see no tuba. No Theodore, either. Maybe he got fired before he even started to play. No. Louis, I've um, finished my dinner. Don't have to suggest it for a while yet. So if you want to go play a visit or something, I very definitely do. Come along. Okay. Only where are we going? Well, there's a door at the left of the bandstand. Several people have used it. We might try. Could be maybe an extra. And then the head waiter will stop it. Yeah, so, so we try it. Very nice hallway. Got walls on both sides. Not to mention the roof. Yeah, well, light coming through the transom of that door up ahead. Mr. Templer, we're looking for Theodore. We're looking at the moment for anyone we can find. I don't hear much noise coming out of that room. Mm. This might be Stanley's office. Come in. Uh, good evening, Mr. Uh, Stanley. Ah, mm -hmm. Yes, sir, gentlemen? Yes. Yeah. Well, of course, I'm always delighted to see Jesse in person, but uh, I'm sure my head waiter will do anything to satisfy you. If Tell me, uh, uh, does he employ the musicians for your orchestra? Are you musicians? Well, not exactly. We're interested in one of your musicians. That's all? Uh, which one? Theodore. Theodore Cousin. Cousin? Cousin. Mm. Well, I'm sorry, but the name isn't familiar. I, of course, I know all the boys in the band, of course. Uh, what does he play? He, uh, well, he himself, the Cuba. Cuba? Hmm. Well, I'm sorry, but uh, we don't have a tuba in my band. What made you think your friend Theodore might be playing for me? A oh, rumor. Well, I'm afraid it's incorrect. Well, however, if your friend's a good man, you know, <laughs> the novelty might be worth something. Bring him along to me, and I'll, I'll see. Hmm? Oh, that would be very nice, thank you. And we're thinking of the casino, that's all. And now, uh, why don't you gentlemen run along and enjoy the floor show? Oh, thank you, thank you. That's exactly what we'll do. My apologies for having intruded. Not at all, not at all. It's a pleasure to meet you. Good night. Good night. Good night. Oh, real courtly type, huh? Mm -hmm. Very. Come along, Mary. Hey, this ain't the way back to the floor. I know it isn't. We're not returning there. Why not? We don't approve a floor show? It's not that. That's the building would be around this abandoned. Mr. Templer, I could lend you a few bucks if you're short and you're trying to duck the dinner bill, you know, but it isn't money I'm worrying about at the moment. These right back to the casino floor, which is bad. Therefore, we're not to... Yeah, that's good. Go so on. Okay. You oh. don't know what's upstairs, but at least it may not be as bad as that. Is that good? It isn't much likely to happen down here. What makes you think something's liable to happen downstairs? The instant I mentioned Theodore to Stanley, he casually pressed the button at the side of his desk. The button which I suspect is his equivalent to a danger signal. Danger to who? I'm afraid, Louis, to us. Oh. I need the landing and uh, another hallway. Oh, I'll have to try. Another door on this side. Also oh, locked. 
So far, all this upstairs consists of is a lot of doors which are locked. The rooms are probably used for storage. Only we realized, Dottie, that we didn't return to the floor, so... The back door was guarded, so we know we didn't leave through it. Which means uh, he'll come up and see us sometimes, and there's sometimes there's going to be now. It is. Because I don't know whether Stanley intends anything too drastic. We haven't seen the other one. Let's suppose we had. Yeah, let's try this door. This one's open. What? Right. Let's see. We better didn't use some sweet air in there, so we should... Maybe they jumped up here. That ain't very strong. Window over on this side. Mm -hmm. Room with a view. Yes? Yeah, what well, we've got is a view of the parking lot. Directly below the window is an extension of the building proper. The temple, this is the time to get architects the window. Oh. Oh. It's cold out. Wrap. Out. The roof of the extension is only a few feet below. Oh, it's out. Roof, Mr. Temple. Good. Move over. <laughs> so we're out on the roof. Oh? So? Wait a minute, Louis. Huh? Someone down there in the parking lot. Oh, yeah? And even from here, I can see he's carrying something besides small things in his right hand coat pocket. Armed and unquestionably forewarned. Room service back in the room at the station. Yes, so it's up to the ground. Louis, jump down. Jump? But what the hell? that man down there come to you? You stay right down below the edge of the roof. I'm caught. You ain't quick. I don't think I like people who go around looking for Theodore. Maybe they can't help it. It keeps the neurosis or something. Yeah, I might want to offer Theodore a job. Doing what? Well, uh, playing the tuba in an orchestra. And I'm the queen of Transylvania. You'll have to do better than that, Mr. Temple. Oh, 
That car. Unless I'm guessing badly, the number of people you dislike is shortly going to be increased. I don't... That car which just stopped outside may be bringing more secrets to Theodore. Don't move, please. See anything interesting through that window? No, just stop it. Somebody's getting... Hold oh. oh, you say where you are. And don't try to call me. Hey, look at it. Well, right out the back door. That's not polite. No point in following us. I'd rather find her than Theodore in yeah, another me. room. That door. You still think maybe Theodore is here? I don't know. This is the bedroom. And... Oh, well. Well, what, you, you found Theodore? On the bed, Louis. Lying on a lovely white sheet. Whoa, whoa, whoa. He's been shot full of holes. Don't look good on him. No. no he's dead. Thoroughly dead, but... Uh... That's not Theodore. The doorbell. Doubt it'll be Mr. Stanley and his friends, however. Mr. Temple, this is no time to pick a call from the box. Well, then. Yeah. All right, come on. We will still make it if they haven't put anyone on the back door. And if they have, let's not cross any bridges until they collapse under it, huh? Something with what you just said. Yeah, uh, here. Fire, Yeah, yeah, I know. No bridges. We ought to be able to make it out of the building. You know something? This is one time I would like to run into a cop who'll ask me where's the fire. There's a more important question, Louis. Where is Theodore? Look, Mr. Tesla, we had enough escapes for tonight? I don't know. Louis, the corpse back in Theodore's apartment was a man named Max Carter. Oh, that's why you swiped his wallet. There wasn't nobody around to introduce him to him. Yeah, that's right. Does that wallet also tell you why he was murdered? No. Therefore, yeah. Suppose we stop at the nearest drugstore. Mr. Temple, I couldn't eat a thing. That's not what we need a drugstore for. Now, look, there's one up ahead, Louis. Okay. Hey, no, Mr. Temple. Wouldn't you have thought that whoever killed that Carter guy could have been smart enough at least to swipe the wallet so that the body wouldn't have been immediately identified? No. Now, I suspect it was very important to the killer that the body be identified, and quickly. I will say, aha. Uh-huh. Aha. Uh-huh. 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 This, this makes me sound smart like I understood what you said. <laughs> so now I can be a dope again. We're in the drugstore now, what? Okay, so we we'll find a phone booth. And we make a phone call. Well, if you'd have had a chance at least to get a phone number, I would know who you were phoning. But you didn't. So who you phone? The police. Louis, I've got to find out who Max Carter is. Lieutenant Archer is. Oh, Lieutenant, it's Simon Temper. The lieutenant just left for the upper Amazon. Good night. Well, what's the matter with the lower Amazon? Too low. <laughs> Simon, what can I do for you? Who is Max Carter? Crook, drug addict, blackmailer. A wholesome little character. I see. Suppose he was found murdered. I'd give three cheers. And after that, you'd suspect whom? Killing Carter? Uh. Thousands of people. But the first guy I tried to get in touch with would be a little tuba player named Theodore Coogan. Theodore Coogan? Why, Lieutenant? Well, Coogan was engaged to a girl named Wendy Green. Very much in love with her. She committed suicide. Because of Carter, huh? Yep. So, unless Theodore had an ironclad alibi... Lieutenant, Lieutenant, not ironclad. That went out with the bustle. Simon, why are you interested? In the bustle? No, in Carter. Well, maybe he has a bustle. Goodbye, Lieutenant. <laughs> That's interesting. What is it? Louis, I am about to ruin an old problem. Oh, Mr. Temple, be careful. It's sometimes necessary to pay the piper, it's true. But then it may also be necessary to prevent him from piping. Mm-hmm. This is Mr. Beckham again. <laughs> Did the lieutenant mention why he would suspect Theodore? Yes, thought it was the reason for a suicide. If a girl named Wendy Green, Theodore was going to marry him. Oh, that's plenty motive here. Okay, the cab. <laughs> well, where to? Oh, uh, twice around the park. What? Mr. Templer, you're not the man you used to be. <laughs> Don't be silly, Louie. The Queen of Transylvania has joined us. Huh? Uh-huh. I've been following you, too. Well, we're flattered. When you stopped, I paid off my cab and decided to use yours. Oh, cozy? Excuse me. Mr. Temple, why were you looking for Theodore? I wasn't. Not in his apartment, at any rate. What were you looking for? You know that as well as I do. You'd better tell me, anyway. 
You know, you really should have words with your dressmaker, your revolver's showing again. Besides, do I really have to tell you? You were in the bedroom. No, I didn't have a chance to look. I'm... Go on, start the car. I start, Mr. Thompson? You start, Louie. Now, suppose you tell me what you were looking for. I'm the one who has the gun. I don't have to answer any questions. Not mine, perhaps. The police, however, will be ruder and more insistent. The police? Mm. Excuse me for interrupting, Mr. Templer, but uh, we are being followed. Oh, by someone else beside the queen here? <laughs> Must make quite a procession. Louis, can you get any more speed out of this car? Or is the car right in front of me going slow? Then you might try passing it. Okay. Hey, he's swinging over right in front of us. Oh, oh. 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 you like that? Well, Mr. Stanley is thorough. One car in front of us, one behind. They were boxed in. Leaving the stripper? Louis will sue you, Mr. Stanley. He's very touchy around the fenders. Oh, indeed. Well, I can that be my beautiful moon? I've got a gun. Half a dozen of my boys surrounding the cab. You better let me have that gun. Oh. Thank you. Now then. We'll all join in my car. I uh, think you'll find it more comfortable. But I like it here. Besides, your car is black. It reminds me of a funeral. You know, that's a very interesting comment because that may be precisely where all of you are going. <laughs> Casino, huh? It's beginning to feel like my little home away from home. Well, I'm so glad. The back way, boys. Come on, come on. You don't have to push. My office. No one minds. Oh, no, my love? I don't mind. Sure. You think you're going to ask me to? No. But I mind. Shut up. All right. I just don't like to be overlooked. Make yourselves comfortable. My boys will remain here to keep us coming. Now then, what's to do about you? Not you? quite yet. Mr. Stanley, I need five minutes of your time. Five minutes? Well, I might be able to spare them. Why would Mona here have wanted Max Carter dead? An interesting question. I suspect he was blackmailing him. Mona has been a naughty girl. On occasion. If she was in Theodore's apartment in order to kill... I wouldn't kill Theodore. We're friends. I beg your pardon. I hadn't been thinking of Theodore, however. Mr. Stanley, had you also tired of paying Carter off? The tent you're using bothers me, Templer. Oh, stop. You know as well as I do that Carter's dead. Oh? But, Mona, you told Louie and me that you hadn't been in the bedroom. How did you know Carter was dead? Uh, I, I just guess. That's a very tired attempt, Mona. You know, Templer, you're the bearer of very welcome news. I am. <laughs> then Carter was blackmailing you. Know? Oh, the street silent. However, it's no longer worrying you. Miss Mona's admission. But by the way, Theodore must be on his way home now. Huh? I wouldn't be at all surprised. Although I can't understand why you assume I know anything of Theodore's whereabouts. No? Well, in that case, we may as well leave. Yes, I think so. Will you drop Mona off at police headquarters? I didn't you? kill Carter. I would have liked to, but he was already dead. My dear girl, I suggest that you save that impassioned cry for the jury. What jury? The one that will try her for the murder of Max Carter. Oh, but she won't be tried for that. She didn't murder Carter. Well, I thought so. I'm uh, sure the police would prefer Theodore. Theodore? Of course, Louis. We know he had a magnificent motive. Lieutenant Archer himself said Theodore would be in line for the chair unless he had an alibi. Yeah, but he's got an alibi. <laughs> no, no, no. What Theodore will try to say is that he was hired as a tuba player by Mr. Stanley here. Came to the casino, but instead of being permitted to play, he was bundled into a car, driven about for hours, and then released. Well, that would give him an alibi. If he were believed. But his alibi depends entirely on whether or not Stanley really hired him. Mr. Stanley has already told us he didn't. Yeah, but he could be lying. Possibly, but after a jury heard Theodore play the tuba just once, <laughs> whom would they believe? Yeah. No one would believe Theodore. So Theodore would stand a very good chance of dying in the electric chair. However, oddly enough, Theodore will be believed. Having fun, Templar? First depended on Mona, then on Theodore. Now suddenly you're changing your mind again. 
Well, what's the idea? You'll be believed because first I shall corroborate his story. The jury could think that you were perjuring yourself for a friend. No. Because you see, Stanley, other people besides Mona and Theodore wanted Carter dead. Let's suppose that one of them got Theodore out of his apartment and then put Max Carter's already dead body in there. That would put Theodore, if you'll pardon the expression, on the spot. Well, how would this theoretical person get Theodore out? By making him a fake offer of employment? By seeing to it that no one would later believe in that offer? By also making sure that Theodore would have no alibi for the critical time? That person, according to you, could only be myself. Well, that's a clever theory. More than a theory, Stanley. Carter was shot full of holes. That's how I described it. Yes, the seat on which he was lying on the bed in Theodore's apartment was a lovely white sheet. That's how you described it. But it should have been red with Carter's blood. Therefore, Carter was killed elsewhere and moved to Theodore's apartment. That does it, Temple, I'm afraid. You've been bright enough to keep your mouth shut. What's that? Yes, you said you believe I didn't notify them earlier because Theodore was in your hands. What I did do, however, was leave a matchbook in Carter's pocket. A matchbook? Yes. Yes, one supplied by your management when Louie and I died here. I knew your plan called for one of your men to notify the police anonymously of Carter's death in Theodore's apartment and for us. Okay, open up. You're having company, Mr. Stanley. You'd better open the door. They're calling for you. <laughs> Well, Mr. Templer, we got through it alive. Perhaps, but will we ever be the same? Is that fair, Simon? Well, I never would have met this queen of Transylvania otherwise, so... Uh... Simon. Oh. So? So? So long live the queen. listening to another transcribed adventure of the Saint, the Robin Hood of modern crime. Now here is our star, Vincent Price. Ladies and gentlemen, almost by definition, freedom has been an integral part of America. It is the foundation upon which our political philosophy is based. And now we must reaffirm our faith in that philosophy. This is the sentiment expressed by the crusade for freedom. The purpose of the crusade is simple. First, to bring moral and financial support to a radio station operating in the heart of Europe itself. A radio station which gives the communist-dominated countries a chance to hear the voices of their exiled democratic leaders, to tell the world just what America stands for, and to bring the truth to the ears of subjugated Europe. To reaffirm your faith in freedom, join the crusade for America, for all humanity. This is Vincent Price inviting you to join us again next week at the same time for another exciting adventure of the Saints. Good night. This adventure of the Saints was written by Louis Vitti. Our cast is Maggie Morley. As Mona and Jack Moyle with Theodore, Victor Rodman with Stanley, Frank Gerson, the lieutenant, and Louie is played by Larry Dodkin. The same, based on characters created by Leslie Carter, this is a James L. Fafio production and is directed by Helen Mack. Vincent Price is soon to be seen with Errol Flynn and Michael and Quill in William Marshall's production of Bloodline. Saints fans will be glad to know that the comic books are now available on the newsstand. Three times mean good times on NBC. Today, Cary Grant and Betsy Drake star in the premiere of a delightful newcomer to the NBC Sunday lineup, Mr. and Mrs. Blanding. The top listening, so be sure to hear the Cary Grant as Mr. and Mrs. Blanding later on. Adventures of the Saint, starring Vincent Price. The Saint, based on characters created by Leslie Potter. 
and known to millions from books, magazines, and motion pictures. The Robin Hood of modern crime now comes transcribed to radio, starring Hollywood's brilliant and talented actor Vincent Price as... The Saint. If you will, my friends, you might be the start of the mighty and surging strong. You mean me? You and none other. Robin's a nice friend. Oh, I just happen to like carnival. This gentleman says he likes carnival. And hey, now let us all step up a little closer here while we talk about the greatest attraction on the mighty midway. A test of strength, courage, and endurance attracting attention all over the civilized world and further. <laughs> the joke, friend. Oh, sorry. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I am talking about that little lady inside the tent here that all your friends have told you positively not to miss. The courageous girl who lies, buried alive, what she beat below the surface of the earth. I'm going in, friend, or am I wasting my time? I'm still on the fence. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. When you have heard her name, you have read about her in the papers, and now you are going to see Luna the Fairy Delight Girl, who has lain in her grave on these premises for 222 hours, 36 minutes, and 21 seconds. And is now attempting to break the world record of 244 hours. Ooh, I'll Inside the tent, you will see her, talk to her, ask her any questions that happen to be on your mind. Tell me more. My friend, I don't request that you buy a ticket for this great attraction. I just ask that you put this question to yourself. Yes? Would I have the courage to change places with Mona, the buried alive girl? No. I thank you for your kind attention, and the box office is now open. Oh, uh, one, please. One, please. Oh, hmm. Some things that don't pay to get buried alive. Hey, uh, son, the emphasis is right in front of you. My game? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's game. That's right. It's just <laughs> me and Rubens, I assure you. <laughs> hey, you yeah, are right straight ahead. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Communicate with Mona. Talk down to. Well, all right, I'll talk. Mona! Oh, you gotta get me out of here. I'm going crazy down here. I'm Mona, this is. I've been thinking, Bunky. I've been thinking all day what Andy said just before. I don't want to end up like Andy's right. I don't. And I will if you don't get me out of here. I know I will. I don't want to die, Frankie. Get me out. Mona, this isn't Frankie. This is Simon Templer. Can I help you? Oh, you're not. No, but I'll help you if you'll tell me what you're afraid of. Mona? I am in very good health, and I'm enjoying my physical discomfort as I am looking forward to the world for being buried alive. 244 hours. Pictures of me are available at the box office at Harmonal Hall. Mona, what are you afraid of? I am in very good health, and I'm enjoying my physical discomfort as I am. I am looking forward to you, Daddy. I know, I know, I heard. Hey. What are you doing here? Who are you? I'm Simon Templer, a customer. Who are you? Customer, all right. Excuse me, I, I thought I uh, good. Oh, say, aren't you the strong man? I saw your act a few minutes ago. Segundo, huh? Pretty good, sir. Yeah, pretty good. Tell me, Segundo, what about Mona? Who was Andrew? Andrew? Excuse me, I got a draw. Hey, hey, wait a minute. Maybe that's good for the price of one, eh, friend? Mona and the strong man Segunda. I saw his act before. Quite a large hunk of muscle. I wouldn't like him to step down on my foot. Yeah, the guy is built like a husband. <laughs> <laughs> Only trouble is uh, his motor don't run so good. Oh, a few <laughs> chips light in the head. Huh? A whole stack. Well, you enjoy your chat with Mona? Tell me... Who was Andy? Andy, oh, yeah, that's Andy. That's a real sweetheart. That was Mona's sister. Andy used to do the buried alive act before she died. Oh, a real doubt. Was it an accident? An accident? No, no, it was a weak heart. That Andy, oh, she was all heart. Oh, we miss her. How do you know about her? Tell me about Mona. Why? I might like to help her, that's all. Hey, look, my friend, nobody in this county needs no help from you. We take care of each other. We always have and we always will. Nobody on the outside cares nothing about us, and we don't care nothing about that. Now, beat it. 
Who's the owner of this carnival? He's St. Clair, and a trail is right down the midway, and she'll tell you the same thing I do. I'm hard to discourage. Friends, there's nobody here and needs no help. Friends, you forget that I've heard your joke. See you later. <laughs> Miss Sinclair? Right. Who are you? I'm a customer of your carnival. Well, come in, customer. Sit down. Oh. Thank you, thank you. I wanted to ask a few questions, if you don't mind. <laughs> Where's your question license? My name is Simon Templer, also known as the Pink. Hey, now for my own opinion. <laughs> what do you want to know? I'm interested in Andrew. Andrew? Mm-hmm. They never come any better. Every hundred years or so, you meet somebody nice in the Klaus Staff Circuit. And Andrew is one of them. Now she's gone, and the crumbs remain. Anything peculiar about the way she died? Sudden, that's all. Hard. Hard. And her sister Mona took her place. Yep. Mona's a good kid. But a kid. Any chance of her being brought up from the living grave thing? Oh. I got the impression she didn't like it down there. No, you did. You know something? I don't like running this free circuit of a carnival either. Some mornings I don't even like living. But I don't come running to you about it, Mr. Templin. You won't bring her up, then? No. I got nothing to say about it anyway. Except to her husband, Frankie Fowler. You catch his act? Frankie the tattoo boy? I'm afraid I'm not an art lover. Well, he's no Mona Lisa, Jack. Any more questions? Did I get any more answers? No. But when a woman says no, that's not always what she means. Jack, that's an entirely different type of question. <laughs> Hello. Anybody here? Yeah. Frankie, I'd uh, like to talk to you. Who are you? My name is Simon Templer, thank you. What do you want? Well, I've always been interested in tattoos. I, I think they're fascinating. Huh? Mm. Almost as fascinating as the people who do them. Oh, a fan. Come in, come in. Thank you, thank you. You know, the, uh, the con is closer than night, but I'm always glad to apply to cut Well, I'm not exactly a customer. I'm a friend of Mona. Mona's got no friend, Simon Temple. Well, let's say a speaking acquaintance. Did you know Angie, thank you? No one. Angie was my wife. Wonderful girl. Almost killed me when she passed away. Omaha. She's very dead. I couldn't leave her behind. Not with strangers. Call me sentimental if you want to, but that's the way I felt. You see that urn over there on the table? Now Angie's with me always. Yeah, I, uh, I see. They say us carny people got no heart. Hey, you like to see some real artistic work in tattoo, Mr. Temple? Well, maybe some other time. Frank. Look at that. Look at that. Here. Monitor in the Merrimack. Civil War. Authentic. 100%. Oh, they don't do work like that anymore. Frankie, I, uh... Everything I got on me is art. Art! I seen a guy the other day asking what he had on. He said, surrealism. Surrealism. I told him right out. I said, the guy that tattooed that on you ain't American. That's what I told him, and I'll stand by it. <laughs> surrealism. Thank you. I've been talking to Mona. What about? She's very too far under the earth, thank you. She wants to come up. Well, she does, thank you. Did you say anything else, thank you? I just got the impression she was frightened down there. Well, let her be. Let her stay there. She's getting just like Andy. Oh, Angie was frightened? Well, no, no, that's not what I meant. Angie, Angie was the greatest. It's just that they're sisters, see? It's... What's this to you? Nothing, except I think it might be better if you brought Mona up. Oh, you do. You do. Segundo! Oh, thank you. Come in here. Now you see what happens to guys who get noticed. Afraid to do your own strong arm work, eh, Frankie? Why, you... Here I am. Look, it's the gun go. This guy came in here saying bad things about him. Uh, yeah. You shouldn't have said that, Mr. Not about him. I don't like nobody to say bad things about him. I'm trying to help Mr. Gundo. And Mona. Don't listen to him, Mr. Gundo. Get it. I don't trust him. Get him again, Mr. Gundo. Throw him out. Yeah. You shouldn't have said bad things about him. Oh, 
Carter was closed for the night, Fred. Uh, Why don't you go home and sleep? Oh, wait till I find my head. What happened? Well, uh, let's say too much cotton candy and circus peanuts, huh? Drink help you out? Oh, miserable. Lead the way. Don't mind drinking with a dwarf, do you? Uh, Why should I? Some people do. Oh, Mm, my name's Carlos. Hello. Uh, I'm Simon Temple. Oh, right in here. My home. Uh, one of the wagons. Oh, don't, don't bump your head. Oh, I'll watch it. Here. Pour this down. Thank you, my friend. Oh, my, I needed that. I have to go or... And you stay and talk a while. Oh, I'd like to stay if I may, Carlos. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I very seldom get the chance to talk, Mr. Templer. What is that? Yeah, I'm a ghost rather lonely occupation. Not freak enough to make much money in the carnival, and so much of a freak to be accepted out of it. Oh, I... <laughs> Sorry to burn you in my trouble. Everyone's troubles are everyone else's, Carlos. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Want to tell me about yours? Well, I had a... A call for help tonight from 20 feet under the ground. And I, I just don't know what to do about it. Mona? Yeah. She said she was afraid she would end up like Angie. She wanted to come up, but uh, nothing at all since Angie died of natural causes. That's what they all said. Did you uh, tell anyone else about this? Not directly, no. Frankie refused to let her come up. We got into it. No, throw you out. An understatement, Carl. I have another drink. Yeah. Mona never talked like this before. She was never scared, not like Angie. Mona's got that. It worries me. Go ahead. Oh, thanks. Uh, uh, what about the man who was married to both of them? Frankie. Simon. If you were born a freak like I was, you had no choice. You can be philosophical. But if you make yourself a freak like Frankie did, you gotta hate yourself and everybody else as long as you live. You get two women married. Don't rub it in. I, I thought I shouldn't have jumped it. I'm not always as philosophical as I try to be. Can't help thinking of Mona, buried alive, afraid. Afraid of what? And she mentioned that Angie said something to her just before she died. What? She didn't say. Tell me, uh... How far are we from where Mona is? Just across the midway. You want to go over there? I feel better. Let's go on. Let's go. What about B. St. Clair, Carlos? Uh, can you figure her out? Well, not quite, because I don't think B. can figure herself out. She hasn't had much fun either. I hope she gets some. Uh, this is Mona's tent, isn't it? Anybody around? Mm. Not at all. Let's go in. Mona! Mona! Huh. Oh, she must be asleep. Well, let me try. Mona! Can you hear me? Mona! She's not asleep. There's something wrong. Mona! Mona, it's Carlos! Mona! What was it she said? You might wind up like Andy. Mona! Carlos, go get every man you can and every shovel and then get a doctor and an ambulance. Yeah. You want me to break the record. Believe you will. Think you will. Like Andy. <laughs> Down to her beat? Oh, I think so. It's only about eight feet. We advertise 20, but eight is enough. What do you think happened, Carlos? I don't know. But I'm the Angie. A heart attack, you know that. Do I? She's just faded, maybe. Maybe this is all about nothing. I doubt it, Frankie. So do you. What do you have to come nosing in for, Temple? Be and I don't need you. We can get one Me of the... and you? All of us, that's what I mean. You mean you'd rather have left it down there? I'm not taking this from you. I'm... Frankie! Frankie! Oh, come on, you guys. Grab it. Grab it. Come on. Come 
There, there now. Give me a hand with the lid. You better come over here, Doctor. Right, Mr. Pepper. Now, there. What is it, Doctor? Well, she's still breathing, but that's about all. Any symptoms? If I had to make a guess, symptoms are poison. Get her over to the ambulance. Oh, Mr. Templer. Mr. Templer. I'm sorry I didn't get her up sooner. I should have made it cleaner, but I didn't know who to trust. But do you now? Just who not to trust. And who's that? Everyone. <laughs> How is she this morning, Doctor? Oh, she's a sick girl, but she'll live. We got her in time. Oh, I'm glad. What caused it? Poison of some kind, definitely. I'm waiting for a lab report. Uh, may I see her? Yes, go ahead, Mr. Templer. She's rational now. Just asking Angie to forgive her before... Forgive her for what? Well, she didn't say. They usually don't. Don't stay too long. Oh, all right, Doctor. Good morning, Mona. Who are you? I'm a Templar. I spoke to you down the tube yesterday. You thought at first I was Frankie. I don't remember. Don't you? You said you were afraid you might end up like Angie. She said something to you before she died, Mona. What was it? I don't remember. She didn't say anything. You uh, know what happened to you last night, Mona? No. There was poison in your food that was lowered through the tube. You got any idea who did it? Poison? I don't believe it. Well, police will find I out. I don't want the police to... I did it. I took it myself. What time? Well, I don't remember, but I took it. Why did you want Angie to forgive you, Mona? Who told you that? I mean, you're making that up. I'm trying to help you, Mona. I don't need help. I want Frankie. I want him back. Oh, I want him back. All right, all right. I'll find him for you. <laughs> How are you, B? How's Mona, Simon? Better, Carlos. I was at the hospital all day. Had to wait for the lab reports on the poison. Who did it? Oh, it could have been put there by anyone. So the police know? Not yet. Mona claims she took it herself. She's obviously protecting someone, or is afraid of someone. But who? B, you don't have to answer unless you want to. What, Simon? Has there been anything between you and Frankie? Well, everybody gets lonely. Are you still lonely? Jack? I got no ambition to travel around the country and earn. That answer? That's good enough. If I can wind this thing up tonight, will the two of you help me? You especially, Carlos. Anything I can, Simon. All right. You're not closing the carnival down tonight, do you? We'll stay open if you say so. Well, it might make it easier. Carlos, you go to Frankie's tailor while he's doing his show and take the urn. Would you mind doing that? I'll do it. Good. Put it in a safe place, doesn't matter where, and come back to the trailer. All three of us will wait for Frankie to come back after his show. What happens then? I don't know for sure, but I have a theory. Hope it's right. The question. What happens if it's not right? See? That's an entirely different type of question. Simon, why do we have to wait in the dark for Frankie? It's creepy in here. He might not come in if he saw the light. Do you mind, Carlos? Not a bit. The guy is a friend of mine. Well, I'm getting something. So you can leave if you want to. I might be able to handle what I have to do. Oh, well, wow. Give me a chance to fight, will you? How about you, Carlos? Oh, I'm enjoying it, Mr. Templer. Gives me a chance to feel important. I don't get many chances like that. It's like this late. You should have been here by now. Well, maybe business is good tonight. It usually is. Oh, Oh, B, I uh, don't want to be personal, but running a carnival is just a look at me. Jack, I don't want to brag, but I am loaded. Mm, I know, sorry. My last year alone, I... Okay. Well, Frankie, you're all right. Yeah, I'm all right. Well, good evening, Frankie. What is it, B? I couldn't keep away, Frankie, but I brought my chaperone. Well, get him out of here. Some chaperone. A saint and a dwarf. I didn't choose to be a freak, Frankie. That's the difference. What's going on? Look around, Frankie. Anything missing? What do you mean? <clears throat> the iron. Where is it? What'd you do with it? We took it. You took it? Segundo, come in here. I don't think you'll need Segundo this time. No? Sit down, Frankie. If you don't like that seat, I can get you a hotter one. 
you. Think you know something? I'm nosy, Frank. Very nosy, as you pointed out. What is this, Frank? This guy Temple against the Gundo. He's been saying bad things and doing bad things. He took Angie's arm. Easy, Segundo. You'll want to hear this, too. Yeah, what? Don't wait, Segundo. He's just stalling. Go get it. You took the arm. Segundo, sit down. No. Segundo, wait in here. Wait in here. Okay, Carlos, I put. Good. It's about Angie, Segundo. This morning and last night, Mona was calling out for Angie to forgive her. For what? Because she's been going around with you, Frankie, while you were married to her older sister. I loved Angie. And how long after she died did you marry Mona? Six weeks. I couldn't help it if the kid was crazy about me. You couldn't help it when you killed Angie with poison. Who says I did? Where's the evidence? You thought there wasn't any. It was almost a smart job, Frankie, but you couldn't pull anything all the way smart. It was only half smart, and that can be fatal. If you think I'm going to stand here and listen to this stuff... You'll stand and you'll listen. Murderers hardly ever change tactics, Frankie. The poison showed up in Mona's stomach. We couldn't prove that on you, but there are certain poisons that can be traced even after cremation. The kind you use is one. Now, do you begin to get the point? It's not true. You can't trace a Kenya car. Yes, you can. I could remember. I could have had that analyzed long ago. Now, wait a minute. You're guessing at this. Are we? Where's the urn? You're guessing at a motive. I didn't kill Angie. Then why would I want to kill Mona? Big as big. You were after V. She was uh, loaded. It's all a lie. I, I, I mean, V and I. Segundo, stay away from me. That gun away, thank you. No. I'll use it if you don't stay back, Segundo. Okay. You kill Angie. I tell you, nobody killed her. She, she had a weak heart. That was it, a weak heart. Segundo, listen to me. You kill Angie. Stay back. Stay back. He's going to shoot you. Never done no harm. Stay back, I'm warning. Love you and you'll give up all. Don't come no closer, I mean it. Stay back. 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 Carlos, let him go! Let him go! Oh, Carlos, stop! Oh. I don't know why you hurt him, oh. Dad. No. Oh. Oh, I think one was a clean miss. The other two got him in the shoulder. And he'll live. Here, let me help you up, Gundo. Come on, now. Sit down, sit down. Please, get a doctor. All right, all right, Dad. Quite a man, Mr. Gundo. Not so strong upstairs. Got in the heart? Plenty. Yeah, he almost killed Frank. I'm almost sorry he didn't. Frankie doesn't deserve to live. Someone else will decide that. What's the gun, though, Jay? I wish I could have done it, Frank. In my hands. I wish I could have done it. Carlos. I never told anybody, Frank. I never told her. She never guessed. But I love Andy, too. Make a wonderful bartender. That would be refined. Just a lovely dream, a wild, lovely dream. You 
have been listening to another transcribed adventure of the Saint, the Robin Hood of modern crime. And now here is our star, Vincent Price. Ladies and gentlemen, your life is your own. It's yours to God when danger is near. And danger is never absent from the highways of America, where some 30,000 persons are killed every year. Only you can take the responsibility for averting the most tragic of all traffic accidents, the accident that happens to you. You can take that responsibility by recognizing the dangers of the road and by obeying the laws that have been made to protect your life. In almost every single motor accident reported by the National Safety Council, there was at least one violation of traffic regulations. The most common violation was speed. Speed too great for safety. Speed to save a few seconds. Speed that spelled out death and tragedy on the road. And, as always, the National Safety Council warns about driving after drinking. It's not an empty warning because fully one quarter of all fatal accidents involve drivers or pedestrians who have been drinking. This is a fact. So when you drive, remember that an accident can happen to you. Learn and obey the traffic laws and don't take the little chances that so frequently result in a smasher. The care you take may save a life, and that life may be your own. This is Vincent Price inviting you to join us again next week at the same time for another exciting adventure of the Saints. Good night. Mary Schiff as Mona, and Sheldon Leonard as the Barker. Bob Jellison was Carlos, Ed Max Segundo. Henny Bacchus played B, Harry Bartell was Frankie, Harry Brown was the Doctor. The Saints, based on characters created by Leslie Sutteris, is a James L. Satya production and is directed by Helen Mack. Vincent Price is soon to be seen co-starring in RKO's production of His Kind of Woman. All you Saints fans will be glad to know that the Saints comic books are on sale at all new stands. Three times mean good times on NBC. Today, Theater Guild on the Air presents the dramatic story, Come Back, Little Sheba, starring Jerry Cooper and Shirley Booth. Sunday also means another 90 wonderful minutes for the big show. And among this Sunday's stars are Jimmy Durante, Fred Allen, Judy Holliday, and many, many more. And, of course, Tallulah will be the MC. And for a sparkling article about the glamorous Tallulah, see the latest issue of Look Magazine, now on sale. This is NBC, the last... The Adventures of the Saint, starring Vincent Price. Saint, based on characters created by Leslie Trotter and known to millions from books, magazines, and motion pictures. The Robin Hood of modern crime now comes transcribed to radio, starring Hollywood's brilliant and talented actor Vincent Price as The Saint. Personally, lady, the name is Louis, but it's Louis. Louis Harry. Okay, but where to? I don't care. You don't care. Yes. I don't like to mention this, lady, but I think you mislaid your groom. What? Of course, the girl gets married. She's kind of excited. Maybe she forgets a little something here and there, but lady, not your husband. I'm not married. Look, you're all dressed up like your bride. You come on and out of that church. They were having a wedding there. They thought they were, but... Oh, oh I want Jimmy. Look, please, lady, oh. don't, 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 don't cry. If I have Jimmy, that's Jimmy, please. Who's Jimmy? I love him, and we were going to get married, and I went to the church, and everybody was there, and said... Jimmy. Yes. Uh-huh. I called everywhere. I know something terrible must have happened to him. Uh-huh. For a girl in your position, you know what I think you need? What? A saint. Uh, Mr. 
Templar. I hope you don't mind our barge. He didn't like this. Of course not, Larry. But you see, this here is... Oh. Uh, I'm Carol Blair. Uh-huh, Miss Blair. But by this time, she's supposed to have been Mrs. Snyder. Yeah, but she ain't on account of Mr. Snyder. Didn't show up at the altar. <laughs> so, Miss Blair, um, please sit down. Thank you. Uh, here, have a hand. I don't want a hand. I want Jimmy. Well, I don't have Jimmy. I might perhaps try to find him. Oh, Mr. Jimmy. Whether I can or not is something else again. However, have you thought of the possibility that he might have changed his mind about matrimony? Oh, no, he wouldn't have. He loves me. Well, Mr. Uh, Temple, there's nothing that could have kept Jimmy from marrying me. Nothing except this. Thank you for bringing me home, Mr. Temple. You're very welcome, Carol. Oh, I'm sorry I cried so much. Well, I'll call you as soon as I have any news. Good night. Yeah. Miss Blair lives in a, in a very mansion, that man? Mm, so she does. Well, let's go, Larry. Okay. Where to? Jane Snyder's apartment. Uh-huh. You think maybe he overslept? I doubt it. And hey, Mr. Templer, I read a book once. So I wouldn't brood about it, Larry. No, listen. In this here book, a girl's fella don't show up to marry her on account of his debt. You know, account of somebody killed him? Oh, well, that would explain why he's dead, all right. <laughs> and so the girl says sound. In those days, girls used to say sound. Yeah, that ain't what Miss Carol Blair said. Well, I guess she didn't read the book. Well, probably too busy clipping her coupon. Oh. She's loaded, huh? She is loaded. Well, funny and everything. Hmm. I wonder if that's what Jane Snyder thought. Huh? Oh, yeah, Miss Blair told us he was broke, yeah. Hey, I got the solution. Yes, Larry. Yeah, maybe he's got a job. Well, this here is a, a very fancy type hallway, Mr. Temple. So it is. Gaudy, but not neat. One C, one C. Mm, yes, it is. How can a guy with no dough afford to live here? Well, we'll ask him if he answers that door bell. Yeah. In. Hello. Yes. Except he's a she. <laughs> Good evening. Uh, may we come in? All right. Thank you. Thank you, Temple. Maybe she's why Snyder didn't show up. I think we stop here, no? Yes, uh, uh, Miss... Um... I am Mary. Oh, Mary. Uh, well, this is Louis. Hello. Yeah, and I'm Simon Temple. Ah, you are the same. I'm afraid I am. Standing in the window here? In this apartment? <laughs> well, right now, I am reading the book, you see. Hmm, book on American history. You're a student. What do you think? I think you graduated. Uh, say, oh, why the book, then? Well, I'm not so long in this country, and I used to learn about... The American people? American men. Oh, they're not that different from Frenchmen. Maybe so, but it's the little difference that counts, hmm? Perhaps. You know, there are better ways of learning than from books. Why don't you ask Jimmy? He is out. He is? Yes. He's marrying himself. Oh, it is not right what I'm saying. He's marrying a girl. Yeah, that's more usual. You don't mind? I do not mind. Well, sometimes close friends of the groom do. They say things like, uh, what on earth does he see in her? But I'm knowing what he sees in her. Be careful. One million dollars. He's not bad. He's fine. Well, that is, Carol is a very pretty girl, too, despite her million dollars. Who cares? <laughs> because you'll probably laugh and laugh and... Uh, <laughs> uh, are you Jimmy's sister? <laughs> yeah, I thought so. But if you're not his sister, you must be... Uh, you look very pretty in red, Simon, but it is not necessary to blush. I am Jimmy. Whoops, get his sign for bed. Wife. You said wife? Wife. Excuse me. Hello? Huh? He's not here. Monsieur Templer is here. Goodbye. Where's the door, man? I was saying... You said you were Jimmy's wife. It's true. Well, then if he'd married Carol, it, it would have also been bigamy. Oh, uh, we were divorced in Mexico last year. Not his wife. I am saying the lawyer said divorce not so good. So now, Jimmy, you marry a rich girl, 
Maybe Jim is usually a big dragon, hmm? Big dragon, huh? huh? There's another name for it. Is so? Is so. The other name is blackmail. You are a funny man. I haven't been trying. Maybe you go away now, huh? Mary, hmm? I have news for you. What kind of news? Jimmy didn't show up at the altar. You missed the joke once more. No joke. It's terrible. It means that Jimmy hasn't married that million dollars yet. I think of the poor girl who waits at the altar. Almost I cry for her. Your eyes are dry. I said almost. Goodbye. You want to be alone? From you, yes. Goodbye also to you. Hmm? Oh. Oh, thanks for remembering me in time to say goodbye, yes, Mr. Thompson. We're leaving now. Except, uh, Marie, if you happen to run into Jimmy... Yes? Advise him to be very careful. So? Today she's left one woman at the altar, another in his apartment. <laughs> He'd be safer juggling dynamite. About Marie's character, I got nothing to say. But about her figure... Yeah. Marie, I also got nothing to say. But, oh, I can dream... It's dark. Yeah, it usually is at this time of night. I know, but it don't hurt to mention it. Back to the cab? Yeah, I suppose so. Mm -hmm. Hey, you Templar, huh? Me? Yeah. Who wants to know? Who's asking you? You are? So figure it out. All right. You got a pencil and paper, maybe? Oh, wise guy. If you don't mind my intruding, I'm trying to pencil. Well, thanks for telling me, silly. <laughs> hey, you can't. I did. I don't move too quick. Him, I gave the butt, but it's you I'm pointing the business in. Get in the car. Not just yet. If you hurt Louie, you want to get shot? Not especially. But first, I'm going to look at Louie. Oh, he's unconscious. Hey, what was the idea? Well, all I wanted was you, so let's get going. Huh? But Louie, from what I gave him, he'll wake up. But you won't if you don't get in the car. Oh, very well. Your name would be, um, yeah, you already know mine. Where are we going? That's what you're going to tell me. I am? Yeah. Because we're on our way to visit Jimmy Snyder. Well, you told me. Just so happens his uh, present address slips my mind, so give, huh? Or else? No, no. Tonight we don't play. Tonight is for keep. Take me to Snyder. Nobody likes to die. <laughs> This is where you live, huh? Well, not quite yet. Hallways are so drastic. Ah, thank you. Mm -hmm. That is in your apartment? Well, we'll be inside in a moment. Hold it. Hold what? Shut up. Okay. Move slow, straight ahead. You uh, mean now you've cased the joint? I mean, I wanted to get that light on. Now, uh, Templar. Yes? I don't see Snyder. Hey, you know, now that you mention it, I don't see him either. Hey, you could overdo that light stuff. Is he really going to Where is he? I don't know. But he might be along at any moment. Yeah? Why not? How would you like a slap in the eye? Put your gun down and try it. Why, careful. careful. Besides, would Marie approve of your language? <laughs> Not to mention your attack. Well, she don't have to. I'm the one that gives the orders and... Uh, oh, thank you. Uh, for what? Telling me that you're the person who spoke to her over the phone a little while ago, back at Snyder's apartment. It explains how you happened to know I was there. Forget it. Now, what I want to know is when is Snyder going to show here? Well, of course, he may have mislaid his timetable. Yeah. Or perhaps even his life. <laughs> Templar. Yes? I'm beginning to think that Snyder may be a good show. He's beginning to show promise. In time, he may have lots of little thoughts all the day. You know, he said he might be along. I offered no guarantees. Nobody's offered a guarantee on your life, Miss Hero Oversight. You could be playing me for a dope. Oh, my good heavens. No. Are you a dope? Where's Snyder? Well, men who have just been married usually spend the time immediately there. No, 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 he's just a church. Oh, that's interesting. But how did you know? I know. Something else, however, that you don't know. What's that? The door behind you has just been sneaked open very, very softly. Huh, huh, huh. 
Oh, I mean, you? <laughs> you kill me. You're so funny. You exaggerate. I'm not the one who may kill you. There's a revolver barrel poking its snout around the edge of that door. Point of the same with you. Well, I don't take my eyes off you, mister. I don't suppose there's anything I could say that would stop that little stranger from shooting. Whoever he or she is. I do dislike having my home used as a shooting gallery, though. Neighbors complain. So, Mr. Dugan, would you mind going away and being shot someplace else? I am staying right here. Oh, oh. Get out of my way. No. Oh, you, you fool. I want to go after whoever shot you. No, that's... Uh, quick. Some kind of trick. You moving up. Oh. 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 Lieutenant Archer, homicide. Hello, Lieutenant. This is Simon Temple. Uh, Lieutenant Archer just grabbed his nags for a quick trip to the upper Amazon. Uh, Lieutenant Archer hasn't got a nag. He's doing it the hard way. Good night. Lieutenant. Yeah? Look, stop gnashing your teeth and guess what I've got. I wouldn't want it. I'm a married man. His name used to be Dugan. Anthony Dugan. I don't like him. Someone else didn't like him harder. So now he's dead. Where? My apartment. Got the killer there, too? I'm sorry, no. Well, get in touch with me when you do. All right, Lieutenant. I'll be right down, Simon. Uh, he doesn't make a pretty court. He makes a very dead one now. Friend of yours? Lieutenant, neither of us really care. Yeah, I... Company, Simon. Who? Oh, Louis. Louis, he said. That's what he said. Louis, you're not hurt. No. No, in my family, everybody goes around with two heads. Well, there was nothing I could do. I... Hang out with the saints and see Johns Hopkins from a bottle. Mr. Temple, where is that hooligan? I'm going to... I... That's him? Yes, Louis. But he ain't, he ain't breathing? No, Louis. Oh. Lieutenant. Yeah? Louis and I have an errand. You mind our leaving? Thanks for asking. So long. Goodbye. Louis? Coming. But to where? I think perhaps it's time we visited Carol Blair. Uh-huh. You think maybe she needs help? Help? Or an alibi? Looks like the mansion is all closed up for the night. I hope not. Maybe she's asleep, huh? Yes, she is. She hasn't read the right book. The woman has just been left at the altar never sleep. No, they don't get sleepy. I have nothing but nothing to say to Who is he? I don't know. To me, he looks like an outfielder. From left field, I might add. Maybe, maybe. I, uh, beg your pardon. You, sir, would be, uh... Theobald A. Blair. Uh, what does the A stand for? Arthur uh, You may make all the jokes after I shut the door. Good night. We are coming in, Mr. Blair. Mm. Thank you. Put in tight. Uncle. Only when necessary. Your cow's father? Uncle, young man. Uncle. And who are you? Simon Tempter. Mm. This is Lewis. Mm. Tonight, everybody goes, mm. Why did you have to use a question mark for me? Your niece asked me to help her, Mr. Blair. Carol is a young idiot. Youth has no monopoly on idiocy. It's true. I am almost quit. Something that hasn't happened to me in years. How about an offer of employment? The last one I received was in the early 30s. Seems to no one's been vulgar enough to... Uh, <clears throat> that is hardly your concern, is it? It might be. Uh, by the way, Marie sends her love. Who doesn't, sir? Not here. I think you find well, we're men of the world, too, but still. Then you knew Jimmy was married? I, uh, would you like a spot or something? Sure. I'm afraid we're temporarily out of that come other day. Dugan is dead, Mr. Blair. Indeed. Our peasants discovered that folks like him are mortal. Were you the one who tested his mortality? Uh, he was murdered, huh? Mm. No doubt whoever murdered him did so with the best of intentions. It wasn't I, however. You haven't asked me where Jimmy is. You haven't even tried, but you know. Do you? No. You want to know? Of course I do. In order to test his mortality? Nonsense. I wanted Jimmy to medicate. Wanted it to be back there. Uncle, I have... Oh, Mr. Tesla. Yeah, and Louis. I'm keeping the franchise open. Hello, Louis. Hello. I hope you went to sleep. Oh, no, I couldn't. Simon, have you found him? No, I did find Marie, however. Who, who is Marie? Uncle Theobald can tell you. Probably with more details than I would have. Uncle? Uh, she, uh, <coughs> well, that is, she used to be, uh, well, friendly with Jimmy at one time. Friendly? Well, yes, I might say that. As a matter of fact, she carried it to the expense of uh, marrying him. Oh, no. 
Uncle, you're drunk. Now, 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 my dear, perhaps you would better lie down. Well, Uncle, I've warned you time and time again. I'm not a child. I never thought you were. I always... Oh, Mr. Coulter, it isn't true, is it? If Jimmy was mad, I'm afraid it is. But it can't be. Otherwise, why would he have... He's been ready to marry you. But he was under the impression that he'd been divorced from his first wife. Oh, and the divorce wasn't any good. So it seems. Then, then Jimmy did love me. Jimmy would be the best one to answer that, which reminds me... And uh, Louie and I have another errand to perform. What errand? I can't tell us yet whether it would be a matter for the police or for the medical examiner. The sample, you're excited. Worried. What about Marie? Yeah, that's why we're ringing a doorbell. Mm, no answer. Locked. I don't like that. Much of a lock. It's all up now, but you just ruined that lock. It's not important. What is important is it? Marie. Yes. Yeah. Blood on her nightgown. Yes. You shot, huh? Yes, close range. Hey, the blood leaks from the couch there to this overturned end table. I mean, she crawled after the other shot her, left her for dead at the couch. She wasn't quite dead, she fell to the floor, managed to reach the end table, knocked it over, yeah, and started to read a magazine or something, because there's one right under her head. Not to read. No? Actually, she tore a page out. That's she was able to do. No writing on it? No. It means... Let's see. One side's the back cover. The other's a full-page advertisement for Hamilton Watt. Hmm. I just wanted to know what time it was. It's a bad joke, but I don't feel good. He's evidently trying to tell us something with that ad. Something about her murderer. Hey, maybe the guy who shot her was a watchmaker, huh? Yeah, possibly that. More obviously that his name was Hamilton. Yeah. So far as we know, there's been no Hamilton connected with the case. It would be stretching coincidence too far, anyway. Then he made clue like that. Now. <laughs> well, we'll have to wait. Are you calling the cops? Yeah, they can wait, too. I'm calling the Blairs. You want to let Carol know her husband is now a widower? I want to find out who's home. Hello? Carol, Simon Temper. Simon, you found Jimmy? Not exactly. Carol, is your uncle in? No, he went for a walk. In the park, he was upset. Thanks, but... Carol. Goodbye. Come on, Louie. Where are we going? We're upset, too. So let's make it the park. <laughs> This field just happens to be a very, uh, very dark part. Mm -hmm. No sign of Uncle Theobald. Mr. The Templeton, you think there's something phony about him taking a walk this time of night? Phony? Hmm, not necessarily. Let's call it danger. No, I'm nervous. Let's not. Maybe, uh, maybe he used to be a watchmaker. It's possible. Mr. Templeton, you know, I just thought of something else. You kind of stopped looking for Jimmy Snyder. You think it's, it's hopeless? I don't know. Other things to worry about first. The Snyder, if he's still alive, you wouldn't bet on that, huh? Hey, look. Up ahead by the side of the road. Yeah, here goes. Waiting for the traffic lights to change. Not many cars are driving around through the park. It's kind of nice. There is one parked down the road a bit. Come on. Yeah. That light's changed. He's stopping the cross. So There's the car. Here goes. Here goes. He ain't hurt. He's off the road. Here goes. Here goes. The car hit him. No lights, no lights in play type. Are you dead? No. Car just side button. Oh, it's stable. Hello, sir. That guy. Hmm? No, no, no murderous guy. The car tried to kill you. Stable, we'll get an ambulance for you. You'll be all right, but look, I've got to know something. Do you have a place of your own besides Carl's house? I, well, yes, I keep a small room. There'll be vanity of mine, but it belongs to me. Where is it? I do have a apartment here. I have fun, yes. Uh-oh. Very good. Billy, go get help for him. I'll wait till you get back and then, yeah? And then we'll remember the forgotten man. <laughs> in a very elegant dump. Louie, I'm worried. 
about who's killing everybody? No, I think that's fairly clear. Oh, you speak for yourself, John. But Mary's dying accident puzzles me. That ad for watches just seems to point nowhere. This ad's an unnecessary compliment. To me, all complications are unnecessary. No, Mr. Templer, maybe what you need is a secretary. A what? All I said was a secretary. Mary, I love you. What? Look, this is my busy weekend. Please, Mr. Hartman, please. This is where he hangs out when he ain't being rich. Hey, now, yeah. come back here. This is closet. Oh. Don't look now, but that there must be Jimmy Snyder all tied up in there. You're quite right, Louie. I better untie him. No, Louie. Huh? You better make a phone call. Who to? The police. Mr. Snyder can untie himself without too much difficulty, I suspect. Uh, hey, hey, he's got a hand I'd rather thought he would. I'll take that gun and... Oh. You felt you had to do that? Of course. He wasn't tied up very good. No. He, you, but... All right, I'll phone the police. Yeah, but what'll I tell him? To come and pick up Mr. James Snyder, vanishing bridegroom and murderer. Simon, I don't understand. How could it have been Jimmy? But he was married to Marie. Marie and her happy little trigger man, Dugan, were preparing to blackmail him as soon as he'd married you, Cal. Jimmy didn't care for the program, and so he killed him. Right, Louie. Huh. Your uncle also knew, so that meant that he, too, would have to die. But then he tried to arrange it so that Theobald's death would seem to be an accident. After he ran him down in the park, he went to Theobald's apartment and tied himself up. He knew someone was trying to get shortly. And everybody would have thought that uncle had killed Marie and Dugan. I mean, however did you know? Marie. She was murdered in her living room. She was wearing a nightgown at the time. It's hardly likely she would have received any ordinary visitor in that case. Yeah, except our husband, Jimmy. Uh, right, Larry. Only now look, what's the business with the watch guys? Well, we know that Marie dying tore a page out of a magazine. Obviously, because that page contained an indication of who had killed it. Wait a minute. All that page contained was an ad for Hamilton Watson. Oh, you're forgetting something, Louis. Yeah? What was Marie doing the first time that we met her? She was, uh... Oh, yes, yeah, she was reading a book about, uh, uh... American history. Mm -hmm. I remembered that. And then when you mentioned the word secretary... Yeah, this I must have known. I knew whom she'd named as her murder. Aha. Uh -huh. I still don't know. Louis. Yeah? But in American history, who was Alexander Hamilton? Oh, oh, but the children father. No. Children's son? Louis. Well, Alexander Hamilton was the first secretary of the Treasury. Uh-huh. So? So, who's the secretary of the Treasury today? Oh, well, that's a guy named, uh, uh, wait a minute, let me look at a dollar bill. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. And Jimmy Snyder was a suspect. So it goes to show people ought to read American history. You know... Marie was awfully bad. I'm not. I feel terrible, Simon. You leave me, Carol. You'll get over, Jimmy. Do you think so, Simon? How? Huh? Well, um, um, it's me. Hmm? Oh, uh, yeah, Mr. Temple? Uh, please don't take a cab. You have been listening to another transcribed adventure of the Saints, the Robin Hood of modern crime. Now, here is our star, Vincent Price. Ladies and gentlemen, from the past, we have received a heritage, our American heritage. And it consists of many things. It's an ideal and a way of life. It's everything America stands for, our heritage. We can repay the past only by using our heritage well today by taking pride in the most complete expression of individual liberties, civil rights, and personal dignity. And by doing so, we'll be guaranteeing our future. For we have learned from history that unused freedom has a habit of slipping away. Of course, using our freedom makes certain demands upon us. But to the people of many countries today, these demands would constitute a gift beyond price. They mean voting in an informed way serving on jury, taking an interest and having a voice in all the affairs of the community, the state, and the nation. All this preserves our heritage by exercising it. 
And by making our form of government work better at home, we strengthen democracy everywhere. We provide an example of free people governing themselves through a free government. A dynamic example of man's finest ideals at work. To every American then falls the task of protecting our heritage. For freedom is everybody's job. This is Vincent Price inviting you to join us again next week at this same time for another exciting adventure of the saints. Good night. Written by Lewis Vitti. In our cast, you heard Viola Vaughn as the lead, and Sharon Douglas as Carol. Sheldon Leonard was Dugan, Ted Osborne, Uncle Theobald. Frank Gerstel was Lieutenant Archer. Louis is played by Larry Dodkin. The Saints, based on characters created by Leslie Carteris, is a James L. Sasser production and is directed by Helen Mack. Vincent Price is soon to be seen co starring with Errol Flynn and Mitchell and Prell in William Marshall's production of Bloodline. All you Saints fans will be glad to know that the Saints comic books are now on sale at all newsstands. Three times mean good times on NBC. There's fun every Sunday on NBC with two delightful and sometimes very bewildering families. The Blinding family continues to have typically suburban adventures in their famous dream house. Terry Grant and Betsy Drake star as Mr. and Mrs. Blinding. Sunday also means a visit with the hilarious Harrisers and their friends on the Phil Harris Alice Faye Show. This is NBC, the National Broadcasting Company. of the Saints, starring Vincent Price. The Saints, based on characters created by Leslie Trotter and known to millions from books, magazines, and motion pictures. The Robin Hood of modern crime, now comes transcribed to radio, starring Hollywood's brilliant and talented actor Vincent Price as The Saints. All right, all right, I'm coming. Wait until I put my head on, can't you? Yeah. You? What? This is an unexpected displeasure. I got something to have quick. Let me go. All right, Blanco. I'm surprised at you. Four o'clock in the morning is no time for a man in your profession to play social calls. Like I say, I got a coffee. And you got a risk. Are you with me? Get a job, going to be them off. First day, I mean. It's a big deal. Good job. I'm glad. I'd hate to think you'd be tired from crying, Blanca, if you throw so many deserving policemen out of work. That's fair to kill you. Thank you. Sounds like something right up your alley. Not this kind of thing, thank you. This is one line I draw. But it's a straight line you hear. Yes, thank you. Before I know what the score is. Before I know who they are going to use it on, I'd raise it. The best job this time I ever do. It's gonna work. I ain't gonna lose a play. Yeah, I should never have had that ceremony right after a lobster dinner. Blanco, do you think if I get up and take some bicarb, you and the rest of this room will go away? I can't talk to come. You're the only one. You've got to stop it, Frank. You've got it. I got it? Yeah, you got it. And you only got it. Right, so at the rate you're painting this picture, it's going to be at least noon before I know what it's all about. It's about murder. Oh, well, let's get down to personality. Who is going to be murdered by whom? Why and how? Let's have the name of the potential victim is an appetizer, huh? We'll get down to the main course later. That's called for that kind of complicated act. <laughs> it's kind of a complicated question. So do your best, meet your time. You remember Frantic Cain's? Chicago Cain's? Of course. Who could ever forget the inventor of the game of encase your friends in a barrel of cement and dump them in the river? Uh, you'll remember. I also remember that when the federal men were just about to catch up with him in Central America a few years ago, he was just courteous enough to die a natural death. Yeah. Somebody died in such a America a few years ago. Not something? The oppressors were a buck here and a buck there to me. Get any moniker you want, but it doesn't get to me. And then I had to plan to buck. Get in the corpse. 
the flag and that fair monarchy is here. So Franklin's still alive? Yes, yeah, he's alive. But that ain't all. Who will fix it? Yes. You will fix it. What sort of country? Come on, move to the inner part. Throw yourself some brandy and try and get your nerves back in the wall. Hey, Duncan. Tell us, what about Franklin? Will you think of something? Hey, Ralph. Turn up there. Get down. Don't. Oh. 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 What about the gladiator? Who drank a fool? I'm ready to decide this. Don't hurt. Yeah, I just about had. And it's a pity because I like this bar of yours, Morgan. Why did you make an honest balloon out of it and open up your legal hours? My customers would never stand for it. No? <laughs> My customers all learn to drink during COVID. You speak easy. The way they look at it, a drink cup doesn't have any kitchen if it's legal. Yeah, and this is the part of the lost generation that's still lost. Dr. <laughs> Tatum, get some information. Okay. About a year ago, when I was one of your regular patrons, a lady used to say something like this. Lady in this place? <laughs> her name was Violet, and so was the color of her hair. She used to sit at a table around the bend there and make tender speeches to a bottle of stuff. Do you remember Violet? Indeed I do. Where can I find her? At a table around the bend there, making tender speeches to a bottle of stuff. Mm, no, I should have known. <laughs> there was a love that was faded to life. Thanks, sir. You're welcome, Mr. Patrick. Hello, Violet. Go away. Oh, now that's no way to treat an old friend. Oh, but you're no old friend. Don't have friends. Go away. You mean you've forgotten me? I do not. It's an old Scotsman, eight years old. You're the old friend. <laughs> Thank you. Hey, waiter. Hey, the usual for the lady, double, hmm? Huh? Like, you're all my good friend. <laughs> Mm. Look, speaking of friends, whatever the came of, uh, Louis Blanco. Blanco? Mm-hmm. You said a Blanco? A former, sir. What do you want, sir? The top? No, no. I had some money for him. Money? Really money? What for? Yes, he's there, ma'am. Yes, he did a job. Yes. Yes. I'd like to pay him before he gets the wrong idea. <laughs> Where did you hang out? You don't know. About the job is at the garage. What's that? That's garage, 50 Oh, yes, sir. Oh, my old friend. Violet, let me tell you something. You know I am. Yeah. I like you, sir. But tell me, why does a fellow like Blanco hang around the garage? You don't know? No. You're no friend of Blanco. You're a cop. You're probably friends from him. Yeah, yeah. Uh, how's Frank? You know, Blanco, you certainly not my friend. Blanco used to work for him in the old days. Frank, Frank. Now you talk to me like that. You know Frank's dead. Sure. I haven't known her in I'm a widow. Why do you think I drink like this? Why do you think? Go away, go away. <laughs> Wake up. Hey, come on, wake huh? up. Huh? Oh. Uh, get the fellow asleep. Just got a here in his garage all night. I'm sorry I woke you. Uh, I don't think that's it. Did you bring any car in? No. Like the one out? Yeah, I just want to talk. You woke me up just to talk to me? Hey, you said you were lonesome. What do you know about a man named Blanco? Blanco. That's the name? I thought that he was here. Uh, maybe you that down here, mister. You sure? Sure, I'm sure. There's four of us working here. Me, Ed Williams, Polanski, oh, and a new guy, Stephen. We take turns working nights. Then I was my turn. The new man, Stephen, uh... What is he looking? Lord, sir, why don't you give a guy a break? Huh? 
So we did time once. Is that any reason for you cops to come checking up on him every time he got nothing else to do? Things you look like. Ah, uh, you don't get any help from me. I'm a law-abiding citizen. I believe in helping the law, but not when it starts pounding his ass. Well, I'll give it to you straight, sir. There was a murder committed tonight. Well, the chances are the guy you're asking about had nothing to do with it. Stevens and Blanco are the same man. He had a lot to do with it. Well, do you think he killed somebody? He's the court. He dead? What did he look like? About medium height, dark hair, dark eyes. Sort of dark complexion. He's dead. That's all okay. Gee. Well, who did it? That's what you're going to help me find out. Me? Mm-hmm. What did Blanco do around here? Same as we all do. Please. We're mechanics, Smith. The last night was the guy's night on. It was supposed to be my friend, but he asked me to swap with him. Right. So I swapped. It made no difference to me. Then he made out like it was important. What did he work on while he was here last night? How should I know? Is that cheap records? Well, sure. Well, then that's how you should know. All right. Come on in the office. We should do a record file. Huh? Yeah. Mm. Mm. Yes, uh, here's the report. Yesterday's date. Mechanic. Stephen Luke Job. Andrew. Oh, yeah, that's a Hudson Hornet out there. Wants a real classy chick. Uh, here's another report. Injury to that. Maddox. Maddox. Oh, yeah, that's a foreign job. The dope is driven fucked over there, but... You know, that's funny. Oh, well, fine. Oh, I tuned the engine on that heap only three days ago, and I did a good job. Why should they want it done again? Just take a look. Maybe we can find out. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes. Uh oh, my uh, name is Tempo. I'd like to see Miss Maddox, please. Miss Maddox, mm-hmm. Miss Virginia Maddox, please. Yes, yes. Forgive me for being inquisitive, sir, but it isn't quite of a clock yet. It's a little early for a social call. Are you acquainted with Miss Maddox? Mm, we went to school together, sir. Mm-hmm. You did? There's a gentleman calling on Miss Maddox. Miss Maddox? Maddox? Yes, I didn't realize I'd created this much of a sensation. Uh, Mr. Mother to include, I'd like to see Miss Maddox in my repertoire of startling things to say. Well, I'm Mrs. Andrews. I'm in charge of this household. Do you know Miss Maddox? I think the gentleman went to school with Miss Maddox. He went to school with her? That's what he said. You know, there's something about all this that reminds me of the time a friend of mine tried to negotiate a federal loan. Oh, uh, here's the gentleman into the library, Carson. I'll go call Miss Maddox. If you've got to see the Miss Gentleman. No, well, I didn't talk his name, but if someone who went to school with you. No, I'll get a sports phone. Well, you're not fast, though. I suppose I should say thank you, but uh, certainly you're not Miss Maddox. No, of course I am. Now, don't tell me she's changed that much since her school days. <laughs> I'm afraid I'm the one who's changed. As a matter of fact, I feel myself changing slightly this very moment. Oh, well, when you find the right beginning at it, you can both have a laugh over it. You have a good one, yeah. Yeah, I wish you'd find the laugh is right now. And you can all join in. You see, uh, this is the beginning of the night, Oh, there's your party? There's a foreign car and a stuff of a steamer at the center garage registered to a Virginia Maddox at the Well, of course, it's mine. Yours? Oh, it's mine, all right. Although, naturally, I don't drive it. You see how many years. Well, if you lived in California, you'd have been driving it for years. I'm afraid I don't understand what you're trying to say. I'm not saying, Mr. Andrews. I'm asking. Did you ever hear of a man named Blanco? Blanco? No. Did I ever have? I haven't. Have you talked to me? No, Mr. Binner. I don't. Wait a minute. When I took your father down to the garage the other day, there's a new mechanic there. I think his name is Blanco. I don't think. Dear, did you talk to that's what you are. A detective. No, Virginia. Besides, if I were a detective, I'd know the answer to something Carson just said without having to ask. And what does that mean? Well, you tell me. What? How you knew that the new mechanic's name was Blanco, and even the men who worked with him thought it was Stephen. Right. Maybe it was another man. I mean, I'll tell you what I mean, Carson. 
For the first real lunch, the first hopeful sign that I'm heading in the right direction. Look here, what is this all about? Uh, the defendant, didn't I just see your doll cry? Oh, Mr. Spencer, I haven't said the doll since I was a child. Oh, yes, of course, I said. You don't have to make an excuse, Mr. Kemper. I know you want me to read the room. You want to talk to me, not talk. You can me with an unfortunate woman I've met in you. But there are a few questions I want to ask you. Mr. Whatever your name is, I'll give you just three seconds to put up your hand. Very well, if you insist. And now, sir, I should like to know what you mean by forcing your way into this house. You can't do what? 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 Fire that gun, sir, and I'll bleed in all over this country pocket. He forced his way in on the potential scene to bring him to secure. But it appears that it was really Carson who wanted to see. You know this man, Carson? No, Mr. Pierce. I never saw him before. His name is Templer. Templer? Simon Templer? Well, I'm certainly not that, so am I, Virginia? You know. So you're the saint. I'm very glad to meet you. Then, uh, may I put my hand down? Oh, of course. <laughs> Uh, but what is the reason for this rather strange and uh, unsaintly visit, Mr. Temple? Uh, Virginia, why don't you get time your party, Jack? Huh? The one you're going to wear this afternoon? Oh, I've already tried it. But, oh, I didn't know I was going to join a fellow's party this afternoon. Please, come and talk to us this morning. Is Carson going to drive you in the car? Of course, the only way to get to Janice's house is by car. He must you feel like walking all the way up to Martin. Martin? It has to be a mountain, wouldn't it? Mountain Road is a great place. I, uh, am still waiting for your explanation, Kemper. Leave the room, Virginia. No, I want to go. Virginia? Oh, very well. But you know, I'll find out everything anyway. How can you tell me? It won't be hard. Good night, Kemper. Goodbye, Mr. Kemper. Goodbye, Virginia. I've enjoyed meeting you. Uh, now, Mr. Kemper. What did you want to hear about? About murder, Mr. Pierce. One that was committed a few hours back and another one that I hope to prevent. It's scheduled to take place in a few hours from now. What? Mr. Templer, please explain. A few hours ago, I was paid a call by a hoodlum named Blanco. This led to a brief but informative conversation with a lady barfly named Violet, which in turn led to an interesting half hour with a limousine named the Pusaka So, here I am. I am afraid I don't. I don't understand either. All that's clear to me is that now is that there's been a murder and there's a good chance there's going to be another one. Murder? Who, who, who was murdered, Mr. Tucker? The aforementioned Cleveland Blank. But uh, certainly clear. It could be missed only by the manufacturers of small arms ammunition who I'm afraid are going to notice the rather remarkable drop in their face. What is it? It's the car that I'm here about, Mr. Pierce. The Ricardo Fasini that spends his spare time at the center of the ride. The registration slip says that it's good to see it. Yes, that's our car. It is the central garage we use, Sergeant, is it not? Yes, sir. I uh, understand the car is owned by that charming child, although she informs me she doesn't actually drive. Yes, the car is hers. Miss Pierce, I hope you won't think I have an ulterior motive. I'm a little old for Virginia, but uh, she's loaded. She's extremely wealthy. Uh, you see, Mr. Templer, shortly before Virginia's father died in South America, he grew up a will, giving the child his entire fortune. I was designated her guardian until she comes today. Oh, then you are not really her uncle. I'm an uncle in name only. Tell me something. Where in South America did the child's father die? In the Honduras. That country of America. Who oh, is it? Well, I do believe it is. But oh, why do you ask, Mr. Hunter? I wasn't really asking. I was cheated. In the back. Doctor. When I return to this house in an hour or two, Mr. Pierce, we must all have another delightful talk. It will be a different kind of talk, perhaps, but nonetheless delightful. But what in heaven's name? Later, Mr. Pierce, later. Right now I have a date with a lady, a lady with violet hair who thinks I'm a bottle of stuff. <laughs> Hello, Vile. I'd like to have a talk to you. A talk? Well, let's see. I don't know who you are, but if you'll let me in. No, I don't. What do you mean by forcing your way in here? Argument while I was stimulating takes time, and I don't have much. What's this all about? Blank, I'm sure. Blank. 
Okay. I'm not the police. My name is Simon Pento. Okay. And you're Violet Kane. Hank Kane's wife. Good up. Yeah, that's another argument you're not going to have time for. I'm not. If I were right, I'd know it. Okay. Yeah. All right, we can talk now. What's Blanco's murder got to do with me? You're next on the list. Oh. You got to go. What do you mean by that crack? There's nobody... No. What? Well, who'd want to kill me? Somebody who's related to you, I'm not sure. Related to me? I've only got one. What is it? Oh, it's funny. Well, I can only let me. No, it's on the table. Only relic. Mm, what brings you out in the pain of the day? I'd imagine a man who runs an after-hours clean would naturally indulge in after-hours sleep. As a matter of fact, I was just about to go home, on my way to pick up my car. Not by any chance at the central garage? Oh, yes, how'd you know? Too bad. That's pretty incredible. Easy enough to deduce that a man who'd keep his car in a garage would have to be the only one. So you know that, too. There isn't very much you miss, is there, Mr. Templin? Murder has a way of sharpening one senses. Murder? My name's Blanca. You going to the garage? Right behind you. Oh, Blanca, you're here. You, uh, said his name was Blanca? Yeah. And just now, uh, Violet. Fullman evidently thought his whiskey would have a bigger stick with a pinch of poison in the bottle. This is just what But who, who did this? You did. Me? I realize it's rather early in the day for a man to be at his best, but don't you think that joke is in bad taste? If it were a joke, it would be. Yeah, you're a fella. Beautiful automobile, that tired on. Look at those lines. Oh, sweet, sweet, sweet. Get in, Morgan. Get in. Perfect morning for a drive. I don't think anyone would mind if we took her out. You see, I'm, uh, I'm rather friendly with the owner. She wants to. For her, I'm a tank who's straight out of her favorite country. Get in there. Oh, thanks. Why not? Because of climbing. I'd like to see what you do on a mountain road. A road with a couple of things. Okay. Okay. Oh, some other time, thanks. Won't be another time. But didn't you see the beautiful job branch I did on this? No. Thawed through until it's hanging together by the proverbial hair. One side turn, like the turns you turn on a mountain road. Yeah. 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 Why would anybody want to wreck an expensive bus like this? A little girl who was going to a party on top of a mountain this afternoon has too much money more than if you could happen to fall off that mountain in the sky, some happy next of kin would have a very happy fit. Well, that lets me out, Saint. I'm nobody's next of kin. There was a picture Violet pointed out to me before she died. A snapshot taken at a wedding. And do you know who the bride and groom were? Okay, we've talked long enough, Saint. Frank Kane left a lot of money when he died. I'm too close to it. Another mistake you made, Morgan. Huh? Who's me, Frank Kane? Kane? Say, what are you pulling your car from the chauffeur? Carson's only is numb to plastic surgery. He's came with a new name and a new face. Yeah, but with the same old trigger eye. Right? Oh, hey, here now, you... Never mind me. Don't let him get away. He took care of that. He's the one who didn't let him get away, Kane. A man loses all information to run when there's a bullet in his kneecap. He'll keep until the police. Good. Good. Wait. Virginia. Get a girl. Please, you don't count it. Just tell her. Give you the key. Your daughter will be safe. I'm going to make sure of that right now. Look, 
What sort of scene could even dream of harming that guy? He was a fool, let's say, Mr. Sure. One of the things is just given up his membership in these thin human ranks. So it's two of them? Yes, Mr. Understood. Morgan and someone else. Someone who would be uh, Virginia's only surviving relative once. File of pain, the child's mother, the relationship. The only surviving relative and uh, inheritor to tell us. We know of no relatives. Do we, Roger? There was only Frank Lane, her father. But uh, legally, at least, he was dead. Now he's dead in fact as well. But there is another relative. And those two don't know. Who? Violet pointed to a wedding picture she was signed. She did a wedding picture, Miss Candy. You were the bride. Morgan at the gate. Yes. Ah. I was married to Morgan Lane. But surely that doesn't mean that I was here. That position was possible. It would be even more preposterous if Violet had to have a sentimental nature. What do you mean to get that? She wrote the names of each member of the wedding party on the name. The name? Mm -hmm. She had your name written. Rose, isn't it? What makes the photograph really interesting is the man standing next to the groom. You see, Mr. King? Of course it was me. Is it a crime to attend a wedding or have one's name written on a picture? No, but in this case it's part of a crime. Because, Mr. Pierce, under your picture, Violet affectionately wrote, My dear brother, Roger. What you think? Mm -hmm. Don't bother. I'm sure I can call it before. Come on, brother. We're going visiting. There's a new district attorney down on his dying to make himself a lucky day. So you shouldn't have. But I'm so glad you did. But the line open. Oh, it's the most beautiful doll I ever saw. You did tell me once that you hadn't played with dolls since you were child, but uh... Mr. Spencer, I'll tell you a piece. I just said that to be sophisticated. Something tells me that a certain young man named Fatso is going to be pinned right down to your side. You have been listening to another transcribed adventure of the Saint, the Robin Hood of modern crime. And now, here is our star, Vincent Price. Ladies and gentlemen, in tonight's cast, you heard Maggie Morley as Violet and Anne Whitfield as Little Virginia. Edmund McDonald played Blanco, Jack Moyles, Crossley. Ted Barnes was Roger, Irene Pedro, Mrs. Andrews. Morgan was played by Barney Phillips and the Garage Man by Jerry Houseman. This is Vincent Price inviting you to join us again next week at the same time for another exciting adventure of the Saints. Good night. by Michael Samar. The Saint, based on characters created by Leslie Cotter, is a James L. Fassier production and is directed by Helen Mack. Vincent Price is soon to be seen co-starring in RKO's production of His Kind of Woman. And all you Saint fans will be glad to know that the Saint comic books are on sale at all newsstands. This is our family season. Three times mean good times on NBC. Every Sunday on NBC, meet two delightful and often confusing families, the Blandings and the Harrisons. Mr. and Mrs. Blanding stars Terry Grant and Betsy Drake as the proud but bewildered owners of a famous green house. And the Phil Harris Alice Fay show features the hilarious Harrisons and their friends in typical amazing Harris situations. Hear them later today. Fred Allen, Ed Wynn, and Dee Lilly join the big show today.
The Adventures of the Saints, starring Vincent Price. The Saints, based on characters created by Leslie Carter and known to millions from books, magazines, and motion pictures. The Robin Hood of modern crime now comes transcribed to radio, starring Hollywood's brilliant and talented actor Vincent Price as... The Saints. All right, all right, I'm coming. Wait until I put my head on, can't you? You? What? This is an unexpected displeasure. I gotta talk to you, Sam, quick. Let me in. All right, Blanco. I'm surprised at you. Four o'clock in the morning is no time for a man in your profession to take social calls. Like I say, I gotta talk. And you gotta listen. I'm listening. That a job is going to be pulled tomorrow. First day, I mean. It's a big deal. Good job. I'm glad. I'd hate to think you'd retired from crime, Blanco. If you throw so many deserving policemen out of work. That's fair to kill you. First thing. That sounds like something right up your alley. Not this time, thing, Sam. This is one line I draw. But it's a straight line you hear. Yes, I'm here. Before I know what the score is. Before I know who they go to use it on. I raise it. The best job of its kind I ever do. It's gonna work. I ain't gonna lose a trade. You know, I should never have had that ceremony right after a lobster dinner. Blanco, do you think if I get up and take some bicarb, you and the rest of this room will go away? Wait, don't be here. I can't go to the cops. You're the only one. You gotta stop it, Sam. You got it. I got it? Yeah, you got it. And you only got to know. Blanco, at the rate you're painting this picture, it's going to be at least noon before I know what it's all about. It's the part. Murder. Oh, well, let's get down to personalities. Who is going to be murdered by whom? Why and how? Let's have the name of the potential victim as an appetizer, huh? We'll get down to the main course later. That calls for a kind of complicated act. <laughs> it's kind of a complicated question. But do your best, meet this time. You remember Frank of Kane? Of course. Yeah. Who could ever forget the inventor of the game of encase your friends in a barrel of cement and dump them in the river? Yeah, you remember. I also remember that when the federal men were just about to catch up with him in Central America a few years ago, he was just courteous enough to die a natural death. Yeah. Somebody died in Central America a few years ago. Not something? There are places where a buck here and a buck there can get any moniker you want for a death certificate. And Sam had plenty of bucks. And getting the corpse to climb from that same monarchy is easy. So Frank King is still alive? Yes, he's alive. But that ain't all. He was a... Yes. He was a subject. What sort of something? I want to move for you in the hall. I'll throw you up some brandy and try and get your nerves back into Wall Street. Eh, Branko? Now, look, what about Frank King? Sure you didn't hear something before. I... Tell it off. We'll turn off it. Now, get down. What about the blood? Let them kill it. Who, Blanco? Who? Young Wes, the sergeant. Ah, don't let him. Thinking you'd given up after all you're thinking. Yeah, I just about have. And it's a pity because I like this bar of yours, Morgan. Why don't you make an honest saloon out of it and open up your legal hours? My customers would never stand for it. No? <laughs> My customers all learn to drink during cold You speak easy. The way they look at it, a drink just doesn't have any kick in it if it's legal. Yeah, and this is the part of the lost generation that's still lost, eh? <laughs> you like the table? Just some information. Yes? Yeah. About a year ago, when I was one of your regular patrons, a lady used to take French this place. A lady in this place? <laughs> her name was Violet, and so was the color of her hair. She used to sit at a table around the bend there and make tender speeches to a bottle of scotch. Do you remember Violet? Indeed I do. Where can I find her? At a table around the bend there, making tender speeches to a bottle of scotch. Mm, I should have known. 
There was a love that was faded to last. Thank you. You're welcome, Mr. Cutler. Hello, Violet. No way. Oh, now that's no way to treat an old friend. Oh, friend, you're my old friend. Don't have friends. Go away. You mean you've forgotten me? What's your name? It's an old Scotch name, eight years old. Your own friend. <laughs> Thank you. The waiter. The usual for the lady doubled, hmm? He's coming right back. Good on the gentleman. Look, speaking of friends. Whatever became of, uh, Louis Blanco? Blanco? Mm-hmm. You friend of Blanco? A former friend. Why you want to? The cop? No, no. I had some money for him. Money? Your money? What for? Well, he, um, uh, he did a job for me. Job? How about it? I'd like to pay him before he gets the wrong idea. <laughs> uh, where did you hang out? You don't know. What? About the job he got the garage. What garage? That's all good, I get you, sir. Oh, oh, yes, of course. Here you are, sir. Oh, my old friend. Violet, let me, uh, come, come. You know I like you. Yeah, I like you, too. <laughs> but tell me, why does a fellow like Blanco hang around at the garage? You don't know? No. You're no friend of Blanco. You're a cop. You're probably me for him for... for him for... What's Yeah, look, look. Uh, how's Frank you, sir? Well, you know Blanco, you certainly must know Frank. Blanco used to work for him in the old days. Frank How are you talking like that? You know Frank said. Sure. I don't know whether or not I'm a widow. Why do you think I drink like this? Go away, go away. <laughs> Wake up. Hey, come on, wake huh? up. Huh? Oh. Oh, I guess I fell asleep. Get kind of lonesome here in this garage all night. I'm sorry I woke you. Uh, that's okay, mister. Uh, you bring any car in? No. Take a one out? Yeah, I just want to talk. You woke me up just to talk to me? Hey, you said you were lonesome. What do you know about a man named Blanco? Blanco. Customer? I thought perhaps he worked for Nobody by that name here, mister. You sure? Sure, well, I'm sure. There's four of us working here. Me, Ed Williams, Polaski, oh, and a new guy, Stephen. We take turns working nights. Tonight was my turn. The new man, Stephen's, uh... What did you look at? Look, Cal, why don't you give a guy a break? Huh? So we did time once. Is that any reason for you cops to come checking up on him every time he got nothing else to do? What did you look like? Ah, uh, you don't get any help from me. I'm a law-abiding citizen. I believe in helping the law, but not when it starts hounding the guy. Then I'll give it to you straight, then. There was a murder committed tonight. Well, the chances are the guy you're asking about had nothing to do with it. If Stevens and Branko are the same man, he had a lot to do with it. What, do you think he killed somebody? He's the cook. He, he, he's dead? What did he look like? About medium height, dark hair, dark eyes, sort of dark complexion. He's dead. That's right. He well, who did it? That's what you're going to help me find out. Me? Mm-hmm. What does that to do around here? Same as we all do. Please. We're mechanics, mister. Last night was the guy's night on. It was supposed to be my turn, but he asked me to swap with him. Right. So I swapped. It made no difference to me. Him, he made out like it was important. What did he work on while he was here last night? How should I know? Did that keep records? Well, sure. Well, then that's how you should know. All right. Come on in the office. This is your record file. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Yes, yeah, here's your report. Yesterday's date. Mechanic, Stephen, Lee's job, Andrews. Oh, yeah, that's that Hudson Hornet out there. Wants a real classy chick. And yeah, here's another report. Engine tune-up. Maddox. Maddox. Oh, yeah, that's a foreign job. The chauffeur driven bucks over there, but, you know, that's funny. Oh, why? Oh, I tuned the engine on that heap only three days ago, and I did a good job. Why should they want it done again? Let's take a look. Maybe we can find out. Yeah. <laughs> 
Yes. Uh, oh, my uh, name is Templar. I'd like to see Miss Maddox. Miss Maddox, mm-hmm. Miss Virginia Maddox? Yes, yeah, please. Miss Virginia is a very inquisitive sir, but it isn't quite eight o'clock yet. It's a little early for a social call. Are you acquainted with Miss Maddox? Mm, we went to school together. You did? Who is it, Carson? There's a gentleman calling on Miss Maddox. You used to see Miss Maddox? Yes, if I didn't realize I'd create this much of a sensation. I was committed to include I'd like to see Miss Maddox in my repertoire of startling things to say. Well, I'm Mrs. Anders. I'm in charge of this household. Do you know Miss Maddox? I the gentleman went to school with Miss Maddox. He went to school with her? That's what he said. You know, there's something about all this that reminds me of the time a friend of mine tried to negotiate a federal loan. Oh, well, here's the gentleman into the library, Carson. I'll go call Miss Maddox. If you've just succeeded, Mr. Templer. No, well, I didn't catch his name, but it's someone who went to school with you. No, I've got a spot, though. Well, you're not that though. I suppose I should say thank you, but uh, certainly you're not Miss Maddox. Why, of course I am. Now, don't tell me she's changed that much since her school days. <laughs> I'm afraid I'm the one who's changed. As a matter of fact, I feel myself changing slightly this very moment. Oh, well... When you find the right Virginia Maddox, we can both have a laugh over this. You yeah, have the good wrong laugh. Yeah, I think the time to laugh is right now. And you can all join in. You see, uh, this is the Virginia Maddox I'm looking for. I beg your pardon? There's a foreign car in the south of the scene at the central garage registered to a Virginia Maddox at the Well, of course, it's mine. It's yours? Oh, it's mine, all right. Although, not to the latter, it's right. You see, I'm only late. If you lived in California, you'd have been driving it for years. I'm afraid I don't understand what you're trying to say. I'm not saying, Mrs. Anders. I'm asking. Did you ever hear of a man named Blanco? Blanco? No. Did I ever hear? I haven't. Have you talked to No, Mr. Binner. I don't... Wait a minute. When I took the Asada down to the garage the other day, there's a new mechanic there. I think his name is Blanco. I think it's... Yeah, the doctor... That's what you are, a detective. No, Virginia. Besides, if I were a detective, I'd know the answer to something Carson just said without having to ask. And what does that mean? Well, you tell me. What? How you knew that the new mechanic's name was Blanco, and even the men who worked with him thought it was Stephen. Well, I, maybe it was another man. I mean, I'll tell you what I mean, Carson. The first real link, the first hopeful sign that I'm heading in the right direction. Look here, what is this all about? Uh, Virginia, didn't I just do your doll cry? Oh, Mr. Temple, I haven't played the doll since I was a child. Oh, yes, of course, I did You don't have to make an excuse, Mr. Temple. I know you want me to leave the room. Do you want to talk to me, not talk to me? <laughs> Virginia, you're the most fascinating woman I've met in years. But there are a few questions I want to ask you Mister, whatever your name is, I'll give you just two seconds to put up your hand. Very well, if you insist. And now, sir, I should like to know what you mean by forcing your way into this house. But, Uncle Rob, you're trying to see? He's a detective. You're far from the pilot's work. Jack, fire that gun, sir, and I'll bleed ink all over this handsome carpet. He forced his way in on the potential scene of the gym and the but it appears that it was really Carson who wanted to see. You know this man, Carson? No, Mr. Pierce. I never saw him before. His name is Templer. Templer? Simon Templer? Well, I'm certainly not that, though, am I, Virginia? No. So <laughs> well, you're the same. I'm very glad to meet you. Then, uh, may I put my hands well, down? Of course. <laughs> uh, but what is the reason for this rather strange and uh, unsaintly visit, Mr. Templer? Uh, Virginia, why don't you go try on your party dress? Oh, the one you're going to wear this afternoon? Oh, I've already tried it. How did you know I was going to join a fuller's party this afternoon? We comic book detectives know everything. Is Carson going to drive you in the car? Of course. The only way to get to Janice's house is by car. Unless you feel like walking all the way up the mountain. Mountain? Yes, it would have to be a mountain, wouldn't it? Mountain road with a great many trees. I, uh, I'm still waiting for your explanation, Temper. Leave the room, did you know? No, I want to go. Did you Oh, very well. But you know, I'll find out everything anyway. Carson will tell me. Won't you, Carson? If I can, then. Goodbye, Mr. Temple. Goodbye, Virginia. I've enjoyed meeting you. 
Uh, now, Mr. Templer, what did you want to see us about? About murder, Mr. Pierce. One that was committed a few hours back and another one that I helped to prevent. It's scheduled to take place in a few hours from now. What? Mr. Templer, please explain. A few hours ago, I was paid a call by a hoodlum named Blanco. This led to a brief but informative conversation with a lady barfly named Violet, which in turn led to an interesting half hour with a limousine named Isata Fasini. Uh, so, here I am. I am afraid I don't... I'm afraid I don't understand either. All that's clear to me as of now is that there's been a murder and there's a good chance there's going to be another one. Murder? Who, who was murdered, Mr. Templer? The aforementioned hoodlum, Blank. But uh, shed no tears. He'll be missed only by the manufacturers of small arms ammunition who I'm afraid are going to notice a rather remarkable drop in their sales. What is it? It's the car that I'm here about, Mr. Pierce. The Asada Pacini that spends his spare time at the central garage. The registration slip says that it lives here. Yes, that's our car. It is the central garage we use, Carson, is it not? Yes, sir. I uh, understand the car is owned by that charming child, although she informs me she doesn't actually drive. Yes, the car is hers. Miss Pierce, I hope you won't think I have an ulterior motive. I'm a little old for Virginia, but uh, she's loaded. She's extremely wealthy. Right. Uh, you see, Mr. Templer, shortly before Virginia's father died in South America, she grew up a will, giving the child his entire fortune. I was designated her guardian until she comes of age. Oh, then you are not really her uncle. I'm an uncle in name only. Oh, Tell me something. Where in South America did the child's father die? In the Honduras. That's Central America. Oh, is it? A... Well, I do believe it is. But well, why do you ask, Mr. Templer? I wasn't really asking. I was shooting. In the dark. What? Sir? When I return to this house in an hour or two, Mr. Pierce, we must all have another delightful talk. It will be a different kind of talk, perhaps, but... Nonetheless, delightful. But what in heaven's name? Later, Mr. Pierce, later. Right now, I have a date with a lady, a lady with violet hair who thinks I'm a bottle of God. Yes. Hello, Viol. I'd like to have a talk with you. A talk? Well, let's see. I don't know who you are, but... If you'll let me in. I'll... No, I... Come on. What do you mean by forcing your way in here? Argument while I was stimulating takes time, and I don't have much. What's this all about? Blanco's dead. Blanco? What's that to me, Carter? I'm not the police. My name is Simon Templer. You think? And you're Violet Kane. Frank Kane's wife. Wait up. Yeah, that's another argument you're not going to have time for. You're not. If Frank were alive, I'd know it. Drink? Yes, sir. Yes, All right, we can talk now. What's Blanco's murder got to do with me? You're next on the list. Oh, you got to go. What do you mean by that crack? There's nobody... Oh. Okay. Okay. Can I help? No, I... What? Who, who'd want to kill me? Somebody who's related to you, I'm not sure. Related to me? I, I've only got one. What is it? Oh, it's burning. Stop, I... come on, now. let me. No, it's It's on the table. Only relics. <laughs> Mm, what brings you out in the clean of the day? I'd imagine a man who runs an after-hours clean would naturally indulge in after-hours sleep. Well, as a matter of fact, I was just about to go home, on my way to pick up my car. Not by any chance it's a central garage? Oh, yes, how'd you know? <laughs> incredible. <laughs> Not too incredible. Easy enough to deduce that a man would keep his car in a garage that happens to be the owner of. So you know that, too. There isn't very much you miss, is there, Mr. Templer? Murder has a way of starting in one sense. Murder? Men in Blanco. You going to the garage? Right behind you. You, uh, said his name was Blanco? Yeah. And just now, uh, Violet King. Violet? Yes. But 
Oh. Well, then evidently thought his whiskey would have a bigger kick with a pinch of poison in the bottle. With the ghastly helmet. But who, who did this thing? You did. Me? I realize it's rather early in the day for a man to be at his best, but don't you think that joke is in bad taste? If it a joke, it would be. Yeah, you stop it. Beautiful automobile, that car, don't you? Look at those lines. Those creeps, those jokes. Get in, Morgan. Get in. Perfect morning for a drive. I don't think anyone would mind if we took her out. You see, I'm, uh, I'm rather friendly with the owner. She likes me. To her, I'm a kind she's straight out of her favorite comfort. Get in, Morgan. No thanks. Why not? To take her climbing. I'd like to see what you do on a mountain road. Road with a couple of certain Oh, huh? uh, some other time, thanks. Won't be another time. Or didn't you see the beautiful job Blanco did on that car ride? No. Thawed through until they're hanging together by the proverbial hair. One side turn, like the turns you find on a mountain road, and you're still in the system, fella. And they can Yeah. Well, Blanco did an excellent job until he learned who the victim was to be. It was too much for even his stomach. How are you dreaming? Why would anybody want to wreck an expensive bus like this? A little girl who was going to a party on top of a mountain this afternoon had too much money, Morgan. If she should happen to fall off that mountain in this car, some happy next of kin would have a very happy foot. Well, that lets me out. Same time, nobody's next of kin. There was a picture Violet pointed out to me before she died. A snapshot taken at a wedding. And do you know who the bride and groom were? Okay, we've talked long enough, Frank. Frank Kane left a lot of money when he died. I'm too close to it. Another mistake you made, Morgan. Huh? Who's me? Frank Kane. Kane? Say, what are you pulling your car from the Joker? Carson's only his numb to plastic surgery. Kane with a new name and a new face. Yeah, but with the same old trigger eye. Oh, Kane, here now, you... Never mind me. Don't let him get away. He took care of that. You're the one who didn't let him get away, Kane. A man loses all information to run when there's a bullet in his kneecap. He'll keep until the police come. Good. Good. Hey. Virginia. Good. Good. Little girl. Please. Don't cut it. Cut it, cut it. Cut it. Cut it. Don't worry, Kane. Your daughter will be safe. I'm going to make sure of that right now. Beyond, Mr. Kemper. What sort of scheme could even dream of harming that kind? He was a team of things, Mr. Kemper. And one of the things is just giving up his membership in these thin human rights. There were two of them? Yes, there's only two of them. Morgan and someone else. Someone who would be uh, Virginia's only surviving relative once Violet Cole, the child's mother, the generation. The only surviving relative and uh, inheritor of the child. We know of no relatives. Who we got him? There was only Frank Kane, her father. But uh, legally, at least, he was dead. Now he's dead in fact as well. But there is another relative. And the maid, you don't know. Who? Violet pointed to a wedding picture she was dying. You see a wedding picture, Miss Candy? You were the bride. Morgan was the groom. Yes. Ah. Uh, I was married to Morgan once. But surely that doesn't mean that I... Look here, Templer, this is preposterous. And it would be even more preposterous if Violet hadn't had a sentimental nature. What do you mean? The snapshot. She wrote the names of each member of the wedding party on the snapshot. The names? Mm-hmm. You had your name written? Rose, isn't it? Mm-hmm. What makes the photograph really interesting is the man standing next to the groom. Is he, Mr. Kemp? Of course it was me. Is it a crime to attend a wedding or have one's name written on a picture? No, but in this case it's not it a crime because, Mr. Pierce, under your picture, Violet affectionately wrote, My dear brother, Roger. Right you don't, you don't bother. I'm sure I've been called it before. Come on, brother. We're going visiting. There's a new district attorney downtown who's dying to make himself a reputation. <laughs> Well, you shouldn't have. But I'm so glad you did. <laughs> so go on, open it. Oh. oh! It's the most beautiful girl I ever saw. You did? 
did tell me once that she hadn't played with dolls since you were a child, but... Uh... Mr. Sancho, I'll tell you a secret. What did you I just said that to be sophisticated. Hmm. Something tells me that a certain young man named Fatso is going to be pinned right down to your side. <laughs> I've been listening to another transcribed adventure of the Saint, the Robin Hood of modern crime. And now, here is our star, Vincent White. Ladies and gentlemen, in tonight's cast, you heard Maggie Morley as Violet, and Anne Whitfield as Little Virginia. Edmund McDonald played Blanco, Jack Moyle, Carson. Ted Barnell as Roger, Irene Pedro, Mrs. Anders. Morgan was played by Barney Phillips, and the garage man by Jerry Houser. This is Vincent Price inviting you to join us again next week at the same time for another exciting adventure of the Saint. Good night. Adventure of the Saint was written by Michael Tramar. The Saint, based on characters created by Leslie Shutter, is a James L. Fancier production and is directed by Helen Mack. Vincent Price is soon to be seen co-starring in RKO's production of His Kind of Woman. And all you Saint fans will be glad to know that the Saint comic books are on sale at all newsstands. This is Don Stanley speaking. Three times mean good times on NBC. Every Sunday on NBC, meet two delightful and often confusing families, the Blandings and the Harrisons. Mr. and Mrs. Blanding stars Terry Grant and Betsy Drake as the proud but bewildered owners of the famous dream house. And the Phil Harris Alice Bay show features the hilarious Harrisons and their friends in typical amazing Harris situations. Hear them later today. Fred Allen, Edwin, and Dee Lilly join the big show today. Adventures of the Saint, starring Vincent Price. The Saint, based on characters created by Leslie Trotter, and known to millions from books, magazines, and motion pictures. The Robin Hood of modern crime now comes transcribed to radio, starring Hollywood's brilliant and talented actor Vincent Price as... The Saint. Just a moment. Yes? Are you Simon Templer? The man they call the Saint? Yes, I am. Who am I? So, what do I get if I come up with the correct answer? Let me in and I'll show you. Well, you're in. If you're carrying your laundry in that little black bag, Jack Benny is. I said I'll show you. Oh, yeah. Oh, laundry never looks like this. Don't touch. Just look. It's almost all the gold. A whole bag full of big bills. What did you do? You said you tried to honest John. That's what I want you to tell me. You mean you don't know how you got all this money? I don't know anything. That goes to who I am, where I came from, where I'm going. I see. An hour ago, I woke up in the taxi and was driving through the park. I got a bump on my head the size of an ostrich egg and this bag full of sugar beside me. When I wake up from a bump on the head, I'm lucky if I find an aspirin beside me. I got no wallet, no papers, no keys, not even a matchbook. My pockets are empty and close my head. I remember nothing. The cab driver? Oh, he's waiting for me downstairs. He says he picked me up in a midtown street. He says I gave him a ten spot to drive me through the park while I took a nap. So for a thousand dollars in this joy jam bag, Saint, who am I? My friend, I'm afraid you have amnesia. You'd better tear some doctor away from the cigarette press and have yourself looked at. You're nuts. You go to a doctor with a knock on your noggin, the doctor calls the cops, the cops come calling and... Like your own thing. You don't like cops? With a hat like I'm wearing, I'm not even positive I hate spinach. 
It isn't what I might think of cops that's important, Frank. It's what they might think of me. You mean the money? I mean exactly nothing else. Anybody carrying this kind of dough these days has either been stealing from a bank or holding on to the government. No hospital, Frank, no doctors, no cops, no explanations, no jails. You. Me. You. Once again, Frank, for a thousand bucks, who am I? All right. A thousand dollars goes to the Red Cross in anticipation of the day that I become a national disaster. You just made a deal. No, for you, you'd better go into my guest room, lock yourself and your money in and sleep off that bump, huh? The boy goes into another head and wants to know who it is. You find sleeping pills in the medicine chest if you need them. I'll need them. You're going somewhere? I want to see if that cab driver left his meter running. Thanks a lot, Mr. Temple. You're very welcome, Mr. Uh, I can't help you, then. But for the time being, I'll just call you Mr. Stigler. <laughs> Mister, all I know is the guy climbs in the cab at 48 Madison, hands me a 10 spot, tells me to pick it off through the park while he smashes 40. He handed you the money before you took him riding? Yeah, before. And let me have how come. Because I didn't want him in my cab, that's how come. The way he was bobbing and waving, I thought he was alert. I didn't want no trouble with no drugs. So you had a little argument? A little discussion. Then he takes out a $10 bill and forces it on me. So I stop discussing and start driving. The $10 bill, he took it out of his pocket, huh? If you know when you're at a place, a guy can carry his dough, let me know, and I'll take the bell off of my wife's neck when we go to bed night. Hmm. Out of his pocket. What's the matter? You think I'm lying? You're not lying. Now I know how my old grandmother felt when the medicine man swore that the snake oil would cure her rheumatism. Mm-hmm. Having trouble finding out what the story is, huh? No, I don't care what the story is. I'd just like to know what the game is. <laughs> Well, well, here he is in room there, Sergeant. Yeah, and I'm very glad. So, so glad. You were waiting for me. Yeah, we see you chatting with the care push out judge, son. We didn't want to interrupt. Shall we come here into the hall? To await you. We want to have a chat, too. With you, son. With you. Oh, please, now, one head at a time. Now, what should we chat about? Oh, man. This man. The man we've been chatting, Sergeant. He means follow you. The guy's in your apartment now. When we phone the boss and tell him, the boss has a reaction. Right while he's talking to us. I can understand it. I feel a little sick myself. But the boss says we should call you and ask you politely. Yo, Basil, he said first ask him politely. Oh, thank you, Basil. So we are asking. Politely? So why don't you politely tell him? Look, if you boys are auditioning a new television act, Radio City went that away. We all make sure a lot of politely, son. We hardly got one good man left. So what goes with the man in your apartment, think The boss says he wants to know. The boss says he's got to know. The boss says he don't want that old trouble with the law to start up again. Basil, you're talking too much. I apologize. And change, you are not talking enough. Now, politely, for the final time, the man with the black bag, what's he up to? Yeah. And what's he carrying in a bag? The fence wax. Mustache wax? Yes, a new kind of mustache wax. Homogenized. He dropped in to give me a free home demonstration. Oh, don't give us none of that. Get him got a mustache. But he said he didn't mind waiting. Oh, dear. Basil, shall you hold him while I hit him, or shall I hold him while you hit him? No, you make the choice. No, no, Basil, I insist. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, boss. Hello, Frank. Hey, you're just in time to accept my thank you. You're thanking me? Yeah, for making me a member of the Thug of the Month Club. You think of all the money I've been wasting on gymnasium. From where I sat, it didn't look wasted. Go on, beat it, boys. I'll talk to you later. Now, don't be sore, boss. We've got to be polite, can we, too? We're in great, Yeah, yeah, beat it, beat it. Yeah. You know me, Templar? Well, not as well as I would if I'd been on horse races. Frank O'Connor, you're a bookmaker. Well, you don't know me at all, Frank. I'm not a bookmaker. I'm the bookmaker. Mm, well, it's a word. You get right to the heart of the thing, man. Eh? How much? I've got nothing to say, or try to make you. Ah, let's be a little realistic, Templar. The way you live, the way you dress, you know, you get that dollar look. All that you got to do is tell me in 50 words or less what I want to know about your guest inside and the big cash size of yours. 
What's he up to? Mm, he doesn't know either, he says. Oh, come on, fella. Give a little. Do I have to start mentioning amounts? Oh, if you mention any amounts of amounts you want, I've nothing to say here, Tony. All right, okay. If that's the way you want to play the hand, but you won't hold out long. I found the people and racehorses have one important thing in common. They both have a price. And then why bother me with your impossible questions? You'll make a deal with Sankey. Now, the deal will be with you, Sank. And if my money won't make the record spin, the boys have a way all their own. Mm, yes, the boys. It's too bad they weren't able to stick around and play a little longer, but I'm just to do with getting anxious. Oh, you'll be seeing them again. Soon. And Sank, maybe you better start getting anxious. <laughs> Ah, love, for thou and I, with faith and fire, to change the sorry scheme of things entire. Would we not gather it to this? Anyone who recites Omar Khayyam to a highball either loves Omar Khayyam or loves highball. <laughs> I'm happy to say that I love and I'm faithful to both. And what brings the great saint, the scourge of the wicked, the nemesis of evil, to this humble drinking place? I have a brain to take with you, man. Who's brain? Your brain. Ah, he's made a wise choice. <laughs> Do we a haggle about price, or is it the usual? The price is what it always is. Splendid, splendid. I will accept payment now. <laughs> the bartender. Yeah? A bottle of bourbon for my friend. One of those stamps for services rendered. Coming right up. Ah. Oh, yeah. Oh, thank you. And now, uh, render friend. I just have a thing. <laughs> now, which branch of my fabulous brain did you touch? Memory branch. Mice and men division. Department of Thugs and Bookmakers. The file on Frank O'Connor. Oh, yeah. Frank O'Connor. Born in Boston in 1912. Father, well, yeah, which brings us up to recent years. And an old trouble with the law that he doesn't want to start up again to quote a thug named Basil. In the case of the Mexican court law, Pain. Huh? Well, let's have that in Walt's time. George Pain. Pain Pink. He liked to play the horses. He didn't like to pay the bookmaker. He didn't mind making promises, though. When was this? Oh, a couple of years ago. The old O'Connor would could easily have been the annual budget of a small Latin American republic. How did it all come out? He disappeared. Disappeared. Like the buttons on a shirt in a ten cent laundry. It created quite a splash. Yeah, how come you, know, you were in Las Vegas at the time? The Hotel Flamingo, I believe. It was room uh, 210, and the lady you liked in the floor show was named Yvonne. Yeah, someday when you have time, would you mind writing my memoirs? But right now, let's go on with the opera. Yeah. The police found out about Payne's debt to O'Connor. They picked O'Connor up, grilled him, medium rare, made him very uncomfortable, found they couldn't pin anything on him, turned him loose. Yeah, and pain? Where are the snows of yesterday? Yeah. The popular theory is that he is a victim of amnesia. Come on. Amnesia? He had it twice before, his doctor said. To be kind to the next bum who asks for a handout, Simon, he may own a million dollar paint factory in Long Island City. Any relatives? Two wives. Much younger. Much prettier, too, they tell me. He's running the paint factory now, bigger and better than ever. That's all. Close files. And I got my money, Frank. Not so. I do have a remarkable brain, don't I? Fabulous. Any time, Mr. Temple, any time. I am here at my office every day. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. You're excused, but with reluctance. I'd love to get by, please. Well, you get by anyway. Look, I'm a very busy woman. I have no intention of standing here on a catwalk to spend it over a thousand gallon vat of boiling resin while it's paying just those prices at me. Mm, so that's what's boiling in that outside tub below us, huh? Resin. <laughs> and I had hoped you could turn out to be a hot Tom and Jerry. Who's here? Who are you? What are you doing here? Well, they told me in the front office that Mrs. Payne would be back here in the production office. I'm uh, Diamond Temple. I'm Mrs. Payne. And if you want to talk to me, Mrs. Temple, Stay away from the heat of that bat before my makeup runs. If it runs, I'll take it for you. Mm. 
Come into my office. Oh, thank you. Miss Payne, I'm, uh, I'm here to talk to you about your husband. My husband? Mm. You know something about George. You know where he is. Well, let's just say I know where a man with amnesia is. At least he says he has amnesia. Yes. I'm afraid I don't understand. Well, thank you, neither do I, yes. Then what makes you think he's... Well, a bookmaker named Frank O'Connor. O'Connor? Oh, yeah, and two patrons of the arts named Basil and Sackler work for him. I'm afraid I don't follow you. In the course of a dull conversation, Basil let it slip that their interest in my man with a paralyzed memory is a continuation of their one-time interest in your husband. So you think that the man with our music and my husband are one of the things? Mm-hmm. The theory that I'm working on. Well, if only it turns out to be more than a theory. Uh, Mr. Kemper, when can I meet this man? Just get your hat. No? All right. Only... Well, I... Look, if you're worried about that resin you have cooking, couldn't you get some obliging neighbor to turn it off when it's done? My only obliging neighbor is the foreman at this point. I can leave as soon as he comes back. Oh, this is my time. Thank you. Oh, if only I could have George back again. Mr. Kentley, if the man with the bump on his head does turn out to be my husband, I shall be eternally in your death. Yes, that idea has some fascinating kind of things. <laughs> Say yes? Bill Fowler, Inter Urban Insurance Company. Oh, I don't need any. No, I'm not a salesman. I'm an investigator. Of what? Yes. People mostly. I hear you dug up a guy who might be George Payne. He has big ears. He has a big telephone. Mrs. Payne called me right after you left it. I'd like to have a talk with us, but hey, somebody else wants to talk with us? Yes. Yeah. Me. Hey, come on in, Fowler. If there's anything left of the guy when I get through with him, it's yours. You don't sound happy about this, Terry. No, and I won't be until I know why he's pretending to have amnesia. Pretending? Yes. And why is the insurance company shipping an ore into this? Quarter of a million bucks. Good reason? Mm -hmm. 250,000. Good reason. That's the amount you won't have to pay if Mr. Payne is still living. That's it. Come and meet my guest. I'd like to very much. Mm -hmm. Mr. Sugar. Hmm. It didn't lock. Look, hanging from that. Oh. Uh, wait. He committed suicide. Yeah, it looks that way. I suppose it looks like that. But if we could talk, I think he'd tell us he's been murdered. <laughs> Beautiful place, isn't it, Fowler? Mm, waiting rooms of morgues aren't supposed to be careful. You're pretty sure that the unfortunate victim is Payne, aren't you? Oh, I didn't say that, Payne. I said he fits the physical description. But if the lovely Mrs. Payne could tell us that she is satisfied with the identification that the cost is her husband, then what? Mm-hmm. Then in all likelihood, the insurance company will be equally satisfied. And $250,000 moves from your pocket to her. That's the way it goes, thank you. When a policyholder dies, we pay. It's the basic principle of life insurance, you know. I uh, know. But in this particular instance, a few things strike me as being a little too basic. What do you mean? And I can answer that partially as of now, but I prefer to answer it entirely as of later. You still think Payne was murdered, Sir? Uh-huh. Guess what? Mathematics. The well-worn problem of two added to two and equaling four, only in this case it was ten and ten equaling twenty. Twenty what? Sleeping pills. Sleeping pills? Yeah, twenty sleeping pills. Each one guaranteed by the manufacturer to make you dream of Eddie Lamar. They, um, they're in my medicine chest. Well, oh, today I'm stupid. The late lamented knew I had dream pills in my medicine chest. He even said he thought he would need one. So he took one, and it didn't work. And he lay awake with a bump in the head and a skull full of amnesia, and being mentally upset, he became depressed, and he got out of bed and hung himself. Fowler, oh, uh, have you ever hung yourself? Yeah. Huh? It's a difficult thing to do. And it's a dreary way to die, painful, too. You can swing and sway in agony for as much as five minutes before you pronounce yourself dead. Well, the people have been known to do it, think. Not people who had plenty sleeping pills available. Mm. See what you mean? If he wanted to kill himself, he'd have gone after the pills instead of the court. Oh, you are a detective. 
Oh, but why would he murder? Well, some people call it the root of all evil. You and I simply refer to it as money. This is where I get off. If he was not there for anything, it was certainly not for money. Or didn't you notice that little black bag was still with him? Yeah, if the killer had taken the little black bag with its little green contents, the suicide he hoped to make everyone think it was would no longer look like suicide. There's a lot of sugar in that bag, Saint. And the killer could have so easily taken it. Cost him a lot of money to make this murder look like suicide. The way I'm thinking, it didn't cost him one red cent. What do you mean? Not one tiny dime. Because that little black bag with its cargo of joy, every last penny of it, will now go back to its lawful owner. Lawful owner? But who? The killer. I don't think I'll wait any longer for Mrs. Payne to come and identify the body. I have a sudden urge to talk to a certain bookmaker. You're going? You're not interested in knowing whether or not Mrs. Payne identifies the guy as her husband? Are you kidding? Hey, Patsy! Patsy! You don't run the taxi, Mr. Templer. Judge these bad things. No, Davey, don't, Casey. You have used your head. Well, he's used both his heads. Is it recess time at the monkey house again, boys? He is funny. Is he, Bertie? Hey, it's funny now, Casey, but will he be funny later? No, he will not, Bertie. It is not possible to be funny when you're sleeping in the riverbed in a pair of cement pajamas. I want you nights at the round table to take me somewhere. Hmm? Oh, we're going to take you somewhere. Right? Yeah, I want to see O'Connor. There are some questions I intend to make him answer. You are going to make him? Yeah. Basil, either this chap is screwy or somebody already did his brain job. I'm saying the birth is awaiting him to care. Well, I hope he hasn't been awaiting too long. Uh, this way, Captain. And thank you. We are just about on a verge of losing our politeness, are we not? We indeed are. What my colleague means, Saint, is don't venture to try nothing. Yes, Saint, like I told you, people and race horses, they both have a price. You wouldn't charge for money, but a price is now a painless rubout as against one that's full of agony. Are you doing part of the gym, O'Connor? Hey, drive carefully, you hooligan. You want the cops on us? I'm sorry for it. Don't worry, boys. I will see the battle drive carefully. Yeah, yeah. Well, Frank, look, I'll make the offer even more attractive. I'll let you choose the spot where the bullets go. Oh, really? Now, that's your mind. Frankly, Frank, I'd like to be able to tell you that I'll let you go after you tell me what I want. You know, maybe with just a couple of broken bones here and there. Yeah, yeah little can't. But I can't do it. I can't let you continue alive, you piece of mind. And unless you're running way off form, you start up a fire I thought I put out three years ago. We did kill Payne the third man three years ago, didn't you? Well, he owed me some pretty important money. The boys and I called on him to collect, and he couldn't know. And the boys went to back. I'll say we did. Yeah, these two apes of mine, they made with a little too much action. See, I didn't want George Payne killed. I just wanted him scared of the paying up. Mm, the Payne died, and the river bottom has been his home these last three years. Yeah, yeah, that's it. And tonight, he's going to have company on that lonely river bottom. And there won't be no mermaid. <laughs> ready to give me an earful now, Payne? Not quite ready. We'll make him ready when we get to the chat. Well, I'll be just screaming to talk. Meanwhile, then, let's have some more of your reminiscences, O'Connor. For instance, uh, what made you so interested in the little man with the black bag, huh? What made me interested? Are you crazy? <laughs> Here we go. We knock a guy off three years ago, and for three years, he's laying in the river. Yes. How would you feel if you see him or his exact duplicate, the same clothes, same and everything? On the street one day last week. Yeah, I feel haunted. So you had the boys tail him for a couple of days. Yeah. And one of the places he went was my apartment. Yeah, yeah. But where he goes twice before that, that's what I get to worry over. Ah, yeah. He went to the place where George Payne would be most apt to go, didn't he? Yeah, he still did. So you began to worry about it, huh? You didn't want George Payne or anything concerning him to pop up anywhere. Yeah, yeah, that's right. You worried because... Whatever Payne's double was up to had to be a swindle. And you were afraid that the swindle might interest the police again in the Payne affair. 
that you'd be on the carpet again, and maybe this time you'd be nailed as pain killer. Yeah, I knew that you had a treasure tonight. <laughs> you see what brains do for a guy, though? You are going to be killed because you got brains. Oh, God. Come on, come on, come on, man. Spare the boy some bruised knuckles. What's the swindle the guy who looks like pain is pulling? Yes, yeah, he's pulling his any swindle right now. Trying to convince St. Peter that he belongs. Huh? Yeah, the man you worried about is dead. Dead? Now you're pulling a swindle. Yeah, a little sightseeing trip to the morgue will convince you. Okay. All right, we'll take that trip, Saint. And if the guy is dead like you say, maybe you'll live a little. But if he's not, you're going to be dead a little. Well, I'm glad you're still here. I see everyone else is gone. Oh, I dread the thought of going home. After seeing my poor husband in the morgue, I thought maybe I could work on him. Not speak too much. And what do I do now, applaud? Pardon? The performance, the speech you just gave, Mrs. Payne, frankly speaking, you're just about as bad an actress as you are a simply. I hope you Okay, you're going to climb down off that high dungeon, or must I push you? Your little plot with the honey is just so simple it almost works. Yes, you are. The man to know it's such a simple symbol, almost stupid. We have a Mr. Payne who has been missing for three years. We have a Mrs. Payne who is dying to get her hot little hands on a quarter of a million dollars worth of insurance money. You're insane. And finally, we have the highly fortuitous appearance of a man who looks so much like the missing Mr. Payne that even his bookie gives him a double take. Plot? Make a deal with the double. Have him fake amnesia. Tell him to call on the saint and ask the saint to find out who he is. I don't know what you're talking about. Give the man a prop, a bag of money, so that the man can say, I wouldn't be bothering you, saint. I'd go to the police and ask them to find out who I am, except that this money I've got is probably illegal. So the saint puts his fabulous nose to the grindstone and sniffs out that the man is George Payne. And the man, of course, wouldn't realize himself to be murdered. So that I can collect my husband's insurance. The man thought he would take over a paint factory. That's all he thought. He didn't know about insurance. So, the man has been murdered. By me, of course. No, no. You and I were here together, remember? We were standing over that hot vat of resin at the time the man was murdered. Well, thank you at least for not accusing me of murder, Mr. Kimball. I said you didn't actually commit the murder, but your colleague did. So you're just as much of a candidate for the chair as he is. Oh, I, I have a colleague, haven't I? With an imagination like yours, Mr. Central, I'm surprised you didn't make it a whole game. Mm-hmm. So the man is murdered, and Mrs. Payne says, yep, that's, that's your turn, and collects all the insurance money as of now without having to wait that long, dreary seven years before her missing spouse can be declared legally dead in plot. <laughs> we should write comic books, Mr. Central. Yeah, I should. At least the murderers in that business are all made of ink. You know, this whole affair might have given me great difficulties if it weren't for one thing. Oh, uh, what thing? Mm, stupid thing. The man with the alleged amnesia telling me he awoke from his deep nap with his pocket foot dry. And yet the cab driver telling me that he took a $10 bill out of his pocket. A little unimportant and stupid. Of course, you can prove all the wild things you've been doing. There's only one thing that still consumes my curiosity, Mrs. Payne. Who is your accomplice, the man who actually committed the murder? That all you have to do, Mr. Kenton. Turn around and you'll see me. And you'll see this beautiful gun I'm holding, too. Now, uh, yes, an insurance company detective would be a big help in swindling an insurance company. Stay where you are, Saint. I said stay where you are. Come on, Give me that gun. Give it to me. Thank you. Run, run. That won't help me, James. Someday, somebody is going to buy a can of your paint, Mrs. Payne, and wonder why there are buttons in it. Don't bother, Mrs. Payne. I've been called it before. What do you say we go drop in on some police? Listening to another transcribed adventure of the Saint, the Robin Hood of modern crime. Now here is our star, Vincent Price. Ladies and gentlemen, in tonight's cast, you heard Joan Banks as Mrs. Payne and Sheldon Leonard as Frank. Ed Max and Tony Barrett were Cecil and Basil. 
Sidney Miller was Murphy, Lamont Johnson, Mr. Sugar, and Jack Moyles Fowler. This is Vincent Price inviting you to join us again next week at the same time for another exciting adventure of the Saints. Good night. <laughs> of the Saint was written by Michael Cramoy. The Saint, based on characters created by Leslie Trotter, is a James L. Fassier production and is directed by Helen Mack. Vincent Price is soon to be seen co-starring with Michelin Pearl and Errol Flynn in Mar- uh, William Marshall's production of Bloodline. All you Saint fans will be glad to know the Saint comic books are available on all new fans. Three times mean good times on NBC. Next Sunday, you're invited to the Theatre Guild on the Air's full hour and a half production of Shakespeare's masterpiece, Hamlet. The Pages of Hamlet come to life on Theatre Guild next Sunday, March 4th, on NBC. The Adventures of the Saints, starring Vincent Price. The Saint, based on characters created by Leslie Trotter and known to millions from books, magazines, and motion pictures. The Robin Hood of modern crime, now comes transcribed to radio, starring Hollywood's brilliant and talented actor Vincent Price as... The Saint. Just a moment. Yes? Are you Simon Templer? The man they call the Saint? Yes, I am. Who am I? What do I get if I come up with the correct answer? Let me know and I'll show you. Well, you're in. If you're carrying your laundry in that little black bag, Jack Benny is. I said I'll show you. Hey. Well, laundry never looks like this. Don't touch. Just look. It's almost all big bills. A whole bag full of big bills. What did you do? Tell your car to honest John? That's what I want you to tell me. You mean you don't know how you got all this money? I don't know anything. I thought to who I am, where I came from, where I'm going. An hour ago, I woke up and in a taxi and was driving through the park. I got a bump on my head, this bag of an ostrich egg, and this bag full of sugar. Because when I wake up from a bump on the head, I'm lucky if I find an ostrich beside me. I got no wallet, no papers, no keys, not even a matchbook. My pockets are empty and close my head. I think of nothing. You can't drive? Oh, you wait for me down there because you took me up to the town street. If I get in the punch box, they drive me through the park while I took a nap. So for a thousand dollars in this joy jam bag, Saint, who am I? Now, Saint, I'm afraid you have that reason. You better tear some doctor away from his cigarette test and have yourself looked at. You're nuts. You go to a doctor with a knock on your noggin, the doctor calls the cops, the cops come calling and... Like your own thing. You don't like time? With a hat like I'm wearing, I'm not even positive I hate spinach. It isn't what I might think of top this important thing, it's what they might think of me. You mean the money? I mean exactly nothing else. Anybody trying this kind of show these days is either been stealing from a bank or holding on to government. No hospital thing, no doctors, no cops, no explanations, no jails. You. Me. You. Once again, thanks for a thousand bucks, who am I? All right. A thousand dollars goes to the Red Cross in anticipation of the day that I become a national disaster. Just make a deal. Make for you, you'd better go into my dress room, lock yourself and your money in and sleep off that bump, huh? The boy goes into another head and wants to know who it is. To find sleeping pills in the medicine chest. I'll hit him. You going somewhere? I want to see if that cab driver left his meter running. Thanks a lot, Mr. Temple. You're very welcome, Mr. Uh, I can't help you, though. But for the time being, I'll just call you Mr. Chisholm. Oh. Mr. All I know is the guy climbs in the top at 48 miles and holds me a 10 spot, tells me to pick it off through the park while he smashes 40. He handed you the money before you took him riding? Yes, before. Well, let me have how come. Because I didn't want him in my car, that's how come. The way he was bobbing and waving, I thought he was lost. I didn't want no trouble with no drunk. So you had a little argument? A little discussion. Then he takes out a ten dollar bill and forces it on me. So I stopped discussing and start driving. The ten dollar bill, he took it out of his pocket, huh? 
If you know any other place a guy can carry his stone, let me know and I'll take the bell off of my wife's neck when we go to bed night. Hmm. How do you talk to you? What's the matter? You think I'm lying? You're not lying. Now I know how my old grandmother felt when the medicine man swore that the snake oil would cure her rheumatism. Uh, having trouble finding out what the story is, huh? Well, I don't care what the story is. I just like to know what the game is. <laughs> Well, well, here he is, the moon race, Sergeant. Yeah, and I'm very glad. We saw our talk You were waiting for me. Yeah, we see you chatting with the care push outside, son. We didn't want to corrupt, so we come here into the hood. Oh, so wait, you. We want to have a chat, too. Wait, you. Wait, you. Oh, please, now, one head at a time. Now, what should we chat about? A oh, man. This man. The man we've been talking, Sergeant. He means follow you. The guy's in your apartment now. When he's on the drawers and tell him, the drawer says he has to. Right while he's talking to I can understand it. I feel a little sick myself. The, the boss says we should call you and ask you politely. No, Basil. He said first ask him politely. Oh, thank you. So, so we are asking. Politely? So why don't you politely tell him? Look, if you boys are auditioning a new television match, Radio City won't that away. We almost go a lot of politely, son. We hardly got one good man left. So what goes with the beauty of your apartment, son? The boss says he wants to know. The boss says he's got to know. The boss says he don't want that old trouble with the law to start up again. Guys, are you talking too much? I don't apologize. He's saying you're not talking enough. Now, politely, for the final time, the man with the black bag, what's he up to? Yeah, and what's he carrying in the bag? The bag, right? Mustache, right? Yes, a new kind of mustache, right? Homogenized. He dropped in to give me a free home demonstration. Oh, don't give us none of that. Then he's got a mustache. Well, he said he didn't mind waiting. Oh, dear. Basil, shall you hold him while I hit him, or shall I hold him while you hit him? No. You might destroy me. No, no, Basil, I ain't so... Bye, Tender. 
A bottle of bourbon for my friend. One of his stamps for services rendered. There you are. Oh, thank you. And now, uh, younger friend. I just saw that thing. <laughs> now, which branch of my fabulous brain is it? Memory branch. My command division, Department of Thugs and Bookmakers, the file on Frank O'Connor. Mm -hmm. Frank O'Connor, born in Boston in 1912, father well, well, which brings us up to recent years and an old trouble with the law that he doesn't want to start up again, to quote a thug named Basil. In the case of the little cold Oh, huh? Well, let's have that in walk, man. You're cold, cold, cold. He liked to play the horses. He didn't like to play the bookmakers. He didn't mind making promises, though. When he said, oh, a couple of years ago, the old O'Connor would could easily have been the annual budget of a small Latin American republic. How did it all come out? You could appear to be like the buttons on a skirt in a 10 cent laundress. It's really the bloodiest class. Yeah, how come you? Well, you were in Las Vegas at the time. The Hotel Flamingo, I believe. It was room uh, 210, and the lady you liked in the floor show was named Yvonne. Yeah, someday when you have time, would you mind writing my memoir? But right now, let's go on with the opera. Yeah. The police found out about Payne's death to O'Connor. They picked O'Connor up, drilled him, leading him rare, made him very uncomfortable, found they couldn't pin anything on him, and the blue. Yeah, and Payne, where are the snows of yesterday? Yeah. The popular theory is that he is a victim of amnesia. Come on. And me? He had it twice before, his doctor said. To be kind of a much bum who asks for a handout, Simon, he may own a million dollar paint factory in Long Island City. Any relative? Two wives. Much younger. Much prettier, too, they tell me. He's running the paint factory now, bigger and better than ever. That's a gold farm. And I got my money, man. Not sure. I do have a remarkable brain, don't I? Fabulous. Any time, Mr. Templer, any time. I am here with my office every day. <laughs> Excuse me. Yes, yes, but with a reluctance. I'd like to get by, please. Well, you get by anyway. Look, I'm a very busy woman. I have no intention of standing here on a catwalk to spend it over a thousand-gallon bath of boiling resin while a stranger throws parts at me. Mm, so that's what's boiling in that outside tub below us, huh? Resin. And I had hoped it would turn out to be a hot Tom and Jerry. Who's mm here? -hmm. Yeah. Who are you? What are you doing here? Well, they told me in the front office that Mrs. Payne would be back here in the production office. I'm uh, Simon Temple. I'm Mrs. Payne. And if you want to talk to me, Mrs. Temple, stay away from the heat of that bat before my makeup runs. If it runs, I'll take it for you. Come into my office. Oh, thank you. Miss Payne, I'm, uh, I'm here to talk to you about the husband. My husband? Mm -hmm. You know something about George. You know where he is. Well, let's just say I know where a man with amnesia is. At least he says he has amnesia. <laughs> I'm afraid I don't understand. Well, thank you, neither do I, yes. Then what makes you think he's... Well, a bookmaker named Frank O'Connor. O'Connor? Oh, yeah, and two patrons of the arts named Basil and Stuffle work for him. I'm afraid I don't follow you. In the course of a dull conversation, Basil let it slip that their interest in my man with a paralyzed memory is a continuation of their one-time interest in your company. So you think that the man with our music and my husband... I will be seen. Mm -hmm. The theory that I'm working on. Well, if only it turned out to be more than a theory. Uh, Mr. Temple, when can I meet this man? Good, good, good. No? All right. Only... Well, uh, look, if you're worried about that resin you have cooking, couldn't you get some obliging neighbor to turn it off when it's done? My only obliging neighbor is the foreman at this point. I can leave as soon as he comes back. Oh, uh, it's my time. Thank you. Oh, you need to get there to get Mr. Temple... If the man with a bump on his head does turn out to be my husband, I shall be the sooner in your death. That idea has been fascinating, Hanukkah. Oh, Yeah. Go follow. 
Oh, under urban insurance company. I don't need any. I'm not a sheriff. I'm an investigator. A what? People mostly. Who hey, you pick up a guy who might be George Payne? Yes, I figure. I have a big telephone. Mr. Payne called me right after the electric. I must have a call to this for him. Somebody else wants to talk to him? Yes. Yeah. Me. Hey, come on in, Charlie. If there's anything left of the guy when I get through it, it's yours. You don't sound happy about this guy. No, and I won't be until I know why he's pretending to have amnesia. Pretending? Yeah. And why is the insurance company shipping an oil into this? Quarter of a million bucks? Good reason? Mm -hmm. 250,000, good reason. That's the amount you won't have to pay if Mr. Payne is still living. That's it. Yeah, yeah. Come and meet my dad. Oh, I like you very much. Sugar. Hmm. Didn't lock it. Listen, I need some. Uh, hey, committed suicide. Yeah, it looks that way. It looks that like way. But if he could talk, I think he'd tell us he's been murdered. Beautiful place, even if I was. Waiting in the morgue, I'm supposed to kill this. You're pretty sure that the unfortunate victim is Payne, aren't you? I didn't say that, say. I said he fits the physical description. But if the lovely Mrs. Payne could tell us that she is satisfied with the identification that the court is her husband, then what? Mm. And in all likelihood, the insurance company will be pretty satisfied. And $250,000 made from your pocket. Mm -hmm. That's the way it goes, Frank. When a policyholder dies, he pays. It's the basic principle of life insurance. Oh, no. no. But in this particular instance, a few things strike me as being a little too basic. Oh, yes. Yeah. And I can answer that partially as of now, but I prefer to answer it entirely as of later. You still think Kane was murdered, too? Well, that's what? Not the man. The well-worn problem of two added to two and equaling four, only in this case it was ten and ten equaling ten. What do you want? Listen to it. Sleeping pills. Twenty sleeping pills. Each one guaranteed by the manufacturer to make you dream of Teddy Lamar. They, um, they're not many people. Oh, today I'm stupid. The late lamented knew I had green pills in my medicine chest. He even said he thought he would need one. So he took one. And it didn't work. He lay awake with a bump in the head and his skull full of amnesia. And being mentally upset, he became depressed and he got out of bed and hung himself. How, oh, Ed? Have you ever hung yourself? Yes. Huh? It's a difficult thing to do. And it's a dreary way to die, painful, too. You can swing and sway in agony for as much as five minutes before you pronounce yourself dead. The people have been known to do it, huh? Not people who have 20 sleeping pills available. Mm -hmm. See what you mean? If he wanted to kill himself, he'd have gone after the pills instead of the court. Yeah, you are to be tested. Oh, but why would he hurt it? Well, some people call it the root of all evil. You and I simply refer to it as money. This is where I get off. But he was not going for anything. It was certainly not for money. Or didn't you notice that little black bag was still with it? Yeah, if the killer had taken the little black bag with its little green contents, the suicide he hoped to make everyone think it was would no longer look like suicide. There's a lot of sugar in that bag, Frank. The killer could have so easily taken it. it cost him a lot of money to make his murder look like suicide. The way I'm thinking, it didn't cost him one red cent. What do you mean? Not one cent. Dime. Because that little black bag with its cargo of joy, every last penny of it will now go back to its lawful owner. Lawful owner? But who? The killer. I don't think I'll wait any longer for Mrs. Payne to come and identify the body. I have a sudden urge to talk to a certain bookmaker. You're going? You're not interested in knowing whether or not Mrs. Payne identifies the guy as her husband? Are you kidding? <laughs> You don't run the back to Mr. Kinkley. That's your back to him. No, indeed, he don't, sir. You have used your head. Yeah, he's used both his heads. Did you lose that time at the monkey house again, boys? He is, son. Is he, does he? Well, it's funny now, sir. But will he be funny later? No, he will not, sir. It is not possible to be funny when you're sleeping in the riverbed in a pair of cement pajamas. I want you nice at the round table to take me somewhere. Hmm? Oh, we're going to take you somewhere. Yeah, I want to see O'Connor. There are some questions I intend to make an answer. You are going to make him? 
I believe that this chap is screwed or somebody already did his brain dead. I'm saying the good piece of it, he needs to care, but I hope he hasn't been awakened too long. Third, this way, Jason. And thanks. We are just about on a voice of losing our politeness, are we not? We went through there. What my colleague means, thank you. Don't thank you to try nothing. <laughs> Yes, Kate, like I told you, people and race horses, they both have a price. You wouldn't talk for money, but a price is now a painless rubber as against one that's full of agony. Hey, you doing five feet on this, O'Connor? Now drive carefully, you hold again, you want the cops on us? I'm sorry, boy. Don't worry, boy. I will see the battle drive carefully. Yes, sir. Look, I'll make the offer even more attractive. I'll let you choose the spot where the bullets go. Oh, really? Now, that's your mind. Frankly, Saint, I'd like to be able to tell you that I'll let you go after you tell me what I want. You know, maybe with just a couple of broken bones here and there. Yeah, a little scanty. But I can't do it. I can't let you continue alive, you piece of man. And unless you're running way off form, you started up a fire I thought I put out three years ago. You did kill Payne the third man three years ago, didn't you? Well, he owed me some pretty important money. The boys and I called on him to collect, and he said no. And the boys went it out. I'll say you did. Yeah, these two eggs of mine were made with a little too much out. See, I didn't want George Payne killed. Just wanted him scared of the pain up. Mm, the pain died, and the river bottom has been his home these last three years. Yeah. And tonight, he's going to have company on that lonely river bottom. And there won't be no mermaid. <laughs> ready to give me an earful now, Saint? Not quite ready. Well, we might be ready when we get to the chat. Yeah, we're just screaming. Meanwhile, then, let's have some more of your reminiscences, O'Connor. For instance, uh, what made you so interested in the little man with the black eyes, huh? What made me interested? Are you crazy? <laughs> Here we go, we knock a guy off three years ago, and for three years he's laying in the river. Yes. How would you feel if you see him or his exact duplicate, the same clothes, same everything, on the street one day last week? Yeah, I'd feel haunted. So you had the boys tailing for a couple of days, yeah. huh? And one of the places he went was my apartment. Yeah, yeah. But where he goes twice before that, that's what I get to worry about. Ah, yeah. He went to the place where George Payne would be most apt to go, didn't he? Yeah, he did. Do. So you began to worry about it, huh? You didn't want George Payne or anything concerning it to pop up anywhere. Yeah, yeah, that's right. You worried because whatever Payne's double was up to had to be a swindle. And you were afraid that the swindle might interest the police again in the Payne affair. That you'd be on the carpet again, and maybe this time you'd be nailed as Payne's killer. Yeah, I knew that you had it covered, right? <laughs> you see what Brain do for a guy to... You are going to be killed because you got Brain. Ah, oh, God. Come on, Brain. Come on, dear. Huh? Yeah. Go to boy. Some bruise. Nothing. What's the swindle the guy who looks like Payne is pulling? Yeah, if he's pulling his only swindle right now, he's trying to convince St. Peter that he belongs. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hey, the man you're worried about is dead. Dead. Now you're pulling a swindle. You know, a little typhoon trip to the morgue will convince you. Okay. All right, we'll take that trip, Frank. If the guy is dead like you say, maybe you'll live a little. But if he's not, you're going to be dead a little. <laughs> well, I'm glad you're still here. I see everyone else is gone. Well, I'd just have to stay in here. I could tell you I was in the middle of Maybe if I could work out, it's not too much. And what do I do now, applaud? Pardon? Pardon? The performance, the speech you just gave, Mrs. Payne, frankly speaking, you're just about as bad an actress as you are a singer. <laughs> Look, are you going to climb down off that high dungeon, or must I push you? Your little part of the honey is so simple it almost works. Look here, I demand to know what's such a simple thing, almost stupid. We have a Mr. Payne who has been missing for three years. We have a Mrs. Payne who is dying to get her hot little hands on a quarter of a million dollars worth of insurance money. You're insane. And finally, we have the highly fortuitous appearance of a man who looks so much like the missing Mr. Payne that even his bookie gives him a double take. Clock, 
make a deal with the devil, have him fake amnesia, tell him to call on the saint and ask the saint to find out who he is. I don't know what you're talking about. Give the man a prop, a bag of money, so that the man can say, I wouldn't be bothering you, saint. I'd go to the police and ask them to find out who I am, except that this money I've got is probably illegal. So the saint puts his fabulous nose to the grindstone and flips out that the man is George Saint. And the man, of course, willing to realize himself to be murdered. So that I can collect my husband's insurance. The man thought he would take over a paint factory. That's all he thought. He didn't know about insurance. So, the man has been murdered. By me, of course. No, no. You and I were here together, remember? We were standing over that hot vat of resin at the time the man was murdered. So, thank you at least for not accusing me of murder, Mr. Keith. I said you didn't actually commit the murder, but your colleague did. So you are just as much of a candidate for the chair as he is. Oh, I, I have a colleague. With an imagination like yours, Mr. Center, I'm surprised you didn't make it a whole game. Mm-hmm. So the man is murdered, and Mrs. Payne says, Yep, that's, that's your thing, and collects all the insurance money as of now without having to wait that long, dreary seven years before her missing spouse can be declared legally dead. And plot. <laughs> you should write comic books, Mr. Center. Yeah, I should. At least the murderers in that business are all made of ink. You know, this whole affair might have given me great difficulties if it weren't for one thing. Oh, what uh, yes, um, mm, the thing? The man with the alleged amnesia telling me he awoke from his deep nap with his pocket picked dry. And yet the cab driver telling me that he took a $10 bill out of his pocket. A little unimportant thing. Of course, you can prove all the wild things you've been seeing. There's only one thing that still consumes my curiosity, Mr. Who is your you're accomplice, the man who actually committed the murder. Well, all you have to do is to her. Turn around and you'll see. And you'll see this beautiful gun I'm holding, too. Now, uh, yes, an insurance company detective would be a big help in swindling an insurance company. Here we are, Sam. I said, stay with me now. Thank you. Oh, give me that gun. Give it to me. Thank you. Run, run. That won't help me, Somebody is going to buy a can of your paint, Mrs. Payne, and wonder why they're affecting you. <laughs> Don't bother, Mrs. Payne. I've been called it before. What do you say we go drop in on some police? Huh? to another transcribed adventure of the Saints, the Robin Hood of modern crime. Now here's our star, Vincent Price. Ladies and gentlemen, in tonight's cast, you heard Joan Banks as Mrs. Payne and Sheldon Leonard as Frank. Ed Max and Tony Dyer with Cecil and Basil. Sidney Miller with Murphy, Lamont Johnson, Mr. Sugar, and Jack Moyle's father. This is Vincent Price inviting you to join us again next week at the same time for another exciting adventure of the Saints. Good night. <laughs> written by Michael Clamor. The Saint, based on characters created by Leslie Trotter, is a James L. Sasser production and is directed by Helen Mack. Vincent Price is soon to be seen co-starring with Lincoln and Colin Harrell Swinney, now uh, William Marshall's production of Bloodline. All you Saint fans will be glad to know the Saint comic books are available on all new fans. Three times in good times on NBC. Next Sunday, you're invited to the Theatre Guild on the Air's full hour and a half production of Shakespeare's masterpiece, Hamlet. The Pages of Hamlet come to life on Theatre Guild next Sunday, March 4th, on NBC. The Adventures of the Saint, starring Vincent Price. The Saint, based on characters created by Leslie Trotter and known to millions from books, magazines, and motion pictures. The Robin Hood of modern crime now comes transcribed to radio, starring Hollywood's brilliant and talented actor Vincent Price as The Saint. Mr. Templer. Yes, Louis? 
You look tired. No, I am a bit. Been working or something? Or something. That is, um, I've been playing chess. Uh-huh. So wipe the lipstick off your mouth. The lipstick? Uh, 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 thanks, Louis. You're welcome. On a chess player, don't look good. It was a very close game. <laughs> that I can figure out for myself. Hey, look, somebody's moving out of your house, you see? There's a moving van parked in front. Yeah, so there is. So I better stop here. There's still lugging furniture out there. Yeah, I hope it's the people who have the apartment over mine. Boy, what's the matter with them? Large feet. Uh-huh. <laughs> hey, that's odd. What? That desk they just put in the van. It looks familiar. All furniture nowadays looks familiar. Oh, they're all finished. I'll pull up. Don't bother, Louie. Uh, how much are you? A bump. Hey, Mr. Temple, what's the matter? I'm beginning to realize why it looks so familiar. Why? Because it was my desk. <laughs> Now, look, Mr. Temple, you must have made a mistake. You're not moving. I didn't make a mistake. Yeah, but it's ridiculous. Mr. Temple? Yes, it was my desk. Not to mention my table, my chairs, my... Hey, Louis, did you get the license number of that truck? No. But it belonged to the North America van line. How do you know? It said so on the side. Oh, well, I'll look it up in the phone book. Yeah. Room looks awful naked. You know, furniture does a lot to fill up a room. Yeah, I've got it here. Uh, North American, 45 Columbus. Phone number? Well, anyway, we know one thing about where your furniture is, Doc. We do? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> North American. Oh, fine. That's a big help. North American. Good evening. My name is Simon Temper. I have a complaint. Do you want the manager? I do? You do. Enjoy. Oh, very well. Well, let me talk to him. Not in. Sorry. Well, uh, you might be able to help me. You see, uh, my complaint has to do with my furniture. I, it's just been moved by you people. Didn't we move it far enough? You shouldn't have moved it at all. We're so enthusiastic. I think you'd better check your records. Find out who ordered the van and where the furniture is to be delivered. Very well, sir. Just hold on. Having trouble, Mr. Temple? No, Louis. Just windy. From truck drivers? We'll sue them. Who will? Our cabbies in New York. The whimsy belongs to us. And furthermore... Mr. Templer? Yes? You ordered your furniture moved. I did? Pay for it in advance. Doesn't feel with our men and ask for rapid service. Well, I certainly got it. And where did I order the furniture moved to? The Sprague Furniture Gallery. Sprague? But he handles antiques. My furniture is modern. Maybe it's changed rapidly. Good night. Good night, sir. Come on, Louis. We're going to a gallery. We're in a hurry? Yes. You might say we've got to get a move on. Louis, I'm, uh, I'm puzzled. I'm ahead of you. My furniture couldn't have been stolen for the money it would bring. It wasn't that valuable. Too great a risk was involved. So somebody did it for fun? Oh, hardly. Why was it stolen tonight, not last week, last month, or last year? Maybe the guys at Swipes were too busy. Also, half a dozen pieces were taken. Among them a particularly worthless whatnot. What? Whatnot. And who's on third? Our whatnot, Louis, is a Victorian monstrosity which shouldn't happen to a tree. The point I'm making, though, is that I've had that whatnot only a few days. Uh-huh. Well, that means they were after the whatnot. So why did they swipe the other stuff? confuse the issue. To make me think it was just an ordinary burglary. Keep my attention away from the whatnot. Maybe it's worth a lot of money, huh? It's worth exactly what I paid for it, $17. So that's all figure. Where'd you get it, anyway? Oddly enough, Louie, it's a great gallery. <laughs> sleeps in the back. He has a small apartment there. Mm, there's no truck around there. I must have already unloaded it. Yeah. Mr. Spray got to wash his windows. Yeah, I can't see a thing inside. Must be a bell around, however. Oh, yeah, I'm not usual. <laughs> Sounds like an antique bell. Well, antique or not, it's good to wake Mr. Spray. But maybe somebody should order to tell him on account of it ain't wake. No. The door was open. We may have forgotten to lock it. We light a match. Okay. Oh. Oh. Well, now we got light, but 
Hey. There's your furniture. Yeah, so it is. Desk, table, couch, and, 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 and the whatnot. Yeah. Tuckman evidently delivered yourself and left. But, uh, where's Greg? Maybe in that back room, huh? Yeah, well, we'll see. Well, the lights are on in here. Kind of a cluttered place for a guy to live in. Yeah, not only cluttered, Louie, it looks as though a hurricane has made more than a passing visit. Yeah, I... Something. What, what, what are you staring at? Back here, behind the bed. Huh? Somebody besides the hurricane also visited? Hmm. Knife is still in his chest. He ain't noticing it? He's dead. Oh. Hey, hey, there's a car. You can see in the back. Gone. <laughs> so I hope is the killer. Come on back in. Yeah, we frightened him off, Louis. Speak for yourself. I don't frighten babies. But he was still here. Why? Evidently, he hadn't finished his job. But what job, Louis? Well, you said the place looked upset. Maybe he was searching. Yeah, that's true, but searching for what? The furniture was delivered, the truckman left. The odds are that by the time Sprague was already dead. Yeah, very well, then what, what could the killer have been looking for? The whatnot was here. Whenever he wanted, of course. Louis, I didn't do it. You know that whatnot must have had it, see? Sprague probably has records showing where he purchased his furniture. Uh-huh. So the killer hung around trying to cover the back trail of the WhatsApp, huh? After all, he didn't expect us to notice the truck leaving your house with your furniture. We we ain't supposed to have been here so quick. Is that good? Only if we find what the killer didn't find. For me, I give up. What do we do now? We do just what the killer did before we interrupted him, Louie. Search for Mr. Sprague's ledgers. We go through them, huh? Yeah. And maybe they'll tell us why a man had to die for a whatnot. <laughs> Not in this one. Yeah. Hey, Mr. Temple, I think I got it. Oh, let me see. Here, here. Ah, Victorian, what's not? Yeah. This is Susan Carter, Hill Road, Claysdale, New York. Claysdale? That's only half a dozen miles north of the bus. This is strange. He doesn't seem to have paid her anything at all for the what Maybe she paid him. We could phone, but... You know, Louis, about the only thing on our side is the element of time. We're moving faster than the killer anticipated, therefore... I oh, know. We go north. You know something, Mr. Templer? The trouble with the country is it's so far from the city? I never thought of that. Well, think about it. It's true. I'd rather think about Mrs. Susan Carter. Fred got that what not from her about a week ago. Yeah, and I bought it from him three days ago. But, uh, will she be able to help us? Why not? With her what not? Sure, but if she knew anything about it, anything that would make it worth murdering someone for, she'd never have passed it on to Sprague in the first place. We may be chasing a wild goose, Louie. Who needs a wild goose? A wild gander. Slow down, Louie. I think it's that house on the corner. Okay. Yeah, this is it. This is a large house. Yeah. It looks... Looks like there ought to be bats flying around it. Yeah, it's not so bad. It's not a house most people would prefer to live in. It's a wonderful place to die in. Ooh, what am I saying? I have to frighten myself yet. Hmm. Lights on somewhere inside. It must be the late hours. Let's go. Yeah. Some fun they have in these country houses. Yeah, I think it's time we ran. You know, I'm wondering what she did it. Bit of light that went out inside. I got a feeling nobody is gonna open that door. All right, all right, all right. So I was wrong. But who opened it? Doesn't matter. So we can get in. Okay. Except I would be happier if somebody at least could open. Making up crazy like that. It came from someplace down this hallway. You're running in the wrong direction. We're running. Oh, look, look, there's no. The only one along the hallway. Is it open? It open. Uh, oh, hello, I'm I'm Simon Temple. This is Louis. Yeah. What do you want? Uh, we heard you scream. Hey, could you go for a moment? 
There must have been a large mouse. It was a large thing, Mrs. Carter. Well, not Mrs. Carter. But, uh... Claire Wayne. Mrs. Carter's me. Oh, I apologize. How'd you get it? Well, the front door opened by itself. A very mysterious effect. Not really. Uh, could we see Mrs. Carter? Could we? Miss Wayne. Come on, Miss. Yeah, I'm not too high. Claire! 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 Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. Neither of us is Claire. Are you Mrs. Carter? Carter? Me? No, no. I'm Harold Thompson. She's in second. Oh, well, I'm Simon Templer. Louis. Templer, eh? Are you the saint? Yes, I am. Oh, this is quite an honor for us. Thank you. Actually, I wanted to speak to your aunt. Is it good? <laughs> I said something amusing. You've no idea how amusing. I'll laugh about it all night. <laughs> hey. Oh, well, he's gone too. Yeah, very restless type character. Huh? Anyway, we're getting acquainted fast. Except with Mrs. Carter. Live house. We'll have to look through all the rooms in it. We'll have to look even farther than that chair. I didn't hear you come into the room. You walk softly. It's a habit of mine. The ill of the dying is not a heavy footstep. It uh, frightens him. Really? The reason is yes, I think you're afraid of some death coming for them. You're a doctor. I'm Dr. Thor. Uh, my name's Templin, Mr. Blue. Good evening, gentlemen. How do you do? Uh, you're Mrs. Carter's physician. Yes. Do you know No. He's not at all ill. Well, then I'd like to speak to her at once. About, uh... uh about a whatnot that she gave to an antique dealer named Sprague. The trivial reasons have brought you out there at this hour. The whatnot in itself is perhaps a trivial thing, Doctor, but murder isn't. Murder? Mr. Sprague. Oh. Uh, at what time was he... Probably uh, around eight this evening. Hmm. Interesting. At eight, I was out in my car on my way here, but I took a long way around. Might have included the stop and sit it. At eight, Harold Thompson had not as yet reached his house. Of course, where he was until then, I cannot say. At eight, Claire Wayne is with a movie, she told me earlier. Yes, that's the one. Yes? Very interesting hour. Yes, and uh, where was Mrs. Carter at eight o'clock? She was where she is now, with a nurse in attendance. I thought she said she wasn't there. She isn't. She was. Oh, I see. She said, huh? She said. What do you think? Three people might have known what the mystery of the whatnot was, and of them two are dead. The third is a lady. She's been caught up with an old woman with a weak heart. Meaning her death was natural? Yes. I don't sneer at coincidence, Dr. Thorne, but under the circumstances, I'd like to be sure it was coincidence. Well, of course, I can't quarrel with you about that. I've had a thought or two about Susan's death myself. And? She wasn't scared to death. Her heart did say it. Miss Templer, uh, I'm not a young man anymore. I, I'm tired. I, I'm, all, I'm all confused. And, uh, before going any further into this thing, I would like to know. Uh, would you be asking too much of you to spend the night here, hmm, Mr. Templer? I, I think it's very hospitable. I Plenty of room. This is a large house. First, we all go to bed. In the morning, perhaps the shadows will all reflect. <laughs> Comfortable in this room? Ah, yes. I know the house quite well, you see. I, I played in it as a child. There was a time when I thought that uh, Jesus and I would live in it together, but uh, uh, there is someone else. Uh, good night. Good night, Doctor. Well, good night. Kind of broken up about Mrs. Carter's death, huh? Yes, he is. Could be an act. Oh, it seems genuine. You know, Larry, nobody in this house has an alibi for Sprague's death. Now, Mr. Thompson, let's go to sleep, huh? In the morning, I'll feel strong enough to be surprised. You right there. I have a question. Uh, what could happen, anyway? Smoke. Oh, well, well, I'll have some fun. Hey, come on, Louis. I'm right with you. Smoke's terrible. Oh, I think we've got more in the other. Yeah. 
I'll get the ones the other side of the hall. The smoke is getting awful thick. The flames. The flames. Oh, go downstairs now to the house, quick. The house happens to be on fire. Louis, yeah. that's what? Already. Right. I've got both Dr. Thorne and Harold come to you. They're on their way now. We better get downstairs, too. No, not yet. But we've got every living thing out of the house. Yeah, but you forgot the dead. <laughs> The other men. What happened to them? My dear, we'll stay here. They must have ducked down the back way. No. Should they come now? Carrying something. Not something else. They're carrying a cross. No. Well, we're far enough away from the house, so we can put it down now. Okay, Mr. Cumpwood. Oh. It's crazy. It's dead, don't you understand? It's dead. Yes, I know, Miss Ann, but I understand something else, too. That fire wasn't for our benefit, it was for her. Louis, the lower half of the house hasn't been touched yet. I'm going back in to phone the fire department. Maybe I better go with no. you? No. We'll stay here. Make sure that no one harms her. Miss Wayne? No, Louis. This is fine. <laughs> Thank you, Carlton. You and the boys did a fine job. Glad we were able to save the lower part of the house. Okay, boys. Back to the green out again. <laughs> you know the Crestdale Fire Department ain't bad? No. We may as well all go inside. I'll take Mr. I, um, I can't see how exactly you follow your mental processes, Jennifer. Oh, is that important? I don't know. How did it happen? Did it sleep? Mrs. Carter? Too far beyond any disturbances I could create. The plan that was, why lug her around the way you are? It was a very simple answer. You see, she's a very important clue. To what? Murder. Shut the door off, Mr. Oh, Howard. thanks, Well, this room will do as well as any. The couch for Mrs. Carter. Mrs. Kemper, I think I shall insist upon an explanation of this. We're all here. But we're not all here. Huh? Oh, hey. Yes. He was with us when we arrived at the front door, but then... Yeah, he must have decided that other crimes would be healthier crimes for him at any rate. You're not saying hold. Huh? I'm saying nothing about that at the moment. Dr. Thorne, does Claire resemble Mrs. Carter? As Mrs. Carter was when she was a girl, of course. You're a cute temper. The arms are gorgeous here. It's an amazing resemblance. Yes, it would have to be. Not sure. How amazing. We were very closely related. That's not the point. And what is? Someone burgled my apartment, stole a number of pieces of furniture. Among those pieces was a worthless whatnot. Since it was taken along with the others, the others were merely camouflaged. The burglary was primarily after the whatnot. So what connection is there between furniture and, and uh, death? That what not, Dr. Thorne, until a week ago, belonged to Mrs. Carter. Huh? A Mrs. Carter who may have died naturally or who may have been killed. I told you her heart failed. Almost anything might have brought it on. Yes, Doctor, almost anything. Perhaps a tiny dose of poison, so tiny that it wouldn't of itself be fatal. So tiny that it would produce no symptoms of poisoning, but it would strain an already weak heart, wouldn't it? No. Yeah, it's uh, possible. More than possible. It has to be so. Otherwise, why the fire in the upper part of the house? A fire, therefore, that couldn't have been accidental. No cooking or heating is done up there. Well, maybe somebody was after uh, living livingly. No. no doors were locked. None of us were drugged. The house itself is easy to escape from. Fire had only one purpose. To destroy the body of Mrs. Carter. To destroy the possibility of an autopsy on that body. I'm sorry. Oh, I'll better go home. No, not quite yet, Doctor. Mrs. Carter was wealthy? Well, no one knows. She, she never kept money in the bank. Always, of course, in the spirit. She hid all the money somewhere in this house. He was mean and nasty. I don't mind telling you that Harold and I searched all through the house looking for that money. Did you find it? No. Do you need money, Doctor? 
Oh, yeah. His wife spends more than he earns, of course he does. I do. Harold does. There wasn't any money. Was Mrs. Carter a sentimental woman, Doctor? No. No, she was a bitter woman. She hated. Well. Yes, and she was very ill. She knew she was surrounded by yes, vultures waiting for her to die so they could pick up her old bones so or whatever money clung to them. <laughs> Your way of putting it. <laughs> well, it's an accurate way. And now that you know, Mr. Kennedy, may I go home? Yes. Yes, after you answer one question, that question be Somewhat earlier this evening, when I asked you about the possibility of Mrs. Carter's death having been murdered, you denied that possibility. I still. Or perhaps I do no longer deny. However, That's I, not uh... my question. At that time, you said she wasn't stabbed to death, meaning that Mrs. Sprague, of whose murder I had just informed you, was stabbed to death. But Dr. Thorne, there are many ways in which a man can be killed. Your question then is, how did I know that Sprague had been killed with a knife? Yes, Doctor. I don't think I shall answer that question. I'm sorry. Louis, will you get on the phone? The cop? Please. Okay. Get on the phone. Please. You won't need me anymore. Mm. No, Miss Bates. No, I'll go. In the other room. This one's ugly. Oh. What's that? I caught my stocking from the edge of the pier. Oh, that's too bad. They're uh, a pretty stocking. Mm, it could be. No, I am. It cost a fortune. Good night, Mr. Good night. All right, all the cops are on their way, Mr. Thompson. No, good, Louis. Hey, uh, that's the phone. Hey, what the fuck is that? You know, if murderers would clap and ask the padlock and they lift a lot of them, they'd be better off. They wouldn't give themselves away. And detectives would have a harder time. No, no. Matter. No matter how securely a murderer's lips may be locked, I uh, coin a phrase, murder will out. Yeah, but if Dr. Thorne hadn't made that slip about the scorpion, he'd never been able to pin the killing on. Mm -hmm. That's true. But then you see, Dr. Thorne didn't kill him. <laughs> going to be here pretty soon. For the last ten minutes, nobody has said nothing. Yes, the doctor saw him as undoubtedly didn't think. He didn't kill anybody. What have you got to think about? No, he did. Oh, uh, uh, this is Kendra. Yes, doctor? You're quite sure. Yes, sir. There's no hope for none. Well, uh, there's a resemblance, of course. A resemblance to a woman that I saw. You permit an old and tired man Old and tired pieces, of course. A woman that I had loved and lost. I don't get it. Harold did it, didn't he? Not unless he wears nylon stockings. Hmm. Nylon socks, maybe, but stockings? I'm getting right all by myself. Why are you staring at me like that, Doctor? It's late. It's... Doctor Thorne means he... He followed you to Sprague earlier tonight. He saw a big body with the knife in it. Well, of course he did. He had to to kill him. Mm -hmm. He also saw you leave when Louie and I got to the gallery. Leave before you could find the record of where the footnot originally came from. Find it and destroy it, lest it lead to this house and you. Oh, no. Oh, yeah. Right, Dr. Thorne? You see, Miss Wayne, even now the doctor won't give you away because you look so much like the woman he loved. No, he did and he killed my aunt. No, a doctor wouldn't have used poison to kill his own patient. Too obvious. A breath of suspicion, and he wouldn't have a chance. Oh. No, no. His disappearance half an hour ago proved his innocence. To who? Louis, where do you think he went? Maybe he didn't stop to sell. He went to Sprague to get at that whatnot. Because he realized that his aunt had hidden her money in it. Hadn't you, Miss Wayne? Mm -hmm. You do. The police will find it. Wherever you hidden it. The police are going to... These are, and that will be proof enough. Pretty. And all because of a what now? That's an ugly thing. It's all right, so the cops found the door in the girl's suitcase downstairs in the hall club. So she killed her aunt and Sprague. 
But something must have tipped you off before you could be so sure. Nylon stockings, Louis. Oh, we're back to those, Mr. Young. All right, what about nylon stockings? Louis, whoever poisoned Mrs. Carter was the one who set fire to the house in order to destroy the corpse and prevent an autopsy. Yeah. Well, when I warned Claire Wayne about the fire, she said she'd been asleep. Yeah. Later on, after I'd confronted Dr. Thorne with what seemed to be his guilt, she left the room. On the way out, she caught her stockings on a chair. So? Louis, really, how much do you know about women? Everything. Do women go to sleep with nylon stockings on? Oh, the answer is no. Therefore, Claire Wayne had not been asleep. She'd lied about that with no reason. Unless she had started the fire. So she started the fire, so she poisoned her aunt, that spray, yeah, okay. Only one thing more. What, Louis? Remember when we got to the Carter house, rang the bell, and then the door opened all by itself? Yes, I remember. Never mind remembering, explain. Oh, probably only a warped door, Louis. The house is very old. <laughs> yeah, I just thought of something. You know what, Mr. Duffy? When I get home, I'll be deadly. Oh, gee, that's right. You ain't got no furniture. Want us to drop you off at a hotel? No, thank you, Louis. Maybe I can find a, a good chest here. <laughs> Listening to another transcribed adventure of the Saints, the Robin Hood of modern crime. Now here's our star, Vincent Price. Ladies and gentlemen, in tonight's cast, you heard Peggy Weber as Claire and Victor Rodman as Dr. Thorne. David Ellis was Harold, Gilbert Fry the Dispatcher. Larry Dobson plays Louis. This is Vincent Price inviting you to join us again next week at the same time for another exciting adventure of the Saints. Good night. This adventure of the Saint was written by Lou Vitti. The Saint, based on characters created by Leslie Trotter, was produced by James L. Safier and directed by Helen Mack. Vincent Price is soon to be seen co-starring in RKO's production of This Kind of Woman. Three times means good times on NBC. For something new and exciting in your big Sunday lineup on NBC, listen to the Phil Regan Camp Show coming up next. That be prizes for talented GIs and the very best Sunday listening for you with the Phil Regan Camp Show next on NBC. Adventures of the Saints, starring Vincent Price. The Saints, based on characters created by Leslie Carter, and known to millions from books, magazines, and motion pictures. The Robin Hood of Modern Crime now comes to transcribe the radio, starring Hollywood's brilliant and talented actor Vincent Price as... The Saint. Hey, Mr. Templer. Yes, Louis? You look tired. Mm, I am a bit. Been working or something? Or something. That is, uh, I've been playing chess. Uh-huh. So wipe the lipstick off your mouth. The lipstick? Uh, 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 thanks, Louis. You're welcome. On a chess player, don't look good. It was a very close game. <laughs> that I can figure out for myself. Hey, look, somebody's moving out of your house, you see? There's a moving van parked in front. Yeah, oh, so there is. I better stop here. There's still looking furniture out there. Yeah, I hope it's the people who have the apartment over mine. Why, what's the matter with large feet? Uh-huh. <laughs> hey, that's odd. What? That desk they just put in the van. It looks familiar. All furniture nowadays looks familiar. Oh, they're all finished. I'll pull up. Don't bother, Larry. Uh, how much do I owe you? Up front. Hey, Mr. Temple, what's the matter? I'm beginning to realize why it looks so familiar. Why? Because it was my death. Now, oh, look, Mr. Temple, you must have made a mistake. You're not moving. I didn't make a mistake. Yeah, but it's ridiculous. Mr. Temple? Yes, it was my death. Not to mention my table, my chairs, my... Hey, Louis, did you get the license number of that truck? No. But it belongs to the North America van line. How do you know? Steps on the side. Oh, well, I'll look it up in the phone book. Yeah. Room looks awful naked. 
You know, furniture does a lot to fill up a room. Yeah, I got it here. Yeah. Uh, North American, 45 Columbus. Phone number? Well, anyway, we know one thing about where your furniture is, huh? We do? Yes. <laughs> North America. Oh, fine. That's a big help. North America. Good evening. My name is Simon Temper. I have a complaint. You want the manager? I do? Miss? Oh, very well. Well, let me talk to you. Not in. Sorry. Well, uh, you might be able to help me. You see, uh, my complaint has to do with my furniture. I, it's just been moved by you people. Didn't we move it far enough? You shouldn't have moved it at all. Where are you going to yet? I think you'd better check your records. Find out who ordered the van and where the furniture is to be delivered. Very well, sir. Just hold on. Any trouble, Mr. Trump? No, Larry. Just win from truck drivers, we'll sue them. Who will? Our cabbies in New York, the windy belongs to us. And furthermore, Mr. Zemmler? Yes? You ordered your furniture move. I did? Pay for it in advance. Turn the deal with our men and ask for rapid service. Well, I certainly got it. And where did I order the furniture move to? The Sprague Furniture Gallery. Sprague? But he handles antiques. My furniture is modern. Pay his pay rapidly. Good night. Good night. Come on, Louis. We're going to a gallery. We're in a hurry? Yes, you might say we've got to get a move on. <laughs> Louis, I'm, uh, I'm puzzled. I'm ahead of you. My furniture couldn't have been stolen for the money it would bring. It wasn't that valuable. Too great a risk was involved. So somebody did it for fun? Oh, hardly. Why would you show it tonight, not last week, last month, or last year? Those are the guys that swiped it for two business. Also, half a dozen pieces were taken. Among them a particularly worthless whatnot. What? Whatnot. And who's on third? Our whatnot, Louis, is a Victorian monstrosity which couldn't happen to a tree. The point I'm making, though, is that I've had that whatnot only a few days. Uh-huh. Well, that means they were after the whatnot. So why did they swipe the other stuff? confused the issue. To make me think it was just an ordinary burglary. Keep my attention away from the whatnot. Maybe it's worth a lot of money, huh? It's worth exactly what I paid for it, $17. So that don't figure. Where'd you get it, anyway? Hardly enough, Louis, at the Sprague Gallery. Oh, well, that gallery don't, don't look open. Come on. Craig sleeps in the back and has a small apartment there. Mm, there's no truck around there. Must have already unloaded it. Mr. Craig ought to wash his fingers. Yeah, I can't see a thing in fact. Must be a bell around, however. Oh, yeah, not usual. <laughs> Sounds like an antique bell. An antique or not, it should awake Mr. Craig. Well, maybe somebody could order to sell him on the count of it ain't wake. No. Hey. Yeah. The door was open. We may have forgotten to lock it. They light a match. Okay. Now we got light, but... Hey! There's your furniture. Yeah, there it is. Desk, table, couch, and... And, and, and the what now? Yeah. Cutman evidently delivered the stuff and left. But, uh, where's Greg? Maybe in that back room, huh? Yeah, well, you see. The lights are on in here. Kind of a cluttered place for a guy to live in. Yeah, not only cluttered, Louis, it looks as though a hurricane had made more than a passing visit. Yeah, I... Something. What, what, what are you staring at? Back here, behind the bed. Huh? Somebody besides the hurricane also visited? Hmm. Knife is still in his chest. He ain't noticing it? He's dead. Oh. Hey, hey, there's a car. You can see in the back. Gone. <laughs> so I hope is the killer. Come on back in. Well, we frightened him off, Louis. Speak for yourself. I don't frighten babies. But he was still here. Why? Evidently, he hadn't finished his job. But what job, Louis? Well, you said the place looked upset. Maybe he was thinking. Yeah, it's true, but does he for what? Furniture was delivered, the truckman left. The odds are that by the time Sprague was already dead. Yeah. Very well, then, what, what could the killer have been looking for? The whatnot was here. Whatever he wanted, of course. Louis, I didn't do it. You know that whatnot must have had a 
Craig probably has records showing where he purchased his furniture. Uh-huh. So Priscilla hung around trying to cover the back trail of the watchman, huh? After all, he didn't expect us to notice the truck leaving your house with your furniture. We, we ain't supposed to have been here so quick. Is that good? Only if we found what the killer didn't find. For me, I'd give up. What do we do now? We do just what the killer did before we interrupted him, Larry. Search for Mr. Sprague's ledgers. We go through them, huh? Yeah. And maybe they'll tell us why a man had to die for a whatnot. <laughs> Not in this one. Uh, hey, Mr. Temple, I think I've got it. Oh, let me see. Here, here. Ah, Victorian, what not? Yeah. This is Susan Carter, Hill Road, Craig Bear, New York. Right there. That's only half a dozen miles north of the bus. Okay. She doesn't seem to have paid her anything at all for the what Maybe she paid him. He could phone, but... You know, Louis, about the only thing on our side is the element of time. We're moving faster than the killer anticipated. Therefore... I know. We go north. You know something, Mr. Templer? The trouble with the country is it's so far from the city. I never thought of that. Well, think about it. It's true. I'd rather think about Mrs. Susan Carter. Where got that watch not from her about a week ago? Yeah, and I bought it from him three days ago. But, uh... Will she be able to help us? Why not? With her what not? Sure, but if she knew anything about it, anything that would make it worth murdering someone for, she'd never have passed it on to Sprague in the first place. We may be chasing a wild goose, Louie. Who needs a wild goose? A wild gander. Slow down, Louie. I think it's that house on the corner. Okay. Yeah, this is it. This is a large house. It looks, it looks like there ought to be bats flying around. Oh, it's not so bad. It's not a house most people would prefer to live in. It's a wonderful place to die in. Ooh, what am I saying? I have to fight for myself next. Mm. Nice time somewhere inside. We must keep the late hours. Let's go. Some kind of happy to come to house. Yeah, it's kind of You know, I'm wondering what to do. I don't like this one out here. I got a feeling nobody is going to open that door. All right, all right, all right. So I was wrong. But who opened it? Doesn't matter. So we can get in. Okay. Guess I would be happier if somebody at least could open it. It's the only one along the hallway. Is it open? It open. Uh, hello. Oh, h- hello, I'm I'm trying to tell you this is Louis. Yeah. What do you want? Uh, we heard you scream. I think it was your mom. There must have been a live mouse. It was a live scream, Mrs. Carter. Not Mr. Carter. But uh no way. Oh, I apologize. How'd you get in? Well, the front door opened by itself for a very mysterious effect. Not really. Uh, could you see Mrs. Carter? Could you? Mm-hmm. It's Wayne. Come on. Yeah, well, I'm not too high. Claire, get up, get up. Claire! Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. Neither of us is Claire. Are you Mr. Carter? Carter? Me? No, no, I'm Harold Thompson. She's in Tepia. Well, I'm trying to tempt her, Louis. Tempt her, eh? Are you the saint? Yes, I am. Oh, it's quite an honor for her. Thank you. Actually, I wanted to speak to your aunt. Who did? <laughs> I think that's an amusing. You have no idea how amusing. I'll laugh about it all night. <laughs> hey. Well, he's gone, too. Very yeah, rough to start down. Huh? Anyway, we're getting acquainted fast. Except with Mrs. Carter. Large house. We'll have to look through all the rooms in it. We'll have to look into the part of it. That's so. Uh, I didn't hear you come into the room. You walk softly. It's a habit of now. The ear of the guy who has never heard his sister. It's uh, exciting. Really? It's an easy suggestion. I think you're a sister that's been dead coming forth. You're a doctor. 
can, Dr. Thor. Uh, my name's Templin, Lewis. Good evening, gentlemen. How do you do? Uh, you're Mrs. Potter's position. Yes, you do that? Not at all, really. Well, then I'd like to speak to her at once. About, uh, uh, about a whatnot that she gave to an antique dealer named Craig. She was a trivial reason to brought you out there at this hour. The whatnot in itself is perhaps a trivial thing, Doctor, but murder is it? Murder? Mr. Craig. Oh. Uh, at what time was he? Probably uh, around 8 this evening. Hmm. Interesting. I think I was out in my car on my way here. But I took a long way around. Might have been to stop and sit it. I think Harold Thompson had not as yet reached his house. Of course, where he was in the room, I cannot say. I think Claire uh, Wayne was in the movie, she told me earlier. Yes, that's what she was. Yes? Very interesting hour. Yes, and uh, where was Mrs. Carter at 8 o'clock? She was where she is now, with a nurse in the family. I thought she said she wasn't there. She isn't. Mm. She was. Oh, I see. She's dead, then. She's dead. Three people might have known what the mystery of the whatnot was, and of them two are dead. The third is a lady. She's been caught up as an old woman with a weak heart, meaning her death was not necessary. I don't fear it's coincidence, Dr. Thorne, but under the circumstances, I'd like to be sure it was coincidence. Well, of course, I can't quarrel with you about that. I've had a fall or two about Susan's death myself, and... She was a scared to death. Her heart did say it. This Templar. Uh, I'm not a young man anymore. I, I'm tired. I, I'm, all, I'm all confused. And, uh, before going any further into this thing, I have a question. Uh, would you ask me too much to this thing about you? Mm -hmm. Mr. Templar? I, I think it's very hospitable. Of Plenty of room in the large house. Suppose we all go to bed. In the morning, perhaps the shadows will all reflect. Comfortable in this room? Ah, yes. I know the house quite well, you see. I, I played in it as a child. By the time, I thought we and I were living together. And, uh, I, uh, I would come on out. Uh, good night. Good night, Doctor. Uh, good night. Kind of broken up about Mr. Carter's death, huh? Yes, he is. Could be an act. Uh, I think Jamie is. You know, Louis, nobody in this house has an alibi for the first uh, Mr. Temple, let's go to sleep, huh? In the morning, I'll feel strong enough to be surprised. You might be strong. I don't know. Sure. What could happen, Eddie? Oh. Maybe I better go with you. No. You'll stay here. 
Make sure that no one harms her. Miss Wayne? No, oh, no. Thank you, Carlton. You and the boys did a fine job. Glad we were able to save the lower part of the house. Okay, boys, back to the green out of <laughs> You know the Fresno Fire Department ain't bad? No. We may as well all go inside. I'll take them. I, um, I don't feel I exactly to follow your mental process, Miss Benson. Is that important? I don't know. How did it happen? Mrs. Carter, she's far beyond any disturbance as I can see it. The plan that was, why lug her around the way you are? It's a very simple answer. You see, she's a very important clue. To what? Murder. Got the ball, Mr. Carter. Oh, thanks, sir. This room will do as well again as the couch, but it's just I think I can insist upon an explanation. We're all here. But we're not all here. What? Oh, hey. Yes. He was with us when we arrived at the front door, but then... Yeah, he must have decided that other crimes would be healthier crimes for him at any rate. You're not saying her, okay? I'm saying nothing about that at the moment. Dr. Thorne, does Claire resemble Mr. Carter? As Mrs. Carter was, when she was a girl, of course. You're a cute temper. The arms are gorgeous, is it? It's an amazing resemblance. Mm. Yes, it would have to be. Miss Taylor, how amazing. They were very closely related. That's not the point. Then what is? Someone burgled my apartment, stole a number of pieces of furniture. Among those pieces was a worthless whatnot. If it had taken along with the others, the others were sort of commonplace. The burglary was primarily after the whatnot. So what connection is there between furniture and the uh, death? That whatnot, Dr. Thorne, until a week ago, belonged to Mrs. Carter. Huh? And Mrs. Carter, who may have died naturally, or she may have been killed. I told you her heart failed. Almost anything, I just thought it on. Yes, Dr. Almost anything. Perhaps a tiny dose of poison, so tiny that it wouldn't of itself be fatal. So tiny that it would produce no symptoms of poison, but it would strain an already weak heart, wouldn't it? Well, it's uh, possible. More than possible. It has to be so. Otherwise, why the fire in the upper part of the house? The fire, therefore, that couldn't have been accidental. No cooking or heating is done up there. But maybe somebody was after the living room? No. No doors were locked. None of us were drugged. The house itself is easy to escape from. Fire had only one purpose. Destroy the body of Mrs. Carter. Destroy the possibility of an autopsy on that body. I'm caught. Oh, I'll never go home. No, not quite yet, Doctor. Mrs. Carter was wealthy. Well, no one knows. She, she never kept money in the bank. Always, of course, in the spirit, with all the money somewhere in this house. It was meaningless. I don't mind telling you that Harold and I searched all through the house looking for that money. Did you find it? No. Do you need money, Doctor? I, uh... His wife spends more than he earns. Of course she does. I do. Harold does. There wasn't any money. Was Mrs. Carter a sentimental woman, Doctor? No. No, she was a bitter woman. She hated. Well, yes, yeah, then. She was very ill. She knew she was surrounded by dogs uh, waiting for her to die so they could pick up her own bones for whatever money clung to him. <laughs> Your way of putting it. <laughs> it's an accurate way. And now that you know, Mr. Thompson, may I go home? Yes. Yes, after you answer one question, that question be Somewhat earlier this evening, when I asked you about the possibility of Mrs. Carter's death having been murdered, you denied that possibility. I still. Or perhaps I do no longer deny. However, That's I... That's not my question. At that time, you said she wasn't stabbed to death, meaning that Mrs. Sprague, of whose murder I had just informed you, was stabbed to death. But Dr. Thorne, there are many ways in which a man can be killed. Your question then is, how did I know that Sprague had been killed with a knife? Yes, Doctor. I don't think I should answer that question. Oh, Louis, will you get on the phone? The cops? Please. Okay. Get on the phone. Yes. 
You won't leave me anymore. No, no, no. And I'll go in the other room. This one's ugly. Oh. What's that? What kind of dog is you ever Oh, that's too bad. Yeah, yeah. Is it dark? It could be. I'm not around. That's the fourth one. Good night, Mr. Good night. All right, pull your cops. They're on their way, Mr. Thompson. No, good night. Here you go. That's the phone. It looks like a man. You know, it might be a cop and ask the padlock and they looks a lot of them would be better off. They wouldn't give themselves away. And the sexist would have a hard time. No. No matter how superior a murder is, which may be locked. I am going to be Yeah, but Dr. Vaughn hadn't made that look about his hand. He'd never been able to pin the killing man. Mm -hmm. True. But then you see Dr. Vaughn didn't kill him. Mm -hmm. For the last ten minutes, nobody has said nothing. Yeah, the doctor saw him as undoubtedly been thinking. He didn't kill anybody. What did he got to think about? That he did. Oh, uh, uh, Mr. Temple. Yes, doctor? You're quite sure. Yes, oh, there's no hope or none. No, there's a resemblance, of course. A resemblance to a woman that I've got. You can live an old and tired man and... Old and tired people, of mm. course. A woman is dying of love and loss. I don't get it. I won't get it, didn't he? Not unless he wears nylon stockings. Mm. Nylon stocks, maybe, but stockings? I'm getting right out by myself. Why are you staring at me like that, Dr. Right? Dr. Thorne means he, he followed you to the stage earlier tonight. He saw a big body with the knife in it. Well, of course he did. He had to to kill him. Mm -hmm. He also saw you leave when Louie and I got to the gallery. Leave before you could find the record of where the whatnot originally came from. Find it and destroy it unless it leads to this house and you. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Right, Dr. Cole? You see, Miss Wayne, even now the doctor won't give you away because you look so much like the woman he loved. No, he did when he killed my own. No, a doctor wouldn't have used poison to put his own patient through, obviously. He'd have a suspicion, and he wouldn't have a chance. Oh, okay. No. He disappeared half an hour ago, proof he's in it. To who? Louis, where do you think he went? Maybe he didn't stop to sell. He went to spray to get at that whatnot. Because he realized that his aunt had hidden her money in it. How did you get one? I don't know. You do. The police will find it. Wherever you did it. He's in <laughs> These are, and that will be proof enough. It's pretty. And all because of a what now? That's an ugly thing. It's all right, so the cops found the door in the girl's suitcase downstairs in the hall flat. So she killed her aunt and sprayed. But something must have tipped you off before you could be so sure. Nylon stockings, Louis. Oh, we're back to those again. All right, what about nylon stock? Louis, whoever poisoned Mrs. Carter was the one who set fire to the house in order to destroy the corpse and prevent an autopsy. Yeah? Well, when I warned Claire Wayne about the fire, she said she'd been asleep. Yeah? Later on, after I'd confronted Dr. Thorne with what seemed to be his guilt, she left the room. On the way out, she caught her stockings on a chair. So? Louis, how much do you know about women? Everything. Do women go to sleep with nylon stockings, huh? Oh, the answer is no. Therefore, Claire Wayne had not been asleep. She'd lied about that with no reason. Unless she had started the fire. So she started the fire, so she poisoned her aunt, that crazy. Yeah, okay. Only one thing more. What, Mary? Remember when we got to the Carter house, and rang the bell, and then the door opened all by itself? Yes, I remember. Never mind remembering. Explain. Oh, probably only a warped door, Louis. The house is very old. <laughs> I just thought of something. Yeah, watch, Mr. Tuffy. When I get home, I'll be deadly. Oh, see, that's right. You ain't got no furniture. Want us to drop you off at a hotel? No, thank you, Larry. Maybe I can find a, a good chest here. <laughs> Listen 
listening to another transcribed adventure of the saint, the Robin Hood of modern crime. Now here's our star, Mr. Spike. Ladies and gentlemen, in tonight's cast, you heard Peggy Weber as Claire and Victor Rodman as Dr. Thorne. David Ellis as Harold, Gilbert Brown as his pastor. Larry Dalton plays Lewis. This is Vincent Price inviting you to join us again next week at the same time for another exciting adventure of the saint. Good night. This adventure of the saint was written by Lou Vitter. The saint, based on characters created by Leslie Trotter, was produced by James L. Sasser and directed by Helen Mack. Vincent Price is soon to be seen co-starring in RKO's production of This Kind of Woman. Three times means good times on NBC. For something new and exciting in your big Sunday lineup on NBC, listen to the Phil Riggins Camp Show coming up next. That deprives the talented three eyes and the very best Sunday listening for you with the Phil Riggins Camp Show next on NBC. Adventures of the Saints, starring Vincent Price. The Saints, based on characters created by Leslie Potter, and known to millions from books, magazines, and motion pictures. The Robin Hood of Modern Crime now comes from Star the Radio, starring Hollywood's brilliant and talented actor Vincent Price as... Thanks. Just a moment, please. Yes? Mr. Temperer? Mr. Simon Temperer? And if I say yes? Oh. I am a George. Congratulations. What army are you dressed for? Oh, not the army uniform I wear. So, 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 so. You will come? Huh? You come now? You want me to go somewhere with you? You are sure you are Mr. Simon Temperer? You think? If I'm not, my old grandmother shouldn't have lied to me all these years. Then you come. Yeah. Did you not receive the call, sir? Even the most casual eavesdropper would have to admit it doesn't appear so. What call? Employer says, George, go to this number and get Mr. Tempera. Employer says, he calls, so when I arrive, you know, you come. No call, sir? No, sir. Who is your employer? Mr. Orlando Button. Him, old man. Be very afraid. Orlando Button. But we don't. Employer says, what's the trouble coming? You come help? What sort of trouble? We go now, yes? You go now, yes. My neck and I recently came to an understanding. Oh, your neck, sir? My neck. I promise not to stick it out again until I at least knew why it was going to be chopped out. And Dick in turn agreed to be a little more tolerant of self college. I am going to bed. Oh, no. You are coming. You know, with one swift gesture, you have given me six good reasons why I sit there with you. Or does that revolver hold eight bullets? Well, you sure this is a home? Oh, yes. Home of my employer, Mr. Orlando Button. I had a couple of ticket windows, scatter around a few time tables, and could easily pass to the home of the stupid priest. Employer, I want you in a study, Mr. Fenton. You call it this way, please. Yes, now, look, would it be too much to ask you to stop waving that gun under my nose? You come. Now, you wait. I will. Go! 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 Mr. Bottom, I have brought Mr. Temperance sir. Oh, uh, yes, sir. Thank you, George. I, I must have dozed off. Uh, Mr. Temper, it was good of you to come, but I... I'm half as good as it was of George to bring me. He is very persuasive. Uh, Mr. Temper say no come. I invite him at the point of the pistol. You no call him, sir. Uh, uh, no, no, I, I, I fell asleep. I, uh, uh, that will be all. Yes, yes, yes. Yes. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry George had to resort to melodrama, Mr. Templer. I, I mean, uh, look, you'll forgive me, I'm sure. It, it, it's all a mistake. What's all a mistake? Uh, this, this incident, I never should have sent for you. I, 
my nerves. I'm a, a victim of my own imagination. Remarkable. Huh? Here you are, trembling. Yet scarcely two minutes ago, according to you, you were in your study there laughing. I... But what is here in that trembling, Mr. Button? Man, your face, too. You stood with the stood to the first show. The outbreak of your court one. Forget that you've been here. That was a long ride across town with your chauffeur's gun in my grip, sir. Long and unpleasant. But I didn't tell George to use the gun. I we can talk in your study. Oh, no, you mustn't go in there. You... Oh! <laughs> So, you shouldn't have done that. I tried to keep him out of here. I knew you didn't want him to see that. Why are you pointing that gun at me? What are you going to do? Oh, Mr. Sembra. Mr. Sembra. Oh, Mr. Sembra. Oh, I am giving you brandy. Oh. Oh. Oh, good day. Wait, you ask tomorrow. You ought to do more like that? As soon as the canary stopped holding choir practice in my head. Oh, so sorry. I did too much, but I'm just... It's great, Mr. Bucky. She's gone. I'm where? Oh, no, she go. I go to room. I'm passy. I think maybe now employees want me to drive you home again. I come here to study. I'm you on floor. Employer goes kick cut off. What's that thing? The one that arrived today. Taylor brings crates. Well, what sort of pictures were they? There you go. Well, some pictures came worse than mine. They go all right to me. But they make Mr. Bottom very angry. Oh, then he told you to fetch me? Oh, no. Not right away. Short the time later. After phone call. Phone call? Employer call number. Is it information? Write something on a paper pad. Then send me the two. The pad. Very good. Honorable, oh, here. I'll give it to you. Oh, 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 Maybe you can uh, write in some book. George, just put your finger and dip it in the fireplace for me, will you? Too much of brandy, too much. No. Please do as I say. Get some ashes on your hand. I think. Yes, in the fireplace. Oh, oh, yes, sir. Fingers are all properly dirty, you know, I think. Now rub it on this page of the pad, hmm? Lightly, lightly, gentle. You got a look. Magic. Yes, you know. No, no, to those few hiding adventurers who have dared to visit the forbidden city of Brooklyn. What will uh, coming forth on a pad? Who did Mark look at? I got the ashes in the pad. What is the word? No, it's a good. What is that we're on? Form a place for us. You can not hurt you, you have a meeting with this to them. Let's give it a minute. Piano. You know Mr. Piano, George? Not knowing, sir. Piano, huh? Thank you. Customer, the echo customer. Oh, sounding like right steamboat. Second part, maybe Mr. Mata ought to be yours. Goodbye, George. Oh, you go. Hi, Tom. You stay. You go find him, George? Yeah. Why? But I like you, George, that's why. I don't want you to lose this job, so I... Oh, oh, oh. Let me take the place to put it there. Uh, they are belong over here. Oh, Mr. Tempera, you say I am to lose in job? Why? We have a quaint saying in this country, George. Go so lose job if employers lose life. <laughs> Looking? Your cousin's man? He's a captain? Third officer, Captain One Ashore. I'm in charge. Look, fella, you boys from Customs already went over this vessel three times since we docked this morning. Three times, eh? It's the usual procedure, isn't it? Three times as usual, and each time so thorough, the ship is practically dismantled. What goes, pal? Hey, you tell me. I don't know what you boys are looking for, mister, but I'll tell you here now, it ain't on board the Customs. This is an honest ship. Yeah, and I'm the captain of the Pinnacle. You got a man named Piano on board? Look, Mr. Piano's a good guy. One of the best men on this ship. He works hard, no complaints. He's loyal, efficient, a good all-around man. That's Piano. Yeah, you know him pretty well. Know him? I'm him. 
Well, I'm glad to meet a good, loyal, efficient, uncomplaining, all-around man. You know a man named Button? No. You say Button? Hmm, Button, like in what one is sometimes told to do with one's lip. Button. Like in Button Gallery's Button? Yeah. I know about his art gallery, that's all. Well, what about it? He holds cargo on this boy. A space we picked up in Genoa. That's in Italy. Yeah, they filled with uh, paintings, valuable and rare. Yeah, I've seen them paintings. If they're valuable, then we're both the captain of the pinnacle. Yeah, all I can say is fully. What Smog fails to do to the human eye looking at these pictures, Judge. How many? Seven. <laughs> they were uh, 24? Yes. Look, all I know is we're loading cargo in Genoa. A guy comes on with this here crate. He gives me a song and dance about taking extra special care of his valuable life so it don't get banged around like cargo sometimes does. That's all he asked of Latin also to deliver it as his clear to custom. Deliver? Where? To the guy from time to. Dr. Weber, the button art gallery. To nobody else, he says, just this here Dr. Weber, and I shall be handsomely rewarded. The way you? I let no one never get back. <laughs> Hope you found the art gallery still open. Well, I'll tell you right now, he didn't. No? Then what did he do with... I'm inclined to think he brought it to the one man he shouldn't have brought it to, Orlando Button. Oh. And this guy in Italy says, make sure nobody gets it but this Dr. Weber. How about that for luck? A lousy mistake is going to cost me my handsome reward. And you're getting it right, pal. That same mistake may cost Mr. Button his life. <laughs> I want to make sure you just come up the street. I'm kind of glad it's you, Dr. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm kind of glad to see you, too. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see how good you are without the gun, you sucker. Don't worry about it. When I finish tearing it off, I promise you I'll give it back to you. Come on, now. What ill wind brought you out of retirement, Tizek? Uh, look, that's my kind of work. When a guy says he's retired, he either tries to keep the cops or put it in the table. You mean there's always another hoodlum who would force you back into it, eh? Now let's have some talk here. Let's, let's, let's go down first. Let me eat the talk first. I get enough talk. <laughs> yeah, I'll loosen your tongue with a little history. When I first knew you, you worked with Pirelli as you took it. But he was supported a couple of years back. My, you're full of news. What do you want from me, Who hired you to squeeze the figure on me? Nobody to hire me to gun you down, sir. It was me that's the labor of love. I do. Oh, my arm, you fight! Her name was... Oh, that's all it is. Someone behind you, you've developed a decided talent for ventriloquism. He's no ventriloquist, and I'm no dummy. Huh? Huh? Who are you? I'm just a man with a gun, and the gun is in your back. Tell him loose. Yeah, yeah. 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 He's loose. Oh, I just came along when I mowed it. Huh? The boss wants you. Get right over there. Oh. You gotta handle the sucker. I'll handle him. You beat it. Okay, pal. Okay. All right, turn around, Templar. Carefully. Very carefully. Good. You did that very nicely. Now it's been taking down for you. It's too bad someone doesn't sell lessons in how to mind one's own business. From now on, you're keeping your nose out of this affair. It doesn't concern you. Clear? Like tapioca. Yeah. I get so hard by a fast going oriental with a gun. I get my skull back so hard my brains are threatening to move out of the neighborhood. I, I get very sincerely menaced by a beady-eyed bandit with intent to kill. And now you come along and tell me this affair doesn't concern me? All this really happens. If I were dreaming, it wouldn't be about those kind of things. Okay. So what's the angle to all this in this mark? I can only make wild guesses. None of my ideas have had their final fittings yet. But suppose you tell me uh, what angle are you wearing today? Hmm. Like I told you, sir. Me, I'm just a man with a gun. Yeah, so you said. And uh, the painting? Painting? Yeah, the coat of painting. Seven in number that arrived today from Italy for the Button Gallery. Now I'm doing it. You mean you're taking paintings? You mean you're not taking things? Can't either you're deliberately throwing me a curve or we're not even playing in the same ball game. Now I'm not taking paintings. 
What I'm thinking is just a little more danger. You wouldn't say that if you were wearing my aching head. I'll be seeing you, Art Lover. Oh, it's inevitable. And if you should run across an old party named Orlando Button before I do, will you please do something to help him stay alive? And this is the last pipe dream I'll listen to. Why can't this old party manage to stay alive on his own effort? This is one of the wild guesses I was telling you about. The last time I saw Button, he was a very frightened man. The kind of fright that only comes to a man who expects he's going to be killed. So if I see him, I'll do what I can to stop him from being afraid. And that Satan can be taken too well. And in the light of the fact that it was pronounced by a fellow who hobnobbed this silly princess, the by saying, and if I were you, I'd worry about trying to keep myself alive. <laughs> Mm. Well, good morning. I believe the door is plainly marked private, isn't it? <laughs> one finds it difficult to believe all one reads these days. You know, it's nice. What's nice? Mm, that they don't hang all the works of art in this gallery on the wall. Some of it sits in a low cut dress behind the sign that says assistant to the director. You wish to see someone? Well, actually, my wish is to remain here with you, but I'd never get to see Dr. Weber that way. Do you have an appointment with Dr. Weber? No. Well, I'm afraid he can't see you then. He's very busy. And then I'll see Mr. Button. Mr. Button? Mm, this is the Button Art Gallery, isn't it? You will have to make an appointment with Mr. Button at his home. He rarely comes down to the galleries anymore. Well, then I'll see Dr. Weber after all. You not only find it difficult to believe all you need, but all you hear is well. Dr. Weber never sees anyone without an... Oh, it is you, Mr. Temporal. Oh, hello, George. You find him well? No, George. Does he lend a friend of yours, George? Oh, very good friend. Mr. Hyman Temporal is a saint. Great at his efforts. Makes work appear on paper with ashes. Very clever. Oh, it's nothing really, sir. A detective? Something wrong? Employer missing. What? Oh, he's mysterious. They come last night by sailor. Employer and I reopen. Employer get angry like it's crazy. Then we quit the drugstore. Then I come back. Thank you, the drugstore. <laughs> Look here, what's this all about? Oh, that a coat of painting from Genoa for Dr. Weber. Painting? You weren't expecting anything from Italy. In fact, Dr. Weber was. I most certainly would have known if the director was expecting the shipment. And what's all this about Mr. Button? I wish you'd explain. Let's go see Dr. Weber, hmm? Maybe he likes Mr. Sherry, too. Oh, yeah, Mr. Spencer? Oh, Miss Arthur. I go for his car now, or Miss... Uh, my car? Oh, no, George, you don't have to. What is the will, is For his car, easy way, this. Uh, that is why I come here. Well, you can pass it by, this is George. I haven't used my car much since the last time you gave it a bath in the palace. Okay, no, uh, very well. I'll keep it with you. Please be sure, Mr. Spencer. Oh, uh, Sola, I'd like you to catalog that, Miss... Oh, what is it there? It's a silent Dr. Weber. How do you do? How do you do? Seems we have a mystery on our hands, Doctor. A mystery? Mm -hmm. A mystery. It was beginning to get a slightly dull out here. Oh, it won't be Thank you. There's nothing like a little mystery to brighten things up a bit, is there? Hmm. Especially if you're one of those people who enjoys going to funerals, Doctor. Hmm? There's someone who... Unless you're saying that someone who can last in is terrified. And let's also say that that someone has to be seen since. But who? Mr. Button. According to George, he's been missing since last night. I see. Uh, Mr. Sinclair, am I to understand that Dr. Mr. Button wasn't home last night? You are assuming that he's been murdered. Well, that is more or less the condensed version, yes. I believe that it is as goes like this. Don't make prejudice out of titles. Don't shoot butterflies with rifles. Mm -hmm. Just be foolish to make a trifle out of what might well be a tragedy. Perhaps I should give you the full length version now. Huh? Perhaps you should, Mr. Spencer. A trader arrived from Italy yesterday to customers from Genoa. He carried a small coat and found to you, Dr. Weber, the gallery here. But sorry, you see, no coat. What was he doing? Painting, Doctor. And from what Gianna tells me, extremely bad painting. But uh, where are they, Doctor? Let's let these pictures speak for themselves. Where are they? I never heard of them until this moment. I wasn't even in town yesterday. You know? I was in Chicago, attending a fraternity convention. There was no crate of paintings delivered here to the gallery yesterday, Mr. Temple, I see. But they weren't delivered to the gallery, Miss Arthur. Well, as soon as he carried the crate in Piano's place, he found the gallery closed when he arrived, so he did the next best thing, he thought. 
for my special. If you had no way of knowing, of course, that old Mr. Button had more or less retired from business, leaving Dr. Weber in charge of his gallery. And so rather than lug the crate all the way back to the ship, he brought it over to the Button residence. Well? And Mr. Button opened the thing up, curious to see what the pet his gallery was buying these days, I suppose. Probably wished he was dead. And I'm afraid he's just was granted all too soon. Why would anyone take the trouble to keep us bad painting? That's what I wondered for a while, too. And that's what Button must have wondered. But not for long. He tumbled down to a practically at once. I'll do what, Mr. Templar? You're aware, of course, of the National Treasures Act, or whatever they call it in Italy, which prevents the export of great Italian works of art. Of course, we're aware of it. The Italian government has had it in force for years. They're perfectly right in not wanting our great works of art better to the world when it's right to make long to the city. But I still don't know. The seven paintings were overpainted. Overpainting. Mm-hmm. Surely you've heard of the technique of painting over an oil painting with gloss, with a water-soluble paint. On the surface, these pictures look like something not even a lumber company calendar would be caught dead with. Underneath, as Mr. Button found when George came back from the drugstore with materials to remove the paint, they found masterpieces by master artists of the Renaissance. What? Yeah. Yes, I'm sure. Several dozen of Italy's treasures have been missing ever since the war. The customs men tell me the Italian government had a trip that some had recently been shipped to New York. How or on what ship, no one knew. But uh, Mr. Button, what did he do? Well, mm-hmm. you know, being an honest man with a reputation of many years as a reputable art dealer, he was stopped. He said he was so fair to fetch me. When I got there, he told me he changed his mind. I can assume that Button had his mind changed for him at the point of a gun. I like it. How's your arm? It's sore, sir. Thank you. But not as sore as your head is, Dr. Weber. Hello, Ken. Hello, Ken. You've got a good memory for faces, Ken. It's been a lot of you. Who could ever forget a face like yours? The one who could win an ugly contest anywhere. Where did you guys talk to A guy who would think you're holding an invisible guy. I think making a difference if you can't see it, but you see this in Jimmy's everybody. I remind you of the meaning of this invisible. You're in charge of this, Jim. I am Dr. Weber, the director. And the den? Miss Arthur is my assistant. Hmm. You do all right by yourself, Patrick. Maybe after we knock off the tent and factor here, we'll keep it out on the little later, yeah? <laughs> That brings you back to this country, Sir Allen. The crime wave became just a ripple when you were the poor. I'm moving back in, Jim. Bigger than ever. I suppose I've got to clear something up. Huh? What sort of something? Except for you people and a few of my boys. Nobody knows Sir Allen smuggled himself back in on the person. You people ain't going to be around long enough to tell a fly about it. So I want to know something. Oh, why don't you try asking? I am asking. I have days up here watching that kid day and night to see if anyone is wife in it. See if the federal guys are maybe heard, I come in on them, and I request And, uh, they are, huh? That's what you're going to tell me. There's a chance we see you looking about the custom. You see, like other guys, too. Guys with, with a cop look at that. Well, they are a kind of cop at that, you know? They know if Corelli was smuggled in on that boat. They looking for me, then? Well, these particular cops are customs inspectors, Corelli. They're looking for pictures. Huh? Yeah. Oh, uh, Good news. Yes, that's good. They're not looking for Scarelli. They don't know him back yet. Mr. Wigger, these cops are going to have mouths. Yeah. Start up with these papers. Yellow doctor. There's a pen for you. All right, drop it, please. Yes, I've got it. Oh, I've got it. All right. Uh, everybody all right? Who? Who are you, Dick Tracy? I've already told you, Templar. I'm just a man with a gun. But that gun wouldn't happen to be federal property, would it? It would. So now you're going to ask how come a federal agent let the mug like this out loose after he's been keeping his gun off at a private city. Yeah, I know how it comes. If I'd gone through with my intention of breaking off Mr. Kozak's arm, he'd have led you to a hospital instead of where you wanted him to lead you, huh? It's correct. Right, Mr. Templar. Come on, boys. Uh, let's get away from this smart guy and be careful with those hands. Oh. 
Now, uh, what was it you were saying before about things getting a trifle dull around here, Dr. Weber? Uh, this is about an unusual modern and The time wave in your office isn't over yet. We're back to playing button, button. Mr. Kendler, I'd prefer it, and so would Dr. Weber, if you put your cards on the table all at once, instead of one at a time. We've had enough suspense for one morning. Are you accusing Dr. Weber? How uh, tall are you, Doctor? Sir? Well, I'm almost a two. And you, Miss Arthur? Really, Mr. Kendler, I... How tall? About five feet. Doctor, you wouldn't ever wear high heels, would you? High heels that left an impression on the leather upholstery of a chair that has been moved along part of a doorway. I don't follow you, and Miss Arthur does. He anticipated my wish to go into Button's library last night. Naturally, that wouldn't do at all. The paintings were there, and a couple of them already had the overpaint removed. Correct, Miss Arthur? You're insane. That wrap across the skull you gave me is probably what made me insane. Being a rather little girl for a pet banger, you needed height, huh? But just before I entered the library, where you'd had Button under a gun before my arrival, you moved the chair. So you had height, and so when I walked in, I went out. Well, I suppose one should really humor him, Dr. Weber. And then what did I do, Mr. Templer? You removed both the paintings and Mr. Button. You probably killed Mr. Button somewhere along the line. Yes, to see that, Miss. You can tell me, or the police, shall we say, exactly where Mr. Button's body lies, where the paintings are. Unfortunately, no. And then just as unfortunately, Mr. Templer, you have no case. Without the paintings found in my possession, without Mr. Button's body... Oh, then, uh, interrupt them, please. Uh, we're out of the visit on the door, please. Oh, we'll not take a moment. Miss Arthur, you ought to make a mistake. Oh, please, George, you're having a conference. Would you mind, please? Arthur, come all the way downtown to watch and punish car. You say car no dirty. Not in his bath. Not in his porridge. George, will you please go now? But Miss is mistaken. Just see car in parking lot. Some other time, George. Car very dirty. Car need to wash. Porridge most fast. I go do so, yes? No. Of course you go do so, George. And while you're at it, take a look in the trunk compartment. No. Trunk compartment? What find in trunk compartment, Mr. Templer? Employer, George. Oh, employer in trunk? No, no. I didn't lie in the chilling. I, I didn't lie in no. the chilling. I go look. I, I, I go look in the trunk <laughs> compartment. Never mind, George. Don't call the police. <laughs> do you think, Mr. Templer? I go call. And George. So? If Mr. Motor should ever need an assistant, I'll be very happy to give to you, will you? Listening to another transcribed adventure of the Saint, the Robin Hood of modern science. Now here's our star, Vincent Price. Ladies and gentlemen, in tonight's cast, you heard Mary Schiff as Lola and Charlie Long as George. Fred DeCorsio was Corelli, Larry Dodson, Kozak. Fred Fields played Nash and Ted Austin, Dr. Weber. Barney Phillips was Piano. This is Vincent Price inviting you to join us again next week at the same time for another exciting adventure of the Saint. Good night. The Saint, based on characters created by Leslie Cotter, is produced by James L. Fassett and directed by Helen Knight. Vincent Price is soon to be seen co-starring with Errol Flynn and Mission and Bell in William Marshall's production of Bloodline. All you Saint fans will be glad to know that the Saint comic books are on sale at all you fans. Good times mean good times on NBC. For something new about the Army, hear the Phil Regan Show, next over most of these NBC stations. Coming from a different service base every week, Phil Regan brings you songs and fun, and brings prizes to talented free eyes. It's an exciting newcomer to your Sunday time lineup on NBC. So hear it next, the Phil Regan Show. And later today, following the Phil Regan Show, hear Mr. and Mrs. Blanding on NBC.